I, I do think both are actually quite easy. That's why I think it's a bad kind of uh, bomb spot. Uh, but I think that is the easier one. But yeah, yeah, that is very true. And this and could, the mind games. I mean, if if this, uh, we could see kind of sort of. What it, I, I want to see kind of defenses where it's not just okay, all bunker up in this room. Oh, a nice starting kill coming think out there. He got shot from the place I'm talking. It was uh, Sai. I think they got him. Not quite sure where he was when he shot, but I think he it was, was in, smoke. in B bomb maybe. Yeah. He's over there, look, you can see him just down in that corner. He's still watching that corner. He's going to be looking for more shots. Zangar going to be able to pin him down. But yeah, I want to see some more defenses where it's kind of like, we all abandon the bomb site, then go for the retake, that kind of defense. I'd be interested to see whether that's kind of a strategy that anyone wants to go for. Yeah. Obviously, it's kind of risky, so high risk, high reward. He's got a nice little spot here. There you go, let's see. Gonna be able to push on for this one because I mean they're already two day two rounds down. They're mm. a man down in this round as well. It's not too bad, yeah. It's interesting they're not pushing to the uh, the southeast. Wow, Penta just <laughs> starting to play exterminators right now. That's another kill coming out. Well, we suddenly only have Thatcher wow. remaining, and as I say that, Aiga gets another one. Didn't even get in. Like, I mean, into the bomb sites. Yeah, it, it, it's just the second. It, this is the second round in a row where we've just seen Penta like, okay, time to kill them. We know where we, we know where they are. We've got them on camera. We've we've heard them. We we finally worked. We've locked down where the positions are, so we're not going to get flying. Look that, Let's make this attack move. Look that they had the Roma uh, downstairs as well there. Like yeah. In the church. Which I mean, if you're in the middle floor, why not? Mm. There's different ways up. There's yeah, lots yeah, of different yeah. points of entry and things. So you can kind of. With, I think that's one of the beautiful things about roaming is you have so much freedom to do whatever you want with that because the more or the less likely that strategy is, often the more successful you're going to be because if it's a predictable strategy, if it's something that you see every round, people are going to know to look in those spots. Yeah. If you go for a different route, you're going to be much more successful or at least you can be much more successful. It's probably best changing your roaming spots at least uh, every month or every two weeks or something because you will eventually get used, yeah. to, get used to it. And the, there'll be some roaming spots that are the most common and yeah, will yeah. get checked for the most. Yeah, so. definitely. Definitely something to incorporate in your own play. <laughs> but here we go. So is this... This is the same place again, in it? Church Armoury? Yeah, that bottom floor once more. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, WTF, mm. they only won an attacking round, so they haven't had mm. to change their defensive spot just yet. But maybe... Just because the game is enforcing you to change, if you've lost two defensive rounds so far in this spot, maybe it's time to change it up a little bit. Maybe it's time to go for a different one. Yeah. And I like as well, one of the things that you, you see in competitive play, less so in matchmaking, is kind of how differently drones are used. Because there's the whole thing of, you know, you want to use the drone to find the objective, and that's kind of what the in-game announcer says to you. But actually, if you've played these maps hundreds of times, you, you know, know you know the spawns of the objectives. Yep, if, even if you don't see the objective, you've spotted the other three zones. So whether there's a marker or not, you know where a it is. A nice thing to do would be to put drones in and keep them alive. Yeah, uh, just so you cameras. get the cameras. So they've got the cameras on defense, you get the cameras on attack. Yeah, it's essentially your own version of CCTV. Exactly, yes. Went on end, they probably are doing that. I, it, I won't be shocked. Yeah, we have seen a couple, like, I mean, in that first game, we saw kind of the... going to be trying to push this guy at the uh, stairs, you just saw him. And this is the beauty of Siege that we were talking about earlier. Go yeah, he's making sure he knows where he is. He's going to go for it. He's going to go for it. Frost denies the drone. He's been ah, spotted out. Oh, that was a hip fire headshot right there coming yeah, out. So yeah, yeah, I get getting a teensy bit lucky, I want to say, getting that headshot it, it straight away. Like a zoom in. He was like mid zoom. Yeah, he was going for it. I think he probably would have been able to get it anyway. But saw that happening. He had the uh, advantage because he knew because of the intel. Yeah, heart of the cards coming out right there. First bullet lands right into the dome. Here we go. So again, Penta with the advantage. This is something they're doing so consistently is they're taking on that opening kill. What a nice momentum right now. Attackers yeah. have dropped the bomb so, I mean, Penta, they've got to be feeling very confident in this round. I mean, not just in this round, but in this matchup now. They're, they're four, <laughs> three rounds up on their opponents, they're one round away from taking this first map. Pengu actually getting tagged pretty heavily there. Yeah, that little peak. <laughs> oh, it's going to trade one for one though. So. Rendia is going to go down. There we go. But the thing is, WTF can't afford one to trade one. 
Oh. It's another kill for Penta. Oh dear. This They've is, got armor three, I think. This could be all she wrote right now for the first game in terms of WTF. Yeah. That's another kill coming on through. And now it's just Pulse remaining. I'd love to go into the perspective of Pulse here. Yeah, would be nice. Just for this, uh, this final clutch, if he can go for the one versus four, because right now, it's all or nothing for WTF. He's waiting for the peak, waiting for that headshot to come through. I guess it's going to be the one. And nice shot. Nice shot coming out from Zangar. Oh. Well, the diffuser oh, is here. The Twitch drone. Oh, got him. Here we go. He's, he's in a, more health. He's not in a great spot, is he? Really not in a fantastic position, but... The diffuser is down, so he's kind of a bit unsure. up against the wall right now. He's the one that has to make really the move. Bad. He's got to kind of make something happen here. They're yeah, going to hear him he, come in. Yeah, unlucky. And that, really there was like unsure. three people watching that doorway, so there wasn't a lot of hope. all three to be in one place. They were yeah. like, there must be someone somewhere else. And, and unfortunately as well, he peeked the wrong corner. Yep. So it was kind of like, oh, maybe they're over here. No, immediately three people spraying down from the other angle. You're kind of like, not a whole lot you can do in that situation. But that is going to be Penta. They lose the first round of the game, but then they sweep Came it back. five oh, rounds in a row. Away. Yep. And I mean, in our first matches, we kind of saw a lot more success on the defending side. WTF, their only round that they've won so far has We're been attack. on attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So different kind of strategies, different kind of play styles coming out here. Possibly maps as be... well. Maps come, come into play too. So now, in terms of the standings of the tournament, Warrior Team France have their work cut out. Because so far, we have three teams now with one map win. If Penta can win this one, they skyrocket themselves to that first place position, which is a fantastic way to start the day for yourselves. Mm. Like, mm. to know that you are 2-0 up, to know that you are ahead of the competition yeah. and that everyone else is then playing catch up. Warrior Team France, right now, they are, they're desperate not to be forced to the bottom of that scoreboard. Because, I mean, <laughs> I said how Penta are going to be happy about people playing catch up. You don't want to be the team that is playing catch up, so. Yeah. WTF. I believe they have a French League of Legends team as well. Oh, really? I think I've cast I've them never, in the I've past. never heard of uh, WTF. Like about two years ago, I think I cast them in like Black Monster Cup or something. But It'd be interesting to see if uh, Penta can do as well on the plane. You know, going five straight on the plane. So that does mean they will have to do attack and defense. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's, let's talk about this map, plane. Now, this map looks pretty bizarre from yeah. the top down view. Because yeah. it's kind of a plane that's been chopped in half almost. But I, um, I honestly. I have no idea what to expect. So they're going map. for the top place. They're going for the, uh, yeah, it's kind of like the front. They have like presidential the, suite, this, I guess. Yeah, I think, I think that's what it's called. Um, this is where I, we usually go, like when I play it. This is usually where I go. Yeah. Um, this is a play. Are they using glass? Mm, no. Wow. They're not going to be using glass. They are going to be using, though. Um, is it Blitz? The one with the yeah. flash shield? No, Montaigne. I, I would have pictured Laz and two shields. I guess, map. like, maybe if you go for that single shield, you've also got the flashbang built into that as well. So, yeah, kind of. Yeah, but you could do uh, Blitz and Montaigne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I them. can definitely see. see well, we'll the, see how uh, they're going to push this. I mean, maybe this is something that we see later on in the rounds. I mean, this is first round, so yeah, first yeah. strategy coming out. This time Penta. we're going to see Jaeger and. Uh, and Bandit coming out here. So, one thing, I, I did get uh, some information fed by my little brother. Um, he did inform me that Jaeger, in fact, there is no internal cooldown on uh, on that the, the grenade destroyer. I can't remember yeah. what the device is called. But you only get two, two grenades destroyed. So when he th threw that third smoke earlier, obviously it goes through because the set, it only gets two. So you've got to set, set those Jaeger traps up strategically. Ooh. Yeah, they're going for a first kill already. Very aggressive positioning coming out here from Iger. Playing that sledge. He's going to be able to push on through, but look at this from Vico. Vizca. Or is it Vic? So I'm not sure whether that's Vico or Vic, because it's like a weird face. I don't know whether that's Vico turned into a face. Or... <laughs> All right, I'm going to call him Vic. Vic. Yeah. I'm going to go for Vic, I think. It's a risky place to push this, because they can also see from the other angle uh, if they've made some murder holes, which I'm pretty sure they will have. Uh, to the right of this guy, to the west. Okay, well, that's going to be WTF starting this one off in their favor. Penta, obviously on the attacking side, and we've been saying how hard it can be to attack yep. on plane, but Pengu actually manages to trade that one for free, doesn't get traded back. Obviously, he's going to be on one of those heavy armor classes as well, so very slow, but a lot harder to kill unless you get the headshot. Yeah. Looks like they have a bit of a Roma trying to push behind them, possibly. Yeah, but they yeah. know they've heard him. He needs to be a bit slower. He might be able to get a few kills. Well, 
That's the Roma dealt with. Ah. <laughs> That's going to be Iger going down. Ah. <laughs> Traded straight back across, though. WTF uh, 6 is going to fall. That's you're going to be throwing out those. That's just smart team play, knowing there's yeah. a Roma there. If you were not a team, that Roma could have just killed all of you. Okay, yeah. so the wall is blown open and the round is blown open too. They're going to push on forwards with this blitz. I want to yeah. see them flashbang and I want to see them blinding the opponents. It's oh, going to be Sislak with a nice shot onto him. Nice. Finishes him off. Actually, Hawk finished off the kill in Very the end. Nice shot. Beautiful headshot Just comes get. out. And look at this. 2v2. This is all to play for. And honestly, I was expecting this to be much more one-sided towards the defenders. Penta clearly have practiced this map. Wow. It's... Here we go. Just about to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite find it's the shot, so. Oh, uh, Texan. Nice. Another kill coming over for Hawk. So Hawk doing a really good job on this defense. Uh, and that's going to be Thatcher yeah. going down. Vic gets another one for himself. And it's going to be WTF managed to get that first round on defense. So this time, WTF with the advantage. I, I want to see what WT, uh, WTF use. I really want to see what operators on, yeah. are going to be using. On defense, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. It's, and as well, whether we see a glance. Maybe no, um, they didn't use glaz. Saha. Maybe they. There it is. There <laughs> maybe, it is. They, maybe they didn't use glaz because they might have thought they were going to go bottom first. That could have been it. Because I do not understand why you wouldn't use glaz. Yeah, maybe. It, yeah, it could have been like a uh, kind of mind games. But I, I feel like if that's the case, then maybe you want to go no glaz round one. See what happens. If they don't go bottom, the odds are if they won the defense, they're going to go bottom next time. So then no glaz again. Oh, yeah. And then if they win that defense, then you can swap to glass. So yeah. kind of play it on knowing that they have to change spawn. These have play gone. it around that and play your strategy around that. These have gone bottom, which again makes me feel... Wait, have they gone bottom? Yeah, they have. Yeah, they? they have. Um, so again, it makes me feel that they thought they were going to go bottom. That's why they weren't using the glass. Yeah. I mean, I'm only guessing. And as well, the glass now in the hands of Sizzlak is going to be kind of less effective because it's down on the bottom. There aren't those windows to shoot through. I mean, you do still have... It's still nice. You do, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, obviously, it's still, still really good, don't get me wrong, but not quite as uh, crazy good as it is if you're on that... If you're on that middle ground, it's just so hard to deal with. Yeah, he's really strong. <laughs> you kind of just have to hope that somebody can get a peek and get a quick headshot on him. Okay, looking for the peekers. But in theory, in theory, Glass does have that advantage if you go for the peek. Glass. With that scope, should be able to get those shots, should be able to land those headshots. I can possibly see Inglaz going for the, the uh, long range places, like to the yeah, very, very yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely see that coming out. I mean, that's kind of the play style that Glaz is designed for with that sniper. You can obviously go for other styles because <laughs> the throw coming out. <laughs> another, another cricketer coming out here, but. Can he make it? <laughs> I really like that drone placement. It's going to mean that he can check if anyone's peeking to try and get it later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, nice. So protecting, protecting future self right there. <laughs> but here we go. What do you think? I mean, this time we're going to see a dock coming out here from Penta on the defense. What do you think of this defensive composition they've built? Um, smoke, rook. It's kind of at, like a normal defensive position, isn't it? It's, it's uh, just normal operators, for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a nice one. It's, it's tried and true formula, isn't it, really? Absolutely. And I, as well, I think Pulse is going to be a key factor, as well, because it's such a kind of CQB close-ranged map, unless you're, like, looking down these long corridors. Pulse can see so many people. Pulse will be able to see these people down here, which could be quite nice, yeah. See, Ooh, this is this is a really line. tight corridor. That like, to his left, it's really really tight. Here we go, Glass again. Glass not really been able to find anyone just yet. That's it, as I expected. You, you want Glass mainly for the higher bombs. Yeah, it's going to be kind of down to whether they can now utilize Glass's weapon indoors because he's probably going to have to here. Move in. This place where he is, this is where our picture and Glass were going to go, and it looks like possibly it's over here. They, they broke uh, some Yeah, you can see so far down the plane. That's going to be the thing, and that's going to be a kill it's over right. to Pengu with that MP5. And look at that. He's going to try and answer it, but can't quite land the shots to finish him off. There's a grenade. Is he going to allow it? He allows it. Tanks a bit of damage for it. Didn't hit. So again, just Got another. Trying to trade damage right now, but not really winning out. Penta so far in a wow. three versus five in their favor. They'll be. Oh, there's another peak from Pengu. Really nicely done. Zangar does answer. Gets one of his teammates down. Smoke actually going to 
try and deny any more entry into this bomb site, but they're going to be able to get away with it for now. The spray wow, coming out, yeah. out of Sai there. As I will, in Ooh. fact, it's going to be Sai that finds two. He went into the site with that SMG. That was finds the last two remaining. And just look at this aggressive push coming out from him. Oh, I don't think he knew he was there. I think they were both kind of, oh. oh. Yeah, yeah. Christ, there's another player, but there we go. So, yeah, nice I believe that was uh, Penta winning that one on the defense. So, again, yeah. both defending teams winning their starting rounds. And now we're going to see how things change up. How Now that they have to change their spawns, how their strategies change. And, I mean, so far, general uh, consensus has been kind of the attackers are at a significant disadvantage on this map specifically. Mm. Punji obviously disagreed with that one. He yeah. was saying that if you have the strategy down, if you can work it out, then defense can, uh, then attackers can have a massive advantage and yeah. really win this one. But so far the defender's winning out, so. As predicted, I, I honestly saw that happening. Um, one thing what might be interesting is these have gone for the bottom this time. Um, I feel Penta thought they were gonna go bottom the first time. And that's why they didn't go with the glass. Um, so maybe they're actually quite good at the bottom. So let's see how they how they attack this. Yeah, maybe this is their kind of... Um, maybe this is what they used to. It was a bit of a curveball that yeah. way they were there. I mean, you know? if, if you've got something that you're extra good at, you don't want to play that card right at the start of the game. You want to try and get an advantage without that and then use that to snowball your victory. And we're going to see whether they can turn this one into a 2-1 lead. Because right now, WTF. They're kind of already on the back foot. They lost the first map, let's remember. So they've got right. the exact same uh, setup as well. Yeah, I, I feel this were the the bomb they were aiming for in the round one. Yeah, interesting. We are going to see the bandit. I'm not sure if we. I don't think we saw bandit in the in the first version. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, bandit. I'm not sure. There's. Hmm, I mean, sure. I can see the use of it. I don't. I think there would maybe be better alternatives, but I, I guess it, it's down to personal preference on the guns as well, let's remember. It's not just about the gadgets here, it is about what primary weapons you get as well, because I know there are a few IQ players in the professional scene because it's a light class, it's a fast class, oh. and there's nice guns. Oh. Like, and obviously the, the gadget on IQ isn't phenomenal, let's be honest. Yeah. But you do sometimes see players playing that purely for the weapon set. Hmm. Um, speaking about Bandit, you do really want a Bandit or a Mute. They, they kind of must-haves as well. Uh, when you were talking about must-haves for attack, where you need a Thermite, uh, a Thatcher, yeah. um, for defense, you definitely will need a Mute or a Bandit just to reinforce them, uh, you know, make, make the reinforcements harder to breach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And here we go then, the attack begins. One minute 30 left on the clock. Don't look like they've got a roll upstairs. Playing. I, I, to be fair, on this map, I'm not 100% sure how necessary it is because it's so linear. They have they can to come from, um, from the top and look in. I'd say you want at least one person upstairs. Okay, fair enough. So we'll see whether that kind of bites them in the bum later on in the round. Completely blinded, kind of ironic to blind blitz a little bit. But let's see. No kills coming out just yep. yet, and there's only a minute left on the round. clock. So this is one of the slowest rounds we've seen in the Pro League so far. I love saying statements like that because it's still day one, so <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah. not a big deal, but it makes it sound it. I wonder, just yeah, try yeah. to flash someone for us. Uh, so Blitz pushing forwards, trying to get the blinds. That's going to be a nice kill from Rendia there. Yep. Nice crossfire as well using that one. Smoke actually going to get a kill as we nice. see Iger find one on 2-6. And this is looking behind. pretty good for Pentis so far. Four versus three. They're looking nice. for more picks. This guy's coming behind and no one's watching. He's looking for the... Oh! Very beautiful nice. little wall bang. Oh, he's going for another. Is he going to be able to find it though? He's going for the flank. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, 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 taking that by the trap. bear trap. That is going to be the welcome mat. Yep. Not very welcoming at all, but Smoke now, the last man standing, unless he can get his teammate up, but... Got the bomb. They're being captured. Oh, the defuse is down, sorry. Yeah. Let's see, it's on the retake. Hawk stepping on in. It's gonna have to... It's gonna have to be on it, honestly, Ooh. with these headshots. Just checking out for any roamers. Size waiting around the corner, what? just lurking there. Oh, he's gonna he... get taken down. Nice shot coming out. Can he can turn this into anything more? No! no! You, you can't focus on the guy on the ground! <laughs> I like oh, it. 
I, I feel like he should have just ignored that guy. Should have gone to try and get... Hindsight. Yeah, he, got, he got the guy from behind anyway. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, like he was walking into a crossfire, so it was going to have to be like... One, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one tap, 180, like matrix spin around, shoot him in the air kind of kills. It would have been hard. But As I like, expected, Penta did take, you know, the lower one. That's why I, I, I did kind yeah. of uh, picture that. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, W2F uh, actually go there again, or they're like, wait, they might be quite good at here. Let's try to go higher. Yeah, so or I mean, mid -play. we've now just seen an attacking team take that around on plane. So that's something already we were kind of not sure whether it was going to happen. So Punji's prediction coming into play there. But now it's going to be down to whether WTF can answer for that and yep. make that happen themselves. Look like they're, they're actually going for the presidential suite again. Yep. So now Which, it is a nice, it's a nice place, uh, other than yeah. the, uh, the bottom. This, it, is, it, this is what we saw from WTF in the first round as well, when they were on the ball, in their but, first defensive round. At but WTF have last this time. So yes, see what they do. There. <laughs> and this is the floor where the windows are. So this is where it could get dicey. They for are going to have to tread lightly. Trying to see, it's sizzling. All on them the glass. windows you see there, yeah. they can be shot through from the outside. And as well, if you break the glass, the, I'm pretty sure the glass shot can go through that middle wall as well. Maybe. So I, I, I'm like semi certain on that one. So we'll see whether we get any crazy wall bangs the or anything like that. The glass is going to start going high, I think. Potentially. So, I'm intrigued to see how glass plays this one. I mean, if you go high, maybe they just expect it, so it might be a bit different. There we go then. Like even Glass the actually going very close quarters. Even the windows this here, uh, this guy can shoot through though. Like even the windows to the right there. And one thing yep. as well about Glass that let's remember is you can see, and even when it's daylight, obviously if you guys have played this game at home, you know that when it's daylight, oh, yep. nice spot on knee here. Oh, very close. Not quite going to see him. But when it's, when it's daylight outside, it can be very hard to look in. Glass, because he's got a magnified scope, he can see into those dark rooms as if it, as if he was in the dark as well. So, oh, there he's we found go. a man. He's trying to tag him. Oh, he's gonna Look how him. low he is. He's found him so low. But he can't oh, finish close. him off. It's just, oh, and he ran. Oh, my goodness. He gets away. That is one lucky bandit right there. <laughs> had, had that been like an inch to the right, that would have been a headshot and that would have been the kill coming out. So. That shows you what the glass can do, though. Yeah. He just took that health without any threat at all. So there we go. And I mean, that, that's even without getting the kill, just having a man down to like what? That's got to be 10 HP tops <laughs> right there. That He's is gonna win such, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're never ever going to win a five fight. You that's can only good, kind of be the guy to run out and die so that you can tell your teammates where they are almost. Like that's pretty much all you're going to answer trades. Another shot out of glass and look oh, at Frost's wow. health as well. Why Straight on glass? into the chest. <laughs> this is already doing work. Even though he's not got a kill, his lack has done, done so much lot. work yeah, this round. Yeah. And now that's that's put the fear of God into oh, Penta's oh, hearts oh, right now. They they oh, do not dare oh, check these windows oh, because oh, they know that they will get taken down. As oh, I say that, they do dare check the windows because they take him down with that super 90. That's the uh, Frost shotgun, right? Yeah. yeah, so Frost answering for the health that he lost, but it is going to be Zangar. Oh, no team kill comes through! Ovi takes out Pengu and Penta. That is some bad news right there. Penta now with three men remaining, and it's going to be WTF pushing forward aggressively WTF here. could have got a lot of kills then. Yeah, they really could, and they're going to be looking for more kills. That is going to be Vic finding another one. Just two Penta players remain. One of them already taken so, so low Ooh. because of the glass. And look at that. Very Vic nice. finds one. Very nice. Well, two attacks, six two wins. finds another. Yeah, on so. the plane. I we, mean, saw we, two two, two, we saw two defensive wins, then we saw two attacking wins. Let's see kind of yeah. now how these strategies get changed to kind of play into that because they didn't win the last defenses, so they can choose whatever spawn they want, right? Yep. So it's kind of a. Where do they go from here? Do they go for the basement again? Do they opt to go for that upper floor and try and... I mean, this is going to be now Penta's on the attacking side. Do they go for a similar strategy to what just worked against them? Mm. Or are they going to stick to their guns and they go with what they have They're going glass been? again. It's very interesting that they're not bothering with glass. I mean, maybe in their eyes, because Glass didn't actually get a kill. Did a lot, though. Yeah, I, I, he did do a lot of damage, but that's a lot easier to kind of perceive from the spectator point of view. Obviously, we can see everyone's health bars. And things. Yes. So maybe it's kind of a matter of they don't really see the benefit because he didn't get like necessarily many kills or whatever. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a personal preference as well. If you don't have a player that is proficient at Glass, you don't have a player that 
wants to play that class, then that that's true. Forcing them onto that actually could be detrimental to yourself. Or if they feel that you know another operator would be taken, which is more important in their opinion. I mean, it's just my personal uh, preference. I yeah. guess that I, I believe Glass is very strong. And I mean, at this point as well, we don't really have a solid set-in-stone meta game here. A lot of this is down to personal preference of the players. Yep. We see different strategies coming out on each map from each team so far. The only real, like, super consistent ones so far have been, like, Frost, Rook, and Smoke. They've, they've been, like, in every game, and then, like, Thatcher, Twitch, and Thermite. Yep. Those are kind of the, the six, I would say, that are almost definitely going to be in every game. And then the, the other four are kind of... We're seeing some common occurrences, but we're seeing less of a absolute set in stone kind of these have to be in every map. Yeah. Pushing from the yeah. top. Different strategy coming out here from Penta. Sai so gonna be going for this top push, so let's see. Get okay. a bit of intel there. Through the drone. It's a nice first. little push that it goes to cockpit. Yep. But it, you also can go down to different places as well. Well, we'll see whether it's gonna pay off for them in the long run. Here we go, Penta taking this one very slow, not wanting to do anything too crazy. Oh, I'd say that actually, they're already in the plane, still got two minutes on the clock, so not going that slow, but certainly taking it methodically, checking the corners, not wanting to do anything stupid and end up losing the early man, because that, that first kill is just so crucial in this game. Starts the momentum. Yeah. And it just opens up your that it opens your team up for those trading opportunities. You can go one for one and be happy with it. Also, opens them up as well. It opens that kind of wall, doesn't it? Here we go. Just trying to spray through the walls right now. Once again, find... great Ooh, wall. Nice little shot comes out from Hawk with that SMG 11. That's going to be KSI finding one as well. Not called KSI, it's called Six. <laughs> KSI, an entirely different person. And in fact, plays FIFA rather than Rainbow Six. I mean, this is this is the first time a lot of us have uh, commentated some yeah. of these players, so it's kind of... Uh, All new. Yeah, getting to know the names a little bit. Hawk, again, with the second kill this round. Hawk has been a standout player for me. Really nice spot from Zangar. Just feeling they were there as well. Hiding out in that corner, waiting for someone to peek. And Penta, not doing fantastically. We've just got one man left, and he's going to go down to a C4, no less. Six. Very nice. Grabs his second of the round. That's WTF, I believe, taking the lead yeah, it is, yeah. on that one. Yeah. I think it's 3-2 now in their favor, so... WTF looking to push this towards a tie. Right now they are I two rounds away from taking the second map, and that will mean that we have four teams tied at the top of our scoreboard. Yeah. I wonder if it's um, Penta haven't played much of, of this one. I wonder if that's what it is. You know, they haven't played much of the plane. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen kind of, I want to say more tailored strategies coming out from... WTF, I mean, we've seen the glass. Blitz coming in, we've seen yeah, Glass coming yeah, in, yeah. which isn't something we've really seen from Penta in this mm. game. So it's kind of maybe just a matter of, this is a map that WTF knew other teams wouldn't want to go for. Mm. So if they practice, they get some strategies down on this map, and they can take these wins. And See, now they've taken the Glass off because they know it's the bottom, you see. Yeah. Yeah, but, because so they, they know that the, the spawn is essentially forced. They know that they're not going to go for that top spawn yeah. because... It seems like the weakest of the it three. It does feel that WTF know this map yeah, they do. more. Like, from I, what I, I'd I'm, expect, I'm confident from... in saying that now, that they, they definitely feel like a very confident team on this map. They know what they're... They have a set strategy. They know what they're looking to achieve, and they know how they're going about it. Well, they've actually so, changed the, uh, the load out from yeah. a different... You know, because from they're different attacking spots. a different place. Yeah, exactly. So that, I, yeah. And using Glass again, I'm going to be biased against that. <laughs> I feel that's the best one to use. Yeah, so here we go. Penta on the defense again. And Penta right now, they have to win this round. They, they can't really afford to let that two-round lead go over to the BTF because that's... When you're one round away from losing the map, that's when it starts to really get dicey. That's where you're kind of fighting tooth and nail. And you never want to get in that spot because that's when players start to panic. That's yeah. when it starts to fall apart. And obviously, as well, the majority of these players, this is kind of some of their first competitive experience, like playing Rainbow Six. So you're not necessarily going to have these kind of hardened veterans that have this like nerves of steel, like no matter the circumstances, they're never going to tilt kind of thing. Yep. You are going to see players kind of getting nervous. You are going to see players maybe going a little bit on We did see that in the first match. Right. Um, yeah, we did. Yeah. With the other team, he had the shot, missed it just because of the nerves. Happens, man. 
does happen. Happens in matchmaking, never mind on <laughs> when you're playing on a stage. That's true. First game when you jump in, it's always a bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always do a terrorist hunt first, just yeah. to warm up my shots, <laughs> like literally, so I can just, I just like, to rank me. pop some AI. Either I just do really good or really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it can kind of go both ways, can't it? Because yeah. if you if you do awesome in your first game and you've Looking not like even warmed up or any, Jaeger, oh, Jaeger comes yeah. out there. George, the importance of Jaeger, that, that yeah. nade could have really potentially does. hurt that guy. And it also, it, it blows like a hole in a wall or the floor, or it, it just opens another way into that site. So it's Distractions just, as well. Yeah. And also, one thing that's kind of talked about less is the noise that comes out from that. Mm. While that's exploding, you can sprint around a little bit. Yep. They're not going to be able to pinpoint yep. where you're running around. Because no, sound is so important. Yep. Yeah, I agree. That's one thing about Thatcher grenades as well. Is the sound is so loud and so long. That's also why some people sometimes breach one place and then go to a different place, pull that breach, and then push through the other place because you create two distractions instantly and they have to guess which one you're in. In an alright position here. So they've pushed in quite nicely. Here we go. The fight's kicking off as well. Rendia gonna find the, first the bomb one down. This Ooh, one. Oh, look at this. Penta started to wipe them out. Eiger wow. finds two for himself with headshots. He and just walked suddenly, up to them. Look at the health bars though. This could be clutchable right now. If Six can find his shots, everybody just about is blinking right now. They He's gonna will. be only pushing forwards and he is gonna get caught out. Nice cross fair. That nice could have been something fire. amazing. It really could. <laughs> Penta playing that one down to the wire. So many players just jumping out at the last second. And that right there, if they hadn't had Rook on their team, they lose that round. All right. Because mm. with, with those like 10 HP clutches where you didn't die to the headshot. Yeah, yeah, no, that, yeah, they would have died. Yeah, that's straight shows up. You the power you of, been of down. Rook. Shows you why everyone uses Rook. So Penta really taking advantage of that. And they even up the scoreline, yeah. which is so, so crucial right now. And let's take a look at the scoreboard. They're doing well, though. Very, very even. We are going to see, though, Ovi dropping a goose down at the bottom of the scuff board there for Penta. <laughs> Yet to put a kill on the board. Sislak as well. Got an Only assist. one kill. Teamwork. Sislak, I feel like, um, obviously has a few assists because mm. he was playing that glass. Didn't quite land the headshots, but certainly Defender. made a lot of leeway. He did a lot for that round. round. They yeah. won that round. I think he did quite a bit for that round. I think he was there. Two people, technically. Two people on, you know, you just hit him like two times and then they're down. I think that's quite a bit. Okay, well, let's remember as well that. Pentasports just demolished the first map. Once yeah, the yeah, they did. So this is kind of Warrior Team France. They have to just go on a sweep now. They have to win this now because mm. they're doing well right now. Penta, I think they're doing well. Yeah, I mean, on this map, Warrior Team, this feels like a much more even matchup. But on it the does. first map, Penta just looked head and shoulders Club. above the competition. Club map, uh, Clubhouse does seem like a more popular map, I'd say though. Like it is something I could imagine them training on more. This map, I, I don't know. It, it I do feels like more of a wild card map. Very, very wild. Yeah. This is not a map you'd favor. This is not like a map. Yeah, this is our map, you know? Well, I mean, if you've gone for some kind of strange... I mean, that's something that has been known to happen in other competitive shooters, like, yeah. like Counter-Strike and things. Like, you do see teams that have practiced one certain map really hard so that they can kind of pull it out. Nobody's expecting this map because nobody ever plays map. that map. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that'd be smart. That would be smart. So I could definitely imagine teams doing it. And it feels like that's kind of what WTF are going for with this plane pick. It feels like a map that they are confident on. Mm. Well, I think it isn't because it's just they're more confident on it. I think it's just because Less experience for Penta. I think both have less experience on this map, yeah. so it's more even. Maybe Penta have a lot of experience on club, or they've worked out a really good strategy, or, you know. Oh. Speaking of Penta, Pengu going to open Pushing this in. round up for his team. Going through servers. Zangdar. And that's going to be the power of that, uh, that Blitz shield right there. You're going to be able to blind your foe and then just spray him down. It looks like there's two of them pushing um, from the very top. Uh, that pushes towards cockpit, where you can drop down in different places throughout the whole plane. So it is a nice place to start from that. Yeah. Yeah, see, he's just dropped down. <laughs> but here we go. So the attackers, again, with the advantage here. We've, oh, the only attacking win I think we saw was... Oh, no, each team has won one attacking round. So we'll see if Penta can kind of replicate the success they've had earlier on. Mm. But it's... Only got one down so far. Yeah. But they have got uh, into a nice position. 
they've got this all, you know, it's their area. This now. is the thing, this is the point, the, the bomb site that they pushed when they won that other one before. Because they could hunker down in this bottom side of the map. And basically, because because it's such an easy place to defend, if you can find I'll, your way in, I'll, I'll that's another kill. Penta have found their way in. Yeah. They're then the team on defense. What Rain you were doing there was very, very risky, but he was working in his favor. He was peaking somewhere, with, which I feel is at your disadvantage, and he was peaking really, really well. Yeah. Well, that kind of goes two ways, doesn't it? Because generally the spot would be a disadvantage, but then if no one expects it, Again, you've got that surprise factor, but here we go. They're, They're going to be down. charging on in to try and get this down. one. That's another kill for Sai. Okay. Because Rendia just peeked. 2v5, not around. even one person has been downed yet. There we go. Wow. That's that going to be the end of the round. Wow, what Flawless. a. Flawless. What a way to freaking very, very nice. stomp a Sai. I just swore, but never mind. <laughs> That's the first time I've done that in years, so there you go. My bad. But here we go. Round eight, and it's going to be match point. Penta. Go. Going to be looking to close this one out in style on the defensive side here. And WTF, they've already managed to take one attacking round for themselves, but can they turn it into a second and can they turn it into an overtime? Because they need to right now. Mm, they're, yeah, they're, they do. They're yeah. one round away from losing out on this one and letting Penta walk through with a 2-0 victory. You don't want that. Not for your first game. It, I mean, they are versing, you know, as people have been saying, Penta are very strong. So it's not like they've just come in and just been like, oh, we're versing just a, a moderate team. Um, they're versing a really strong team. So it's not it's not the worst thing, is it? But it would be nice to go one and one versus a team where people are like, oh, wow, like you've actually done quite well versus this team who we thought were going to do like amazing, just like win everyone, you know? Yeah. So that, you know, that's something good. So we'll see. Take Two rounds at, away. Take a look at these uh, compositions that we're seeing. A little bit of a change out of Penta now. We're going to see Doc coming through, okay. along with Rug. Got, obviously, Smoke as per. But we're kind of seeing a little bit of variation here. We've got Pulse as well. Kind of the, the Rook, Frost, and Smoke are the standard again. Yep. But we'll see whether Doc can like help on this one. Because we have seen a lot of kills that haven't been headshots in this map. So it's maybe this is something that could come into it's play. It's interesting that Smoke is used quite a lot, isn't it? Is, is it the gun or do you think it's the, I, uh, the I think pressure it's the SMG, the to be honest, you, most you of it. The, uh, I, think, I think the Smoke is fantastic, don't get me wrong. Oh, Ooh, did he just... What a shot. I think he's put him into down, down. but not out. Is that what I mean? What a Again, way to start Blast. the round. Blast. It's going to be Pengu. It's so nice. Yeah, he's down. This is like in this position. I feel like someone from Penta should have kind of oh. tried to preempt this, maybe. Because this is exactly where he was last time he played Glass yep. as well. <laughs> yeah, that is very true, actually. He's in the exact same position. But again, and he got some fantastic damage to start the round last time as well. But, it, but again, even if you know he's there, it doesn't matter. You can't shoot him through the window. That is why, you know, it's yeah. just, uh, one of the best operators on this map, in my opinion. Here we go. Again, looking the same uh, positions. I mean, he does see him there, but we can't tell like what he's seeing on his screen. Yeah, the thing is as well, like, let's bear in mind, very dark. We, we've got the silhouettes. Yeah, he does not. Yeah, so he's like, you've got to know exactly what. It seems like Will have played this position so many times yep. in their practice games, in their ranked games, and See he'll he'll, <laughs> he'll know exactly what what the plane kind of looks like inside from this position. If so this guy just chilled here and didn't move, maybe one of them would get curious and just like peek. Good, good grenade. Oh. <laughs> one of them was, I think, was about to get curious and peek and yeah, immediately yeah, 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 sprints yeah. back from the grenade. That was kind of unlucky in a way. Hot potato. He's going for it again. And the drone as well going to come out, so that's going to be kind of a... He's, he's tagging him. He's tagging him. I think that's Rook. Yeah, yeah, he's tagging him. He's yeah. gone to half health. So he did something. And I mean, right now, Penta, they're not sweating too bad because they've been a lot of time. So it's not long left, and actually it's going to be WTF time. Nice. This one's Zangdar with a double kill to kick the round oh, off. Wow. He's yeah, looking for more, and he gets the third with this a headshot. This is such a strong position. This, this is, is complete pincer movement right this now. This right now is how you push a game into overtime. So I'm going to answer. Gets one onto Vic. Just Only don't be silly. Like you're in such a good position. Just, yeah. just play it safe. Cool. Play it methodical. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Let's see how they play this one as they push on forwards. Oh, they're going for that one. Okay. They That's another kill for Penta. They're one kill away from evening this up. And wow. WTF, after phenomenal play from Zangdar, haven't won the round just yet. They're nice. looking for Hawk, yeah, but it's yeah. guest traded oh, straight back across. Finished. Both go down yeah. and they both get finished off. So now it's going to be one be versus one. two, but definitely doable. It's Smoke. We've seen the clutches from oh, Smoke, but it's not going to be able nice. to get very, very it. Nice. Sizzlack. Good stuff. Close range Good sniper stuff. kill as well. Yeah. But that is going to be it now. Pushing. Glass. Need that glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And that, that was full scoped in as well. That wasn't even uh, swapping scopes for the close he range. He knew side. that he had to go in that, like, that direction. I think he might have even seen it through the window. Because he were looking at the window. Yeah, he might have done. And as well, that was a sprint. So he definitely could have heard him coming. Yeah, yeah. And he knows he has to go that way because the bomb planted. So here we go. First overtime of the Pro Ooh, League. 4-4 four, four on the scoreboard. Wait. Penta's gone glass. <laughs> Oh, here we go then. So, and they've gone blitz. So oh. Penta, they're kind of going, okay, okay. We see, we see your strategy here. We've watched you play it out a couple of times. <laughs> let's uh, let's put the shoe on the other foot here. Let's give you a taste of your own medicine. Well, let's... I was very confused by the word using glass. It's just such a strong. Uh... Oh, and yeah. as well, I, 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 I mean, need, I need to reinforce that. Let's let's remember the last time WTF defended, they were playing from that basement. So now, yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. forced onto one of these window floors, and they're so they forced know. to be kind of susceptible to that. It last could play. be the uh, you know the other idea where we we believed um, that they thought they were going to be lower, so they didn't bother with the glass. But now they know they're actually going to be on the second floor, uh, so they're using glass. So it could be that possibly. Certainly good, and here we go. Two seconds until the round begins. And we are going to see a repeat of the uh, WTF defense and Penta attack. Obviously, overtime, first round of overtime, you do swap sides. Mm. It'd be interesting to see where their glass goes, Penta's. I wonder if it goes to the same window. It looks like it is. Oh, wait, no, it's going to the traditional one. So this is the one I was thinking, but you know uh, they can go there. You can peek quite well as well. I thought for a horrible split second there, they hadn't held space quick enough and he'd actually missed the ladder and fell. <laughs> that would have been just I wonder if we'll see one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've done it a fair few times myself. I think everyone I've has. I've got to be honest, I wouldn't be... You just slip off. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I wouldn't be massively surprised. I'd love it if... Um, we could see, like, in the future, if you could hold space while you run to it. I'd love to see that. In Going to the now. exact same place. This, this position is so nice for Glass. Yeah. Because they break through, you get advantage. They don't do anything, you get advantage because you see through the windows. It's just that complete, you, you almost like pin them by yeah. not doing anything, just pin them there. And that's two people, boom, out of commission. Yeah, they can't actually join the fight because yep. the second they do, Glass They'll get is going to pop them. And it's going to be Zangdar so starting kill. again. Zangdar with three kills in the last round. He is not messing around anymore. He's looking to it get WTF yeah. onto this scoreboard. Make sure that they have at least one win under their name. I think they have to win two more rounds, correct? This is I believe so, yeah. Yes. Obviously, yeah. it's overtime, so I think they have to get 2-6 here. Let's see if they're going to be able to, because, yeah, I mean, that does mean they have to win this attack and a defense, so... Certainly not going to be easy. Zangdar Ooh. finds another one for himself. Yeah, yeah. Does finish off he's the kill. very Russia. But, I mean, even though he went down there, he's going to be happy with that, because it's 2-4-1 trade. Two You're for one. never going to complain yep, about that. Fine. Unfortunately, but, though, yeah. Six just went down. So three, now. three, all of a sudden, and he's gone. And yeah. he even Stevens, very, very even Stevens, and the kind of top fragger, I suppose, has been taken out. Let's see, I want to see how Penta take this one because I feel like having less members is more detrimental to attackers. Speaking of less, that's going to be hard. Get it, take another one. Blitz strolls on through the glass. With that shield. Here we go. Can he get the shot? Glass. Misses the shot so. Oh, downs him. Did Finally, he yeah, he did get him into down in the end. Down the glass, traded. can he move? Needed that headshot so badly. He needs to get this this guy, but they know they're going for him. He gets to him. That was risky, honestly. Yeah, it he was. He needed that shield to strafe if, across, If I think. that wall wasn't reinforced, they could have just sprayed him both. Yeah. Like the wall to their right now. That one isn't, obviously. Yeah, it's just like spraying through the wall, trying to get that suppressive fire. Oh. That's going to be a nice kill coming on. If they, From Sai. That was... Here we go. Oh, oh, oh nice and answer comes ball. out from Vic wow. and Sislak. That's going to finish off the game. round. WTF. And they do it. They've got the advantage. Well, if this is tennis, then they have advantage now. <laughs> Let's see whether Penta can push it back onto that tied scoreline. Or whether we're going to see Doing WTF well. managing to hold on to this one. WTF again on the attacking side now. And I the, these when... are the guys that kind of coined this blitz and glass attacking strategy. And in mm. fact, 
they're changing it up. They're not going for glass. They, they know believe. that the defense was on okay. it last time, I believe. They, well, they probably think that they're going, uh, yeah, see the, the bottom now. So the, glass is not as strong a bit, uh, on the bottom. I think glass is still good for the, uh, yeah. on the bottom, because you can see the roamers, if there is any roamers. Um, but if you are going down purely there, not looking for roamers, probably there will be a better I think one operator. Thing to, one thing to bear in mind as well is, like, while glass can see roamers and things, so could any other operator. If you went up to that top floor, you could go into that top floor of the plane yeah. to search for Romans. Yeah. So it's kind of like a maybe... It's a tiny bit harder, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah, I mean, maybe it's like better to have that and then have what else the other operator you're bringing to the what table What did they would switch have. Glass with? So I'm just looking now. So they've got the Blitz. We haven't seen really Sledge. Sledge, is I think, Ash? is the kind of... I think we've seen quite a bit of Ash. Okay. We've seen Thermo, we've seen Thatcher. Was it Sledge, Sledge I think, okay. is kind of... Have a Sledge or Ash? Yeah, okay. I mean, we've seen quite a few different mixes of, of compositions on this map specifically across the... I mean, we've had nine one. rounds, so it's not surprising we've seen a lot of different stuff. This is a big round. It is, actually. This is... This is, you know, this, this is, is WTF. them beating, you know, one match uh, versus Penta. W yeah, this is WTF avoiding the bottom of the scoreboard right now. They do not want to be on that 0-2. That is a place that no well, team wants to I think it's more than that, because again, you know, Penta have been beat up. They've done really well. Yeah. You've beat a good team. You know, one match, you've drawn with them. That Absolutely. gives you a good feeling. This this will give them a good feeling to go on to the next match with, definitely. I think, like, honestly, they both teams are doing a phenomenal job and uh, on this map specifically. I think Penta I, looked even more terrifying on the I first wonder, map, but I wonder what's going through the head that it's playing. Like, when they first heard, oh, we're doing playing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? We do, yeah. We're doing playing? I bet, okay. I, bet was, uh, I bet I was a bit of a maybe, shock. Maybe it's like not even like a, a strategy thing. Maybe it's just simply both teams didn't ban it because they assumed the other team would ban it or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe. they're not going to want to play playing. You never know. Maybe people like playing. Maybe it's the, uh, maybe. the new maybe, Yeah, maybe we're just biased. Maybe we maybe it's just, just really wrong about it. I don't mind playing. No. I just, uh, I wouldn't want to play it if there was a lot on the line. Again, the Jaeger gets the uh, grenade. Seems like a, a place to put Jaeger a lot now. Yeah, under those trapdoors. Because, I mean, trapdoors are very hard to peek unless you can throw those grenades first, so That's it true. makes a whole lot of sense. Push him with the shield. It looks like they're doing a bit of pincer. So Both sides. Be, I get starting this round off in favor of Penta Esports. So it's three on one yeah. side, one outside, and one on the other side. I'd prefer like two on one side, two on the other side, and then one in middle. I think that'd be a nicer like push. But it depends how much of a push you're doing here, or if you're trying to plant here. Oh, Ooh, takes one down. Nice. Zangdar is just four, four. on point on this map. This seems to be Zangdar's Ooh, top nice map. Nice gas. Just managed to get out of that one. And that's that's one of the powers oh. of the gas. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice bit of nitro charge off, comes yeah. on through. This is like blowing right doing off his job. the server. Smog's doing his job. He's, he's pushing them back. He's stopping the push. Oh, Hawk. Nice. Does Does smoke. Get that one. So close to going down as well, but it's traded once again. So Very two important. Versus three. That. If he can get this plant, it's beautiful. They have to right now. They have to get this plant because otherwise they're going to be out. Can... The fake plant comes out. Penta, not going to be rattled though. Oh, I just want him to plant. Oh, God, he's going for it. it. Is Penta going to check this one? Are they going to go for the it. second time? They're going to get okay, it. Got it. Okay, plant, right. The plant is down. Now all they need to do is just watch that bomb. Watch it like a hawk. This you've got the advantage. Even though they've got more people, you've got the advantage. Play sound. Let them... Let you get the peak. Oh. Oh, Careful. Just wait. <laughs> oh, it's going for it. That's panic. one down. Nice. They get the same... Oh, oh this break they comes through it. from they Zandar. Did. That's going to be the kill. Oh, Zandar once again with Very a triple nice. on the board. <laughs> and that is going to be WTF we taking the map. 6-4. <laughs> and what a close game between that was, that was scary. the 2v3 to end it as well. I've got to say, like, I mean, I, I don't think we're technically doing MVPs in general, but Zangdar's got to be MVP for that map. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, very, very just, good. just pulling it out of the bag again and again. Fantastic play from him and just very uh, calculated play. That's the thing that I like to see is we saw in that final firefight, if he'd gone for that peak too early, that round's over, they lose the game. Yep. Or, they, or they go into I second overtime. I feel the pressure of that, that right at the end. Exactly, yeah. Three people pushing, you got this bomb, pressure. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, I probably just ran out. <laughs> and uh, I mean, so that is going to be it now. Like, let's, let's just remember that. It's WTF tying it up with Penta. So yeah. two games have been played, so we're halfway through. Game day one, obviously, we, we have game day one and game day two in squeezed one, yep. in today. So we're a quarter way through the day, yep. halfway through Amazing matches so far. Yeah. Amazing. And 
We have four teams with one win and one loss on the board. So as far as starting off Pro League, like, you couldn't ask for better. Yeah. You want even. these teams to be close. You want this to be a close Pro League. It looked like it rolled over as well start. with the uh, the first map. It was like, yeah, Pen okay, everyone's right. Penner's going to take it. Yeah. Well, we do have Sean standing by on stage. He's managed to grab himself another player to have a little chat to. So we'll pass over to Sean on stage. Thank you so much. I am here with Ovi from Penta. What a close matchup that was. Did you see it being that close against the French? Uh, to be honest, no. I think we did uh, really well in clubhouse and playing. I mean, we won clubhouse and then playing went up and we thought, okay, it's, a, it's our, one of our best maps. But, uh, well, they managed to beat us there, so too bad, I guess. Now, a lot's been made about the maps, about which maps will be the ones that kind of come through. I know that you guys had favorites like this one that you played from the Go4 series to qualify for the Pro League. How much do you think that's going to change as the Pro League evolves? I think the meta is changing a lot at the moment. Uh, we, uh, let's say Clubhouse, we were very good on it at first. Then we struggled against uh, TCM, I think, on the, in the Go4 or uh, on the ladder match. And now, uh, yeah, we won. Um, the meta is constantly changing, and we as a team are also changing to, to yeah, improve on the maps, change new attacks, change defenses. And I think on plane, we just got outplayed today um, because maybe we didn't change it, or yeah, we just, uh, we just messed up on plane. That's basically it. Now, G-Bots will be the guys that you play in what technically is our second day of this one day, two day Pro League uh, kickoff. Will you be watching their, their match coming up here in a second against Chifu? Uh, yeah, I don't think you need the, uh, the practice now. We're just going to watch it and see how they're going to play it. And maybe we can learn one or two things. And uh, yeah, the g -Bot is a, it's a very good team. And yeah, we will, uh, we will see. Well, you played very well. Thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat with us. Of course, the guys will be back for more action later. They'll want to go and start dissecting. I know the guys that will want to dissect what just happened there in that epically close matchup already here in our day one of the Pro League for Rainbow Six Siege is the man himself. Over to you, Panky. Thanks again very much, Sean. Nice interview there from Penta. We have been joined by another awesome guest. We've got Safi, the coach here from Epsilon, a team we are yet to see, and we'll see later on today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you enjoying you Poland? Yeah, we came like two days ago um, and we still practice since these days. So nice. <laughs> it's nice to see teammates right. with Dedicated. really, really serious. Yeah, 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 a yeah. lot of them have just been hardcore in training the last couple of days. Yeah. Let's dive straight into that game. Start off couple Clubhouse, interesting map, plain one that we didn't expect at all. Safis, can you talk to us through Clubhouse to begin with? How do you guys on Epsilon see that map? Um, we are a really young team, so we didn't prepare a lot of maps. Mm -hmm. um, we focus in many maps, so like for five maps, but we are 11 maps. Yeah. So we have practiced some maps, but we focused in our better maps, how we feel good, how we feel confident. Um, this map is uh, pretty big, so if you have really good roamers, um, they make use time um, and make some kills, it's uh, really important, but the um, the attackers have to be very fast, very skilled, and we see, like on this game, the headshots are really, really fast, and yeah. if you didn't have anything... So I want to talk about those roamers in just a minute, because we saw they started off both teams defending that basement, and what Penta took by surprise here, they used a castle, which we haven't seen many teams do. Is there any kind of insight you can offer us on that, Simon? Uh, well, I'm actually surprised they chose Castle because um, I wasn't feeling it in the basement. I'm not sure it's uh, it's that useful, but um, no, uh, I was surprised. What do you think, Bungie? I think a lot of uh, a lot of the better players that I play with typically view Castle as more of a hindrance on the defense because it prevents the roamers. It, you know, if, if your your essential players near the uh, objectives get wiped, and your roamers are trying to make their way back, and you Castle door. You know, yeah, it tends stuck. to be more of a hindrance than a, a help. It mm -hmm. limits where you can shoot through, where you can walk through. Another small thing I noticed, we never saw any of the attacking teams use that construction tunnel. They always came in from the garage or came in from the bar upstairs. Why do you guys feel that is? Um, because it's a really, um, really low um, construction and you have the traps, uh, you can from garage, you can from the stairs. Um, it's more easier for the teams to come from these three spots than this one. I think um, it's better when you have no more solution or to make surprise and, or use the shields or like this because you have all the lines and they can take some sneaky lines and kill you easier than you can take some lines. 
So once that bo uh, basement had been wiped out, we saw Penta have to move up to the bar. And I know True mentioned how he was a bit surprised by this. It's very open, very easy to attack. But we saw Penta take a very different route to defending this using these very aggressive roamage mm. They didn't let uh, WTF get anywhere close to the bomb site. They just went out there and wiped them all out very, very quickly. Um, is that something you think you're going to see more teams doing? Or do you guys feel that the bar is actually pretty good to defend in slowly? Um, it depends the zones. Um, I think the bar is really hard to defend because you have uh, one window. You can come from strip club, you can come from, from garage, you can break the, um, the wall. Uh, yeah, the projector wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to defend. But if you're really, uh, really, really skilled, um, really good read on the game, uh, you can do a lot of damage. You can you have cameras on strip, on strip club. You have cameras on garage. You can if your lead help you with the cameras, you can do really, really damage and broke the attack. Oh, okay, it's nice to look at. We're going to switch to plane now, because Pungi, I know you have a lot of thoughts and a lot of things to say this, and we got our first overtime of the tournament so far. So lead us through your initial thoughts on how those two teams played out that map. Of course, surprised to see it. I wanted to, though. You know, plane is yeah. a map that I think is super interesting because the attacking teams have a much more difficult time on plane. It takes a lot of teamwork. It takes a lot of coordination. And uh, I really thought with that... Um, which team won the first attack round? I believe it was... very first attack round went to... That's a good point. Didn't knock it down. Uh, it was WTF. They WTF, were, they yeah. Were... I really honestly thought that they would have had it in the bag because, as we saw, every team kept winning the defense rounds. When they got that one up, I really thought it was over. And of course, uh, yeah, we swung it back the other went way. Went all the way. <laughs> we saw some brand new operators on playing there, too. Yep. First one straight at the bait on the first attacking round. Penta brought out a blitz. blitz. Yeah. There's a lot of different shields, and a lot of people know that the pro teams like to use the recruit shields because of how mobile they can be. Um, we understood that obviously shields are there for the, the very tight corridors that Plane brings. Montage is also very good at that. Sorry, Montaigne is very good at that. But they played out Blitz. You've got some very interesting ideas about Blitz, but none um, of them used it. No, I'm, I'm surprised. I don't see much of a point to Blitz over recruit other than to just humiliate the last person alive, you know, just blind the crap out of them in the corner until somebody smacks them. But I was, uh, I was definitely surprised to see Blitz. But one final point about the plane map, um, Taffy's. We saw Glaz come out. I know a lot of people see Flade and they immediately think Glaz, you shoot through windows, shoot through windows. But to be fair, unless they were in that meeting room, and even then, we only saw him down one or two players. Do you feel that's enough of an impact to bring that entire operator there? Um, it depends. Uh, some teams use Glaz in every round. Um, we use it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we build our game around Glaz and not around like Termite or around Blitz or. It, de it depends on the teams. Um, it can make some surprise, but Glass is not um, is not so useful as another like um, Termite, uh, Blitz. Sometimes it's very useful, but if you use it very well, you can make some amazing skill. You just need three, four bullets to kill a guy and you can make some surprise. You have long range, close range. If you play good, you can make a lot of damage. All right, very excited to see you guys use that later on then. We are going to run to another very quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll have Sifu versus Gbots, two very, very big teams in this Pro League. Intel RealSense is all about changing the way we interact with computers. The way we interact with this game is entirely with our hands. It's a natural way to communicate. We want our computer to be able to sort of understand that movement because it's more human and more natural. Awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to control, I'm surprised. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> we use this camera to interpret natural forms of human communication like facial expressions. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Another cool thing we can do with a 3D camera is we can create 3D scans. We'll actually take this and we'll composite it onto a figure. <laughs> I need to see what I look like as a princess.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rainbow Six Siege Pro League, coming to you live from the Intel Extreme Masters Expo here in Katowice, Poland. We have seen four of our eight teams from across Europe in the PC Pro League battle it out so far. We've got two more lined up for you. It's important to point out that, of course, this is the PC division for Europe. There's, of course, also the PC for North America, and the same goes North America and Europe on the Xbox. But today, we're meeting our eight for the European PC. They battled their way through the GoForce, all the ranking to get here, to stand here for the first time in the Pro League and battle it out for this audience here that's turned up to see this game that's relatively new, surrounded by the Titans here at the Intel Extreme Masters. But you know what? It's doing a fantastic job the last matchup was exactly that entertaining right down to the wire and I'm sure we're gonna see a lot more as we now get to meet our second two teams we're gonna see playing one of them hails from Finland that's Jifu and the other Gbot all the way from Spain and they're gonna stand here and do what they can on this stage to prove that they belong to be here in this pro league and of course hopefully show you why and how they're gonna do it we've seen some good map so far. I'll be interested to see what's going to be coming up and I'm sure that there needs to be a little analysis thrown on this one and for that I pass you off to the wonderful Panky. Well, I might not be the wonderful Panky, but I am Munchables, and I am going to bring you some analysis heading into the second half of our first game day. Now, I am joined, of course, by Aaron, or Aaron, sorry, and yes. Jen. So, going to be laying some insight on the games that we have coming up. Now, I, before we move on to the games that we've got coming up, I do just want to quickly recap on kind of what's been going on across the course of today. We've had four games so far, and we have four teams tied at the top of the scoreboard, each team managing to win one map and managing to lose out on one, one map as well. So our bracket essentially looks like 11s down the top <laughs> of the scoreboard and then a whole bunch of zeros. But that won't be the same for much longer because our last four teams are going to be playing in our next two games. Now, we've had some pretty crazy matchups so far. Crazy matches. It's been really good. I want to ask you, because, I mean, you've been there casting them with me yeah. to start off with. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see that caliber of play out of all of these teams for the, for the whole tournament? Because if uh, so... Why not? <laughs> like, why I'm not going to have a voice by the end of the day. <laughs> um, why not? That's, that's all I'll say. Um, I think the play has been really, really good, and I don't know why it wouldn't continue. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so, I mean, our, our, next, our first matchup of the second half, or it's not our first matchup, it's our third matchup, it's going to be Sifu up against the G-Bots. Now, Jen, what do you think about this matchup on paper? Because it's kind of Finland versus Spain. It's almost like a, a national varsity, almost, it feels like, to some extent. Do you feel like you could give... Uh, a bit of a favor to one of these two teams at all? Uh, from what I've heard, honestly, I didn't get to watch that many games from them yet, but uh, Jifu, uh, I heard a lot of good things about them, so I'm curious to see how it's going to turn out. Uh, I don't know if you would agree that it's the, maybe not the favorite, but the one that comes uh, okay, from so a stronger background. See, mm. I, I've heard similar things. That it's, it's, it's actually pronounced, I got told off earlier Sifu. by one of the players, it's pronounced Sifu. Sifu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't We're all say saying it I'm wrong. an expert in Finnish myself. It wrong. So, uh, <laughs> but it is apparently Sifu. Um, they're going to be going up against I, G bots. I now, thought G bot were the stronger see, ones. Yeah, that's I what I've been told. To one of the Penta I'm, I'm, players. I happen to. Maybe I, I talk to <laughs> different people. <laughs> see, this is the thing. And uh, that's one of the beautiful things about the Pro League is we are right at the, the start. We're right at the cusp of what's kind of happening here. So it can very much go any way. And we've heard a lot of people saying that Penta are going to be one of these massive heavy hitters. They've just gone 1 1. With WTS, yeah, so. yeah they, they started out so strong, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they did, yeah. Really, really strong. Absolutely did. So, let's talk then in terms of the maps that we're going to see coming out. We've kind of seen already some sort of wildcard stuff coming out here. We've seen plane played. What kind of maps do you expect to see coming out over the course of the rest of today? 
Um, what would you say are going to be well, the most it, common ones? But, but they're getting banned, aren't they? They're banning them, and then it's the one what yeah. they weren't looking for, which is the one they play. So, I mean, anything. Uh, I'd like to see House. I do. I would like love house. to see House. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one nice of my one. favorite. It mm. was one of the first maps that we created it's on the game. It's easy to so digest as well for like new people like watching yeah. the game. Very, very easy to digest. It's easy to do the callouts too, as in your yeah. player. You like it just makes sense. Like everybody lives in the You're, house, obviously. And so. yeah, you know what a house is called. You know. Also, what, yeah. Yacht. It's easier to project yourself as well as like the surroundings. Yeah, 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 it yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Also, yacht um, because it's new. I'd like to see. What yeah. kind of strategies people have on that? that yeah, this, this is kind of like the aeroplane factor that we talked about when we were casting that game. Is kind can't of like about <laughs> it's, I know I, we keep on talking about aeroplane. I'm just can't just believe it actually about happened. It. But it's kind of that if it's if you don't think that this map's going to be played and you've practiced a bunch of strategies, then maybe that can kind of lend you a free win. And I, I suspect that's kind of what happened with WTF. There, not not that they had a free win, but they obviously practice playing they had that set strategy and well it sounded like penta actually did know that map um with the, the interviews so yeah that was interesting hmm. i don't know and as well it was interesting that penta kind of changed their strategy but again yeah if we do see someone on yacht i, I think yachts probably in my opinion one of the, the least likely maps that we're going to see let's yeah, take a look at the, wait until the we just see it. we've got coming wait, 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 until we, wait until we yacht yeah we are going to see sifu <laughs> here it's going to be wilkie junus protax as easy loss, sorry, and Cheffy coming out from the side of Jifu. And their opponents are going to be the Spanish G-Bots. Now, I was talking to the Penta players, and they were saying that the G-Bots are kind of their dark horse team that's really going to be a contender. So, honestly, yep. with kind of rumors flying Aha, in all directions... I'm not that strong. <laughs> no, exactly. It really could be kind of any anything goes, honestly, at this point. And I think it's going to be a lot down to the maps. Um, uh, yeah, I'd be really surprised if we do end up on Yacht. I know that uh, yesterday we had a pro player workshop and we were discussing with the players. They told us it's a, it's a tough map mm. uh, because of the time limit and it's a big map. So uh, yeah. going in with three minutes, it's a, it's a tight race for the attackers. It really mm. is. And, and we saw that a few times where people are really starting At to... At the very, very start of the first game, time. they ran out of time. Yeah, the first yeah, round, didn't they? I believe the players are just about getting ready. Before we head on to the stage, let me just quickly ask you guys. So, we've seen some crazy games so far. We've yeah. seen crazy clutches. Do you think that we're going to see more like 1v4s? Do you think we're going to see more 1v3s? I hope so. Yeah? I hope so. I would hope so too, but, but I know that teams kind of tend to go by tandem, so yeah. I, I'm curious to see if it's going to turn out like that. Once the bomb gets planted, anything can happen. That, that's As kind of, the, the, yeah, it's, it's exactly what you said about the time limit. It's like, once that pressure is on, that's when you've really kind of got that's to when magic make happens. things happen. And <laughs> I mean, we've seen that go both ways as well. We've seen that be fantastic, and we've seen that completely yeah. fall apart. And rushing in is not always the best option. Sometimes it isn't. <laughs> Sometimes. But I mean, when the timer runs out, there's not really another option. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like when, when you're on that last 15 seconds, you're like, well, i got to go for something here. But yeah. Yeah, you, you often just get gunned down. But yeah, but you never so, know. You never know. Heading into our first map then, I'm going to, even though obviously this is first week, first time we've seen these guys play, I'm going to ask you guys for some predictions here. Sifu versus the G-Bots. Jen, who do you think is going to take this one? I'm going to go with Sifu. <laughs> Sifu? Okay. I'll, I'll go no. for G-Bots. G-Bots, okay. So we've got one apiece. I'm, as the host, I'll, I'll leave it you to between both. you, you guys. You can say both. 1-1. One, one. Uh, just, yeah. like, just like it has been. I think everyone's just going to get one point apiece, and by the end of today, we're going to be 2-2 two, two for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh. But we are going to be passing over to our capable casters who are going to be taking us through the action in this third series of the day. Take it away, Panky and Punji. Thank you very much, Joe. Sorry about that slight miscommunication with Sean. But we're now here in the super <laughs> comfort seats to take you through these next two games coming. Sisu, of course, coming up first against G-Bot, Spanish versus Finland. Big yep. flashes there for through. And of course, <laughs> a brand new map that we get to see in the permanent. House is now going to be played alongside Oregon. One of my favorites, definitely. Yeah, House is great. And as we yeah. saw, uh, Simon mentioned earlier, he's expecting teams to be very, very aggressive on this map. Yeah. Um, lots of peaking outside. It's not so much been the case. So it's interesting to see how these guys are going to shape that up. You have some uh, special tactics of your own, I know, on House. And there's a couple of little spots. Is there anything you really want to see stand out? Um, I definitely want to see more peaking this round. I really do. I, I think that it's a valid strategy. It just. Maybe more delayed. I think most attacking teams that are good wait for it, wait for the peak, wait to rock the defenders in the face. But, you know, that delayed push, or that delayed, you know, smack the window open, don't be there, wait till the attacking team hits somewhere else, and then start doing something. 
You know what I mean? Exactly, and we are right on the edge of being ready as this will get into the game as soon as the players have started to settle in and go. And uh, I'm looking for some slightly different attackers. I know like yeah. why those five are so strong. The the Twitch, the Thermite, the Thatcher, the Sledge, and the Ash. And on the house, they're going to be strong again, especially right. Ash and Twitch because of their high speed, their high mobility. Mm -hmm. That's why they're picked. But two new teams, different map. I'm, I'm still holding out hope for something. Maybe something even a new. recruit shield, which I'm told G-Bots are a little bit... Uh, well... I can't forget remember the we word. Got a they, fuse. they like the idea of it. But yes, we've got a fuse. It's a good start. <laughs> <There's something. laughs> so, you see the initial round. Obviously, these garage doors being reinforced every single time. And normally, you'd expect to see a deployable shield put in there to watch that little bookcase on the left. Right. Tunis is looking for those windows. These are, again, expected peaks. And this is our first shotgun pulse. We talked about this briefly on the desk. We talked about this um, very early in the day, how people like to take shotguns for their utility, to open up holes and to create sight lines that you don't normally have. And this there is, is that map for shield. It. Yep. So now it's a question of where is Pulse going to make those holes? It looks like um, down at the... Uh, so back behind the garage, you can open up, you know, towards the... Uh, what do you call that? Uh, the gym. gym. Yeah. And gives you a perfect sight into both bombs and gives you a playable position between them. Ash pushing in, that window's open, and you can see it's perfect. It slows her down nicely and checks that nice tight angle. Even though there's no one there, it's made her cautious on her push-up towards the building. Now starts pre-firing that hole. Just looking for those cheeky little early kills, but we're seeing a very good job here from Xifu, not peeking these holes, not letting those early kills go over. And that's the first 30 seconds of the round gone, and it's very key to just burn through the time on right. these attackers. Attackers, recover the diffuser. Sledge. It's going for the spray. It's a shotgun there. So Pulse is sitting there right close to that window. He's actually come outside, but has to dive back inside before his uh, timer and detection. Just didn't have the timing safe. on it. He's not falling too far back either. He's keeping this whole area locked down the stairs. It's an interesting spot to put it. We do see the bandit battery trick for the first time, but Ash is going to try and destroy that deployable shield. And now there's two there. Did tink. Oh. Knocked it down. One down now on g -Bots. Difu. Do get that thermite off. The battery trick doesn't quite work this time thanks to that distraction. And now they've got that garage hole open. Spraying through the door again. And that is honestly makes or breaks it. If you don't, if you don't, if you fail the garage push, it's so much harder to hit the basement. Yeah, now actually, nice. I see them open up the garage door, so they've got that way in. And now that's something that uh, Zifu have to pay attention to, but they're all, uh, sorry, g have to pay attention to, but they're all going upstairs and they're picking up a plethora of kills right. in the process. These Roma's getting picked off very, very quickly. Junus, we see him still there playing around on that side of the map. Thermite and Fuse, all to find. We get to see Fuse actually use his special ability. Let's see if he pulls anything off with it. It's great for displacing people, but less so for kills. And they now know where Junus is. Thermite just trying to keep him pinned in that room. He knows he can't get out the other way. He can't go out through that window. He'll get detected instantly. The spray through the wall comes through. Jifu pushes. And Jace is in the back to finish off Junus. Nice little pincer move. Two to three. Two to three now. Yeah, from G Bots. Using their small numbers of advantage on that top floor to their advantage. But now we've got those those turret players, as uh, Aria explained this to her, left close to the objective, downstairs waiting for this push to come out from G Bots. First fuse goes down on top of the garage. Oh, sorry, on top of the gym. Does force Protax to adjust his position a little bit, but nothing too crazy. He's still in there on that bomb. Lion, of course, has the diffuser. Thermite there is still a little bit split. I'm expecting them to group up and push in the same directions. One comes down kitchen and Protex will get dropped because of that distraction on stairs. The camera is still there in gym, but a nice return from Easy Lost Kills. Thermite, that's the diffuser down. Gets that first peak. One more down. 1v1, unless he gets that guy up. I have a feeling he's going to get him. Yeah, he's going to look for the plant. He's only got three seconds, so he has to get it done. It will obviously hold off through that channel. Diffuser gets picked up. He's in wow. there. He wow, he was in the room. Walked straight in the room. He's <laughs> in the room. At all. And couldn't find him. Didn't, in fact, get easy loss up, so there was a 1v1 through that yeah. time. But the diffuser is going to be disabled, and Sifu are going to take our opening round. Defender mission successful. So, interesting strategy from Sifu. I love how they blew open the garage, right. but then went straight upstairs. They, they gave that impression of a threat. They blew open that hole and, and made G-Boss look that way. And, use some of their resources in that direction. Right, once the hole's there, you have swarmed. to pay attention to it. Yeah, and once then they just swarm the rest it. of the house. Yeah. I've actually, haven't really seen that happen too much, too. 
But it's a great idea. Open it up and leave it. They can't use it. This time around, it didn't quite work out for G+. They no. got the plant down, but didn't get it. Okay. Very different bomb spawn now. Yeah. Upstairs, we got Kids' Bedroom and Construction. There we see a shotgun being used by Smoke this time, in fact, to blow up a nice hole in this walk-in wardrobe to get a beautiful angle into that kid's bedroom, because that is ultimately right. really easy to breach as the attackers if that wall is not made. Right, if you reinforce both those walls in kid's bedroom, you're kind of leaving that open to plant easily. Because yeah, it's, from it's that, uh, virtually impossible to defend from inside. Exactly, from that tower outside, you get a great angle straight in through the stairs and through the room itself, and then you go through two windows and you've got control of that b bomb site. Right. So I expect that's where we're gonna see Sifu assault, but we'll have to wait and watch. They've got a couple of drones left alive downstairs, giving a good view of any roamers down there. We'll see how they plan to take those out on their way. I love this Valentine skin, but I complete off track. But <laughs> right. Valentine skin is amazing. <laughs> Castle. Notice a lot of them using the dev skin today too. Right? A lot of the dev skin. Yeah. yeah, those are very pretty. I'm yet to see one in game. <laughs> <laughs> we do see Castle. We saw it used obviously in uh, the Oregon map, uh, sort of clubhouse map before on doorways downstairs, which we weren't sure about. But now on windows, it's the one place I think a lot of people agree is his strength. Thatcher looking for that opening. Sees a hole, and again, just like before, the holes are enough to slow people down. And, make and that garage reinforcement twice. is interesting. Yeah. Just to confuse them a little bit as to where maybe the bombs are, or at least slow down again, a push in. Here he is, up on that tower towards Kid's bedroom. Got a beautiful angle in through the entire top landing. But again, g are doing a good job of not picking, not sticking their head out into this fire. And it's two minutes now where see if you have to get inside this objective. They've got a shield, so they haven't gone with the twitch that I was talking about earlier on. But yet, we haven't really seen Shifty do anything with it. He's just standing on a roof. Right. <laughs> Which is odd. You'd think the Shield would kind of be playing more point man. And he's sort of the most reserved player on their team right now. Well, he does not have breach charge. He's only got smoke grenade. So I expect, and this is, as we said, the B bomb site. Open it up, fill it with smoke, and get a plant. But they've actually broken into the main bedrooms. So they want to clear out this little walk in wardrobe. They know how key it is to holding that bomb site. Now. I think they're really looking for the defending team to make a mistake, try to yes. get a pick on them before yeah. they actually push in. Get those numbers advantage. We have a couple of players pushing the bathroom. They now, thanks to that drone, know that there is someone in there. They're just looking to try and pick off that kill, but they've got a minute 25, and they are still all locked outside the building. First man goes down. Easy loss actually picked off on the tower from the other side. And the one, there two, three through the That's window. That's what they were waiting Keep for. picking up a plethora of kills already. And Thermite's left on his own. Does try and vault through, but gets killed in the process. That was a really nice wow. played round by Jeeves. Just patiently waiting, watching all their angles in the doorways. And as soon as Sifu walks into it, flat down. Yeah. It's so I went from 5-5 five, five to over. Too. Yeah, really very, fast. Very quickly. The shotguns, which I know we mentioned is, is utility and make holes great, but there is his other strength. When you've got that tiny little choke point, when you can be nice and close to them without risking yourself, shotguns on as soon as they came through that window should completely flatten the team. Oh, it's a great panic backup for something like smoke. Yeah, so Jibo's back on the attack against Sifu, now using those upstairs spawns as well, the kids' bedroom and the, uh, and the construction, of course, having won their first defensive round. Now we see a fuse again from Jibo's. He's a good attacker because he's got that three armor. He's, he's got a uh, really gun. tanky and a good, really good gun. Yeah. But his, his special, less useful. Especially on this top block because you can't it put is, it through the roof. It's, although the defending team, oh, they do have Jaeger. Never mind, sorry. It will be great if they can get a fuse in and close to that uh, walk in wardrobe. Right. Perfect little spot so you can clear out that room. But the chances of getting anyone close to that to plant it are very, very low. Again, we see some very key drone spots downstairs from GBOS just watching the entire bottom floor so they can see how many roamers there are, who they've got to keep an eye on, and where they can find these guys. But once more, checking the windows on the way in. See a couple of them broken, and it slows down their push. But the whole time, it's just scoped in, watching it, taking a cheeky sprint, and then back in and watching it again. And just like before, they've reinforced the garage because it's a possible way in, and this is exactly why, Ash, thinking about it. Another one of these drones on the bottom floor now giving them information that, okay, I go through here, there's someone there. Let's try and take out this Roman. This one, of course, being Smoke. Double check, see how he reacts to that breach charge going off. See what kind of... It's a great drone spot. Again. As he looks the wrong way, puts himself on the right-hand side. Ash goes for the kill and can only get a tag. Doesn't manage to finish Smoke off, but he is now incredibly low. Takes out the camera, and this is now the bottom half of the map, or at least the entire garage, in G-Bot control, which is brilliant for you. 
I've definitely noticed more and more teams playing a roamer in the basement for the top floor here. Very nice thermite kill. Immediately downs this guy. And now he's going to go track him down. Can use of the to bait for the revive if he's oh. careful. Gets dropped through the wall, in fact. By the super knife. Or, or in fact, did the super knife drop down above him? Yes, the super knife drop down above Drop down, him. yeah. But we do now start seeing G-Boss again in the bottom floor, but they don't quite have it controlled. Gets dropped again by a shotgun. Junus, very, very aggressive player with that. And once more, G-Bots are down now. Five against two. Same, almost, it was 5v4 at the last round. Right. They've got to try and do what they can to make this happen. One down player is finished off now by Lengo. Lengo. Drone Doesn't know how many close, but the shots are coming in, and he can't react in time. He gets dropped one man left. That SMG alone, and you just disappear. And no longer so fast. Junus, Junus pulsed him out, figured out where he was, and jumped on him with that shotgun, and he executed him straight from the top. That's brutal. Finally That's outside. That's a very, very good point. I knew they'd be outside this yeah. game. This was the house the one. is too small of a map for players to not It is, outside. and there's so many ways to go in and back out, or back out and back in, sorry. Yeah. Just out of, a, out of a top window, down into a basement, right. and through the kitchen window, or master bedroom, and through the kitchen. So many little alleyways that you can get to in these two seconds that, in some ways, for the defenders, really open the map up. Yeah, a lot. So, switch it back up again. Of course, now G-Boss on the defense. Sifu with those two rounds under their belt, winning a defending round. And a there's that blitz game. again. And yeah, there it is. Didn't really feel like he brought anything last time. As you mentioned, he sat on the roof, didn't do a lot. I've and been surprised that we've seen him this many games. Yeah, Probably. tries to vault in the room, which a sh uh, shield is no use when you're in the vault and he got <laughs> absolutely destroyed. But we do see it different again. We see the basement being reinforced completely by G-Boss. But there's no bombs in here. Hang on, have they gone? They've gone pool, like pool room and gym, have they not? Um, yes, they have. They've gone pool room and gym. So. Another very different bomb. One that I honestly didn't think we'd see at all. I, the stack this. is not like, a unless favorite. The town, yeah, unless the team defended both the, the bedroom and the garage completely, mm -hmm. I didn't think we'd see this at all. So I'm very interested to see how these guys try and defend it. They have blown that trap door in the uh, A bomb site straight away, so that helps them with the mobility between the two, which is very, very important. But now I think we've got to play it like we saw Clubhouse played by Penta. Very, very aggressive. You've got to pick them off before they can get close, because once they get close, it's very hard to retake those bomb sites. Right. The uh, basement, of course, now a focus of attention here from Sifu, thanks to all these reinforces and the fact that it gains access to that gym bomb site pretty easily. And again, if you plant when you've got, if you plant in the gym and you've got control of this garage, it's very, very hard for the enemy team to retake it. All five members from Sifu actually coming from a very similar direction, but they're droning in first. They've got their extra eyes in there. See a couple of roamers from G-Boss upside, but they're on the wrong side of the map. They're on the top floor or in the opposite direction. And they've not been peeking out these holes. So Sifu gets straight in, get garage control very, very quickly and easily. They've got another thermite charge and it's gonna go off through here nice and free. Bandit's not there to try and battery trick it. And that's the A bomb site open. Very clean and easy here for Sifu. In all honesty, I'd like to see G-Boss try and stop them a bit more and not give them such control for free. I'm not seeing the rumors like peek out, taking up a hot shots, run away and make them fight for this objective. They're just checking it with the drone and then walking on in there. I wonder if it's a lack of communication. I don't... You would think the rumors would have rotated towards the garage as they started pushing it, but... I don't know if maybe just the, okay. the comms aren't there. Wilkie does pick up one kill, but immediately it is answered by g -Bot, so it's a nice one-for-one -one trade. Oh, we now see a shield, and interestingly enough, shield being behind. There we go, a nice attempt here from G-Boss, using that mobility as you mentioned, jumping out from a window, getting in behind routes that you can't normally take as a defender, but this time, very, very on point, Junus, with this. Not much you can happen. do when you fall straight into a shield. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a bad day for everybody. G-Boss do pick up a nice kill on that shield with a shotgun. Unfortunate team kill comes through, but Junus and Protax very quickly clean up the two remaining members of G-Boss and uh, finish off that round in a three-for-one style. I'll spend down there on the stairs. I'm very confused, sorry, it threw me with that team kill. I just saw blue on blue come up in the in the kill feed and everything else just went went for loss. But three to one now, Sifu over G-Bots. Honestly, Sifu don't really look stretched right now. No, no, not at all. It'll be interesting to watch G-Bots evolve. They are, like the same I mentioned, one of a very strong team that a lot of people were looking to look out for. Penta, uh, well, they consider Penta to be like their closest competition, which is a pretty high bar to set. But right now, they're struggling in Sifu, who, if you want to be technical about it, qualified third going on the, the right. go for Rainbow Six. Yeah, I'm very surprised to see. 
how they're doing so far. Maybe this isn't a map they've prepped for. I feel like most of the teams do, but... Yeah. I mean, as we heard from uh, Mental, like 11 maps is a lot of maps. It's very hard oh, yeah. to prep for all of those. So, yeah, focus on a few, ban out the ones you can't. But maybe they got unlucky with their ban phase. I'm um, not quite sure how that went down, so they got this map. But we'll go with it. We've got the basement bombs here again then for Sifu on their defense. They've once again reinforced the entire garage, blew up some trapdoors above it. And again, a nice slow approach forced out here for g -Bots. But not too many people, in fact, nobody peeking windows because I risk it. You've already slowed them down by making the holes. You've already slowed them down by making them check it. Don't take your head it. It's a nice, easy target. And with Bad. them up 3-1, they don't have to play that aggressive right now. No. They don't need the picks. They're winning gunfights. There are my Thatcher trying to stop this battery trick. Battery's going down on random walls. Just being picked up again just to try and waste the EMPs. I'm Thatcher surprised. Down. <coughs> the wrong hole. It's extremely right difficult to hear which thing he's planting on, mm -hmm. and I'm surprised more teams don't just arbitrarily fire their weapon to cover. Yep. And the especially, sound of it. I mean, there they got a bit luckier with it because the uh, the car alarm was going off. Right. So it makes it even tougher still. But you're right. Like, but it's why not very just spam a couple mask. of bullets from a really loud gun and blast the noise? But once more, G Boss blew open that door and have now gone straight upstairs, starting to clear out the rest of the house when there's that extra garage threat to focus on. Let's see if they can pull it off. Fuser to transfer to someone a little bit safer. Sledge making his way into the kids' bedroom. Bathroom has been taken over already. This, in all fairness, no one else up here from Sifu. So they're taking their time, but there is one underneath. Wilkie will drop Crypt the second he peeks over the edge of that. He was to return there by finishing off on Wilkie. Trade in one for one. Thermite peeks out at the top of the stairs. Thatcher's on the stairs, so he knows he's safe to do that. There is one more roaming player, and they know where he is. They're trying to close in onto Junus, but he's got that pulse. He's using that heartbeat sensor and that shotgun, waiting for the moment. And then drops down on top of him. Shotgun shots come out. There he does is. get one kill, but now there's another one pushing in. Can he get a second? No. Immediately dropped by Drid. Another trade, though. That's Yeah, very nice trade, one for one, which always benefits the defenders. They can lower those numbers down. G-Bot opening up. Finally got a numbers advantage without a... I was going to say without a trade, but this trade <laughs> happens on the other bomb site. Back to a two for two. These guys are going in one at a time. They are. Now these two G-Bots members need to kind of group up. Nice drone uses. They have to find Protex actually got him out. We saw Twitch was on the drone in a corner. Now Thatcher looking for the last kill. He knows he's got to be on the B-bomb site. They've cleared A already, but they've got to get this diffuser. And he finds Shifu. Shifu's going to peek. And he gets dropped by Leon. Nice. He was much more slow and methodical, and they definitely traded better in that map. Oh, yeah. More that and as you said, trading is definitely defender-sided. Every trade you make, it becomes easier to defend and harder to attack. Exactly. So let's see what you uh, try and switch it up with. Kids' bedroom is the current vote here from g -Boss as their defense. They couldn't quite pull it off the first time around, but same as before, another blitz from, uh, from uh, Sifu. Yes, it's been okay. He picked up. It hasn't picked up too many kills. It's just the use of that shield, particularly. I'm, I'm, it's got to be the most surprising thing to me today. Like, how many teams have picked uh, Blitz and how often they've done it? Very surprising. Yeah, like they've not exactly been like super aggressive in using the flash on it. They've just been using it as any other generic right. shield. So why not take so, recruit and get the grenade? Exactly. Why not take that for the use? Why not just get the mobility? Exactly. It's super, cool. super fast and swift, and especially uh, Sifu, they are playing very aggressive. They are a very aggressive team. Junus especially. We've seen sprinting at people on multiple occasions. They like to be fast, so why take such a slow shoot? I don't know. But kids' bedroom again set up. All the defenses in place. Chui getting a nice little distraction hole and kill holes ready here in the basement again. But we've got drones all over the map once more from Sifu. They have complete coverage of the, I think it's the middle floor, where they can uh, detect and suspect where people are coming from. This is a nice little spot I don't think many people realize. That you can blow, blow this box case, yeah. bookcase and see into kitchen from a second angle that people don't always expect. You can do that with the grenade, you can do it with the breach charge, something nice and explosive that you can just sit next to that thing or blow it up. Uh, it also works on this bookcase that's on the right side of his screen there that shows the wall to that, that walk-in wardrobe. That is destructible, and then you get access to that wall as well. So a couple of little things if you have put yourself in a tight And spot. the bookcase is definitely a favorite hiding spot, too. Very much so. so we'll keep sledging in that master bedroom again. They know it's a prime hiding spot for someone. You just got to try and track that person down. 
three members of GBOS up here on the top floor, and we see Crip lying there on the stairs. They've got a good coverage of that floor, but it's all a matter of time before Sifu find them and, and then close in on what is currently a very static position for them. Turns running. I think this spot is such a key place to get so many angles, but so dangerous. Once they know you're there, once they start fighting back at you, you have nowhere to go. You can't turn around and climb down. Yeah, it's a very, very exposed spot. We just have five fight break out on the stairs. He's unlucky because he got the drop on the guy, but Bandit picks up that first kill. g -Boss pick up a second kill, and it's suddenly looking very good for g -Boss to level up this round three for three. That's the thing with those instant kill headshots. Even when you get the drop, if they aim better, you just die a yeah, lot faster. I mean, there was a lot of shots coming out from uh, that LLE5 and didn't pick up the kill. Like, right. Arguably, didn't deserve it. <laughs> if, if you fired that many shots and can't pick up the kill, yeah, you got to be careful. Checking for frost traps, something which we've seen a lot of frost. Haven't seen so many of her traps, to be no. fair. She must pick up another kill just off the screen. And a fourth kill, and it's all on easy loss. Let's see how he does. He does drop down from the pedo tower and get spotted and immediately taken out by a bandit that's having a great game so far. That's two or three kills he picked up in that round. Really helps secure that advantage. I would say, though, that a uh, frost shotgun is enough, whether you do or <laughs> don't even do it. Yeah. <laughs> that was quite something. Aerobatics. Yes. So, switching out. Oh, level back on 3-3. Three, three. A really nice comeback here from G-Boss. Clawed their way back into this, forcing slightly different bomb sites and playing definitely much more methodical, or in that case, more aggressive, which is perfect for how Sifu have been playing early. They were looking to get free uh, entrances to objectives, and they were given it in the early rounds. Here, every time they looked to walk into a room, which previously was easy and free, they thought was free, someone pushed them back. In this case, Bandit pushed back, picked up the kills, turned it right on their head. Sifu had to claw for everything they could get, and this time lost out on it. Right, so, they open up a lot of things. They don't necessarily reinforce as much as you would expect. They play more yeah. kill holes, more different angles so that they can, so you're always nervous going in, you know, do I look left, do I look right, which kill hole am I watching, which door. Loki drone hunting right there, and yeah, perfectly right. They are now, again, scanning around the rest of the map, just a couple of drones left up for G-Boss, but one of them was, or well, two of them were in the garage, one of them has been found, the other one is still there. Protex, oh, <laughs> I thought it was very confused why he was showing up on my screen for a second, it's a slight spectator bug. Then again, slow, aggressive walk across the uh, front entrance from Ash. There's just so a lot that. of windows for them to peek out that side. This time none of them are open though, so she feels much safer to just sprint all the way across the car park once she's looked at them all once. We'll now blow away into the area, which she knows is clear because they have a drone in there. Takes out the camera nice and quick. Bit of a risk doing in that order because she hadn't seen that kill hole first. If she'd have gone for that camera and there was someone in this kill hole? Dead. Dead, exactly. <laughs> so, got a little bit lucky there, but now she knows there's someone around here. Why would you make that kill hole? and completely give it up. That's the whole point of staying in a sort of close by spot. She's watching for it. There's a hole in the gym. Her position is currently known, but you see there's two teammates on her right now. They're grouping up a lot better. So if she goes down, there's someone there to trade the kill. This is much better and stronger for G-Bots. But they've got control of the bottom half of the, of the bottom section, the basement of this map. Now they can start working their way up. on the roof. Do you get that twitch back now? I've got to prefer it 10 times over in the Blitz. Like, yes, okay, she has a thing, but on the map this small, that Famous' fire rate is... The highest easy. fire rate in the game. It's arguably the best assault rifle. Yeah. Wilkie yeah. is dropped down by Crip, just fires it in from the roof, takes one out in construction. They know there's one bomb in there, and they're going to look to make their move. She was keeping that, defender, uh, that diffuser also very safe and far out back. Uh, slowly working the way upstairs now. If you do pick up one kill, they've also switched their play from the last few rounds and being very slow with themselves now, not being so aggressive because it didn't work out so much. They know, however, there's one more in construction somewhere. Looking for that opening. Ash breaching the wall in, so that's two angles they've got to look at now. Easy loss while he's left. trying to hold this room on his own. I'm very surprised that these two players from Sifu completely other end of the uh, building. Yes, this is very easy to watch all the way back this way on house. But right now. I think, uh, I honestly, I agree with those positions. I mean, it's giving them 
so many more angles to look back towards the bomb site. And I think most teams, especially on a map like this, where every almost every wall you can shoot through. Yeah. So you don't really need to play in the bomb sites so much as just around them. Easy loss gets downed and finished off by Crip in that bomb site. Now that bomb site is completely open and clear. Gets himself in there, but he's still being shot. I can't figure out where from. I <laughs> Junas is dropped. Junas that was in the bathroom, so that's two ends open. Choi gets a second one. There's only one player left, and Legno swings into the kids' bedroom to finish Sheffy off. Much nicer execute again from G-Boss. Slowly clearing the way up through the building. As you mentioned, those positions down in the other end, there's people in there so they can clear all the way back. And again, G-Boss didn't all tunnel on one entrance. They had people coming from both ends of the house, clearing their way through and pincing them in. And thanks to that timing, it perfectly catches Zifu off guard and gets them all arguably in the back and takes That's them to match point. With yeah. the roamers, you know? It's, yeah. you're essentially, to get 1v5. They know where you are, you know? Yeah, they know where you are, they kept you down. So, the defending round to win the first map coming here for G-Boss, who, just wanted to point out, went down 3-1 at the start of this, and they're now Big up 4-3 and Big picking a match point. Very well done by them, as they've taken this interesting bomb side again. Pool table and gym. So, see how they do it. Reinforcing their edge again completely, of course, giving that up freely, allowed access to the gym, which is arguably what lost them the first time they picked this did they, did they did the stack again, huh? Yeah. They seem really confident about that. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's not a bad, or the way they held before was not bad. They didn't give up B very easy. They held that nicely. It was A that they got lost. If they hold the garage a bit better this time around, I think they'd have a better shot at it. Let's we'll see. They've got drones in, oh sorry, the Sifu have drones in there, so they can see the garage currently being clear. Let's we'll see how they uh, choose to attack it. I, I mean expect that, they're going to blow in and go again. That drop down above A does give you sight and height advantage over the whole point, pretty much. I mean, there are a couple of little corners they can hide in, but yeah. it is, uh, if they put most focus on B, A is a tough plan. So, Protex is during, still there, running around underneath that boat. And see, that's completely clear. And here's that angle that's opened up thanks to destroying that bookcase. Completely opens up kitchen. No uh, man's coming across. Here we go. He'll blow open the uh, garage in a moment. Junus in an interesting spot on his drone. <laughs> He's crouched, <laughs> staring in the corner. Someone told him off. Put in the naughty corner. But again, all of Sifu right now, all bar one player, are coming from the same direction. They were spotted on the camera, so they know. We're going to try and pre fire through some walls, look at some stair angles. Knowing that kitchen hole is open now means they've const constantly watched their back once they go through this laundry room. If someone drops down there and shoots them all as they're pushing the stairs, it could be catastrophic. Especially Pulse is great for a play like that. Watching from the top, it happens a lot on plane. Sits in the cockpit, waits for them to go down, jumps down behind him. Hole has been blown into the gym now. Nice use of smoke here from g -Bots to lock them out. And with all three smokes, can earn them a good 30 seconds of time in which you just cannot get through that hole you've just made. They remain forced back outside again because he hears that window being broken and doesn't want someone to drop behind him. And Junus can hear someone up top too, so he knows he's got to be careful and he keeps pre firing the stairs in case that's where the rotate has gone through to. 1 minute 20. Sifu and G Bots all with five players left alive in a very, very small space. Sifu have cleared a lot of the house. And are edging closer and closer to these bomb sites. But there's a Minute lot of G-Boss players. All the players still alive. Exactly, that's, that's unheard of, especially on a map this small. Exactly, yeah. It's going to get very, very explosive in a very short space of time. We've finally ticked under the bottom 60 seconds. Everyone looking for that one person to slip up. Interesting positioning for Rook here. He's not the fastest player, so when the action comes, flanking is not going to be quick from him. So I'd like to see him get into a slightly better spot, but here he comes. 40 seconds, another hole blown in the top. And we see Junus pick up the first kill. t boss are starting to realize that the push is coming in. Junus is actually in and on the objective. No, he's not. Sorry, I lied. He's come back around one side. But he gets caught off in the middle of planting a breach charge. And g boss have turned it on. They heard the execute come, and they've swiveled it on. We'll keep the last Sifu moment down in a 3v1. That is the first map over to G-Bots. I love that. I love that moment <laughs> that of play. That was a great comeback. Five players left alive on both scenes until the last 30 seconds. And the minute Sifu are like, right, let's, let's start going. Let's do our last second breaches. Let's push through these doorways. 
Jeebos went, okay, you're gonna do this? We're gonna come back you. They just ran at them. Smoke picked up two kills with a shotgun there and laundry. People just weren't expecting to be pushed. Getting under a minute with all 10 players alive is not good for the attacking team. Not no, good at not all. Not at all. It's uh, situations like that which make like frost traps close to objectives or even cap can traps close even to cap objectives can incredibly powerful because you've got no time. You've got to get in there and you can't stop and look for these things. Right. Unless you're just gonna blown up. But we don't see any of that here. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me in a dream world. <laughs> But, but that comeback, too. I yeah. mean, a 1 3, two, four, three rounds, five, 3. Four rounds straight from G Bots to completely turn that game on its head. Very, very impressive. And now we're going to switch it up to Oregon. Oregon's a map we've seen already. We saw uh, some interesting strategies and not so questionable websites, but we saw uh, that uh, bedroom start from a couple yeah. of teams, which caught yeah. us by surprise, which is a tough, tough bomb site to defend. But we are going back to our standard five attackers. Less blitzes probably coming in, unless these guys have, Maybe, I don't know. have a preference for it. A lot of blitz lately. Yeah, exactly. But on that map, the house, a blitz map, very small, very small tight spaces where shields should thrive. Yeah. He never, never had an impact. He got rushed by shotguns a couple of times, which may be the reason, but... <laughs> Never really. Never well, really ever since that Super 90 came into play, I feel that alone has made shields less desirable. That's very it's true, but very, in very the Super 90's defense, down. we've seen just as many shotguns from smokes and pulses yeah, that's in true. this game. That, so it's, it's, not all, it's not all on poor frost. But here we are <laughs> into map number two, obviously switching things up at the beginning of this round with a nice Still got the <laughs> shot. We do see g -Bots beginning on the defending side. Actually started with that master, uh, that bedroom and uh, punk beds. Yeah, there it is again. Oh. Barbed wire plays at the top of the stairs. They're gonna, what are they doing? Oh, they're making a hole into this uh, bridge above the meeting hall. They're looking for uh, any players coming up that ladder. They'll immediately have to pop them as they climb. So very dangerous climb if uh, Sifu feel like going up there. That and you just saw Frost can leap in. Two players, because this is such a large map, especially compared to House. Two players roaming around the rest of the map. And again, it's Rook. Yep. Very slow, like Doc on Roam is something we've seen a few people do from time to time because he's got such a strong 1v1 with a great MP5 and uh, an even stronger uh, 1v1 thanks to the able to revive if he gets down. But Rook surprising me a little bit more. We did see Thatcher get tagged a little bit up there from the big tower, so first peaks outside we've seen to force him to slow down a little bit, but he immediately knows he's not going to be re-peaked from that window. So as soon as he hides in his safe, he, he knows his opponent has run away. There's, there's no danger now from that window. Right. I think uh, one thing that makes Rick good for roaming in one sense is that his ability is one and done. You toss on the ground, you walk out. Yep. You don't really need to do a whole lot else, you know, where Jaeger has to place all the traps down. Or I'm not sorry, not the traps, the, you know, the uh, anti... Yeah, anti-grenade, grenade spider mine thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> We saw a Blitz again, I didn't get a chance to touch on it before he died, but Blitz from Sifu on attack, tried to go through a window and immediately gets destroyed by Rook, uh, who's standing there in that tower. So again, a Blitz with, with little to no impact. Junus has been down, I think he might have even fallen off the roof, going by his location there. There's no way he could have been shot in that. Yeah, no, I'd say he fell down. <laughs> I think he fell off the roof. Gets a little slippery near the edge, you know? Yes, it does very much so. But we see this far window opened up by Easy Loss again, same as we saw last time in Oregon. But it's very hard to get inside here and get that plant down because of how open it is from the inside. So it's just being very slow and cautious. They know Rook is in this tower as well. So the grenade flies in. He comes out, picks the wrong target, and gets dropped and knifed by Wilkie. Nicely played Wilkie there with that grenade, forcing him to come outside and into his crosshairs. Cross trip down and that half wire keeping Thatcher, keeping Junas pinned here at the top of these stairs. A little bit cautious. Yeah, one hit and then tries to pre fire in case someone decides to come and peek him. It is not the case, so he finishes it off and heads into the armory. Druk now is in a perfect spot with that frost to completely cover this corridor if someone pushes down there. Legno gets a great kill from behind the bomb actually out onto the roof and finishes Ash off. So they're yeah, picking these players off, and Shifu are once again in the numbers disadvantage. It seems Sifu is uh, kind of hesitant to attack. They mm -hmm. they have a strong defense, but they're a little bit... I feel like they are very used to getting early picks against teams that are revealing... Right, they, they seem to wait for the pick, and if they don't get it, they're... I have a suspicion these guys have jumped off roofs intentionally to down themselves and revive with 50 health. Could Maybe. Maybe. I just don't see two players from the same team at this caliber and this level 
accidentally falling off ramps. <laughs> Maybe I'm giving them too much credit. But then again, he he's also not being revived, so maybe he was shot. Maybe he said, it's not safe, don't come for me. And uh, they're keeping the push going. But with five seconds left, I don't think they have much of a choice. Anyway, G Waltz comes in for the kill at the last second. Druid does find Protex, but yeah, Wilkie With the fell. SMG? Wilkie fell. With the SMG on front. He's not exactly. using the shotgun. <laughs> not using the shotgun of all things. Wow. Personally, I prefer it, but I'm just bad with shotguns. Um. I completely missed the timer on the round. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how low he was getting. That kind of explains why he wasn't going to get Wilkie up. Right. No time to do so. Now, now we see him switch it up. So a nice, good defensive round oh. again from G-Bots. New shield. New shield in play. Very new shield in play. Attack Let's see how they use it. Montagne. Montage. Mountain Minis. to a whole different group of people. But we have picked the basement, where I feel the mayonnaise <laughs> is going to be very, very useful. <laughs> that full-length shield coming in through construction tunnels can be very, very powerful. It's something you have to pay attention to, and he could just stay there and be a distraction. And if yep. they ignore him, then he can do something. And if they don't... If you look at the B-bombs right here, there's this top doorway that comes from construction. Yeah. I've seen the man at the man have seen that montage stand in that doorway with his full shield up, because you can basically block the entire side from the bomb to the door, and someone can get in there and plant behind him. Right. I'd like to see it happen. I'd be interested <laughs> to see if it does or not. But we're finding out. Sifu, again, very spread out, potentially even peeking a couple of windows. But I'm taking a very slow start, looking for more drones. They didn't quite find enough people they wanted. Spending some more time in the drone, checking out this tower, and he is going to find Junas on pulse, Hello. hiding up the top of there. Now, they now know he is there. They now know to keep clear berth of that end of the building. And then the drone gets cut. Holes from the armory down here. I've seen a lot of gunfights through that squishy floor. Thermite is scared to go through that doorway. Very nice placement from that uh, seafood defender. I think it's smoke that's up there with a the shark. Surprising. I, usually Pulse is the one that does that. It's yeah. the perfect rain shotgun down yeah. to faces. That makes sense, but we've got Pulse up the other end, arguably the, the longer end of this building, all the way up and down here with his shotgun. Just seeking out information, trying to find each other and, and probe holes in. We do have a couple of players now pushing this uh, tower end, but no one coming through that construction tunnel. This is a very red skin. It is a very red skin. Very Montage. red. Where are you, Montage? You're doing shieldy things? Not really. Actually, going for those speedy early peaks down the stairs, this is kind of her entire strength. She's got a great weapon, and with the speed that she can peek at, she can be very, very slippery person to deal with. Wilkie, though, using that Mac 11, picks up one kill onto leg note. Yet instead of peeking, she's fighting Doc, who has a lot more armor. Yeah, she knows it's in one day. It like it's a quick peek, she had an idea. She saw exactly who that was. Saw they have lots of armor. Druid has picked up one kill. There we go. Wilkie gets onto, but Junus is there to follow it up. Oh. And Junus gets the second one. Downs down Mayon. Up there in the bedroom. That's a very big moment there for Sifu. That puts them strongly in the advantage now in a 4 for 2. Crip is downed. So he's got to be good up, but they know Junus is up there, so he's very, very cautious about reviving this player. Pick up the Manny. He's actually caught in a frost trap. I didn't notice that. So nice frost trap right at the bottom of the stairs. It's a very dark location, but Junus hears him get up and puts him straight back down again. Ash has the diffuser, but she's got four people to find, two of them being Rook and Doc, which are very, very tanky players. She comes down the stairs, finds one, drops him, very nice headshot. Sprays through the wall for the second one, now has to reload, but she knows Junus is upstairs. So if he keeps back there's any class to clutch with, I think it's uh, Ash with the peaks, honestly. Looking for a second one in that little corner. Didn't hear the footsteps and is dropped from the side by Protex. Very patient play by Frost, sitting in that little laundry closet. Knew I have a shotgun. If he comes close to me, I'm going to react fast enough and I'm going to drop him. And as a result, it brought him right into that bomb site and into Protex's crosshairs. So g pots are in a very, very strong position with that defense. But it is still one for one. This map is still very, very early on. Let's see where they start. Laundry room supply room, so basement again now for G-Boss on their defense. So it seems both teams are having a very hard time attacking on this map. Very much so. And we mentioned before on the analyst desk how teams on the attack had been doing very well on our first game of the day. 
on plane, it, as we had the overtime, was very much 50 50 between attacking defenders. Right. But these two teams having a much better time defending. Oh. Another frost trap down in that corner towards the basement. Reinforcing the far end, Legner and Druid. Four players, still three now, in, still in that basement from G Bot. Two more. Protex has a drone in the dining room, but it doesn't have eyes on anyone. Joy reinforcing above that bomb site. That trapdoor is so incredibly powerful for gaining control of that A bomb site. It definitely is. Especially with the advantage you have looking down as opposed to looking up. Yeah. The little camera is taken out very, very quickly. As to be expected. And to be fair, Sifu felt very safe. They got to the building very, very quickly this time around. They did not expect any <laughs> any uh, peekers from the outside. Juno's pre-firing a couple of walls again. That's a breach that I never expected to see, by the way. Yeah. I didn't think any of these no. guys would do that kind of stuff. He feels so incredibly safe doing that. I but think they're trying to mix it up. I mean, they've been trying to yeah. play for that pick, and it hasn't been working, so just get inside. Yeah, right? get inside, get quick, and it's worked so far. They picked up the first kill. Sheffy on Blitz actually picked up a kill. Bandit, uh, sorry, Blitz has done something useful. That shield <laughs> I opened up with one kill. Now, looking for a second. Always seeing a shield crouch walk is amusing because it still makes so much noise. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it does protect your feet. It does protect your feet a lot better. So yes, it's not completely useless, but uh, still, still makes me go. Ash then looking at the same kind of peak we saw from last time around. Just taking control of this meter and taking control of that tower. Waiting for his team to get into position to push the other end of the map. Four players from G-Boss once again now down in the objective room, but doesn't really matter because as you see from Protax here and Sifu upstairs, they're still scared that they're in the rest of the building and are taking their time to clear it out. So even though you're not actively putting pressure on it, g are wearing down this clock already just with the, the threat and the possibilities. Even with the pick, it's almost still down to a minute, 5v4. Yeah, and now we see the thermo going off, the holes being blown. Everyone's starting to group up again from Sifu all in one direction, which Arguably has been their problem a couple of times. It's, wow, the C4 takes Jeffy out from a mile away, but Legno has immediately responded. Junus takes him out. One for one trade again. 50 seconds left. Grenades flying left, right, and center. Looking for that opening. Is it safe to drop down? Is it safe to go down the stairs? They're not sure. They're looking for this angle. You mentioned how strong it is when you're looking down to from uh, top down and they are using it to the best of their ability right now, but they've realized they're not getting any more time to go down these stairs. Once he, uh, one strip barbed wire has been broken, but there's even more. Sledge is slowly taking them out, but every time he does, he gives away position information again. Now there's two on the stairs, and the they Frost to the bottom. Frost gets frost. one, Frost oh, gets two. Got them both. Neither That's one a of them brilliant saw. play from Choi. Prone in this corner, on top of a trap as well. Catches them both by surprise, and once again we see the power of shotguns. Druid now finishes off easy losses, push from the other side. They also know where the last remaining member is, and Junus drops for Gbot to take the lead. I think the one. key mistake there on the attacking team was crossing his teammate where Frost was. Yeah, and on top of that, they both looked at exactly the same spot. They exactly. were both looking up the end of the bombsite far away. No one was looking at their feet, no one was looking close. If you're right. going to be two people pushing, look at different locations. Exactly. It's the kind of things you don't expect teams at this level to, to be making mistakes for you. You think they've got that, and that trust in each other. Them. Exactly. That's and they've lost them around. So, very well played Gboss once again. Choi, by the way, is having a phenomenal series of games. He went 11 and something on the uh, first map. He's now doing very, very well again. His shoulders yeah, have to get sore. <laughs> very <laughs> much so. <laughs> or maybe it's just a Super 90. I don't know. Maybe it's just... <laughs> <laughs> we see Sifu now on the defense. They're coming upstairs. They're looking at this A and B bomb sites again in the uh, dorm rooms. But it hasn't really been so successful for them in the past. Junus once again on that pulse, looking for these very aggressive rooms, trying to take out as many drones as he can. Does find a couple, so there's not too much information inside four G bots in the main building, but we can still see three drones left up. And uh, for the next five seconds, it looks like they're going to survive it. There we go. So Ash coming from the construction this time around instead of the street that we saw before. We do see Junus looking to come out of a couple of windows, but he's still got that shotgun, so don't imagine he'd be too much of a danger if he does so. Ash gets up to the building. I love this little spot. 
and peek <laughs> under the door. It is brutal. So much information inside there. That now one little spot is why the tower is not a good place for the bomb. Yep, and that's right onto a bomb site if the bomb was put in there. So, although I have seen a lot of defenders go to the window down to his left back. Uh, there's a door back yes, there that you garage. can actually run out there and just wipe all the people who are peeking through that crack. That's true, but again, organized teams, in theory, someone will be watching that garage and not let it happen, so... Right. Another reason why that, that tower bomb site ain't no good. Oh. I believe that they haven't really cleared the tower. They peeked through the bottom of it, and that's it. And now they're going to start going up onto walls. So a little bit of a risk coming here from G-Bots, but let's see if it pays off for them. So we can see Ash up onto one Bruce We do actually have a couple of players now moving through that tower, but Junus is still very close. Protex watching the main entrance stairways. Easy loss, forced to move now that he knows they're close to those windows. It's not safe, possibly grenades coming in through it. Chiffy again sitting very, very cautiously at one end. Junus is low and gets taken out by Drid, clearing that tower perfectly. It's a pair of them, Drid and Lion, using both uh, Thermite and Twitch in there. In fact, there's a third player in there. With that fast fire rate, even against the shotgun, they would pick up that kill. With the rate of fire in the FAMAS, it's basically a shotgun that puts all the pellets straight out. You know, <laughs> comes out so fast. Oh. Down he goes. Looks for a next window. The rest of Sifu sitting very, very static inside at the moment. They are a bit more spread out than before, but being so static has bit them in the butt a couple of times. Choi looking to peek a window. Easy loss is in there. They do start to trade back and forth, and Choi picks up the kill again. The guy is on fire, and that is complete control of that B bomb site. When he feels safe enough to go in, that is one bomb site in G-Bot control. And again, five members still alive for them. Sifu only one. Crip does take down Protex, and then there's only two defenders left, and they know where they are. Will is dropped, and Chiefy has to find them all. 5v1. Does drown one, but Drid quickly answers and drops him in the back. I thought he was going to get him through the bookcase, or that yeah. shelf there. Through the rules, he was tagging him a couple of times, but I don't think he realized it, so he no. keep shooting. But that definitely got him in the back. Very well played, Jeebus, again. <laughs> this is what Jifu, Sifu wanted to do. They wanted to go for these slow pushes and picking off one at a time. Right. It never worked for them because Jifu was were aggressive and shot them back in the process or hit very well. And then it pushed them when they tried to push. Here, Jeebus have been allowed to slowly edge their way in and catch people off guard and pick up the kills. And so once, once they're into that top floor is so... You can shoot through everything. Yeah. The whole top floor, you can shoot through all of it. So once you let them up there, they have the assault rifles, they have way better penetration. It's just, you become a quick disadvantage on the defending team. Yeah. Now G-Bots have chosen the same location, of course, because it's better than that damn tower. <laughs> and let's see if they can show Sifu how to defend this site. The only thing is, if they do win this round, not only do they go match point, they are forced to take the tower spawn next. Right. So yeah. if they reach a defend around again, but we'll wait and see. That's a long way off. As we are our last five rounds of this prep phase, drones still alive in a couple of key locations here from Sifu. But we do see two key members of G-Bots in a very interesting position. Choi actually pushing out straight into construction, but there was no one spawning there this time around. So he's looking for that cheeky peek that they haven't done before. It doesn't work off. Crip tries to go for a spray through a window. Doesn't get the kill this time around, but he has seen Blitz come in there before, which is why he tried for it. Now forced to fall back, but again, it slowed down this push from Sifu, as they know he's around somewhere, but can't be sure where. Still on that blitz. I picked up one or two kills with it, but it's... I still can't help but feel there'd be more useful operators in a map with what is ultimately very, very close quarters. It's huge in its size, so it takes a lot of time to get from end to end. Right. But the firefights happen over very small spaces. And once again, no Twitch. Exactly. They're, they're attacking with no Twitch. And I feel that Twitch is so much more powerful than a Vitz right now. Especially you get more intel with Twitch, you get an extra drone, at the very least. Yep. Not to mention a very embarrassing kill, potentially. Yes, we did we <laughs> which we one of those so far, which I'll admit, in the first game, amazed me. I did not think we'd see a Twitch kill in the Pro League at all, but hey, Twitch drone worked. If I see a selfie today, I'll be all set. <laughs> so, see if you have game complete control of this middle section of the map. Looking to move their way up now in towards the objectives with all five members of G-Boss alive again, but they are at a man advantage having lost that thatch up very, very early on. 
do catch a glimpse of one player. He's not going to stick his head out there again without any he kind of did. safety. He did, but he got super lucky with it. <laughs> now he's holding his corners. Wilkie's here. He's got Blitz with him. And they're not willing to go inside just yet. To be fair, g bots are not holding that A-bomb site They're at not right at all. Now. They could go right in and plan. There's nothing stopping them. No. But they don't do this. There's a nice smoke through the wall. We do see Druid. That was a beautiful shot somehow, picking up that kill onto the roof. Ash trying to get up that one kill, runs out of ammo, switches to a pistol, and neither of them can make the shot stick. Both Castle and Ash on very, very low health right now. But Castle's in the advantage. He's the defenders. He can just fall back and he does pick up a nice down, but goes for the kill. This is the trade. Gets too. away with it. it. Grotex missing those shots. He's going to be kicking himself because now they're in a 5v2, 4v2. We do see the flash coming out now from Shifi. He goes yes. to the one kill. There picks up it a is. second back to the flash. I take it all back. Blitz is useless. <laughs> Here we go. He's only got 20 health left, but he's got plenty of smokes now. He can completely cover this A bomb side with it. Can they get the diffuser up and through the windows? Uses this bookshelf as cover, but it's not perfect. And he takes a lot of damage through underneath it, but they have planted the diffuser behind him. Now it's on g -Bots to push in and take it. They've got three members. They've got to find two. They know where Blitz is, and they know Thermite's outside. Wow. Third kill comes in for Blitz. He does get dropped, but Protex is down, outside. Do they know he's down? They, they do. do. They're going straight in for the diffuse. For and that is round number four on the board for G-Bots. And it is suddenly life or death for Sifu. I don't know if Blitz just panicked, but I'm pretty sure he had more flashbangs still, correct? He did, but he was shot through the wall to his left. So but that close? Oh, through. yeah, okay. <laughs> It'd be nice, but yeah. I don't think so. But finally, finally seeing some use from him. He picked up a couple of very important kills and allowed that plant to go down. But unfortunately, even Blitz cannot stand up to three different angles of fire coming his direction. Troy again, there you go. Seven and two. He's having a phenomenal game. Easy loss, unfortunately, less so. But we'll see. It is match point now for G-Boss. They are on the attack, which, in all fairness, on this map and this game series so far, hasn't been the most successful for both of our teams. But we'll see where they can put it off. Basement again spawned for Zifu. They are looking to lock things down as the drones start getting in, start getting spotted and destroyed. And now, once again, we see Juness spreading out, looking to hunt them down and clear them out before the uh, round starts so that he can safely roam around. And I think kind of almost to the opposite of plane being such a small map, making it hard for attackers. This is such a big map that with a three-minute timer, you don't have a lot of time to look for the roamers, but you have a lot of space to roam, yes, exactly. which really gives the defending team an advantage. You can hide anywhere and wait. Uh, and if they don't come find you, then they're always going to have to worry about where's that fifth guy at. Unfortunately, that hasn't worked out for Junus so far this time around. He's been trying to hide and trying to do exactly that, but uh, he keeps getting found out every time he tries to flank from behind. So let's wait and see if he can make it work one time or another, because I'm thinking you're right, it will be a complete game changer in the round if uh, he finally gets that perfect flank off and with that shotgun, take that two or right. three people. Looking again to come in the same direction from the junkyard to clear out this entire end of the building with another very big, powerful shield and work your way down towards the objective. As you mentioned, you can't spend three minutes coming in one spawn, spreading out, looking at the building, coming back again. Start at the opposite ends from the bombs, work back towards it, clear them out as you go. Exactly. Again, slow movement from Montage as he's got even more drones spinning around. A couple of them get picked off, but they're getting information from it, but you can see that silhouette in the wall on his pulse heartbeat sensor. He knows someone's close. I think he might have lost them, though. I think he may have. He's flanking around. He's actually gone upstairs. Thatcher gets taken out by a C4. Very nice play from Junus on that window. Troy, is that the tower. first C4 kill we've seen today? We saw one earlier on. One this was killed okay. through the floor. It went up and blew uh, him up. But we see Ash now in the tunnel above the meeting hall, opening up completely. No reinforcements, no one in there. This is something g -Boss had put someone in there every time. But that was when they were defending upstairs. Now, Junus and Wilkie are up here, and g -Boss know about it. One goes down, Wilkie's dropped from outside by Thermite on the repel. But they know there's a second one up there. They know Junus likes to lurk, and they can hunt him down. But they've only got a minute and 20 to do so. There's the shotgun on his screen. He <gasps> didn't saw see it. <laughs> Lion gets dropped, but Junus is immediately it. replied and oh. Troy trades him off. That's <laughs> got to be heartbreaking. But hey, he got the trade. It's one for one, and it's 3v3 now for the last minute of this round. They still know, obviously, the objectives are in the basement, but they are yet to get down there themselves. With two rumors down, they know the last three players are in here. 
coming down the stairs. Blitz first. Montage. Sorry, Montage first. He's looking for the smokes out. Covering this in complete end. They're spraying through the wall just in case someone's there and Protax is. Not quite sure what picked up by Frost. Very nice kill taking down Montage. Now he's pushing with the shotgun. Ash gets out of there at the last second. But Twitch, where are you? Twitch is taken a lot slower. Yeah, movement back there. Very, very slowly. And to be fair, Choi is very aggressively inside this bomb site, considering there's no pressure from any other location from Druid right now. Can he see the gun barrel right there? I'm not sure, but he knows he can. He can yeah, see he it can peeking definitely in see and out. It, yeah. He knows if he's in there anyway, because he's been peeking in and out and running away. So he's waiting for that peek. But he doesn't know that. Oh, he's on the other wall. side. Easy loss kills Druid. Now they know the last player's in here, and G Bots can't quite finish off that. They had the pinch, but they didn't move together, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. As soon as... Uh, Twitch was kind of lagging there. behind them. They were in the point. They had nothing to do, and Twitch was still outside. But there is the power of Romans. They spent so much time there and exactly. so much resources killing those two Romans down, which they had to do, admittedly. You of course, just yeah. Them, that uh, when they came to attack the final bomb set, they kind of had nothing left. They didn't have any drones left. Right. They didn't have many grenades or any specials left, and they were picked off one at a time. Especially knowing the Romer is a pulse. Yes. It put... It, prevents you now from really moving quick. So g -Bot back on the defense now in the basement. Completely threw well, the fact that apparently they'd never successfully defended this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they are looking still for their match point. That being said, they came back from a 3-1 before. Can Sivu come back from a 4-1? Can they force an overtime here? Is that the beginnings of what's just happened? It. Reinforcing the floor and they're reinforcing the wall next to it. Notice that again, so they have to use both thermites on that location if they want that amazing angle through the teaching route into the basement. We'll see whether that is played out or not. So you boss last time around four players staying inside the basement to defend this. Let's see if they do the same again. Chief, uh, Chief Which again, I think this is a map where you're at least two roamers. I mean, no yeah, less than two have roamers. To have two it really is. With a three-minute timer, that's so much map to clear. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. And even if they get the one, as you mentioned, the second one can do so much damage. They have you force them to use up so much time around the rest of the map. Right. Chiefy using his uh, blitz again, and once more they're coming from the opposite ends of this site and working their way towards clearing it as they go. Easy lost now. Checking the tower with drones rather than checking people that we saw a couple of times. And there is a rook hiding up there. The drone comes up the stairs, checks behind the corner, is immediately killed, but it does force rook to move now. He knows he's been spotted in the tower somewhere and they're gonna come and hunt for him. Safe range breach then, of course. Ash does not want to stick her head in there when she knows there's someone close. And she knows she just forced him to move, so he could be coming towards, he could be coming aggressive right now to try and catch him off guard, so making sure he's doing this very, very safely and from a distance. But at the same time, he's keeping Rook pinned in that location. She can further up the tower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really Forcing, bunkered in there. Ash is going to come in now to clear him out of that tower. She has to clear every single level and waste even more time yeah. to get to him. So. And they're already down to a minute 30 again with 10 people up. Very, very smart play from that Rook player. But the main entrance has been breached. One hole has been made through that floor, and Chiefy is trying to get some shots down through there with his Blitz shield to hide himself. But there's a shotgun waiting for him, and he knows it. He's traded a couple of shots back and forth with it. Doesn't want to do it a couple of times more. Looking to make that move down the stairs while they've got friends upstairs this time to loop through the hole. Let's see if they make that same mistake again, or if they're checking their angles properly this time. Ash Frost, sorry, is pushing into the shotgun, does get flashed, and there's Protax this time to immediately turn the kill. So they're not falling for it again. G-Bots have got one down player in there, but he gets docked up, actually, as we still have four members left alive. Rook's still pinned in that tower. The smokes go out here in the AO bomb site, looking to cover it off as the diffuser goes down, and Sifu are suddenly in a very strong position. Smoke goes out to push them back and off the side, but Smoke runs straight through it himself. Can he get the kill onto the shot, uh, onto the nope, shield? He gets flashed and has blind. to fall back. But he does get another Smoke on the corner, and he's downed Blitz. They've still got to get to that defuser. It is still They have a plan five. with nine Up the stairs he comes, but 
Protex is there. Thermite picks up two kills, which are very, very important as the defender comes through. And here is the flank from upstairs. Doc gets down. Four members of Sifu left alive. Castle's got to do it all. He's downed a couple of players, but he's only got a mere 20 seconds left. Comes to the stairs, does wow. take up one kill. There's still two members up. One of them is downed. Can he get back to the diffuser? He's got seven seconds. He's got to hold this. Sledge is now looking to finish him off. It should be an easy kill. Oh, it is right at the God. last second. Sifu <laughs> playing it with fire. But that was castle, almost. All with a pistol, too. All that was all with a pistol. Second too. With the pre fire came through. He needed one good smack, and it was done. One last second on that diffuser. Very, very <laughs> close. But it's there. It's four and three. Sifu are closing the gap back down again. But you see, they got the bomb down with nine players up. Yeah, nine players. Just alive. because of that smoke push. Thanks to smokes and the shield. Thanks Took to out the one guy on the point, smoked it, planted. They're standing there. Sifu back to the upstairs spawn with their bombs. We are back to having no blitz. I like this. No blitz. Blitz is useful, and we got the plant down there, and we got a couple of kills last time. Uh, Sifu I'm sick of seeing But Twitch just. We're back to our fave so five, better. you know? Yeah. They are a fave five. <laughs> five. I like that. Junus once again on that drone hunt, looking for that little spot that he can hide in, catch people by surprise. You're going to expect him every time that it's time around. All about whether or not he can stay alive that time. Like, Ash was completely out of that fight until the last 20 seconds because she was spending so much time looking for that rook in the tower. Oh, Junus is peeking out the construction spawn. Doesn't get any kills, but there were four of them there. So. That's a peak that I have never understood. It is not that good. You get detected. We, I never understood that one. But so a lot get, of you get detected as you start shooting. So right. It's kind of already there, and you're right in the sense that in this level of play, where people are watching every possible spawn peak, it right. should never work, which it didn't. But like in in matchmaking or in casual, whatever. I'm shocked it's he didn't so die. easy to pick up people there that are just sprinting. Oh, oh well, safe and complete. I mean, in casual, it's easy to do that on any door. <laughs> <That's very laughs> But, uh, you're right. Doing it at this level is, is a very, very risky move, especially someone that, again, is running a shotgun. Right. Oh. Although... Even though he got back, he's okay, but he's still taking a lot of damage and, in fact, falls down to Crypt. So once more, Junus on the roam doesn't really do anything. Right, because now team. they knew where his general idea, you know? Now yeah. they can just push him in 5v1 him. Push him, swarm in, and they didn't have to care about the rest of the map. They know they've got one roamer down now. They can start pushing in into and the hardest this upper bomb site. Yeah, and on this upper bomb site, see if we've only been running the one ro room. So they right. know now that the rest of the map is quite likely very, very clear. And they're right. All four of them are now locked in here around the bomb site. So they are very quickly, with a minute 45 left, starting to pressure the objective. Which is a lot more time than the attacking teams have had on average. Chui up on his window again. He won some easy fights with easy loss here last time around. Twitch drone is checking a couple of bedrooms. Edges its way through towards the stairs and catches eyes on a couple of people. Sprayed through the wall, comes in, does tag a little bit, but it forces Frost out into a position where she gets taken down by that uh, thermite. Oh, maybe this <laughs> right shell. through the wall in the face. Perfect play. From <laughs> right at him. I call bull. Second one in the corridor has been spotted, <laughs> and he picks the second one. Crip gets That's easy good. loss down. One member left from Sifu, and G-Bots Look are looking that. like they're going to take their fifth round. Twitch bot is going to kind of scare him away. He has downed one player, but there's grenades waiting, and there's four members of G-Bots pushing in. Crawled out to safety and has been revived. All four of them does down there's another one. 11. Completely finishes him off. Three to go. The diffuser's still not down. He's looking for a second one, but he can't find it. Choi will finish him off, and in true fashion, as he's done all round, picked up so many kills and seals the deal. That was a beautiful wall bang. That was quite something. Sifu, a squad where, as I said, they qualified third, they came in behind uh, Penter and Aura. Right. Were arguably on those stats, to some of the very strongest teams here, but G-Bots reverse swept first time round, very convincingly took the early rounds here. Let it slip a little way, but I've turned it back on them this time. And honestly, I've shown us exactly why Simon had such faith. Yeah, in Simon definitely thought G Boss was one of the uh, one of the contenders, and clearly they are. I mean, that turnaround was it's quite something. I want to talk more about House completely as well, because it's the first time we've seen that map here in the Pro League. It's very, very new. 
And there's so many little angles in there people I hadn't seen before. That trap door in the dining room. Blow that trap door, pull the window down, look at it look from straight down the master the bedroom, garage. and you can see outside. Right. Perfect. Not many people have seen that. I personally hadn't seen that in, in matchmaking for a while, but right. it was here and they were using it, and it slowed down that ash push over and over again. Yeah. But then there's bomb sites uh, that I still feel were given up a little bit easily. Okay, they won, so I can't half them too hard, but G-Bots right. <laughs> just allowing Sifu to get into that garage every time. They'd reinforce the garage door and force the thermite out. But why not then stick one person in laundry and just have a couple of pop shots as they come into? Yeah, that's very surprising. After losing the garage, letting it open up and not having somebody to play from laundry. Yeah, the first, very time, surprising. They, first time they picked the uh, gym bomb site, they, they, they lost the round because of it. They just gave up the laundry, they gave up the uh, gym site with ease, and they had to try and retake it and, and lost for it. But uh, this time around, they didn't need to do such a thing. Right. But we are going to go back to our stage with our wonderfully gorgeous stage host, who this time he knows it's me because he can see me. <laughs> <laughs> but we have an interview on stage with one of our winners. Take it away, Sean. Thank you so much. I am joined by Krep from the G-Boss. What a phenomenal show standing here. Obviously excited to be playing in the Pro League. How, does you, how do you feel? How does the team feel? Um, I feel very, very good. This is completely impressive. I have never been in, a, in an event like this. It's, it's, for me, it's completely awesome for my team. Also, it's, my team is, is very, very happy to be here. And all the teams are good people. Um, it's a good chance to make something in, outside from our countries. Now, obviously, you, you're here standing on the stage for the Pro League. You, you're a newly formed team that have come together to play Rainbow Six here. What's the, what's the environment been? What's the energy been for your team playing there? You were said you before you were a little nervous, excited to be here, going up against Jifu, but you guys played really well. Yes, uh, we, I think we are really playing really well. Uh, we make a good um, with results in Spanish in Spain. So we are here now. We are nervous. Um, we are very nervous. I, I have to be honest. But uh, I don't know. We have another match to win. Uh, everything is okay. I think it's it's good. Now, later on today, I can see right here that you'll be going up against Penta, which everybody said is one of the strong teams. Are you thinking about that? Are you watching those guys? Are you familiar with them? Yeah, we always we have always practicing with them in, um, in online matches, uh, online qualifiers. They play really good. They are maybe one, top one or two in the world, I think, at the moment. Um, I'm very happy to play versus them. It's a good opportunity. More if we are in this event. So we are very happy to play versus them. Well, we're very, very happy to have you. Thank you so much, Krep. You played fantastically. What a great team. What an absolutely great job they did. And of course, Jifu, let's not forget them. They played phenomenally well, too. I'm sure that there's some analysis to be broken down. I can see that Jen is over there. So I'm going to say for now, Jen, over to you. <laughs> I'm going to take this one instead of Jen. It is going to be me, Munchables, once again. All right, but all right. I am I am joined by Jen. I'm also joined by Aaron. And we're joined by James as well, or X Storm from TCM. So welcome to the desk, my Hello. friend. And obviously, you guys have already played today. Um, you've already been on the stage. But like, first thing I want to touch on is a lot of you guys, a lot of you players here, haven't really played on stage before. What's that initial feeling like? What's it like when you step up in front of the crowd? It's uh, a, pr a pretty nervous feeling. Um, Inside, you really want to do well, but uh, the moment you start playing the game, the nerves uh, kick in. Yeah. I, I, does it? Do you feel like once you're actually in game, once you're kind of two rounds apiece, do you kind of forget that you're on stage, or is it just constantly there in your mind that you're like? Oh, it's uh, it's constantly uh, uh, there in the mind. Okay, so. A lot of nerves on the board for some of these teams. So let's talk about the match that we've just seen. It was Sifu up against the G-Bots. Now, our predictions beforehand, unfortunately, Jen, yeah. twice in a row it felt like Sifu yep. maybe could have come they back yeah, into possible, it. possible. They started so well at the beginning. I was pretty happy. I was getting cocky and then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was like a 3-0 start for them in the yeah. first map and then reverse sweep came out of G-Bots. Just got five it's rounds okay. in a row. I think they gave a good showing Yeah. and I thought... The I really enjoy seeing Gbot at the end. He seems so uh, happy and <laughs> humbled to be there. Uh, it makes me really want uh, to root for them. Yeah, and, and as well, like humble victors, as you say, going over, shaking hands, you know, saying good game. And yeah. obviously, you're going to be very happy with our very first well, two on the board with yes, your prediction. Yes, yes, I did guess that. Um, they potentially had a chance to come back with the smoke right at the end. And I was thinking, is that going to happen again? Yeah. 
But it didn't. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of that one versus four. Yeah, I was smoke. thinking, is this going to happen again, really? Smoke We've seen again? it a couple of times. And unfortunately, that did happen to you guys, I believe, in, in the first two games. Uh, I'm trying to think who it was that actually uh, wiped you guys out. Well, it was, anyway, it was, it was a smoke, that's for yeah. sure. And that was it like, was uh, <laughs> disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine that's kind of uh, one of the less exciting feelings when you're in a tournament and so on. It was... Uh, well, we had four players alive, they had one, and uh, he came back and clutched it. <laughs> yeah, it's, we've seen a few rounds like that as well. And in fact, one of the rounds we saw in the second game, we saw, I can't remember, I think it was Ehoy. I don't know if I'm saying that player name correctly, but uh, hid underneath the stairs as Frost, I think, got like a triple shotgun. Got out three people, yeah. Yeah, just beautiful. But Beautiful um, shotgun. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the way these guys played, because it, it felt like a fairly different play style to what yeah, we've sure. seen in the first four games. Because... We kind of, I mean, both scorelines ended up being 5 3 in the end, mm. but it definitely felt like kind of two minutes of very slow, very was cautious slower, play, yeah. and then suddenly, boom, someone flicks the switch and everyone goes absolutely nuts. Do you think that was to do with the two maps we had, or do you think that was to do with the, the teams themselves? That's a good question. I will throw it over to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's basically down to the maps, um, like house. Um, oh, the way the defenders spread out, um, they'd be spreading themselves around uh, the windows. So when uh, the attackers breach, it's going to be uh, a hard time to get in. Yeah. Okay. Do you so think that's why uh, attackers took? Uh, we've seen Montang for the first time. Do you think Montang. that's why, like, to try to get in uh, more efficiently? Uh, it's a good possible uh, possibility of that because uh, with Montang, uh, you can extend the shield. Uh, you can just walk into the house and uh, give it information where the defenders are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to bring the conversation now around to we've got we've had six out of our eight teams play so far. We've still got two kind of uh, wild cards, I suppose, coming in that haven't actually hit the stage just yet. So far in the pro league, I'm going to go along the line. Who do you think are kind of favourites to be at that top of the scoreboard? Who who are your sort of maybe top three, top four? Um, TCM, I I think you did really well. Uh, Thank you, Aria. Uh, Penta, obviously heard good things, and G-Bolts. That's what I'll probably go with, just on the fly. Okay. So far, yeah. What about yeah. you, Jen? I feel like I want to actually concur with you. Uh, <laughs> okay. La the, the teams I've heard the most being talked about have been uh, Area and uh, Penta, for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because of the background as well, because like Penta is a well-known yeah, uh, yeah. competitive team, so I feel like it adds weight to the team to have that name on them. Yeah, and also the kind of resources that come with that as well, the kind of obviously big organizations like Epsilon, like TCM. I think they've been like doing well in general as well, haven't they, Penta? That's why they've got that yeah, kind of exactly. heart behind them as well. Yeah. And uh, what, what are your kind of predictions for the, the top few teams? Uh, G-Bot, Penta and uh, Era. The they are all really good aimers. Okay. And I assume you're being humble, not saying yourself. But, uh, <laughs> Just leave that open. It, it, yeah. feel, it, um, it must feel fairly awkward saying, yeah, we're going to be the best. But <laughs> I'm sure you're quietly confident yourselves as well. But our next game, it is going to be France versus Italy, Epsilon versus Dat Flamers. Now, from what I've been chatting to you guys about, you're all feeling fairly heavily one-sided on this one. H how do you think this one's going to pan out? We'll start with you, Storm. Um, Epsilon are a really great team. Um, that they have a good uh, team spirit. Yep. Um, that Flamers are, are um, pretty much a, a new team, so th they're not going to really have ta tactics. And uh, but but uh, I think uh, they could do well. But uh, Epsilon will come out on top. Okay, so Epsilon going to take this one. I feel like I would have. I want to see Epsilon, but because because the last time I went for the opposite of everybody, I will stick to my guns and I'm going to go for the other team. Take okay, that. <laughs> so we've got one for Epsilon, one for Daflamers. What Epsilon. about yourself, I said Epsilon like, when I saw the name. I know, again, it's a, a name I know. Yep. I don't know how good they are at this game, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say Epsilon. 2-0. Okay, absolutely. So we've got 2-1 in favour of Epsilon then. We'll see whether they're going to be able to take this one. I believe we're going to head into a short break before we head into our fourth match of the day. But. After this one, we're going to see who's going to be at the top of that scoreboard and who's going to be down at the bottom. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Do not go anywhere. Peggy 18.
yesterday. This was a symbol of true power. But today, it means nothing but destruction. And all those who used to protect us. I've now been overwhelmed. But that, that was yesterday. Before we decided that our playgrounds will now become our battlefields. city, where yesterday we were just happy to live, has now become the place where we choose to survive. Because yesterday, we were ordinary citizens. But today, we are the, the Division. division. Intel RealSense is all about changing the way we interact with computers. The way we interact with this game is entirely with our hands. It's a natural way to communicate. We want our computer to be able to sort of understand that movement because it's more human and more natural. Awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to control. I'm surprised. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 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 <laughs> we use this camera to interpret natural forms of human communication like facial expressions. <laughs> Another cool thing we can do with a 3D camera is we can create 3D scans. We'll actually take this and we'll composite it onto a figure. <laughs> I need to see what I look like as a princess.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rainbow Six Siege Pro League. We are coming to you live from Katowice, Poland, where you are here at none other than the Intel Extreme Masters Expo. And today we've got a cracker for you because it's the first day of the Pro League. Yes, the teams from all across Europe have battled it out, duked it to prove themselves worthy to be here playing on the PC EU division of that Rainbow Six Siege Pro League. They're here. What's on the line? They want to prove to you, the faithful watching, that they have mastered this game and they have a right to be there. We've seen six of our teams battle it out against the first three matchups of the day, and that means we've got one more right now. And it is time to see none other than the boys from Epsilon, of course, France going up against Flamers, and they are representing Italy. And then after that, we're going to muddle them all up and do it all over again. You get two days for the price of one here. How kind is that? I'm sure the teams are getting warmed up. I've seen them backstage. Everybody's got palatable tension, and that means that there is an analysis desk right over there, and they're going to have a lot to say about what's coming up here. So without further ado, over to you. Thank you very much, Sean. I am here on the analyst desk, and I'm joined once again by Aaron and Jen. And we're going to get straight on into the meat of this one because we've already kind of talked about the matchups. We kind of went very in depth about our previous game while we were talking to Storm. Now we're going to kind of. I want to touch a little bit while we've got you here, Jen, on kind of the Ubisoft developers' point of view here. Now, you guys have been working on the game for a very long time, you're very, very yeah. dedicated to the game. From the perspective of a developer at Ubisoft, what is your kind of view of the Pro League? How is it going so far? Like, how do you think it's going to shape the game in general? Like, what, what's your perspective? Yeah. I think the Pro League makes a, a lot of sense for our game. Like, our game from the ground up has been built for competition. Uh, from, the ground, from the start, the dev team was playing uh, tournaments internally. So it's really cool to now see, like, basically the game go from us playing tournaments to actual players playing our tournaments, and I think it, it's a way to really challenge ourselves to keep improving the game, keep iterating on it, and I think it's very healthy for our game to have uh, such a level of play. Yeah. Yeah, so I, yeah. don't, I only think it's going to make us uh, make a stronger game, so it's, it's fun to be challenged, and it's, it's lovely to watch the players uh, show yeah. us how they can take the game to its, uh, its extreme. That, that's one thing I wonder about is, has there been any uh, good examples of kind of stuff that you as developers maybe didn't notice and then once the players got on, the people that are going to spend those hours and hours and hours and days in like playing this game, is there anything that straight up came away kind of like, oh, we never thought like anyone would even think about doing that kind of thing? Was there anything that kind of slipped through the cracks at all? Off the top of my head, honestly, I have no like specific point, but I know that there's a lot of like edge cases that we didn't plan yeah. for, and uh, like right now we just uh, did our with our latest patch, we just tweaked the spawn locations because I know people yeah. were kind of watching out for those, so now uh, players can spawn more safely. So I think that's stuff like that yeah. that's really yeah. refining the game. I imagine as a streamer, that's one of the changes that you're over the moon about, is not being spawn killed immediately. Well, as a streamer, like you're just going to get stream snapped anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't really do be able to change anything. Fair play, I suppose. <laughs> at least now you can't get stream sniped yeah. at the spawn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah at, least you, at least you don't just spend the entire round dead. But let's, I just want to quickly touch on something else, because during the go fours and things, we've, we've seen a little bit of play in terms of the recruits. Now, so far in the Pro League, we haven't seen a single recruit touched on. Do you, I mean, we'll start with you, Aaron. Do you think there's a, a reason for that? Do you think there's something... I, well, I don't know. Like, um, you can have a grenade, can't you, as a recruit, and a shield, yeah. which gives you the shield grenade kind of push. Uh, it was really big in 2.1, but it seems to, I don't know, maybe not be as big in this patch. Yeah, I know that, uh, as far as I know, Gbots was using the, the SWAT recruit in the GoForce. Yeah. And today it seems like they switched from that to Montaigne. So I would love to talk to them and ask them why uh, the change of heart. Uh, I'm not sure, okay. honestly, but it's very interesting. Well, we'll see if we can get one of the G-Boss players up on stage later on. Mm. And we can ask, ask them, them directly and actually find out for you guys. But we'll, we'll have to see on that one. So one final point I want to touch on before we head into our next matchup. Now, we have a varying range of European teams here in the EU Pro League, but yep. we have four French teams here. So France really being very well represented. Going strong. For sure. What, what, what do you think the reason is for that one? Uh, well, I know 
that, uh, well, you know, Ubisoft is a French-based organization. Uh, the development team is in Montreal, but uh, we have a strong presence in France, so I think uh, our team there organized a lot of uh, competitive events. So I, I guess the French had a lot of experience in lands. So that's probably why there's such a, a big, uh, yeah. big French presence. Absolutely. Well, we were just talking to Storm earlier, who happens to be the, as far as I know, only UK player Apparently, in the yes, tournament. Apparently, yes, from Wales. So, uh, unfortunately for me and you, my friend, we don't have many uh, UK teams yeah. to support. We have anything, some players. At least we got one person. Yeah, I mean, no, typ one. <laughs> typically at esports, the UK tends to sandbag. Mm. So we've had a couple of StarCraft players. We've had a, we've had a little bit of success here and there, but nothing too crazy. But it's never too late to start. Fight. It's never too late. Mate, hey, let's make a squad. We'll, we'll enter season two of the Pro League. Maybe and, uh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> head on into it. Beat everyone. Let's quickly touch on our fi or final matchup of game day one. Obviously, we are playing two of our game days today. It is going to be Epsilon up against the Flamers, one of the French teams up against those Italians. Now, we already talked about predictions. You've gone with Flamers. Yeah. You've gone with Epsilon. Any kind of final words going into this series on kind of why you I think would, those predictions? Oh, well, I was going to say I'd be really surprised if Flamers won, but I'd be a nice surprise. So. Yeah, but I mean, um, yeah, I just again, Epsilon, just the name rings a bell. Yeah. Going for that same with TCM, so. Yeah, hi. And is it just the underdog story for you? Yeah, I decided to go for the underdogs because uh, I went for them the first time, and I, I want to stick to my story. You want redemption? Yeah, I want redemption, and I think those guys might give it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll see if they can rise like a phoenix out of the flame as oh, oh, no. it's going to be Epsilon <laughs> taking this one. We're going to pass over to our excellent casters. It's going to be Panky and Pungy, the dynamic peas or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's maybe their superhero names. I don't know. Let's pass it over to our casters before I continue rattling on. <laughs> I was going to call you out for that awful flame the, pun, but then you just went and butchered dynamic the dynamic something. peas. <laughs> I don't think we give a Joe lunch. Okay. Yeah, it. noted. We'll go with that. Noted. <laughs> we got you. We got you, Joe. But we're back here, and we have our map boat in now, which is something they did not have the desk. Chalet and Bank, another bank. brand new map. And I know you have some harsh words about that. Too open for me. That's a painful map. I did, I did have my fun and casual with the old spawn peaks, but... I think those are fact fixed now, so there's yeah. not much going for that map for me. Yeah, and so. uh, curious to see how some good players play on it. I hated it quite a bit when you were forced to go in the or everyone went in the vault itself. Always, but now that you're forced yeah. to swap spawns, it's better. It is a little better in that sense. And of Definitely. course, let's go through our final two teams now. Of course, we haven't seen these on stage yet. Epsilon Esports, we did have their coach up on the desk earlier right. on, gave us some insights, mentioned how they focus very hard on five or so maps. So maybe Bank is one of those they're hoping to catch people off guards with. But Legends, Hanson, Ares, RCK, and Jack up on their Jack. side. Definitely the favorites, as the guys mentioned, Flamers being the underdogs that both of our experts on the desk have, uh, have voted for, but we'll see how well they do perform. We've seen already very tight games in the first two, which were, again, two of the favorite games, Penta and Ara, that people expected to roll over both their opponents, and they both drew so far. Yeah. Sifu, the third place team that I mentioned a lot during that game, completely lost, just straight up, no points at all. So you know, all to play for here for Flamers, and they can really set their mark in that first game. And here is their roster. QB, E peak. I, I believe it's QB. QB. Yeah, it goes as many E's as he can fit yeah. his name. <laughs> Boros and Torok to round out their roster too. So new names, new faces, not players that we've seen from Wilkie, we mentioned before on uh, one of the older rosters, Sifu is a ex World of Tanks pro player, but a lot of these guys are new to such stages like this and right. uh, tournaments. So it's nice to see some fresh blood coming through. Definitely. Chalet was one of the maps we saw very, very early on in the day. We saw that uh, snowmobile garage and wine cellar spawns, and we saw the trophy room in the kitchens. And we saw teams talk about, in fact, we had Shearers talk about how strong that uh, trophy room is. But unfortunately, we're going to see the same few attackers from him. I think we're going to see the same attackers and the same spawns. I don't see that changing much. Do you think either of these two teams are going to switch up the shields a little bit, or it's going to be more Montaigne and uh, Blitz from them? I'd be shocked to see yet another team rolling out Blitz again. I did not expect him to be used nearly the way he was, so. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. keep our eyes for a look what these different operators are gonna be. But I'm, I am I want to look at Bank and refer back to Oregon, the map we, we saw in that last round. Mm -hmm. It's another one that's really big and open until you get right down to those objectives. So it's gonna take a lot of time for people to clear the whole area looking for those Romans again. I do think though that Bank, so Oregon has a lot of hallways and a lot of little rooms. 
uh, there's a lot more ground to cover, and you have to cover it slower because you can't just run by the rooms. Whereas bank, you know, as soon as you get in the main lobby and clear that, you've now cleared half the map. You yeah. know, uh, you can go upstairs, clear a couple rooms, and and you're ready. I mean, it's uh, I think you, it is big like Oregon, but it is faster to clear. I also want to look at the spawns people use because that back alley spawn, it's actually quite easy to lock people out of there unless they go into the very top floor. Right. Because of the small choke point you've got to use to get inside. There's two windows for that ground level entrance if yeah. you're coming from that. So I'll be interested to see if anyone even uses that spawn or if they all go from the main entrance, go down through a garage or in through the main lobby because that is far more open and far easier to attack than that alley might be. So, all these new things, all new options to cover. And the other big thing that I didn't point out, we saw Glass on plane, but another big open long range attacking map, Bank can be that map. Especially once you've already won the vault, perhaps on defense, you're forced to come upstairs a little way, forced to go in behind that reception, the tellers and the archives room. Right. Glass on the car park across the street could really start to open up those bombs. Especially with the huge, there's a lot of lighting changes in the map yeah. and a lot of uh, dark little corners, especially you know in the archives area where the People kind of go prone in the little corners there. Glass can see right in from just about anywhere as long as the you know ash opens it up or something. So yeah, definitely so, uh, could be a good map for Glass. Potentially some more options. And we did see one of the yellow teams obviously try and run Fuse. Didn't get away with it so well. Not so Fuse much. into the vault. So Fuse on that floor above. Again, could be very, very powerful in the displacement. If someone's, say, holding an angle on a stairs or uh, the garage entrance, which is a very nice small choke point, Fuse on top of the head, force them to run away a little bit, could be used to open things up. So definitely. Are there any more possibilities for new operators here on Bank? But they're all pretty niche. Yeah. No, I think a lot of the operators we've seen we'll see again. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't really think. Uh, like, at least until like you've done slap your head against a brick wall three or four times with those those core five that we've seen in most of the games. Yeah. No need to change it up unless it's really not working because there's, there's such niche, such small little things that the chances of them spinning an entire game, you'd have to get perfect execution on it. Exactly. So we'll watch and see. I really want to see how they start, shall we? As we mentioned, you expected or we all expected like a, a basement start until that's gone because of how close range it forces you to go. But we did see teams start with the kitchen and the trophy room to begin with. So it is, I honestly kind of forgot about that spawn and it is totally, I'd say a 50-50. They're both super defendable. Um, you know, with, uh, what is it, the kitchen, the trophy room not having that window you can actually use. Yeah, it's just that uh, one window it. access, which you can cover from the other bomb site or even exactly. from the dining room, which you can therefore can look through both bomb sites and cover that one entrance for the right. trophy and room. And unless the attacking so. team controls the top, they just, it's a very hard push to make. And then the basement, obviously, just a favorite on every map. Any map you can go down, you do. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> oh. It's another map which we actually saw a lot of Bandit on the defending teams. We yeah. didn't see that so much on House. Oh, sorry, not on House. We did we on House. We didn't on Oregon because of how big and open their map is. His, his SMG a little bit better in their shorter ranges. The House brings uh, the, the um, basement, uh, the kitchen in the trophy room, sorry, of Chalet brings in that right. really tight trophy room window engagement. Bandit's uh, SMG is, is brilliant. So maybe we start seeing him back where we didn't in that last game. Exactly, yeah, definitely. Now, we do obviously have a slight technical issue with one of the, uh, I think it's Epsilon players, so you can see the admins messing around and trying to fix his screen. So, they are trying to keep you guys busy, keep you entertained for until time. that's happening. Exactly, it's totally it. exactly what it is. Of course, don't forget to go and follow Punji Stick on Twitter, myself. <laughs> the shameless Twitter. plug. Yeah, I'm just going to go with it now. It's, it's More importantly, Twitch. It. Yeah, don't do that Joe Fenny guy, because, I mean, he just I screwed would, up our yeah. names horribly. P -pod, but whatever. True Talent, NJP yeah. TV, Long Panky, that's great. You can go with those all you like. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> had to get it at least one today, right? Yeah, one solid, shameless plug. So I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm sorry for this, but this game will have shown us all of our teams, all eight of them, and our first play day being completely finished. Take them out of contention for now. Of the six we've seen, who is your standout strongest squad? Um, man, I think, honestly... I, I really can't say it. I really, I, I mean, uh, G-Bot's comeback G -Bot's was comeback really was impressive to me. They, they really did. It was kind of like they weren't ready yet. Maybe they were overwhelmed by the stage or something a little bit and then 
locked it in and was like, oh yeah, we're playing Rainbow Six. Yeah, it's like, but that, uh, it's, it's completely uh, understandable and it's not unheard of to see a team that's never played on the stage before just take a couple of rounds, whatever, to, to get into right. the groove. And, and they arguably did. Their that's heavy comeback was, uh, I'd, I'd say they stood out the most to me so far. Definitely. Just in case anyone's not quite sure what they're looking at here, of course, it's a round for every, or a point rather for every round you've won. Or every match course, they won. Yeah, right. every map right. they've won, sorry. Uh, G-Boss, of course, winning those two maps, getting those two points at the top. And then, of course, the, uh, the actual rounds they have won and lost there as the, the tiebreaker scenario for the end of our long road of league play to, to organize the standings towards the end of it. So, nice and simple on the look. But of course, we've got four more games to come today after this Epsilon Flamers map where all of these guys will reshuffle, as Sean mentioned, and play each other again. Right. And this is exactly what is left to come. That Flame is now on game after game. They're going to stay on stage after playing Epsilon, which, depending on how this game goes and how their mood and morale is, could be that's, quite a challenge yeah, for that's, them. Uh... Or it could be amazing if they win it and they're in really, really high states. They could be in a great spot for playing as Aero Black. But then it's Penta versus G-Bots, which is going to be a really good game. Yeah, now definitely. that we've seen G-Bots pull out what they have. c versus Warrior Team France, and then Epsilon back to end out the day with TCM, who started the day on this stage yeah. for us. First Anything, the last game. Big, is, big is it break Penta G-Boss? Is that what you're most looking forward to in those, those next four? I definitely would like to see G-Bots go again. Yeah. Um, although it, I'm definitely curious now to see, you know, with Flamers having to go back to back again, like you said, if if they win, they'll carry that momentum. If uh, I would assume, you know, if they lose, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be really, really tough, especially uh, they'll get obviously a quick break. We'll go to a commercial. They'll have a little bit of time to sh right. shuffle and, and get out of their heads. But that's still very, very tough to go. Like, Aria played the first game of the day. They've had four whole matches to sit here and, and <laughs> relax and relax. forget how that happened to go back in again. Hang on a little Twitch line. Ten minutes. It's a very, very quick turnaround in comparison. So right. I hope for them that they're in good spirits, regardless of the result after this game. But, uh, we'll see. They could be very professional and um, Whatever. They could but we just are finally over. into game and we have our operator section. As wine cellar, snowmobile garage has been picked as our defense. We're starting in the basement as we predicted first time around. And, and there's once the again, five. There's our faithful five, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So let's look at the defenders because those are the ones that obviously swapped around. There's the band that we talked about that is nice and brilliant in these close quarter engagements in this tiny little garage. But Jaeger's in there again as well. Doc, which I know you're not the biggest fan of. Right. Um, it's interesting too to pick Doc with such squishy operator. I mean, they have two low armor operators. Three that, pulses. Three, as well. three, yeah. So yeah, they've got, yeah. yeah, three very mobile but very low armor uh, operators that, as you say, will likely just be completely finished off exactly. and not down but not outed. Even so if the they don't get shot in the head, a really that, good so. chance of yeah. being dead. Exactly, and if they're going to play as respected in such a huge map with such mobile operators, they're not going to be close to dock much of the time. Right. They're going to be very aggressive and roaming around with such mobility. So we'll see Although if interesting enough cars. that dock can shoot through surfaces with that gun. I didn't know that. Yeah. Floors, that's, uh, walls. That's interesting. That's quite a syringe he's got going on there. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Ash has got a drone up in here in this bedroom, keeping an eye on the top floor, making sure he can clear our way in through to here and make their way safely through the rest of the building. She knows the bathtub is clear. Oh, thinks the bathtub is clear. And goes to the uh, main lobby stairway. It wasn't a very thorough... It wasn't a very thorough search, For such to a be common fair. spot. Like, Proning in that bathtub is actually a really nice place to hide. Oh, you don't stick out at top at all. But he's going with it. Sledge does spot a Jaeger here on the top floor. So now there's three people on the top floor that know he's there, and they have collapsed in on every side. Epsilon lose their first player, thanks to Elation. Flamers get that man advantage. That's exactly how you clear the top floor. Very well played. Right, getting rid of the roamer that early is good getting news Getting rid of one roamer that early is the key point. There's three people still down by the objective, but that drone just missed. I don't know if he heard his footsteps, but that drone did just miss that character while running around that corner. So we'll see whether that comes back to bite them in a little bit as that just starts to make his way into that basement level garage. We do have Bandit actually sitting around here by the garage doors, potentially listening for a thermite breach, potentially just because it's a really good spot for him to cover that, uh, that garage. You notice how here they keep watching their back because that trap door above that entrance was blown and they Is don't want anyone to drop in. Oh, I missed that, okay, yeah. Don't want anyone to drop in on them from that, but here comes our first thermo charge. This will open up straight onto two members of Epsilon who have lost another player right now, and Rook is down on 2 HP as well. There it goes four, and it's 5v2. This is a brilliant opening yeah, execution for the Flamers. 
There's one member down now. Rook is down, but he has been upped by Rook right now, but uh, by Doc, but there's still only two in here. Epsilon lose, uh, pick off one kill, to take off a third. Now Legends has got four to fight, and he's got a minute to be worked off. He does take out one, but they're coming in around behind him. He knows this, he looks for two. Can't quite make it happen. A three for one is all it takes for Flamers to round out that first round. That, that was very quick. Beautiful push. Beautiful that push. Really, That's probably really the nice. fastest attacking team we've seen so far. Definitely the fastest attacking team. We've seen teams in the first games completely run out of time. Yeah. Not get a plan, not get anything done, not to kill everyone. Finish completely. And to this, but we still had a minute left on the clock, and they were taking out that last play. As there he is. Flamers, to me, just went from being underdogs to being a very much in contention for this game. That was. They keep playing like that, it's going to be a fast game. Yep, very much <laughs> so. Let's see if they do the same thing now that they are on the defending side too, because we saw a very aggressive defense in all fairness there from uh, Epsilon. They had three roamers, as we said, three right. very mobiles, but they were all picked off without doing anything really, and without importantly delaying the Flamers squad, which is why they had so much time to get to those bombs. Let's I see think the roamers were just it. moving too much. I mean, yeah. uh, the first one on the top floor was sprinting around in circles and got I mean, pretty much hit from every side. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he, he gets spotted by a drone, sprint to somewhere else, gets spotted by another drone, try and sprint somewhere else, gets spotted by another drone, and just got herded into right. gunfire, as it was, and just dropped off. Flamers have gone for a different bomb site here as well. Kitchen and Trophy Room, the one we talked about before, and have two roamers of their own at the moment. So we'll see whether they stick out at such the range they are. But here is a glass. Which is kind of surprising. I'd say it's less surprising given they know this bomb site, but it was a bit of a gamble to pick it without knowing that they were upstairs right now. Because yes, he's got this right. great angle here. You can see he's trying to pick in through those bomb sites, and that actually cuts off a big section of that internal hallway for the defenders and their mobility. But if he was in the basement, he suddenly has a lot less opportunities to use his range. Yeah. It's, uh, the roamers aren't, I wouldn't even call them roamers with this bomb site. Having the top floor is, you have to. Once you lose the top floor, these bomb sites go from great to terrible. Very, very true. So especially once you uh, can start shooting down into the kitchen through those wooden floorboards right. and that hole that's already been created. So Frost is in there holding that meeting room, but she's got a thermite. Uh, sorry, a Thatcher keeping her busy and keeping her occupied. Well, I had noticed more and more teams opening holes instead of reinforcing them. You know, you open and play it as opposed to reinforcing it. Yeah, that's a, a nice point to note. But right now we've lost two members of Epsilon already. Uh, Frost actually took out a player and then was down to herself. So she's currently down. So it's 4v3 until she's got back up. But Epsilon looking for these openings still can't quite find that little advantage they need to make that solid push into the objectives. Hansen and RCK, as if they're listening to me, three, immediately three. proved me wrong and bring it down <laughs> to a 3v3 as Frost is finished off outside. So now, Flamers with three members left in the objectives in very tight spaces, looking to hold it. And Pulse has just made that very, very crucial play. If he can pull this off now, he's dropped through the floor and is looking to come around behind RCK. RCK has no idea he's in here and he's... <laughs> I had a moment of fear. Yeah. I was like, QB missed him as he get past? But no, QB with that drop through the floor opens it up and gives the advantage straight back over to Flamers. I'm surprised how much basement they're playing on this. That's very, very true. Considering how hard to access his bomb set is from either up those stairs, because it's the only way to get up, basement at all, is uh, quite a surprise. Yeah, QB's looking there for anyone that's coming possibly to hunt him and he isn't finding anyone because one man's still outside with his sniper rifle. Looking for the feet of whoever may be in their room, but again, they are being very, very cautious and not showing themselves there for too long. And Legends is out there with the diffuser as well. Looking to get in through that window, plant it, and then defend it from outside. But Glass is taking some shots off now at Rook that's in that bomb site, and that's the last bomb man side. in there. 30 seconds left now, and Epsilon have control of the site. They get through the window, looking to get that plant down now, but here come Flamers, looking to try and retake it. Two very mobile, very active defenders alive. But, as you mentioned, very, very squishy. And against the glass, that does not take long to knock them no. down. Diffuser is down. 45 seconds now. Pixel finds out one kill, but immediately leaps over, and that means Glads is going to miss the shot, but he can't figure out where he is. He will take out Pulse before he figures out that he's inside, but it's not enough as out of ammo. Glads is left to try and pistol him down, and that doesn't work. He's an R4C, and the defuse will go through to Flamers, and they go 2 0 up. So far, they are not acting like an underdog team at they are all. Not. <laughs> I will give them a little bit of criticism. That comms wasn't wonderful. No. Glaz is shooting Pulse from inside, shoots him in the back, drops him down, still out the window goes Jaeger, and uh, 
takes him quite a while to turn around. He's being shot at himself before he turns around and realizes he's there. So maybe that could have been a bit clearer. Maybe they just genuinely couldn't figure out where he was coming from. Right. I mean, it honestly was a... Uh, most teams go outside when they play in trophy room. Most teams. Very, very true. So it was very surprising that both of them were inside. So now we'll see Epsilon switch it up on their... In fact, they yeah, they switched it up. They've gone for a smoke instead of pulse. So it's a little bit tankier on that defender, and it helps slow teams down a lot. Against fast teams, that, like Flamers wanted to be and were in that first round, smoke helps slow them down a lot without any right. choice of their own. They cannot get through that. But they are taking the same bomb site downstairs now. So trying to keep some drones alive, but Legend says nope. And Flamers looking to get this positioning again upstairs. Make sure they can... Spot out the Romans, hunt them down in the game control of the top two floors. So I noticed like they did before. most teams open up some kind of hole between A and B. I feel like typically it's standard to want to open up between the bomb sites, yep. but they haven't done any there of it. That. Is. There it is. That's the C4. As you finish your sentence, they, bandit they, through a C4. They, hear the us? <laughs> <laughs> they definitely like, oh, we forgot. <laughs> But, That's uh, right. But you're like, it's all right, and it's a perfect thing to do, but there's also no reason to rush to do it. Wait for uh, true, very everything true, else yeah. to be done. Like, things like reinforces that are the outer side, it's much more important you get those up fast. So Absolutely. No harm in waiting. Here we go now. We're looking for the first garage breach here. Drone on the walls, seeing the electricity. That's one battery down. Two left in Hansen's hands. Can he pull off this trick successfully? The drone just spotted him, so they know he's right around the corner. They do have grenades on thermite. But there's no way to get through. Noise. Flashbang comes under. Is that going to be enough noise to block the plant? He's got the right one. And down goes nope. the charge. Yeah. Very nicely done by Hansen. He's still got two batteries left, and there's only one thermite charge left. And it looks like Flamers have decided to give up that attempt and are giving up the garage doorway. Very nicely done by Hansen. Looking for entries on the other side. They've got control of this bathroom and main bedroom again, so... Ash, very much similar route. This notice is an Ash that's running a breach charges and her special. So she's going to make a lot of noise and make a lot of holes upstairs. Yep. Seen some Ashes that don't run the second set of breach charges, they just run smokes. Which we talked about earlier, and yeah, you pointed well, yeah. out to me they can, they do have a use every now and then to get every the plant again, down. But you were also right in the sense that so far in this tournament, we've not seen a good use of them. There was a couple of teams One. that used it in the basement for Oregon. Right. But to be fair, the smoke grenades didn't make too much of an impact in that situation. No. So, we see Flamer have actually uh, picked up one extra kill so far, and they've taken down that smoke. So, even though he's a bit tankier than Pulse, he didn't stay alive much longer. But they are down to close to their final minute. They had already killed almost everyone on Epsilon this time last round. This time, they are at 4v4. Four four. Four. Yeah, Thermite looking for that long-range kill away from Garage. Flamers, QB will pick up one kill and take the numbers to their advantage again. The Diffuser is on Twitch. She is not too close to any of the bomb sites yet. We'll That's frag right off the ceiling. Close. Twitch using that extra drone, trying to figure out where the guys are inside this A-bomb site. She knows there's some in there. It's actually just the one, and they can't figure out where they are yet. Epsilon pick up one, but right, Flamers one. immediately answer and Hansen's down. Now the plant can go down straight into the A-bomb site, and it's suddenly on to Doc and Rook to retake this A-bomb. The Diffuser is down, they've got 45 seconds to do it, and they're both stuck at the other bomb site. Here come Legends, and he gets the drop on Thermite, he's looking the wrong direction. He's down, but not out. As Doc pushes forward, Twitch starts to trade it, puts Doc down, but Doc gets himself back up again. Twitch cannot finish him off, so it's still too alive, but they're so incredibly low. Trying to walk right back, he can't quite right land it, him. but Legends is there to answer. So it's 1v1 now, as only one player is alive, one is down. He knows exactly where Smoke is. He's going for the kill, but Smoke lands the shot. It's not Smoke, it's... And you see again... It was Thatcher, my yeah. bad. I think, uh... I think they didn't open enough between the points. They had that whole wall that they could have been shooting into Wine Teller, and it was close still. All they did was C4 at the side, which gave them no angle into the point. You're exactly right. Doc, Doc had to run through what was effectively a very dangerous route through that tight doorway to fire back up that Thermite in the couple of rounds, and he got the kill because Thermite was looking the wrong way. Right. But if that hole had been there, he could have got a few more of those without right. actually exposing himself so badly. Right, they would have had much better angles. Much better angles. But hindsight is 2020, and Flame has still <laughs> won the round. They are three and zero up, and they are definitely not underdogs. They are now in the basement, having won that kitchen and trophy room bomb spawn, to see if and what they possibly do differently to the Epsilon defense. They've got to do something differently, because Epsilon's defense hasn't worked. No. Yeah. We do get a glass. But they're reinforcing in between the points, which... That's, uh, they were reinforcing one in between the points. The thing with this spot, and I'd like to see them do it here next to the door on that left as well, is if they do breach that garage, you can fire from the garage into the A-bomb site through those walls. 
Yes. See, so, I actually like that. I use that. I actually typically will make a hole right next to the door. And it, most people don't really look at it because it's between those two doors. It's such a weird angle inside, daylight to down, well, you know. I hate outside. to bring this to you, Punchy. Yeah. But there's a reason we're behind this desk and not on that stage. That's true. So I'm going to trust there. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so we'll see if it works they out. Are three and oh. hey, it may bite them. But then we see <laughs> Sledge looking to make his way into this garage door. Throws a grenade to try and catch that uh, Athalation out. The battery goes down. Can't pick it back up again, though, because the grenade is going to go off. It's going to both kill the battery and the charge goes down, and immediately Flamers have to pull back. So there is the breach from Epsilon. They've got that garage open, and just like we saw before, immediately, even on house, blow the garage and now go and put some pressure somewhere else. Look for a different direction. They've left Glaz out here because now he can really use his range from distance, where it's really hard for the defenders to see outside into right. the bright lights, and he can shoot back in. Really bright there. sunlight. Really bright sunlight. Very sunny snow. days. It's really hard. Flame, oh, Elation peeks into the spray and takes a massive, yeah, that's... massive round to the face. Unnecessary peak, to be completely fair. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But Glaz is holding it tight. Everyone else from Epsilon is now pushing the other end of the objective through the kitchen stairs and through that far garage. I will say that I'm reinforcing the wall but playing wine is definitely better than vice versa. Uh, the way that they were playing uh, the A bomb site before, be or I'm sorry, the B bomb site before, because it, um, you know, they can still see into the ski mobile. Or snowmobile true. a lot easier through that other wall they did not reinforce. QB getting a bit impatient there, trying to peek before the uh, Epsilon pushes come in, and he gets killed with ease down. But Pixar immediately returns a kill on RCK, but can't quite stop the plant coming down from Thermite. And again, this big, long, open corridor now is open, and I'd love to see Glass perhaps relocate to here. And they could really take control of that A bomb site with Glass sniping from this garage. They are trying to do it from range with a thermite on ACOG, though. They do lose one man, and we're back down to 3v3, but that bandit is still very low, and there are two Epsilon players inside the B-bomb. Jack a is doing left. all the work and keeping their attention up the other end, but now Elation has spotted these two up here. It is 3v3 still, but Elation is trying to see four out. Can't quite so pick up a kill with it, but cancel the defuse, and he will lose his life for it. Glass walks in, goes for the knife, and gets downed in the process. <laughs> God. Should have just gone for the shot. There are two downed players on Flamers, and one of the two remaining members of Esplan are on the floor. Pixor only has one to find. He's got to have a suspicion as to where this guy might be. He's falling a long way back. Pixar is actually getting his teammates up. Very wise play. It's now suddenly a 3v1, and there's nothing that Epsilon could do about Ooh. it. But Pixar didn't even Holy need his teammates. Pixar on his own, <laughs> picks up the kill, and Flamers go to match point without dropping a single round. Wow. That's uh, definitely not what we expected. 100% not <laughs> what we all the analysts expected. They have been training Absolutely. hard and 100% deserve this game. I'm very confused, I'm not going to lie, as to why Epsilon decided to back away once that bomb went plants. They knew two people were down. They knew there was only one guy up. Stay there, look for him to either push forward, he's either going to go for the defuse or he's going to get his teammates up. There's right. so many things. And instead, he gave him free, two free revives. And even if he hadn't died to that, that uh, Jaeger peak, there was then two other people he had to deal with. If he'd have just stayed a bit closer, stayed a bit more aggressive, he'd have been able to stop those revives. But, again, yeah. we'll see. And Sack, <laughs> Epsilon now switching up their bomb sites, having lost two defenses on the ground level, are going up to the kitchen and trophy room. There's that shotgun utility we mentioned before, making a hole in through that bomb site, and it gives perfect coverage on that window. And we do see back to the pulse on defense too, and then more smoke shenanigans. What do you get against smoke? Nothing. Nothing against smoke. He just, <laughs> no. There's no more usual. To be fair, I almost prefer smoke over pulse here, because you can set a smoke in that trophy room, in that B-bomb site, and that's the only window they can come through. Throw smoke on that window, and you can see out of it easily. They can't see in it. Right. You keep them out of there for quite smoke a long is time. With very the powerful smokes. in the daytime. Yeah, and he's perfectly mobile enough that when you're running around inside that trophy room, you're not going to get caught off guard by a grenade or a C4 or anything that comes through that window because you can be pretty speedy. Um, I don't know. Let's see if they can make use of the pulse somewhere else to make up for it. So far, with their three roamers, Epsilon have not had much success. Yeah. Once again, taking control of the bottom floor from both ends are Flamers, making sure they're not going to get shot in the back like they did before. Well, they still need to be careful of people dropping down through holes in the floor, just in case. We do see one member of Epsilon up here in the library. There's three members of Flamers close by. 
Ash doing the same thing she's done every round, going in through the main bedroom, throwing the, uh, the hot tub room, checking sure that's all clear. We obviously drone first and now making our way in, taking out cameras. Looking to clear that top floor. Jaeger had his opportunity to pick up that kill and missed it. Flame Look is answered by taking Ash out Rook. Just come back. Just. <laughs> yep. Oh, quick run away. And uh, now I'm keeping this Jaeger busy. Twitch through this barbed wire is making a hell of a lot of noise, but it's fine again. And Flame has picked up another kill. Epsilon's rumors. Drop. I mean, Brook's not even a roamer, and he dropped. He peaked not way too early. Jaeger, on the other hand, in that top floor has now been killed off after Ash located him. And they're not delaying them too far, and they're definitely not hurting them. So these rumors, having so many of them, is really coming back to buy Epsilon right now. Every time Flame is like, right, we're ready to go for the bomb push. They're in a 5v3 or a 5v2 yeah. situation. They're, Epsilon's roamers are just not winning the gunfights. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not that they're fighting straight up 1v1. They're always fighting 1v2 from both right. directions. Yeah, no, and they're, they're often just looking the wrong way when the guy peeks from behind. Exactly. So, Flamers has been having If you're going to have so many rumors, I feel that they should play closer together and back each other up. Right. And especially, they should have looked from the first or the second game even, it should have been very apparent that they needed to play closer together roaming. Yeah, exactly. But there goes Doc as well, and now it is that 5v2. Flamers start to group up with 50 seconds left. They are ready to push into these objectives. The two remaining members of Epsilon are pretty close, but one of them picks up a kill and starts to level the numbers out. There's still so many drones left here for the Flamers squad. Some in kitchen, some coming through the trophy room window. So they're going to track down these two members and immediately collapse in on them. One they know is there. There's Whoa. Flamers going through for the trophy room, picks up one. Does get oh. killed on the flank from RCK, but he's still got three to find, and now they know exactly where he is. C4 goes out, doesn't pick up any kills. He's only got that shotgun there, so he's got to stay at quite a range. Looking for a cheeky rotate up top. Doesn't have any of the trap doors open that he quite liked, though. Gets into dining room and is immediately dropped from long range, and with a 5-0, our first 5-0 sweep. A sweep. An absolute Flamers make sweep. it look easy. Epsilon's got to be hurting right now. Epsilon does got to be hurting. That genuinely lost me for words quite a bit, but yeah. we're going on to thank. I would be interested to know, especially if anyone in construction, to tell me who picked each of these maps. Now, if yeah. Chalet could be Flamer's map, maybe that's their map and that's one trick pony kind of thing. Maybe that's what it is. If Epsilon have spread theirs out and learned five, as they told us, maybe they pick Bank and they're going to have a better time here. Right. Like to think I mean, Epsilon coach did showing. say they are a newer team. Yep. And uh, so. so, you know, maybe they just don't have that, that synergy, like we talked about before, to really make a good push on the attacking. And uh, I don't know, maybe they'll make a comeback, like you said. Is all of that is very, very true, but I still, I, I can't help but feel, and it's going to hurt them even more again now here on Bank. They need to back off on the rumors and bring in some more turrets. Definitely. I record them. Like, people to sit closer to the objectives, people that aren't going to die so early on in the round. Especially in a bank that is, or, <coughs> sorry, in a map that is as open as Bank. Yeah, exactly. The roamers are at a huge disadvantage. They can get seen by so many more angles and they're playing with smaller range guns or shorter range guns. Yeah, and so. we talked about it briefly earlier. The vault is, it's a vault, it's super small and tight and it's great for some machine guns, but if you successfully defend that bomb, you're then forced upstairs. The next right. one most people take is the archives and the teller's office, mm -hmm. which is great for attackers again. So you've got the whole lobby to look over. It's a massive open space. Glass is going to have a great time with it again. And even on the uh, the other side of the bomb site was the um, alley access. There's big open square spaces where attackers have so much room to play. And if you've got so many roamers running around the, the rest of that big open map, they're going to get picked off. And then you've got five assault rifles staring down at your little right. rock and rook uh, that are locked in these two very small spaces being pummeled from every angle. It's just going to bite them down again. Yeah. So I'd like to see them switch it a little bit. That's it's going like to be tough for uh, well, to be fair, They are taking... Uh, or these defenders are taking that uh, that basement room first, of course, lockers and CCTV. So they don't need the uh, the lack of roamers here. They want mobility. You want very nimble players to go from one end of this bomb site A to B and back up whoever is needed and wherever the push is coming from. So right. from this basement level, mobile mobile players are good. You just don't want them to leave this basement. Attackers have discovered the location of a bomb. And of course, on our attack, we've got exactly the same. But we do have a glass despite the basement. I'm expecting he's going to come in through the garage. Mm -hmm. And we'll have him sit behind that uh, armored car, slash ambulance, whatever the hell you want to call it, down in the back, firing all the way up in towards that B-bomb. And if they perfect world, they get that plant in that little corridor, in that B-bomb uh, meeting office, he can completely cover it from that garage. So. Right. 
I'd imagine that's where we're going to see Glazzy. Oh, we'll have to watch and figure it out. He has obviously spawned outside. And he's going to make his way through here. There's no reason for Glazzy to spawn out the back, to be fair. It's too infinitely small and cut off if he comes through alley access. Always got to make that push down through garage or at least through lobby where he's got the range advantage over everyone. Right, it looks like he is going to make the garage push, just like you said. Uh, let's check up top there in case someone jumps out from lobby to shoot him, but he's going to drone his way into the garage itself before he makes that peek, and he should be able to see the feet there. He does, but he reveals himself. I personally wouldn't have revealed that drone. No, he had it. Just let the guy sit behind it and think he's got know it. That you're oh, I, think he, I think he did it to spot. I think he jumped out to spot so his teammates got a better location on the, a better idea in the location because as he came out of camera, there was two of them ahead of him. And now, interesting to see Hansen actually moving inside with the glass. But I mean, Not they are in voice comms. I would still just. There's three cars in the yeah, place, you know, he's call it out. the first car. Like, it's, right. it's not a tough call now. So, I don't know. Interesting. No way they seem to do it. Sledge opening up every trapdoor. Even if you don't plan to go through it, just open them all up, providing you don't get shot down. Right, it makes them nervous. Attention. But yeah, the more open up more open. opportunities, give them more things to watch, make them feel a little bit less safe every time they look somewhere. Now, doing exactly the same now with the entrance. Destroying that deployable shield, making sure he gets a nice bit of free movement as he comes down those stairs. And Flamers, leaving this four-man defense downstairs, I really, really like. The trick is, where is that fifth player? All right, there's so much, so many places to be downstairs. You hardly need roamers anywhere else. Maybe one. So QB is just upstairs in the uh, the cubicle room, and it doesn't look like Epsilon have realized he's there. They lose their first player, Boros, losing that to that uh, Super 90. He knew Frost was in there. He droned it. He went Almost got for it, it too. and did it very nearly, but could finish it off. Throwing smoke grenades. I'm, I'm still waiting for QB to come in here and stab him in the back. Legends will finish off Pixel. Now where's QB on? I'm completely lost. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Forget QB. They're pushing those <laughs> the bombs. They got 50 seconds and they're trying to get down these stairs. Glass again in a very, very small space and then smokes himself off. So he's giving himself even less range to try and get down these stairs. I'm not sure I agree. And look, his DMR without the scope on down here is very, very powerful in the one or two hits for the kill. Yeah. But I in a game at this level, with headshots being one-hit kill, I, I don't feel like it's, it's better not worth than the any of the other LA5s or whatnot. As we do see LA5s used to pick up one more Flamers player, and giving Epsilon this player advantage. 4v3, 20 seconds left, and they're down to 4v2, and inside the objective, they've got the Diffuser very close to B. And one up and getting in the guy with the lowest health. Yeah, no health on this Frost at all. They knew roughly which direction he was in. Let's not underestimate the Super 90. They I didn't hear him drop down, but he picks up one kill, and now they know exactly where he is. He's got three to find, and he anticipates they're on the wrong bomb site. That's going to make it tougher for him still. Now he knows they're in B. Looking to flank all the way a long way around. They've got guys up this end. He pulls Ooh, a C4 as he missed. picks the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I like the ambition, but... Uh, Never, never <laughs> the corner with a grenade or in your hand or anything like that's like rookie level mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> There's three people to find. You know they could be anywhere. Why pick a corner with C4 in your hand? <laughs> I don't know. But Epsilon do pick up their first round of this entire series, so that's got to be uh, feeling good in there. Yeah, they're tired tournament. It is very, very tight tournament. But uh, let's wait and see. <laughs> Epsilon going for the heavy mobility in their basement again. Which, and we talked about it, it's good. It's very nice to be able to move back and forth. But the key thing being no glass here on Flamers. And yes, he stayed alive to the end of the round. He got that last kill. Anyone could have got that last kill right. when the guy comes around the corner and C4 is down. <laughs> I, can, I don't like the glass pick on that attack. And uh, hopefully next time uh, Flamers pick that to bombsite. Because I no doubt will now that they failed it. Right. I'd like to see Epsilon to run something different. There. We'll wait. We'll watch. A little bit more reinforcement coming in the basement here then from Epsilon in towards the tunnel entrance. They have already sent two people outside the uh, box site. Three now as Jaeger runs upstairs. So we went from four people inside and close to the objective from Flamers to now having two people close to it from Epsilon. We've got a Jaeger up in the main lobby. He is doing a trap door, see if he goes back down again. And uh, again, they could fall prey to the same problems they had in Chalet. Lose too many people too fast. Right, yeah, they spread Suddenly themselves thin, and they know that, that Flamers are good at uh, playing together to find the roamers, you know? Oh, like that wow. beautiful play. Drones posted out, toes you around the corner. Does get down because it's a shotgun, but ultimately one kill for free 
goes towards Flamers on their attack. Three players coming in then from this tunnel. Thermite, Thatcher, always together. Looking to make this breach and make some pressure arrive from this A bomb site. Dynamic duel. Dynamic duel indeed. Or troublesome twosome. I like dynamic duel. The troublesome twosome, thermite and thatch. It's a mouthful. That's, that's it's too many syllables. We talked about them. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of teas. We do see Jaeger and Bandit. They're coming a little bit closer to the objective now. Jaeger standing on the stairs, is dueling with one or two players, keeping them busy. Yeah, Bandit was in the uh, garage for a little while, but now realizes there's no one coming that way and comes to back up his team. This I like from Epsilon. More players closer to the objective. They can trade kills. They can back each other up. They can help each other out. Right, I think they, they only went out for the reinforcements and then came back down. Yeah, exactly. That's Although good. Bandit is still cautiously peeking that garage, just making sure they get the information, making sure they're not going to get stabbed in the back from there. But you're right, he does keep darting back in to help out his team. There is one player left in here at this A-bomb site. Flashbang's going out from Twitch. She's got the diffuser. Is she going to go for some cheeky plants? She's trying. The plants go down. That was, that was ambitious. I like it, but I don't see a world in which that would ever work. And now Flamers are down with the diffuser inside the A objective where Epsilon can see it and four players left alive to try and defend it. And this Thatcher is as good as dead. Her Thermite, sorry, is as good as dead, let's be real. One HP. Or yeah, there. So he cannot pick anything without fearing for his life. But we're seeing more smokes coming out, which is brilliant play from Epsilon. Keep them away from the fuser, keep them away from the objective. Just delay it. The down to within a minute on their timer. You can see him. Can't make the mood. Can't, see. can't quite see him. He should have there. You can he see can that head. <laughs> Oh, the pre fight didn't quite work SMG. out. Jack drops him. 4H gets a second kill on Boros. And suddenly this is looking really, really good for Epsilon once more. 4v2. And they know roughly where those last two players are. Pete goes down and Ash is down. Sledge is doing his own. Leaps in. Does pick up the kill on Bandit. But thank you, Epsilon, for answering it straight away. Thanks for this time being close together. Exactly. Go. They tightened up the roaming. They're in. They tightened it up. They're there to answer the kills on each other. And they go 2-0 up on Bank. Flamers. Coming back now for their defense. I'd be very surprised if they don't take the lockers again, get back downstairs. Starting to think that Chalet was a uh, Flamer's map. Very, very possible that yeah. Chalet was, <laughs> we'll was definitely see. Flamer's map. We do see Epsilon taking that glass again. We'll see if he has any better luck in the garage this time or if he immediately just blanks it and goes somewhere else. But they've given up Twitch for it, and I can't help but feel Twitch in this locker space, providing you send someone else. Way more worth it. Yeah, send Sledge. Mm, maybe not Sledge, but let's see, who have they got? Send, send Ash through Garage, take Twitch, and take her in through uh, the tunnel entrance and the lockers. Ash is very, very remote, but very easily can take control of that garage nice and quick and simple. Even then rotate around back inside if he needs to. Right. Twitch inside with that extra drone to help control a bomb site. Brilliant, within, um, on top of everyone else's coming in that way. And you still have that super fast fire rate for when you're getting in close range from both Ash and Twitch. You're not getting here with Glaz. I just, I don't like that operator on this match. No, it's, I, I think Glaz, yes, it's an open map, but I think Glaz is better for maps with lanes, long lanes, like Plane. Yeah. Even though Plane is a close map, it's got very long halls that Glaz can sit in the back of and just pop faces. Exactly, and the only long haul on this map, really, especially when they pick the pump set, is this garage. Right. They went there once and immediately ran away from it. They try and get worthless. control of it. Otherwise, yes, that's one operator just negated completely. But we'll see. Flamers this time have spread out a little bit more. We do have one more in the basement. Once again being droned, sorry, from the garage, once again being droned out. Kills it this, off time this time he didn't but this time the drone up, I don't think. He is looking to push in there, though. He knows he's behind that side. Smokes off to the left in case anyone comes down that ramp. Legends has put a drone in behind it, but immediately has to run away as the shots start dinking off the top of the car. And he does not feel safe peeking into that Jaeger once again. So the one thing he's good for, he backed off from. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. If he starts picking up three or four kills from in here, I'll let him off. But last round, as soon as he was forced out of that garage, he was kind of a null factor, and the rest of the team did all right. the work. So do not like him. Do but not like. Do not like. <laughs> Two minutes left, and uh, Epsilon yet to really make any kind of opening. They are looking now from the opposite end of the uh, map. It's alley access. Not a surprise that no one's really spawning there. We've got a couple, but it's very hard to get through the doorway that's behind them. And this window, right at the start of the round, you tend to always have to go upstairs, otherwise you're just going to get choked out. Right. 
But now that the round's been a little way up to him, people have moved around, he feels safer going that way. And Flamers open up the killing for us. They pick up that first kill on Legends, and down goes Sledge, making it 5v4 on the defender's advantage. 125 now, and Epsilon are still a long, long way from any of these bomb sites. Ash is in this tunnel. We know there's someone pretty damn close to the exit. But has she figured out? As we do see Glass finally coming into this garage, looking to try and take the challenge on with Jaeger. And I think he that's panicked. That's why he failed. I think he panicked. Panicked, definitely. And I'll give you that's why he didn't push in there before. But before, he had two other players on that ramp with him. Right. Why didn't they all push in, give him control of it, then back off and leave him on his own? Why did he go in when he was solo as opposed to when he had support? QB picks up another kill. 5v2 now for Flamers. And as if they. Wanted to prove me wrong. Epsilon make it 5v4, <laughs> but it's a nice trade back. QB gets a kill and goes down. It is sort of what we want to see here from Epsilon. But thatching out very, very low health for his troubles. They have got control of the CCTV room end of this bomb, but they cannot get into this A side itself. And now without Thermite, they're not going to get through these reinforced walls. So they've got to come through this very, very tight doorway that has two Flamers players staring at it. Barbed wire taken out, but in goes Ash. Gets pruned very quickly, but gets straight, straight into, into a frost trap. trap. And Flamers is there to answer. Boros, sorry, is there to finish off the follow-up player with her Super 90. That Gotta is, look uh, at the floor. That's the way to play the traps. Just right to where they're going to strafe to. And a very nice flank there, too. Right at the perfect time. As soon as you know one person's down, you know they're both close, because then only and they, two left. They don't get the point indication that he hit the trap, so he's no. probably stoked. That was also Shoots sound that guy, well. and then... Sound, sound from the players yeah. that were on the other side of the wall. We'd have definitely heard it go definitely. off, but you're yeah. right. It's such a satisfying sound, Boom. too. Two kills. It is a very that satisfying thump. Sound. It's also like... It didn't happen there, but like, it's the most satisfying kill cam to watch. If it's the end of round kill cam, it's a trap. <laughs> just see it's this just guy running through the, the map floor. and then just suddenly thunk. Ragdoll. Off. Just yeah. ragdoll on the floor. <laughs> I love it. This just makes me giggle. Different bomb site again now from Epsilon. Switching it up once more, taking this uh, office area and kitchen room. Two very, very big open bomb sites that are very easily accessible from that alley access spawn. But as we've seen all the teams do before, don't think we're going to see anyone spawn in the alley. We're going to see them spawn on the other sides of the map and clear out the rest of the building as they work towards this first. Yeah. But once again, it's spread out, and this is where Epsilon have failed before by spreading out too much. I do think having one person put pressure on that window helps. It does definitely spread their attention, and it is a... Uh... But I'd argue that you start at the other side, as you see three of these guys do, clear through the building, and then once definitely. you get to a certain point, go up over and then start putting pressure definitely, on the back window. Definitely. Like, there's no reason to spread yourself thin and just sit at that window and go, right, I'll wait for you guys to get here in two minutes' time. Like, yeah. At least go help them to begin with and then go join up. With Make them. the push around, right. And here we go. Flame is starting on the street, coming in straight through the basement first. Make sure this level is clear as they head their way up. Of course, these teams won't always send a drone into the object room and, and mark it on the map, like you said, Masu in, in casuals and rank. But you can figure out where the bomb sites are but the points, just by seeing where they play. But the, the scan points. It's all about getting to the top of that score, but we very rarely see. So, while it may not show up on their map, they do know exactly where it is. And here is Sledge, as you mentioned, putting pressure on this back window, joining in, keeping eyes on people, keeping their attention focused this way while his team start to look at other openings. And they've now realized Boros is down there. And uh, I think it's uh, Rook. No, it's Elation that's down there. They're realizing they have a lot of control actually over that basement Ooh. to begin with. But 4H decides otherwise, goes straight down to the Super 90, picks up one kill on Elation, right at the bottom of those stairs, and goes straight into the vault. This is successful roaming from Epsilon. This is what we didn't right. see them have on Chalet. Their players were out and around the map, but they never got kills. The basement, I think, is an awesome place to roam on this map. I really do. Why? Just the... They're, they're not really playing, like, the drop downs or anything. You kind of have, like, two staircases. They're not going to move super slowly through the basement because it takes a lot of time to get there. So if the objective isn't in the basement, the attacking team, if they do go through there, has to move quickly. So... And it gives you a lot of access up to all corners of the map through the various staircases, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's perfect. And so... Uh, and with a shotgun, you can pretty much just sprint, especially yeah, with the Super 90. Sprint the entire time, <laughs> catching by surprise, one pop, I'm like exactly there. So yeah, exactly. Great access to the rest of the map, popping up underneath them, and we do in fact see coming up behind Sledge right here. It's Frost with the Super 90. He's going to peek in. Rook's going to see him there. Rook's going to call out that he's there. He's about to get the pinch. Rook does actually fall he down. She picks one. up that kill. But then... Was that? What? What's that? Did he get down from? <laughs> what downed? 
uh, what stray that bullet. I don't know. Well, <laughs> QB has been down. He's now stuck in a spoon. Right. Oh, place. Big Sword does get one more kill, and we see all the kills flying in now. As Epsilon is starting to take out downed Flamers players. 2v2, but QB's on the floor, so it's all on Thermite to try and get him back up and find two kills. Does feel safe enough after peeling off Hansen. Well, I don't know if the other team knows they downed him. I think he honestly got shot in the fray with the other guy. It's, you may uh, be right. Yeah. You may be right perfectly. Although he seems to think he was shot from that stairwell, which is what I expected, because I thought 4H was coming up there and shot him in the back. Right. But now they're into A bombsite. They have control of both A and B, but Epsilon have the diffuser, and there's 15 seconds where they've got to pick it up and get back. Smoke is constantly locking them off. They're both very low, so going into that is a terrible, terrible idea. They're taking more and more damage, but they've got four seconds to pick up the diffuser. They go for up, he's down, and Epsilon with a super 90 take out the last two Flamers players on the single remaining second of the round. And yet again, just the power of smoke to just stop a push. Yep. Once you know where they are, you can just stall. There's so much time to be stalled if you just have all three smoke grenades still. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, That's exactly where the, the smoke gadgets are really, really strong. In those last minute, 30 seconds of the round. It's such a versatile waste gadget. So much time it does with so that. many things. 4H picks up that Super 19, goes 10 and 2. It literally <laughs> got Epsilon in his backpack and uh, helping take this team to victory, roaming very, very successfully on this map, if not the other one. But it's three and one now, Epsilon, having a much better showing here on bank compared to their chalet play. But we're switching it back up once more. Time for Flamers to go for their defense, and they are taking another different bomb site. Tellers and Archives. This is one we're talking about. We expected people to use as their second and defensive the site. And this is where I'd like to see a Glaz on the attack because you can shoot all the way across the lobby. You can shoot from the car park in there and start to pick people off. Right. Or even just from the other side. If you sit here at the bottom of this little uh, square stair area and into the Archive room. But this time they haven't taken it. This time there is no Glaz. <laughs> Finally, as a purpose, they don't have them. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, watch and see. No one down in the bottom level, no drones there either, but we do start seeing RCK. His drone's going to be caught out by Smoke and Elation. Uh, 4H has got his in there. Keeps the light. So he's got a little bit of knowledge of some of the upper floors, but again, will they still be there? Elation gets spotted. They know he's, in fact, right on the other side of that window that uh, one of their players is about to push. Three players coming in now down trying to shoot cameras. <laughs> That's a rough camera to hit, though. <laughs> it's it's something with the angle. I don't know. It's... It is true. We just see two players pushing in through the gear. In fact, they've gone up the top again. So they're going in through the lobby. Ash using that rappel to get through these top windows. Not quite finding any openings. That's very hard to see in there, too. So it's a very, very With the 1X, too. Yeah, with the 1X on top of it. I don't it. know if I'd do that. I wouldn't, the, without the I know for a fact I wouldn't do that. I, I definitely would not. Not confident enough in my, uh, <laughs> my eyes for that. Can barely hit stuff with the ACOG, never mind a 1X. So QB's upstairs again now on Pulse, looking for anyone roaming around in the lobby. God be careful, he hasn't been spotted by this drone that's out there. Elation gets dropped now, first kill now for Epsilon, opening it up, giving that the nice numbers advantage here in the kitchen. <laughs> and they onto the wall, into this B-bomb site. Very hard for them to stop this wall going off. Not that one, this one. Perfect. Uh, obviously, no bandit, no uh, mute. Very, very surprised if we see a mute. So these walls are easily, easily breachable. And actually doing the other side too. So now there's two extra doorways that Epsilon have to play with and uh, that Flamers have to pay attention to. Why do you think mute fell off as a character to play? You used to see him a lot, never see him now. We'll get to that on the analyst. Skip it, because yeah, I need to, to think about it. But QB <laughs> using his pulse with a perfect flank and does pick up two kills onto the attacking Epsilon players as they started to focus on the bomb. He gets in and shoots him in the back, but it is now a 3v3 again, and this time QB stayed alive in the process. Three beat charges left on Ash, but she's used all of her specials, and the three remaining members of Flamers are close to the objectives as QB finds herself a third kill and now completely negates one side of the map. The last two remaining members of Epsilon are in the same direction, and this is very, very powerful. They're literally on top of each other. Very, very powerful for Flamers. He also knows he's down the diffuser. Grenade goes up one side, but he can't find that fourth kill as he does get dropped down. We're back into 2v2, and that unlocks the diffuser again now for Epsilon. They can pick this up and reshuffle. They've got 50 seconds, 45, which is a lot to play with. Oh, as Torok takes one, one kill. And again, a slight miscommunication from Epsilon. Didn't seem to know where he was coming from. Right, yeah. Because as soon as no you out that door, look, he's looking the complete opposite way. Right. He killed them from both in the same direction, so... A lot of confusion going on here for one reason or another. These teams don't quite understand where these shots are coming from. Oh, three and two, a much closer map, that's for sure. As 4H is still 
rocking up there with the 12 kills now. Not Flamers cute. had a rough start, but they're uh, bringing it back yet it's again. Really, like, if nothing else can be said, they are learning a lot from round to round. As we saw our first, I want to say controversial operator picked here. IQ. Wow. I just saw that one. IQ. Do you All want right. to explain why we've seen an IQ? Do I want to explain yeah. why? Or do you know why we've got an IQ? I have no idea why we'd have an IQ. So obviously IQ's gadget everyone considers is useless. And Completely. in most situations, maybe some pistols through smoke, but it, it's, it is useless. But other than that, she is a very good operator. Two armor, two uh, mobility, very, guns very great. mobile. The guns are brilliant. Some would say, or some people do say, some pros included, say she has the best gun in the game with the AUG. A lot of people are big fans of that. And as we saw uh, both um, Epsilon Coach and Aura Coach mentioned before when it came to the shields, a lot of the shield choices aren't so much for the gadgets as they are just for player preference, player comfortability. Right. And if you're more comfortable on IQ than perhaps any of the other two armor to attack um, operators in the game, go for it. Player. She's using the 5 type 2, so after I talk about the AUG, scrap that. But 5 5 2 is also a very strong, very high power weapon. So we'll see what he can make happen with this. She's been swapped out for that Twitch, so again, she's there as like a, a DPS or she's there right. to, to bring that pain and to be close and perhaps and to want I still think the fights. value of. I mean, Twitch's gun is. No argument, fantastic. And then the value of that extra drone, even if you don't do any damage or take on any devices with it, just that extra intel, I think is huge. So the difference I think we're going to see here compared to the Xbox Pro League is that how quickly drones die, which is why perhaps that extra drone has been the game. As... Maybe if it's not been surviving very long, right. go without it. Um, I was going to say that taking the 552 when you're on the bomb sites that are upstairs, is more useful because of how open it is, but they're not upstairs. They're back down, so they're in the basement. Right. So you're not getting that long-range engagement. So Twitch is famous again. It becomes incredibly powerful. Right. But we do see Flamers looking for that push in. Flashburn's coming into the tunnel. RCK looking to kind of kill the drone. But while they bait thing, they think they're safe keeping him busy with the drone. Jack is there to SMG kill out that first push with that Always. silky, silky headshot. As you mentioned, SMG 11. RCK catches a nade to the feet, doesn't do too much damage as Epsilon pick up another kill on the other side of the map and Thermite finally realizes he's not getting through that doorway, especially not alone. So it's time to adjust and group with his team. It's now 5v3 in favor of the defending Epsilon squad. This win will take them on to match point and draw out this series should they win it. But they still got a couple of rounds left to do here. QB upstairs again, looking for some kind of cheeky opening. Anyone that might be lurking around up here, Pixel's here with him. But there's no one on that floor. Or was it? I'm on that floor. Uh, now Boris, sorry, killed yeah, Dante. Boris came down the stairs. 4H dropped him with a perfectly timed room. And now the last two members of Flames All were upstairs. They're still looking for this one Roma. They're still looking for that Jaeger that's done so much damage to them so far. And he's out. He, yeah, he's he's out. long gone. They can't find him. Not in the time they've got left. So they drop straight through into RCK's shotgun. And he will immediately leave QB now. 1v5. Looking for a player he knows is on this floor, a player that he knows is underneath him. And he's going to peek down, possibly into the shotgun. He did see the peek, but he doesn't get the kill. And QB falls Whips to it. give Epsilon another win and put them on match point. Nice and silky key kill. Peeks at one angle and then moves a couple of steps further forward to move his head from a slightly different place to re-peek. Doesn't get that insta-pop. Very nicely done. Four rounds to two then, and we are back into the basement now for Flamers' defense. What could be their last stand there in this is. play day one, as it is. We've still got four more games to come after yeah. this. Yeah, I do. But the five is back. Attackers need to locate Very much so. No more changing it up. Right. I still don't know about the IQ. No, she didn't really do a whole call. lot, but to be fair, I don't want to judge IQ based on that round because none of them did anything. So right. It <laughs> can't really be <laughs> not all her fault when no one did anything. So we'll see. Maybe we'll see her if they perhaps pick up this win, have another chance to attack. attack we'll uh, we'll see if they trust the and put faith in her again. But it wouldn't surprise me if we don't. <laughs> so Flamers on their defense once again in the basement, spreading out, making sure they get the two uh, trap doors done. Pixel heading down into the garage again. He had such success there last time, killing out that glass, locking him down, keeping him locked away, and then finishing him off eventually. Going to try and do a similar thing again. We do see Boris upstairs as Frost just to reinforce and then go straight back down to where she again had a lot of success with that Super 90. Blocking off that tunnels, making sure that CCTV room is on lock. And Flamers 
showing us, as they've done time and time again, that they like to keep lots of players close to their objective and not spread out too far. Drawing scouts to begin with from Epsilon. Making sure some of the obvious rooms are clear, making sure the easy spots are open. But the problem with droning for this long in Thatcher's case is he's cleared they a lot of rooms move. with that. But yes, no, what's to say in the time it took you to clear the other two rooms, they can go in the first room you checked. Why? Yeah, right. He could be on the other side of this window now. A little too far so ahead. I prefer short range drones. Well, they got drones personally. everywhere. <laughs> That's true. He's not the only one. A lot of right drones. Now. Pre-firing a couple of wall spots. It's oh, like, right on him. Unfortunately, there was two walls between yeah. Kiwi there, yep. but that would have done quite a bit of damage. <laughs> Should he have been one wall over? But this is two members of Flames Wars upstairs, and these are dangerously close to Frost. They know he's in there. They've been droned out. They've got the information that there's people upstairs in that uh, teller's room. They can't quite land the wall banks just yet. Epsilon. Control the lobby, control the top of the stairs in the elevator area, and they're controlling this office space. But they still know there's two people left to find upstairs. Pixel's still in the garage. Elation underneath the uh, elevators now. Control that drops there. As Boros actually makes a sprint for a very different position. See if he can make this very work. Late room, yeah. One minute 30, though. Floor. To be fair, Epsilon are no very close to this objective. So a late room like this could be the round winning move if it stabs them in the back when they're already low on time for trying to get to the objective. Right, yeah, they're down to a minute, still 10 up again. We've seen a lot of that today. Very much so. It's I think This three minute round time is very different to what anyone plays in matchmaking. Obviously, these guys are screwed with it, but it adds a whole other level of urgency to these teams, even if it is only a minute. Boris does pick up a kill after roaming to the very top floor and then coming back down, but he gets immediately down by Hansen and Knife. So it's a trade of one for one but every kill counts when you're only in the last minute of the round. Torek now knows there's one player pushing in through the A bomb site, and he's gonna try and keep him locked in position. Pixel still in the garage, looking to make sure they don't flank around from that way, but also keeping an eye on the stairs. as Isolation sits here in that elevator, making sure they don't drop down through the vault spawn. Still one player left upstairs from Flamers, though. Looking to see what he can do. QB gets up one, right, which wait, comes wait, in, wait. actually runs into teammate Fire as they're trying to take out Torek. Torek dying, doesn't down anyone. Legends down Peaks or as he peeks from the garage, but the diffuser has been planted in this A bomb site and saves him on the timer. Now a 3v3, but it's on Flamers to retake this A bomb site, and this is such an easy spot for Epsilon to defend. Uh, yeah. Now he's looking for cheeky prone kills through the doorway. A little bit of pre-fire came out from Hansen again. Flashbangs just to slow them down even more. She doesn't need to peek until they get close to the defender, uh, diffuser rather. She's just keeping them pinned. Torak, she doesn't know this, but has actually made his way inside. So could get the drop on her if she's not careful. Elation nope. walks forward with the C4, but gets shot from the roof down. Torak, however, will answer onto 4H. Now QB is trying to flank around. Does only down one player. Torak's pushing in the back. Downs wow. them both. Got to go for the defuse. Does he have enough time? It's going to be incredibly close. It's a seven second defuse, and he doesn't get doesn't it done. The time. That pinch, though. Whew. Whew. Almost had it. <laughs> Almost Epsilon had. take it. Five rounds to two on bank. A very, very different team to what we saw before, but I cannot express how impressed I am with Flamers and Chalet. That was absolute Shaken. whitewash. Shaken. Uh, but Epsilon going to be happy to come out of that with Definitely. a five for two, with a draw and ultimately in that one v one point apiece. Especially after that 5-0 sweep, they're going to be happy one. about coming back. Yeah, very much so. What I'm really, really excited about for this in league as a whole, to have eight teams that in theory, based on their they go for rankings, were very skill disparate from top to bottom. Right. To have only one game go 2-0 and everything else be draws map to map, that bodes amazing things for the whole Pro League season coming forward from here. And with respect, that 2-0 was almost also a tie. Yes, that was also except for their close. reverse sweep there. Yeah, exactly. So, and it went to overtime, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, like very very close game, even if the result says otherwise. But we're gonna have Flamers straight back on this stage after a. Uh, Obviously, as you can see, very short or lovely interview with Sean. Thank you so much, guys. Wow, Turok, talk me through that. First off, that first one, 5-0, and oh, the first we've seen so far of the Pro League, which sounds impressive because it sounds like it's very first, but it is really impressive. Talk me through it. Uh, well, Charlotte, uh, to be fair, first we, I have to introduce my team. Uh, as you can see, we don't even have a sponsor or the same, but uh, that's mostly because uh, we didn't even think we would make it here, guys. So I have to thank ESL Italy, or I don't know who, but we got here. And so due to that, uh, we tried and follow what the best uh, teams do. 
Uh, we, we saw the, the most played maps are like Chalet and the others, and we didn't know much about Bank, I have to admit. So uh, we tried and studied a bit Chalet, uh, and that worked. it worked. I got lucky, I got a lot of uh, shot through walls, that happens. Uh, so I think we did great. And we're look, uh, I hope we didn't bore you because we're going to play again right soon. We're against the uh, Aira. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be able to reply any 5-0. Listen, whatever whatever it was you were doing, whether it's luck, whether it's shooting through walls, whether it was just making it up as you went along, you did a fantastic job and you really took it to a strong team that a lot of people had expectations of. Now, you talked about your team coming together. What's it been like for you now being here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship here on the stage with Rainbow Six Siege in the Pro League? You're in here now. What's that like for you and the guys? Yeah, it's uh, it's good that you made it so long because it's so big. I have to uh, take the words from the guy that performed. I don't know, I don't remember his name, but he did the opening ceremony and he said that, hey, this is like the stage of the uh, the dream of any gamer. So I, I, I didn't even thought about being in Poland two weeks ago, which is when we know I was we're going to Poland. What? And this is fantastic. I just hope uh, we can give a good show uh, the match after as well. Well, we're incredibly happy that one of the eight teams that's here in the Pro League is from Italy. You're going to be playing up again now, and you're going up against Ari. Did you see them play earlier? Uh, I, of course I did. Uh, I was um, cheering for G... For, uh, t uh, I remember them as the Wise, so TCM. But uh, they, uh, both teams did a great job. Uh, I don't know how we're going to fare against them, but uh, we're excited, and we're looking forward to it. Well, we just hope to give a good show. Well, we hope you give a good show. You're definitely doing so. Thank you so much. Round of applause. What a wonderful guy. Um, yeah, guys, that's that's it. We're, we're technically through the, uh, what, what should we say, the first day or the first half. We're now going to do it all over again, so lots more to do. But before we even start doing that, we need to break it down. And there's one man who can, and he's Munchables. Thank you very much, Sean. And you can see, obviously, Daflame is really kind of overwhelmed with that first map victory, and, wow. and rightly so. 5-0 yeah. was the score against yeah. Epsilon. Kind of, everyone was sort of saying, leaning towards Epsilon, saying Epsilon were going to be the favourites. And then, I mean, <laughs> I was pretty shocked. Like the I only 5-0 we've seen all day as well. And I feel like I should probably introduce us before we get right into the conversation. <laughs> so, obviously, I am Munchables. With me is Aaron, or True Talent, and then we've got Crip as well yes. coming in from GBot. So welcome to the desk, my friend. Thank you. Now, GBots, you've been incredibly successful so far today. Our only team to go 2-0. So, how are you guys feeling off the back of that? You must be pretty over the moon. Uh, now we are feeling really good. Uh, we have um, more options now because we have two points. We can play now more calm, but not a lot because we can lose also. So we have to maintain uh, our mentality okay all the time and try to play our best for the second match. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely a good position to be in that. Yeah, definitely. for sure. Two zero is always good. I mean, un undisputably the top seed currently with your own being the only team to be 2-0. So fantastic position, as you say. So one thing I want to touch on uh, about GBOT specifically, one of your team compositions, we were talking to Jen before on the desk who, actually Jen, shout out to Jen, she got the prediction right in the first map yeah, yeah. Uh, for the flavors. But Fair play. Um, she was mentioning how you guys used to use uh, recruits with shields uh, in some of the go fours. And now you've swapped over to Montans. Could you go into a little bit more depth on why that strategy yes. changed? Um, well, at the start of the game, we played with Recruit because he has got a lot of speed, uh, more bullets in the weapon. Uh, you can right click fast and headshot everyone. But now it's a little bit nerfed. So, so we can't play more in, in an offensive style. Everything can throw you C4, can hit you in the head when you open your shield. It's impossible. So we are using the shield more in a defensive style because you have one more line of armor with the mountain, so we use it to more to plant. Yeah. You just turn around, they can hit you in your shield, you go plant very calm. So oh, don't okay. worry about that, we just try to push, try to play safer, just that. Kind of like, like turtle more defensive, gameplay defensive almost, just like type. push forward yeah. slowly. Like just, a wall, just, just hit a wall. Me, just hit me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's almost like just yeah. a wall moving forward. It's completely. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. So, another thing we were kind of talking about during that game, and specifically in that matchup as well. So let's let's touch on Epsilon here because they managed to come in in the second map. They won the second yeah. one five two after going zero five. Now we were talking about mentality. Yes. 
how on earth do you get back on your horse when you've just been zero fived by a team that mm. everyone kind of thought was underdogs? Mm. I mean, we'll, we'll talk to you first, Aaron. How do you feel like that mentality has to come through? What kind of mentality? They must do have you a have really have? strong mentality and think we just messed up and we can do better. Yeah. And they showed it. I mean, you were, you were talking to us before saying like how your mentality is pretty different to some of the players you've talked to. Um, I think the best mentality, and we're talking to you about this, is uh, you always should believe you're the best because you can't be the best yes. without believing it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the mentality I believe that you should go for if you do want to uh, get really far. And is that something Personally. that the G-Bots as a team kind of agree with? Is that your mentality or is it more kind of a take it as it comes? Or Well, um, we try to have always the best mentality we can have uh, because, uh, you know, every map is different. You yeah. can lose in the first one, but uh, the next one is completely different. It's a new world. You can win. Penta, oh, sorry, um, Framers won the first map in 5-0. I am really impressed about that, really, really. Um, but Epsilon just managed to come back Hold like back. that. Just mentality is a new map, so they won. Yeah. And it's a good match. It's impressive. Yeah. Fantastic. It's impressive. It's well, let's take a look at our brackets at the end of our game day one. Obviously, this isn't the end of our day, it's just game day one. We have two game days squeezed into today, so we're halfway through right yep. now. But let's take a look at where the teams stand so far. Obviously, we have G-Bots right at the top with their 2-0 victory. Following them, you can see the kind of lines of ones. We've had complete ties across the board, except for Sifu, obviously, who lost to the G-Bots. Just across the board, a complete kind of uh, sweep. And you can see the round difference because Dark Flame has managed to get that 5 0. They are going to be kind of yeah. technically in that second seed, but it's all. When, when you're tied in wins, it's, it can definitely go either way. And I'm we interested are, in remember. seeing what they uh, do in the next time, the next yeah, round. Absolutely. And can they keep it up? It is going to be them next as well. So let's yeah, take, yeah. let's just very, very quickly touch on our next match. It is going to be Dark Flamers who just had the most kind of successful map we have seen yet yep. in the Pro League. They're going to be going up against Aera. Now, let's just quickly touch on one of the players from Aera, Panix. We saw him in the first series of today, four versus one. one on Smoke. Yeah. I mean, you, you were talking to us uh, off stage, kind of how impressive that play was. Do you yes. want to kind of talk us through that? Um, Panix uh, has a moment, very, very, it's a, it was a very moving moment. It was a really fast situation. If you just go, you can die in, from every situation. All the enemies was in different positions. Uh, he just managed to play really calm, um, managing each one. Just uh, incredible, incredible. He used, uh, he killed the three guys. He faked the, the fuse, the, the, the bomb, and he killed the last one. I don't know. He is pretty impressive. impressive. Definitely the happiest yeah. moment <laughs> so far. I, so now it's a and I, I'm sure, like, if, if that kind of thing happened on your stream, I'm sure that would be instantly would a highlight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just then, instantly put there. Yeah, immediately onto YouTube. But yeah. that, that's not even... This isn't even just on a stream. This is on the Pro League. So just fantastic play from him. We're going to see whether he can repeat that performance after a short break as we head into game day two. And we'll see whether they can take on Dat Flamers, who suddenly look to be one of the favourites in the tournament. To I'm going to root for them now. <laughs> I mean, we'll have to see. We are going to go for a short break, though. But do not go anywhere, because because we'll be back in just a few minutes with the second half of the stream. We'll see you soon. Intel RealSense is all about changing the way we interact with computers. The way we interact with this game is entirely with our hands. It's a natural way to communicate. We want our computer to be able to sort of understand that movement because it's more human and more natural. Awesome. It's pretty easy to control, I'm surprised. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 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 <laughs> we use this camera to interpret natural forms of human communication, like facial expressions. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Another cool thing we can do with a 3D camera is we can create 3D scans. We'll actually take this and we'll composite it onto a figure. <laughs> I need to see what I look like as a princess.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the second half of our first day of the Rainbow Six Siege Pro League, coming to you live from Katowice, Poland, where we are at the Intel Extreme Masters Expo. And so far, we've seen all of our eight teams duke it out. They've played. The table is now set. We've got a team on the top with two points, a whole bunch of teams with one point, and then one picking up the rear with zero. But that can all change, because we're going through, we're letting them all play again. Basically, two days for the price of one. What does that mean for you? You're about to see more action. We've seen some really good games so far. I'm gonna tell you, I've been enjoying this stuff, and I hope you have been too, because that's exactly why these teams have come here from all across Europe, battling it out to be able to play in this Pro League. They had to qualify to get here. This is the Pro League for the PC for EU. There is, of course, the PC for North America, and then there's the same two regions on the X. Box one, loads of awesome Rainbow Six Siege action. Coming up now, we've got our friends from Italy who just did the first 5-0 of the Pro League, so they've got that under their belt already. We had a nice chat with Torek, and he was very open with saying he's excited to be here and also a little bit flabbergasted of what's going on. And standing in their way are Aria, who, of course, earlier on today took it up against, let me check here, um, the uh, team of, ooh, I can't even see them, I think. They were first up against TCM. So I'm sure that they're ready to get their fingers back on the keyboard and prove exactly why they're here. But enough of me talking. This crowd is beginning to fill up again because they know what time it is. It's Pro League time and none other than Rainbow Six Siege. So without further ado, from the stage, while the guys get warmed up, let's head over to the man who always can, and that's Panky. Thank you very much, Sean, and uh, welcome back to a nice, small, compact analyst mm. desk now. <laughs> Joe's back to the cast desk, and I'm here with the one and only true talent on our own. You still enjoying Poland? Are you still happy now that we finished game one of play day? I know it's hot. Yeah, I'm through, loving it. But, I'm uh, loving it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this next match. Really? Really. All right, fine. We'll go straight into the next match. <laughs> Ari Esports is his Dat Flamers. I mean, personally, Mitch and I talked about it itself. Flamers 5 0 sweeping in that first map, Chalet last guy on. Incredibly impressive. Why are you so excited for this match? I thought it was going to be the opposite. I thought it was literally going to be 5 0, 5 0 uh, with Epsilon. Mm -hmm. um, them taking 5 out of Epsilon. I really want to see what they do versus uh, Area. After seeing that play, why do you think they managed to take that 5 from Epsilon? What do you think they did so well? I don't, just everything right. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> much, That's yeah. true, exactly. Like every time and they if, cleared if, every floor, got every kill, won every firefight, yeah. and uh, were attacking every objective. Came out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, huge number advantage. So yeah, very well executed on Chalet. They didn't have quite as strong of a showing on Bank. Do you think that's mm. what it was? Do you think is they've got that one map down and nailed, or do you think they can still do it on some other? They were saying that they were a bit weaker. They felt a bit weaker on Bank, but mm. maybe Epsilon were like, come on, we need to do better than this. So maybe they pushed themselves further. Uh, it could have been a lot of different things. Yeah, we also had obviously Epsilon on there earlier saying how they focused on five maps specifically. Maybe Chalet was one of the ones they focused on a little bit. Yes, less. yes, yes, so possibly. Because it is a very popular one in, in the matchmaking world. Too. Apparently, yeah. That, that somehow, even though it's randomized, mm. it happens a lot. So maybe they felt they were okay on that without mm. too much practice. Mm. Flamers went, <laughs> no, this is what happens when you practice this map. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. 5 so. 0. Error obviously played TCM earlier on. Was there anything that stood out in that game that you feel Error need to improve on? Um. I don't know, really. <laughs> I, th I, think, I, th I think every team I've seen so far has been playing pretty much, you know, yeah. top level. I, I, mean, I can't see that, uh, after many gaps. Game day, we had so many draws. Is brilliant. It's exactly what we expect from the pro, or what we yep. hoped for from the pro. We didn't want everything to be complete one-sided sweeps, and we got exactly that. And even as we we're punching image before, even the one that did go 2-0 was very, very close to being a draw as well. Yep. So everyone is very evenly matched, and we've got so many now, so many more weeks now. We've got a kind of underdog who potentially yep. can, you know, maybe take it all. Flamers. Yep. And we've got so many more weeks where everyone can just completely learn and, and change and adapt. Yep. Let's look at the rest of our uh, Play Day 2 games. Penta Esports versus G-Bots. Jifu versus Warrior Team France and Epsilon versus TCM. Out of those three, what's your next most anticipated matchup? Penta G Bots. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll have to get that one. I think so. Uh, both teams really strong. Uh, both teams have got a lot of hype behind them. They, um, you know, people are saying that they're doing well. They are doing well, basically. <laughs> Um, so it'll be interesting seeing that kind of clash of the titans, so to speak. Oh, cool. So we'll look for that in the future. But now we've got Aero Flamers on Consulate and Cafe. Two completely new maps of the Pro League. Day mm. two as it is, and everyone's changing it again. Mm. Which of those two is your favorite? Uh, Consulate. 
-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I really do like that one. Um, it's quite a big map. Uh, I feel it's quite well designed. There's loads of different places you can go. Um, quite balanced. Quite a balanced map, I'd say. It was in the beta as well. It was. Quite, it's quite one of these lot. few maps we mentioned before, how everyone puts such a strong force on uh, on the basement. Mm. It's got a couple of different options to be down in that base level. You can go different there. places, yeah. 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 So we'll Attack see. it from all different places. A lot of maps are kind of like that, though, really. That's, that's true. Lots <laughs> of them the have game. different spawns. It's quite, quite a unique factor. But uh, let's have a quick look at these teams again, in case you've uh, forgotten who's on error. They were here, obviously, early on in the day, so we'll get that. We'll show them in a moment. We'll okay. run down them, give them their moment of fame again, and then we'll go to <laughs> Flamers. Flamers yeah. are, of course, very comfy in the seats, still on the same side of the stage. Yeah. Didn't have to move much at all. But Era back in their seats, back in this is gonna be interesting. comfy, and uh, definitely refreshed off their first game. Just in case you forgot them, LMG Panics, who had that phenomenal 4v1 round in their uh, Oregon map phase at one point. Enemy, Revan, and Undead, who, again, I've got to say thank you for him to come up here on the stage. I like their... Uh, their way of breaking down their team. They have three turret players, as they call them, okay. and two roamers. Those three turrets that just sit on the objectives and are more or less immovable objects that just sit there and shoot it as it comes yeah. close, and then have those two roamers. Yes, obviously it's still a new game, everyone's figuring out the different things, but I'd be interested to see how many other teams either split their roles up further and have like, everyone has a very specific different role. Interesting if three turrets, two roamers, or yeah, yeah, yeah. four It'd be, it'd be interesting if you had a team who just did all roamers, like yeah. just all roaming around the map. I mean, I think it'd be <laughs> awful, not gonna lie. <laughs> But they went, yeah, let's take Rook and four Romans. Just, just one round, just wing it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> They'd be surprised if there's no one at the They would, it would surprise. Uh, exactly. But Both that is Era Black on your screen. And now we're back over to Flamers. This team creating such a splash in that last game. A team that, again, everyone had written off, but really came through and said, no, we're here to fight. We're here to win this as well. And as I mentioned, they're our Italian team, which is a, mm. a new one. There's not so many Italian teams in the, the global esports infrastructure. QB, Epic, Alation, Boros, and Torak again. Thank you to him for a great interview earlier on. So everyone's settled and ready. I want to talk a bit more about, you've talked about Consulate, how you like Consulate, how they yeah. been Cafe Dostoevsky most recently has just had an entire attacker spawn removed. Because they could shoot through the windows, I'm guessing. Uh, it was, yeah, in amongst the, the whole spawn... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, spawn Which one was it? it? It was the uh, East Park Main Street. Oh, so okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, could, yeah, I can see that. On, oh, yeah, but yeah. They've, they've taken it off anyway, so... I don't think it's going to affect the, the competitive spawns too much. Most no. people are River Dock, uh, Park Alley and uh, Christmas Market anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it'll be okay. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. But we are ready to see exactly how that game unfolds. Yeah. We I mean, have I'm, another dynamic duo down in the cast. So any final thoughts? I am really excited about this game. I hope you guys are. Yeah, perfect, perfect <laughs> thought. So we're going to go back down to our cast. There's Joe Fenny and Derek Mallon. Please take it away. Thank you very much, guys, and we are here back on the Caster Desk. I'm going to be here for the rest of the day, and of course, I am joined by Bungie for the first time, actually. First time we're there casting it is. together. Mixing it up a little, right? Yeah, Mix absolutely. And we're going to be seeing what looks to be on paper a phenomenal game. If the Flamers can live up to that first game of the last yeah, match. If they bring that back, this is going to be a good one. It's going to be absolutely be real insane. good. I don't feel like good is like giving them a bit of credit right there, because the Flamers just. I'm getting hype! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not not to pun too hard, but the Flamers were on fire in that first map, and they're going to be going up that. against Era. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, they're going up against Era, and Era. I mean, we saw Panics. Panics just went insane. Like the yeah. four versus one with Smoke, got the four headshots. That for this, was uh, definitely the clutch of the day. Haven't seen yeah. anything better yet. Well, fingers crossed. We're yeah. going to see some crazy stuff coming out here, but we are already onto the map. We're already underway. And it looks like the Flamers are going to be kicking off the defenses. So, talk me through here, Derek. Talk me through the compositions that we're seeing coming out. Pretty similar stuff to what we've seen so far, really. Yeah, it's, um, I'm a little surprised that they... Well, I guess I'm not actually for that site. But, you know, it's, it's always good, I think, to open up something in between A and B. Don't leave it so that if you lose one site, you're stuck trying to just push through the yeah. one door left open. You know, open up a wall or two. But it, it's, it's almost like um, you, you don't want to be caught suddenly being the attackers when you're defending. Right, exactly. <laughs> and the more holes you have open, the more you can kind of clean up the yeah. point you're not on. Yeah, it's kind of... Uh, it, one of the good strategies that you kind of see is when, when you can defend a site without actually being on the site. Right. You blow that wall wide open, then you can just use that as almost like a shooting right. range. You can shoot from behind B through into the garage and cover A as well. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, we'll see whether any of that kind of stuff comes out. We are going to see from the eyes of Panics 
our, uh, our MVP the last time he was yeah, up, right? Absolutely, and he's going to be going for the Twitch. So different, uh, well, I say different strategy. Obviously, he's on attack, so he can't really play smoke right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how he's going to do. I mean, we, but you I've know seen, what? Like, as far as weapons go, the FAMAS is pretty, the yeah. F2 is pretty much the big smoke. It's yeah, the it's, big SMG-11, you know? It's <laughs> pretty terrifying. I mean, I've seen different opinions on the weaponry from Twitch. I'm a huge fan of the F2, mm -hmm. but I've seen a couple of people prefer his uh, or her other primary. Um, I mean, what's your personal opinion on, on the Twitch weaponry? That kind of rate of fire and one-shot headshots. I mean, as long as you're spraying upper chest area, it's going to evaporate. You're going to hit the face yeah. eventually. Yeah. It's like, it's so like my mom always got said. got the garage open like nothing, which is uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, that was, I mean, the EMP didn't even go through the, the ladder box at the bottom. Yeah. No, it was kind of just like, oh, oh, well, I guess it worked anyway. So. But I mean, Thatcher's EMP takes everything out in like a 200-mile radius anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's pretty much like... Uh, it's like the old kill streak EMP on uh, Modern Warfare 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like just destroyed the whole map. But here we go. First kill already coming across. Revan going to pick that one up with a nice little headshot there. So that's going to be that Flamers on the defensive side with just four defenders remaining. So good start here for Aero. And we'll see if they can be more successful on this first map than we saw Epsilon being. Right. He saw that drone induced out <laughs> fast. <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, that, that bear trap as well. It's just like, no, 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 all, no, no. all three frost traps down. And you're getting caught stairs. by this. Actually, caught, almost caught frost there as well, but going to be able to dodge on down. Here we go. I'm interested to see kind of how they how they spread out for this one, how they, whether they kind of all go in together or whether we see kind of one by one. Oh, oh we are going to see, actually, go. he gets dropped down on the stairs. And it's going to be frost, who we were talking about, does take the kill in the end. Nice Got him while he was changing positions. You see that? He was like prone backwards and switched around, and while his leg flung out, he hit him with a free fire <laughs> and killed him. Beautiful shot coming out, and that's going to be another couple of kills. And actually, Flame is turning this one around. That's an that SMG kill coming out there, I believe, from QB as well. But now it's two versus three, so really could go either way. And as I say that, that's going to be Torek getting a headshot down. We're going to see enemy pushing on in, finds one for himself, and he's going to be looking for more as he starts to get this diffuser down. He's all on his own, but we are going to see Jaeger is down but not out. So, so basically, it's essentially a one versus one. Bandit. Who oh. is right there? There you have it. The second you say it's a 1v1, he's like, oh, 1v1, I'll just <laughs> I'll pop this guy's head there now. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Look at there it is. His fingers are still typing as he got up. Excuse me, do you have a moment to talk about headshots? <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. So, I mean, technically a triple kill at the end there. I don't right. know if it quite counts because one of them was down but I'd not out. But I mean, the, four kills with in the, the first plant round. And almost an ace, I'd say count it. Yeah. I mean, he got the same amount of kills and points as the entire enemy team. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> he's, he's feeling pretty confident. He's feeling very comfortable. And that is going to be the first round going over to Aero. So that flame is now work cut out here. And I mean, this is a team that. <laughs> in that last match, just straight up 5 out the first map. So right. I'm interested. And we they held to... their own in the second one too. It wasn't a yeah. total. They didn't win, but they weren't a shutout either. No, I think it was. Uh, it was like 5-2 on bank, I believe. Yeah. So I mean, they got a couple of rounds for themselves, and it was kind of a. You could tell that it was very much, and we heard in the interview with Sean as well. It was very much a matter of we have practiced chalet a lot, and right. that is a map that we are good at, and obviously we clearly right. saw that. So I mean, that's how much do you think that's kind of a theme throughout throughout our day so far is kind of these teams being specifically good on certain maps. Do you think that's been... I think on a game like this with so many angles and so many ways that you can just get shot in the face from, map knowledge is more important than anything. Whether you're good at 1v1ing people winning gunfights, whether you're good at communication, all of it's pretty irrelevant if you don't know the maps. That is by far the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, it's great if you can aim, but if you don't know where you need to be aiming, right. then, I mean, what's the point, you know? So... It's all secondary to map knowledge in this game, I think. And I think more as well, so than any other game. It's kind of like almost um, a second nature. When you see these players going through these rooms like systematically, you see them check each and every single corner that they know is a right. common spot. And that's kind of... When you're at this stage, when you're in the pro league, you've got to be able to do that. You've got to know each and every corner. You've got to be able to check that each and every time perfectly. Exactly. Here we go then. So two minutes on the clock for this second round. This time it's going to be Aero on defense. They've been pretty comfortable so far. No kills on the board just yet for either team. And we're seeing Flamers very, very spread out attack here. Yeah, they're definitely not playing together. I mean, not to say that they aren't using teamwork, but they're very 
one, you know, one in each corner of the map, kind of. Yeah, it, it's almost like they're looking for like tiny skirmishes rather than the, the kind of right. big. It is risky ball, though. It leaves them open to just kind of get picked one by one. Yeah, if they're not moving in perfectly in sync. And then they're essentially just attacking one on one, yeah, or one yeah. at a time. I'm this sorry. is one of the things as well, is it's like, if you can get it so that you all come from different directions at the same time, then fantastic. You've got a pincer going, they don't right. know where to look, like, that's always going to be a great situation. But, but that's very tough. Exactly. It is tough to get everybody moving the same amount towards exactly. the point. We actually saw it in an earlier match where they had a perfect pinch, I forget which team it was, but they had a, uh, you know, Twitch on one side, two on the other, yeah. and the Twitch was just too slow catching up, and it ended up just kind of being one at a time instead of a perfect pin. Yeah, they kind of trickle in and slowly but surely fall apart. I mean, that's one of the things as well later on in the Pro League that we're more likely to see more often. That is going to be the first kill of the round, though. LMs yeah. does manage to find a second picked one, at a time. one for himself. That MP5, man, is terrifying. Oh, there's another right, down. Another one coming through as well. In fact, that one's going to be from Boris. He didn't actually finish the kill off. Down but not out. Can't quite end that guy. But Thatcher going to be going down oh, yeah. as well. That's, there's uh, another one for Evan. Case in point. Case yeah. in point. It's a, it can work, but it's, I mean, you got to be, you got to be a team that knows each other very well and really has that that synergy and that connection going. Yeah, and as well, like, if you are in a situation where one person can get two kills, why is neither of you looking in that direction? Right. That, that's the question you've got to pull up. It's like, you if there's two of you, you've got to be covering different spots. And you've got, right. to, got to communicate that with your team as well, because otherwise, as we saw there, it can kind of slowly but surely fall apart. But error definitely not falling apart here. You can see solid teamwork coming through. Two rounds on the trot now. And they're going back onto that attacking side. So, I mean, right now, that flame is they can go to the same spots as they did before because they lost the first round. So Right. Interesting that they go for this uh, kind of basement because the B site is very, very close to an external wall. Do you think that that makes it kind of very vulnerable? I think it's a make or break type deal. If Bandit can win the, uh, the little battery trick yeah. and win his Bandit plants, then B becomes a very great site because now, like the second those thermites are gone, you can start opening up everything to A and now you have a fully fortified area where you just have to watch the stairs and in front of you. Yeah. And uh, it's just extremely hard to push once that happens, if you can pull off the bandit plans. Yeah, if that's... you lose it, the second there's a hole there, it becomes a much more difficult game. And I honestly think defending B mostly through A becomes the better push there. Yeah, kind of just taking out that, that middle wall that's on your screen right now. And then, right. as you said before, kind of turning that into a shooting range almost. So you exactly. can just sit back and watch them come in. But, but it's just, a, it's kind of a high risk, high reward Mm. Bomb site, you know, and I think that's that's kind of um, it's interesting to see which t oh <laughs> nearly <laughs> nearly put a fingers that one and uh, grenades takes are off definitely legs. tricky to get them to do what you want in this game. Yeah, it's kind of if you don't get that bounce to go through the letterbox, the, it won't just roll through because there's a, a little right. bit of a lip at the bottom. Well, he gets away with it. Yep, there it is. Uh, it's open. So, oh, did that get? No, that oh, got denied. It's uh, oh no 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 yeah, it's a glitch. I believe they have getting fixed in the near pad. I think that it was in the last patch notes, but uh, occasionally that can happen, apparently. Where okay, uh, it, so it only thermites like part of the wall. Okay, so tell me what I'm looking at right there. What, what's, is that something that we can see differently to him or? No, it's a uh, just a bug where for some reason, sometimes thermite doesn't quite open the wall the way it's supposed to. It's okay. not intended. And uh, it is something they've addressed and something they're okay. obviously aiming to fix. But yeah, as you, like it worked in the other one. Yeah, they, well, they managed to get uh, the hole in the wall regardless. So right. and, uh, to, to some extent, I would argue maybe a better side of the wall anyway, because you've got the cover from the I van as well. Definitely like the the right side of the middle, I, I prefer to open over the left. So yeah, because it works it, out in the long run. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess they got away with it in the end. That is going to mean, though, they might charge us down. So. I mean, we do have one kill on the board already for Era, so two rounds up, they're a kill up as well. They're feeling pretty darn confident. A kill up with the garage open is yeah. a pretty good deal. And as well... Two it, kills. Yeah, so there we go. And Elems is always seems to be the player getting that first frag. He always yeah. seems to be the, the entry fragger. And I mean, you've played a lot of this game yourself. Right. Do you... Oh, we're going to see like a, a pause for this one? Okay, we are actually going to see a restart. I would assume that's to do with... That bug? The bug, yeah. I mean, like, that's pretty pretty huge. If you lose one of those thermite charges, it's kind of, you know... Yeah, but they were winning. 
Yeah, I mean... I'd have just taken it <laughs> if it was up to me. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know, really know the specifics of the rulings when it comes to that kind of thing. Right. I, obviously, that's all written in yeah. the rule book. But. And I mean, it's still a new game. This is the first pro tournament with it. And it is a bug they've acknowledged. They know it exists. Yeah. Just something that didn't quite make it to the... Uh... I'm sure there is something in the rule book specific to this. But right. that, I mean, the rule book's for our, our referees to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> I am but a mere commentator. I don't, <laughs> I don't know all the ins and outs of like super specific We stuff have better like things to do, like mindlessly ramble about whatever. <laughs> I really love the little uh, Scottish dinosaur he's got going on his monitor there as well. My little brother yeah. used to have one that looked exactly like that. I want to know if it's like the same one or not, but yeah. he used to like squeeze the belly and it'd sing some bizarre little jingle or whatever, but yeah, it looks like just trying to work out what's going on. I think um, in this scenario, I believe we'll be just kind of restarting the round, but continuing right, with keeping... previous score. So right. it'll be Still 2-0 to error. So so just like a disconnect or anything else, you count yeah. where the rounds were at previously, but you start a new one. Yeah, so it's going to be... Um, we'll just be getting this underway again for you guys, but error with a very, very strong start. Flamers, uh, less so. I, I mean, I think we should kind of touch on the second map as well, because the second map is going to be Russian Cafe. Right. Do you think this is maybe something... Um, that again, Flamers have really focused on, maybe got some specific strategies, or do you think maybe it's kind of... I feel... Could, could it be that the uh, Chalet was kind of their, it's, their golden I think card? Both, and now it's going to be tough for uh, Flamers based on how much they practice these particular maps, because out of most of the maps, I think Consulate and Cafe are two that are very... They have a lot of niche things that can really make or break points. You know, just like that garage thing, you lose a bandit plant, you lose a garage. It's at that point, you just have to play better with gunfights. If you're not winning gunfights, then you're not winning. Yeah. You know, it's, it's no longer uh, about where your defense strategy is. It's more, you just have to get better picks than the attack team, which becomes much more difficult. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so much more pressure as well, let's remember. Because, right. like, these guys are playing on stage. You don't want to be putting yourself in a situation where it's like, if I miss this shot, then we lose right. the game. Exactly. That, that is going to make you miss the shot, that kind of pressure. Yeah, like, definitely. No, it's uh, definitely a different... And I'm sure it's an adjustment to go from playing on the internet to playing locally on a yeah. land. It's whether you have a low ping or a high ping, it's still a game changer to come to essentially effectively Zero no ping, ping at all. Yeah, yeah And uh, it really changes people's gameplay and... You know, mixes it up a lot. Okay, so looks like now he says happens so often with thermite, but I really wouldn't call it enough. I've got 300, 300 I, hours I've, in the game, and yeah. I've seen that happen maybe one time. I've like, I mean, and I play thermite. I said as I, there, like I haven't actually seen that bug before, and I've put yeah. a good, a good lot of hours into the game as well. So it's like, I don't think it's that common, but right, I could imagine it being pretty frustrating if oh, you're definitely. Like, <laughs> especially when you're trying uh, to climb the ladder and yeah. it's like oh great <laughs> but, <laughs> but as, as you say that is being addressed anyway, right it's so already been addressed and no but it's definitely something on the on the list of fix i thought it <laughs> actually made it in the last patch but maybe it's actually the next one yeah it could be a matter of uh, maybe just like occasionally slipping through as right. well maybe but anyway oh, we got the same setup same deal. Let's see. I guess it gives Bandit a chance to uh, try and win it yeah. again. So I think for this round, they, they have to run the same setup because it's going to of course, restart yeah, yeah. the round. Remake, you can't change anything. Makes so, sense. Let's see how they are going to go in onto this one. And whether they kind of change up that strategy, whether we see, as you say, kind of that Bandit interaction, picking right. up the battery, putting it down again, see whether they're going to be able to win out that little almost mind game that comes out between yeah. him and Thatcher. I would love us to get over to there. There he is. Oh, they already got it well, open. I guess <laughs> that's that, our answer. I guess it didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that's going to be Revan picking up the first one onto Boros. So nice little pick for them. And that's going to be Frost as well. Now, Frost has been absolutely instrumental for defenders across the tournament today. Right. Like, how much of an impact do you think? Like, say you're on Flamers right now. Does the fact that it's Frost going down really kind of impact your momentum i suppose i would say combined with having the garage open and losing you know that shotgun that beastly shotgun <laughs> you're uh they're sweating a little bit yeah especially their setup right now looks like they were all kind of camping around b which is totally gonna with ash closing in on the men's side it's totally gonna end up with a hell of a pinch and uh and there's not much they can do about it at this point 
not like they can really back up. They don't really have anywhere else to go at yeah. this point, so it's kind of just I hope play it out and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be um, praying to whatever god they choose right now as uh, Aera slowly but surely start to close that vice grip. However, they're only one man down, so this is definitely not all done for the Flamers. They're no, not in a great not. spot, but... It's not good positioning, but they are is still 4-5. We've seen we've seen oh, some crazy four, four rounds now. happen, and there we go. That is going to be the equalizer. So, actually, another member from yeah, Flamers has like... been dropped. So, Revan, with his second kill of the round, is going to equalize. Oh, not even equalize. Getting them the advantage again, sorry. Bandit as well. Flashing health bar. Yeah, looks like under 10. He's uh, not feeling too confident. That's going to be Torok again with another headshot coming through. The MP5s just seem like laser cannons. It's a how very <laughs> low recoil. So it's very, you know, not the highest rate of fire, not like the P90, but so little recoil that it's very easy to really get it on someone's face and yep. pop it. And especially with like the ACOG as well. It's yeah. very easy to land those shots, but that's going to be another one down, but not out. That's going to be Rook. So, I mean, kind of to an extent when you're Rook, once you've got that armor down, kind of your job done. Obviously, it's a, yeah. it's a good operator to have around, but not the worst one to drop. However, when he's the last man... <laughs> oh, we saw him. Here we go. Let's he... have a look at Torok. I want to see from Torok's point of view if we can, as he is the last man remaining. But he is going to go down, in fact. LM's... His point of view is lights out, dirt nap. Yeah, there is Ew. no point of view right now. He's all out of eyeballs, as he's going to get dropped to that headshot. That was... Uh, Bit of a messy spray. The yeah. outcome of line, not the cleanest kill I've <laughs> ever seen. That's one of those skip, 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 skip. Don't watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quick. No one watched this. Everyone got, got, got the kill, so certainly did. And that is going to be Alem's again. Three kills in that round. I I don't know his total score waiting. now. Panic's just reset, hanging out. Panic's about to uh, to drop it again. I want to see whether or not Panic's like just explodes in this last <laughs> round. Just like, hey, hang on, I need to be at the top of the score button. Just like goes crazy. But here we go. We are going to see him. Uh, I assume it's him on smoke. It is him on smoke. Yeah, it's yeah. him on smoke. So he's going to have that SMG in his right hand. And we'll see. I mean, Flamers right now, they're 3-0 down. That is not a great spot to be in. Right now, you're you're two rounds away from match point. Yeah. Like when, So when you're playing, because obviously you play this like all the time, when you're down in this situation and you're kind of one, two games away from match point, what is your kind of... Are you the guy on your team that will be like, okay, guys, we've got to get this together? Are you the I'm trying sort of to motivator? Find, I'm trying to find a new mouse and headset because I just broke the last one. <laughs> Threw them out the I'm window. that one. <laughs> I'm yelling at my Twitch chat, screaming at the people in my game, and walking around opening and closing kitchen cabinet doors because I'm so angry and I don't know what else to do. What do you mean he sponged the shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> I can definitely relate to that. I like to think that I'm the guy like, come on, guys, we still got this, but it's just simply not true. Keep your head in the game, guys. Keep it cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> there we go. That's going to be Elation picking up the first one with that F2. The Famas just terrifyingly good. And that's at my house. That's not on a stage. On a stage worse probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, i mean you've seen like the major esports tournaments you've seen the how passionate the players get right. imagine like when everything's on the line you're on that stage tensions are going to be high yeah. yeah but it is i mean it's the first two matches of the season so yeah. they've got some time to recover if they if it doesn't work out so well they've clearly showed they can pull it together yeah but their first game i, I think like a, a huge part of it is the amount of prep they put into um, Chalet. So if they can translate that into other maps as well, right. they're going to be looking it's all so map strong later. It's all map knowledge. All the rest falls into place after. Obviously, you need it. You need to have strong players that can aim well. You need to have good communication. But until you have the map knowledge, you might as well not even do the other stuff. Yeah. Well, here we go. Let's see if the map knowledge is going to be enough as it's four versus four now. That's going to be Revan. I, I feel like I'm saying it's going to be Revan grabbing the kills <laughs> yeah, so many times. Yeah. He's definitely kind of point man here for Aero, especially near the starts of the rounds. Who did we lose from uh, Aero already? I didn't even see that one. I can't tell because... It must have been a trade, though. Aero is like at the start of their name, so yeah, I, I don't have like a short version at the top of the screen. <laughs> so it's hard to oh, say. Oh, Pulse. Okay, so that's kind of a, a, a big deal, actually, losing Pulse early on, because if you've gone for Pulse, then you're kind of relying on that intel to come through for the rest of the round. Right. But, I mean, let's let's take a look at the uh, the defensive positions here from Aero. Do you think this kind of 
It's a very wide spread, and we've got two players that are very far away from the bomb sites in general. Is that? Do you think that could be detrimental to them? Um, I mean, at this point, I think mixing it up isn't. Oh, sorry. That, no. Um, I honestly, I don't know. You know, it's. It's something. I, I mean, something they're clearly working for him right now. Sometimes uh, you just don't know, you know. <laughs> but especially hey. with Revan just walking in there and <laughs> just strolling in and just <laughs> taking. Getting kills, taking names. I think that more often than not, most of the better teams do spread pretty far from the bomb site. A lot don't play too close, but it really depends on how Cooks it's going. Cooks the grenade, picks up one. Oh, got the trade though. Trades so that's down. done. That's over. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's round, isn't it? So, yeah. well, the diffuse is going to come on through. I was wondering why the round didn't end, just because the bomb was planted. Right. But, yep. uh, that is going to be error taking yet another round. I believe that's their fourth one now. Fourth, so, so it's match point. I mean, Aera, we saw that Flamers, for the first time in the Pro League, managed to take a 5-0 map. Aera kind of saying, anything you can do, we can do better. <laughs> so let's, let's head into a... Let's, let's get that 0-5 on them, too. Yeah, let's head up to Consulate and see who the big men are. But, <laughs> I mean, Flamers, they've got their work out right now. Obviously, yep. in case you've only just joined us, the reason it says 2 plus 2, we did have to have... Uh, a game restart due to an in-game bug, but it is 4-0, let me assure you, in favor of Aera, and now they're going to be on that attacking side. Now, on this map specifically, would you say attackers or defenders typically have an advantage here? I, like we were saying earlier, I think that honestly, with the exception of the harder, harder maps like Oregon and Plane, which are honestly hard for attackers for completely opposite reasons, mm. I think that most of the maps have the advantage for attackers when you have a full team that plays together and trains together constantly with like full synergy you know when if you're just queuing up by yourself and playing with other people probably defending because it's a lot more based on your own personal performance whereas attacking is made or break broken by the team entirely and their ability to communicate their ability to to know like how aggressive each one of them is and how to move with each other and not just on their own going for kills. Yeah, it kind of it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier about you've got to build up that synergy. You've got to be able to communicate with your team and let everyone know. And get the grenades through the... Uh, and, and, and land the grenades drone through holes. the... Uh, <laughs> I, I want to call them letterboxes. They feel like letterboxes. Cat flaps, I suppose. <laughs> drone yeah, flaps. Yeah, I just I like the little irrigation flaps. I feel like we, I just want to nickname stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm going to see the drones just scouting on through and this is something we've seen a little bit less of later on in the day is kind of at the start of the day maybe it was just teams a little bit more nervous first getting on stage like using drones 24 7 but look at the spray down coming out from the pistol doesn't quite finish off the kill though it's gonna make it two versus four in favor of the flamers they're actually there it is managing come to back. get something on the it. board i think right now for the flamers Priority number one is don't get 5-0'd. Yeah. Like, <laughs> after that stellar performance. Kind of negates game. the 5 0 they got yeah. if they <laughs> turn around and get 5 0 you know? Yeah, um, so. I mean, here we go. It's just going to be Sledge and Thatcher remaining. Drone just going to get completely denied here as Flamers. Which this is, even with having that open, it's going to be tough at this point. As long as the Flamers don't peek, they have no reason to peek. Yeah. Minute 30 left, four versus two. No reason for them to do anything except wait. Yeah, just, I mean, just let Aero walk into your crosshair. Literally, right. all you have to do is press the trigger. Aero has to either relocate to the complete other side of the map where they have no idea where anyone is, or oh. start hitting the drop downs, which may or may not be reinforced. I didn't catch that. Um, nice. Or try to push through the garage, which is well covered. Nice breaches going out here just to make sure that there's no corners going to be able to kind of stay in. But I don't know gonna, if I would have stood on top of yeah, it after I breached it. Not I the best like move there. Maybe be a little bit more cautious if you're yeah. going to blow a hole in the floor there. Here we go. Last man. Error right now. Undead. It's all on you, buddy. Can you get the 5 0? He's got the SMG 11. I feel like it's Sledge in the dream a lot, you know? <laughs> if there's one guy left up for some reason, it's Sledge a lot. One man, one hammer. <laughs> Here we go. Can you do a movie voice? Um, you like the like the one for like the, the movie. trailer voice? Like this summer, one man, one hammer. <laughs> Sledge versus the world. I don't know. I feel like we're maybe overhyping it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in one versus four. Well, I mean, we'll 14 see if he can seconds, can't hit the drop the down. I don't think he can. Oh, okay. 
I stand, I'll shut my mouth. Yeah, yeah well, there, you go. there we go. Can I just say, one verse four, hitting a drop down never works. <laughs> They're always covered and you can't react. Like, you fall so slow, you know? Like, Rainbow Six physics is like, very, very slow Power little trooper. descent, yeah. Like, you kind of got a, yeah. I don't know, like an oversized coat on or something and it <laughs> catches you down. It's like yeah, <laughs> Mary Poppins' umbrella. Right. You just like yeah. float down. Oh, God. Um, it's like when you get the... Um, the, the C4s, too. They're very, like, very floaty, you know? <laughs> it's like attached to a balloon. <laughs> it's like Bobbit across the room. Here we go. Dap Flamers, they managed to get a point on the board. And that's the important thing. Here. Panic's doing a little smoke remodeling. Busting out his little Sims practice and stuff. Gonna be punching the holes in the walls. I, going for the top floor here with the bomb size. So something we've seen a little bit less. It seems to be like a secondary plant location from what uh, from what I seem to remember from this game. It's kind of obviously each and every map seems to have like two major spawn points that the defenders go for and you kind of alternate between. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, this is kind of, do you think the basement's stronger than this one? Do you prefer this one? What's your What's your personal take? Again, I think the basement's the high risk, high reward plan. You know, this um, might be just a little more generally just play it. You know, like reinforce what you need to reinforce, open what you need to open, and then kind of just play it. Whereas the basement is a super easy win if you manage to out thermite but an extremely difficult win if they open that garage. Yeah. You know, where, so it's a much more high risk, high reward. I feel like that's very similar on a lot of maps. There's a lot of garages or garages. Or yeah. Uh, Check out that American accent. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> casting Gee. from across the pond. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of kind of garages in this game where it, it always feels like that garage is just such a crucial garage. Or the garage <laughs> is such a crucial way into the map. It like, is, it's, yeah. it's like, Make or break if you can get that Thatcher plan down. Because they're always right next to the objective. You yeah. know, like, so if, if you can get in there, then... And as well, it's wide open. Like, it's wide, so when you plant right in front of it, you can go all the way back outside. Yeah. And <laughs> you can just, like, sit your uh, yeah. your thermite or glass if it's a map that's appropriate for it, just, like, right. way, way back and just look on in. And the second any defender moves, just... And, as like, as you see, the defenders here, they're very spread. Most of them aren't playing anywhere near the points at all. I think they have one guy in B, and the rest are all playing kill holes spread out to the top. Oh. It's, uh, I feel like these ones, you know, it's much more just if you have kind of an idea of where everyone's watching, then it doesn't really matter what the attacking team does. Yeah. Um, and, and as well, it's when you're playing this kind of spread out style, it's all about call outs. You've got to be watching your team backs. And that is a perfect example of watching your team's backs. Like, one guy is there, but his teammate is watching that corner. And right. It's going to be traded back across. Oh, the full flash. I don't even uh, know who's winning this fight at this point. But actually, interestingly, we've got an IQ, something we've not actually touched on. Yeah, I don't know why IQ keeps going up. I don't. From what I've heard talking to people, it's just a matter of the gun. it being a fast character and the gun that you have. Right. More than the actual gadget itself. Because let's be honest, it's not that great. It's not good. <laughs> you can not see through that smoke. Great is really uh, giving it a lot of credit. I mean, I guess it's kind of a pulse hunter. Yeah. You can see pulse with it, but you can see through smoke grenades as well. Right. So, like situationally. But she's cute too, so that you that, know, that yeah, works I mean, in favor. That's always going to be like. I, when, I mean, when I'm drafting a composition, it's all about how cute the operator is. Like, <laughs> Sledge is kind of ugly. I don't know if we need him. You it's know? like what my team has, and then the fashion, the fashion kind of right. uh, those shoes. Of He's each. got those purplish pink shoes, yeah. and that says a lot about like. I really feel like Hild would have been better here. Right. Like I'm so confident. I'm not. I feel really like we should have been yeah. kind of commentating that, but yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's kind of the <laughs> <laughs> talking about shoes. Carried away with the shoes. But here we go. That is it, though. That's... The, um... Yeah, we're going to be going into round five. That I believe that was Flamers. Yeah, that was Flamers. Take that one. That's our bad. <laughs> but there we go. So 4-2 um, now. So Flamers did not get 5-0. They are officially making... Oh, I'm sorry. That was last match. Yeah, 2-2. Two, two. So they're keeping it nice and even. No, it, well, it's 4-2 because it's plus two, isn't it? No, no. We're... Uh... Wow, I'm... What happened it's to just the kind of two? gone. It's, there yeah, it is. It's, it's back. It's I'm less confused now. It went away for a second. Yeah, it's. Um, 
That's not. So yeah, so they've they finally rectified. They they didn't get five would yeah. So good for them there. And they're halfway to the equalizer right now. Right. Halfway yeah, to pushing into overtime. And actually, this is the point where it's kind of like, okay. You've survived the 04. Now it's flame is kind of with a little bit of right. momentum. And now it's gonna carry be that momentum, right? Yeah, era are the ones that kind of have to make sure that they don't kind of tilt shivering the back in of their this. boots or their exactly. purple sneakers. <laughs> Let's not talk. <laughs> shivering, <laughs> shivering in their uh, purple was... IQ shoes. <laughs> Five seconds left before I, see, that's maybe this is the the next step for Rainbow shoe skin. Definitely, yeah. That's I, those. It's got to be it. Those would be a hit. The competitive integrity, uh, I feel, comes right. second to shoe skins, in my Definitely. opinion. As a fashion conscious gentleman myself. <laughs> yeah. Now, one thing I would like to point out yet again, just to really drive it home, is haven't seen a lot of peaks from the defending teams. Uh, a lot of window peaks, which I think is a testament to. There's a lot of back and forth about whether it's an unbalanced tactic to peak windows at the start or, uh, you know, or if it's a cheap tactic Whether or something that's unfair, kind of yeah. yeah. But clearly, the pro teams know that you do not have the advantage peaking. Yeah. Yeah, you, you might get a cheesy kill, but those people aren't paying attention. If you're paying attention, if your mind is in the game when you start, then you're, you're not going to get... The thing is, as well, like these guys have so many hours on the game, they know what windows are going to be the right. ones you go for. They know the, the spots. And, and they know once the game is live, you're playing. You yeah. know, it's it's not after you touch the building now the defenders can kill you. So the first kill goes to Aero. It does indeed. That's going to be but Panics. they got the again. trade. Not necessarily trade, but they did uh, even it up. Even it up. It certainly did. And actually, we're going to see Jaeger flashing red as well. I hate that when you're playing Sledge and you only get the window. <laughs> get the barricade. That is like the <laughs> worst feeling. Something about that glass, man. It stops the <laughs> skeleton key on Buck. It stops the Sledge. It's it's brutal. Strong glass. I think it's when you hit the, the frame specifically. Right. It yeah. kind of uh, screws with you a little bit. But also, the, the sledge can be a little bit finicky if you're like pulling away as you hit. You've kind of got to right. get, get that frame perfect to be able to get fully out of the way by the time the barricade's gone. Definitely. And still hit the barricade. So 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, however you want to say it. The minute left. Yeah, kind of a slow... I mean, we've had a couple of early kills, but other than that, still a minute left on the round, so fairly slow pace. I think they've, uh, they've got Aaron nervous with the comeback. Yeah. And with under a minute left and still seven people, that's kind of in the... Even though they're down a player, it's sort of yeah, leaning more towards their advantage. Well, the Flamers, they need to start to get a wiggle on here because they've got 40 seconds to play with, which... In the grand scheme of things, ain't that much time. They need to start right. to make their mark on this map, and looks like they are going to oh. push forward. Gets heard. Does manage to dodge underneath those bullets, doing his very best Neo impression right there. Yeah, it's a pretty solid time. <laughs> <laughs> Revan does find one, though, so in the end, is going to get caught out. Look at this. Two defenders left. Can they make it happen? It's not looking great, to be quite honest. That's going to be I'm him. I'm going to go with the no, no, they cannot. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> That's, there it is. But hey, they didn't get 5 0 so that's good. Yeah, I mean, they turned it into a fight, it, too. It, so. was, it was a good comeback for a minute there. They lost momentum a little bit. It but, was uh, looking shaky, let's be yeah, honest, for the was. first four rounds. Right. They did manage to get a couple of rounds back in their favor, so not they all is brought lost, it back a little, yeah. Kind of saving their dignity somewhat. And they were the underdog, too. And they definitely came in real strong and still held their own, so. And we still have one more map, too. Who knows? Maybe their uh, cafes on their list of maps they've yeah. trained more for. Yeah, so we're going into the Russian cafe. Now, I, I find, like, um, the Russian cafe is, like, I mean, first of all, I'm a big fan of trains, so I just love the Russian cafe. <laughs> I like trains. I just, I just go into the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I just go into, like, the train room, just treat it as a museum. Right. And then my team's like, Rook, can you put down the armor, please? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah. I forgot I was playing Siege for a second there as a... And so you put middle. it down, pick it up for yourself, and break it. Say, there's your armor. <laughs> yeah. What, I got mine. That's what you get when you sass me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's, um, I, I it's mean, it's not my favorite map. It's honestly between that one and uh, Bank. Bank is just very open to me, and that one's just confusing to me. And also fairly open, just like Bank. It is kind of a winding network of A lot rooms. of weird angles. A lot yeah. of weird angles. It's another one of those maps where you can use second floor
drop downs out first floor windows to hit people on the ground and stuff like that. And it's very, uh, can get very confusing to try to keep track of all the different ways you can die from. Yeah, it's like <laughs> watching all of the different angles can uh, kind of get you dizzy right. sometimes. It's uh, a whole lot of different ways you got to be looking all at the same time. But I mean, <clears throat> talking about cafe specifically, do you think there's any special operators we might seeing out? Like, is this a map that we maybe see Glaz on, or are we going to see maybe Blitz again that we saw earlier on? Maybe Glaz, maybe. Um, the <laughs> The Blitz, I'm honestly still surprised we saw as much as we did, honestly. I, out of all the shield operators, like, Montaigne brings a team element, but the recruit shield has grenades and is much more versatile and a little faster. Blitz, I don't really see the purpose of, and I've barely, even the, when they have picked him and have even gotten some kills with him, rarely seen him get off with, like, a good flash or anything like that. And uh, so I'm very surprised that he's been picked at all, honestly. Yeah. But uh, he's a fun operator to use, but I just don't see his competitive play value. I feel like it's maybe you got to have lightning reactions. And, I mean, appropriately to his icon, you got to have the, <laughs> right. the lightning reactions. You got to blitz! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you got to be able to, when someone peeks out, be ready with that flash and actually catch right. them. And, th and then at that point, if you can do that, you have that same advantage that Montan has of just being able to push forward and be able be able right. to gain a whole lot of ground. But here we go with the second map of this matchup. It is the Flamers up against Era. Era 1-0 in this series with a 5-2 victory on our first map. But here we go with the Russian Cafe. So there's an IQ again. There he is, always popping in. Chi and. Uh... I'm not too surprised about the defender thing. Again, I'm very surprised how often Doc has been picked today as well. I expected to see a lot of Doc on Xbox when we start covering them, mm -hmm. but I'm very surprised to see so much Doc on PC. And I, I haven't I, seen Doc pick anybody up. No. I, as far, I, not often anyway. I think one thing about Doc as well is you have a lot of armor. So right. you can kind of go for some of those trades that other operators might not really want to go for. Like, right. if you can go for a straight firefight, especially with Brook on your side as well, if you can find yourself in a position where it's going to be hard for them to headshot you, you could maybe find an advantage off the yeah. back of your passive, but, but uh, it's definitely very situational. Like we covered before, too, I, I mean, you can effectively do that with Capcan as well with a much better gun. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely think the uh, Russian operators have awesome, awesome guns. That's one point we've seen very, very little if any cap can today. I don't think we've seen any today. I, I don't remember seeing any. And if you don't either, that covers all games. So yeah. <laughs> it's safe to say we have Say we didn't. Um, but I mean, cap can, can be pretty obvious. Yeah. Like, it, it's very easy to see where the traps are. But you have to, I mean, today we've seen a lot of last minute, like under 30 second Charges. pushes, and that's where cap can, can really shine, because then it's kind of, whether yes. you know it's there or not, too bad. Like, you, you don't have time. You have to push into the room. So if it's just sitting there right around the objective and there's 20 seconds left, you don't really have a whole lot of time to be, like, yeah. you know, shooting out the little cap can trap or trying to get around it or EMP it or whatever. It's kind of a... It catches people off guard in that scenario. It's like, okay, I've got to make things happen right now. So. Right. I mean, maybe we'll see that later on today. I can't say I'm... Um, really expecting that necessarily. No, not really. But again, the IQ coming out here, like I said earlier, this is... Uh, That's a lot of surprise to me because it's... If you like IQ's gun, it's very... Si like, the 5.52 is very similar to Thermite's gun. Uh, I think the AUG after the control yeah. rebalance it got has I become a lot better of a weapon. I think it's just a matter of IQ being one of the, like, lowest armor, highest speed operators, whereas Thermite is, I think, 2-2, two, two, if right. I'm correct. So it's kind of like a different play style, I suppose. Yeah. And as well, I think IQ... Oh, oh, oh. cut into the kill hole. Distracted by the kill Revan hole. Revan again with the first yeah. kill. Like, every round, man, this guy is absolutely on it for era. And, and that's going to be so enemy as well. Frost chiming in with that Bob super 90. Super being the operative word. <laughs> Here we go. So that's going to be, that really kind of, I mean, we've been talking about spanners in the works today. That is definitely a spanner in the works for the Flamers. Cause, <laughs> yeah. uh, three versus five when you're on the attack, two versus five now when you're on the attack. Yeah. One versus One five versus when you're on the attack. As you were saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you were saying, yeah, you like Thermite's gun. Let's see uh, 
how much Barra likes it because uh, <laughs> just get on him. Oh, he's dead. That's a uh, super 90 mess today, right yeah. there. Super 90, more like super methy. I don't know what that was. I hated that worse than the other pun. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> the longer the day goes on, the worse I get. It's just like terrible puns. And that teapot comment thing. Yeah. I, that was, I wish I'd three. said that instead of the like weird. You know, people started tweeting out pictures of my facial expression. I saw that. that. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I found that hilarious. But here we go. So it is going to be another round here for Era. So 1-0 in their favor. And Flamers on the defending side here. So let's see whether the Flamers have a bit of a better kind of grasp on this map to what they had on Consulate. Yeah, that attack was rough, so hopefully they can bring it together with a uh, good defense. Yeah. Words are tough. I want to see a really close game here as well. I want to see, I do. I want I to see like the Flamers that we one. saw in their first game. Of yeah, the day. I don't know if you know, it was kind of Got it off early, didn't save it for the whole day. <laughs> they just kind of ran it out the first <laughs> round. like win the first on 5 and like, we're done. Yeah. I don't care. They like, stepped yeah. away, pouring sweat, just, oh, one, crap. One for three is good <laughs> enough for me. We got the 5-0. I'm good. I don't know. I, yeah, I want to see them bring it back with the defense and then come in hard on an attack. Yeah. But well, I mean, let's see. Let's see how they go. I love it when you see players do that. Just go for a pot shot through a wall. Like, maybe, oh, yeah. I, maybe I get a headshot, like... What do I lose? And we had one solid earlier today. He just kind of shot two spots, got a guy in the face, you know? <laughs> it's like the best feeling. Oh, there's just nothing better. <laughs> He's just like, just threw a wall, just like, oh, uh, there's a guy. Nice. <laughs> Great. That Especially SMG 11 kills in glass. It just feels very dirty. <laughs> when you, yeah, when like, you rip glass's face with an SMG 11, it's just not fair. What sniper? <laughs> ACOG for life. But. Here we go, Twitch. Ooh, he definitely hit him. That guy's yeah, he a little confused points. right now. <laughs> He's trying to shoot back. Pulse, like, can you not? Like, Is that Pulse? Well, it, Pulse is the only one that's lost health, so I've got to assume oh, yeah, yeah. it was. No, you're right. But so Pulse, Pulse could well, actually yeah, see him through the wall did. and didn't get him. There we go. Well, there we go. He's uh, <laughs> down for the count you right there. You think in the game of... Uh, of shooting people through the floor, Pulse would have maybe had a better shot there. You would think that's kind of something he would excel at, but... There we go. Smashing away those windows. And the barricades, no less. But Aera down three versus four here. So Flamers with an advantage. And on the defensive side, I definitely feel like that's a, a huge deal for them. That's they should, very big deal. I was going to say they should be Half the in time with gone, a shot down of winning, a player. I, I feel like even if you're even, Defenders typically kind of have somewhat of an advantage right. because... As the timer know, runs down, as you're even, the less players there are, the more it's defender-oriented, even when they're even, I think. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, they have to go into you. It's it's your game. Like, you've set up the traps. It's like Home Alone. Like, Kevin right. always had the advantage on the on the sticky bandits. And now it's 2-3, so... They definitely have the advantage. <laughs> Here we go. Look at that nice little, little head shot. He was rather. so ready for that one. I don't know if he heard him or what. Yeah, I think it might have been call outs. I'm not 100% sure, but very, very nice little. It might have just been purely like map presence, like knowing that this is going to be a spot that's going to get checked. Right, right. Here we go. Two versus two. Jaeger and Rook up against Siege. Or Sledge, sorry. And Ash. <laughs> we'll see whether they can turn the flamers into ash. Seconds, so it's going to start moving real, real quick. <laughs> I'm sorry. But here we go. Time to push on in. 12 seconds left on the clock. This is going to be the time where Era have to make something happen. And they have managed to get that diffuser down over on I the A side. I didn't even see him so. get in. No, I didn't either. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Okay, fair yep, enough. I right. thought that round was just about over. But here we go. The bomb's down. That's going to be Revan again. That's his third of the round, I think. Once you get the bomb plant, that uh, that defender sided two versus two very yeah. quickly becomes an attacker sided two versus two. Yeah. Let's see. Torok on his own. Can he land the shots with that MP5? He's got to make something happen. He's running out of time here, so he's got to find these players soon, but he has been spotted out. Oh, nice little shot out of Torok with the pistol as pick. well. He's, I think he's going for the defuse. 
cancels it. Oh. oh. <laughs> I thought he was going to get that with a hip fire for a second. <sighs> I was very kind of uh, not sure of the, what quite was going on, but. Yeah, no, nice that uh, changed a little bit on me. We yeah. missed it a little. And there we go. So that is going to be again. Era grabbing a second. I thought that was going to be around for flavors. I honestly it thought. Looked it looked like it. They, when had, it, when it they was had the upper three. hand the whole game and then kind of somehow let them plant. So. Kind of like slipped through their fingers. Yeah. That's definitely a ninja plant. Playing against Era is like trying to hold sand. It's just never going to happen. <laughs> That's what my grandma always used to tell me. Well, I mean, Era didn't. They tied their initial games against uh, who they played before? I don't even know. Uh, but uh, I think what G I'll have to glance through my notes. My right. memory is Gbox, I believe, is the only one that's actually 2 0 Yeah, Gbox are the only one with a 2 0 so far. So Era, if Gbox tie later on today, in fact, I think Gbox is our next match. If they tie up against Penta, I believe they're going up against, which is going to be, first of all, a hype match. Like that's yeah, going to be definitely. amazing. Then. We could see a tie between Era and G-Boss. We'll have to see. Yep. Era, I mean, they've still got three rounds to go. Less than halfway here. But again, I, I feel like we've got a very, very staple meta now in terms of operators that we're going to see. Definitely. Do you With attackers, it's always more or less the same four. And then I yeah. guess for some reason, Twitch is the expendable. I, w I personally would rotate out Sledge before Twitch. I know he can make a lot of holes. But I just think that Twitch has too good of a gun not to use. I think one of the things as well about making holes is like there are very few operators that can't make holes. Right. Like it's it's not something that's like while it is quicker and it is easier on like Sledge or Ash, like most of the operators can go at least breach and charge. You're gonna be able to find ways in, but I mean as well you've got you've got the argument of like signal jammers and things like that can't block a sledge. Cause right. like I mean any AMP. But when was the last time you saw Mute in a competitive that's match? True. I haven't haven't seen him. Yeah, I, I think that's a lot down as well to kind of the signal jammer just seems less effective than the battery when it comes to denying thermite. And even with the signal jammers, you're not gonna block the scouting from the drones really. <laughs> so it's kind of there's not huge reasons to go for mute, I feel like. Right. Or at least in my opinion. I mean, maybe that's something we see later on in the Pro League. Because, I mean, we've seen these kind of back and forths between Bandit and Thermite, like trying to get the plant down and trying to deny the plant with the batteries. Like, maybe that that continues to evolve and suddenly kind of signal disruptor might become right. a more effective way to do that trade. We'll have to see. Coming down to another match where it's going to be under a minute with nine players left, I stand corrected. <laughs> Super right there. there we go. That is, again, Super Knight, as you say, coming on through, making those picks. Don't even address it by the player or the... It's just the Super 90. <laughs> <laughs> it's an entity it's in itself. itself. Yeah. Here we go. Flame is down to three players. I want to see them push aggressively here. I want to yeah. see them really kind of put their foot on the accelerator pedal. That's what I want to see. Peaks are there it is. actually wow. walking on it. It grabs two headshots for two himself. Consecutive headshots. That's going to be the point as well. So that's going to be, or I, I think they have the diffuser there. I'm not 100% sure who has that one. Looks like Thermite has it. Panic's going to get tagged out there. Still on his feet, though. Does manage to duck on down. Needs to be careful, actually, Ash here. Ooh. Will go down. I think a little bit overzealous on that one, but traded straight back across. So LM's going to go down. Two versus two now. But the, the diffuser still hasn't been planted yet. And they've got five seconds. They actually have to make something happen right now. They yeah. needed to get that diffuser down when they first broke Felt it. Felt to be an out of time. What just happened? Wow, they just didn't. They didn't is what like, happened. I mean... There's no way one guy can cover both sides. I, I, I don't have an explanation for that. Yeah, I... Because I kind of wish we saw what... Maybe Thermite wasn't paying attention to the clock and lack of comms. I don't... That was... Uh, I'm very surprised. Yeah. There's only one defender up. He can't defend both the sites. It's got to be miscommunication, surely, because, I mean, they just charged on in, and we saw just immediately two straight-up headshots, just like, okay, right. this is my site now. <laughs> and then kind of just like, 
Is it though? Forgot them at the bomb. So I was like, <laughs> forgot them I don't know if this is our site. Right? I'm not. I'm not really one for like taking. I'd rather go and ask the rest of the guys first if it's okay if we plan. Right. <laughs> and then didn't. Obviously didn't get permission. So arrow going back to the fair five. There they are. Sledge, Twitch, Thatcher. Third We've got fight. a pulse as well. Pulse is back. Yep. Doc is gone. Back on the scene. We've seen very little book today as well. That's one thing I've noticed. It's kind of we've seen a couple of instances of book coming into play, but not really. Who? Book. Oh, Buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was actually um, just as Simon covered earlier. Like he's kind of an underpowered, sort of weaker operator that uh, they're looking at. You know, so it was surprising to actually see him take the place of Twitch. Yeah. Earlier today, but I think that was the only game that won. Uh, yeah, I think we saw like two, maybe three rounds, if that. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of underwhelming to be honest. Um, but I mean, who knows? Maybe we see that in the future. Maybe that's something that gets changed, gets changed in future patches. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, even if his ability doesn't quite push people in the same, it does. Uh, it does give you kind of that long and close range ability. There's definite merit to the shotgun as well, because right. I mean, like, especially, obviously, this is the highest level in Europe team play. Yeah. So, like, in terms of matchmaking, you're not necessarily going to see the exact same stuff that you're going to be seeing here right. today. This is very, very different circumstances. So, Definitely. in terms of matchmaking, like, you're spraying through a wall, you run out of ammo, you can immediately swap to that shotgun for when they peak. It's fantastic. Right. But there we go. First, first. kill goes to Flamers on this one. Which is uh, very important, I think, because they've that, the first kill is something they've been losing out on. Right. In these they've been rounds. playing at a disadvantage for most of the games. And, and last time they almost had it on defense and just kind of let it slide. So hopefully they can bring it together yeah, in this one. This is going to be kind of, um, I think, I think right now this is deal breaker for for Flamers right. because if they don't win this round, it'll be much harder on attack. They have a straight up reverse sweep that they have to get into over yeah. time. So it's kind of. You know, <laughs> a little bit of a tall order, to say the least. Right. Once again, they're facing that that 5-0. Yeah, it's... Uh, not dream. <laughs> nightmare. nightmare, yeah. Yes. It's uh, not, never a place you want to be. It's kind of... This is the situation where in matchmaking, if you're 3-0 down... Oh, nice little kill. That's yeah, actually really good for Flamers. They're looking for more. 5-2. Two, two. Alation Fla with three. Alation He's with just three. like, no. The MP7 is a beast. I mean, that gun is so easy to control, high rate of fire. It just shreds people's heads. It really does. I, I mean, you just it's now 5-1. I mean, if they don't get this one, I'd like to say, yeah. That was a complete 5-0. They just yeah. Teammates didn't right lose there. a single player. Very nice. And this is what we need to see. And I, this is kind of the thing that I want to be seeing out of Flamers. You, right. It's kind they of all have, on the line They right have now. it there. They're just not consistent, you know? And, like, we've seen twice now Players from Flamers just step up and just dominate players yep. from Era. So like, that was a hell of a play. When you're already three rounds down, that's the kind of thing that you've got to be bringing to the table. You've got to make those plays and you've got to make things happen. Right. We're going to see that in that round, and now that's going to kind of alleviate at least some of the pressure because it's no longer just going to be turning into a fours area. It's now one three. There's only a two round difference, which right. definitely sounds a lot more manageable than a four round difference. Definitely. <laughs> It's like, uh, I think twice as manageable even, yeah. yeah. You might be right on that one. <laughs> That's some ex excellent arithmetic, I my friend. I took math once. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's better than me. I, uh, math was never one of my favorites. Oh, I didn't say I did well. <laughs> yeah, I just took it. That's Pass. True. That is true. <laughs> well, I mean, I did okay in math, actually. I... They just keep bringing back IQ. They, I don't get it. Well, they need more devices. They need. I mean, with the amount of IQ they're bringing to the table, they're definitely going to be good at maths, at least. That's true. But whether or not they're going to Ramos succeed is a different matter entirely. <laughs> not a whole lot of mathematics comes into play. <laughs> but hey, I don't know. The compass and protractor helps for all the angles. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. A lot of angles we played. Kind of just like, hey guys, can we just pause? I need to uh, get out my measurement equipment. I don't think that often happens. I feel like most of the time I just live in a completely different world to the rest of like, <laughs> players on this game. 
But here we go, the attack is They're finally on. inside, finally inside. Uh, into the building and oh, very some Ooh, enemy very very enemy yeah. knows he not in a good spot there yeah <laughs> moved <laughs> he's out i think he and honestly it's almost better because he's gonna sit there looking for him for a while and yeah you kind of stole that player kind right of, they they don't he's out of his shot on where where yeah. he went take a couple one. shots and run and that attacker's probably gonna sit there and look around for you for a while yeah. And with the three-minute timer instead of four, that matters. Yeah, it really does. Especially when you know it's Pulse. Well, one minute and 30 on the clock. Five players remaining for each. Although, could see Something enemy. About enemy, attacker. again, seems to just be like diving between yeah. cover, dodging bullets right now. Oh, oh got him nice with the throw little. peak. Yeah. So there we go. Headshot as well, so no chance of him being picked up. You do not see the prone peak like that work very often. No. Not at all. But he totally caught him off guard there. The thing is, like, with this game, it, it, there's a lot of, like, dashing between cover, like, just going for one second peaks. You can't do that if right. you're prone, but that is going to be Revan as well, chiming in with a headshot of his own. That's going to be three versus five now. So that flame is on the attack. Kind of on the back foot once again here. I mean, what... What do you feel like the Flamers need to change up here? Because this is a consistent thing that we're seeing them drop players at the start of the round. I think it might be, it, honestly, once again, it sounds like broken record, but it doesn't seem like they have the map down. Because I feel like a lot of players can defend better than attack on a map they don't really aren't as comfortable on. Yeah. Attacking is definitely something you need to know exactly where you want to be going and looking. And if they don't really have the play time on the map, then they're going to have a really hard time. I think one, one key thing that maybe isn't here for all of the teams just yet, but I think will be by the end of the Pro League, is kind of not just where you want to attack, not just what operators, but also kind of like attack route. Like, right. this person is going to gadget here, followed by we go up these stairs, followed by this person's covering this corner while I go up here. And exactly. that kind of systematic pushing. And that is going to be another round over to Era. And that's nice something little. I definitely think, yeah. Match point as well. Era, I mean... I want to get super hyped for this game, you know? I want to be, like, screaming to the heavens, but honestly, <laughs> this is a very one-sided showing from ERA. Right now, it is very much in favor of ERA. They're playing a lot harder than Flamers are. Yeah. And uh, this is the thing, like, you, you sometimes see kind of overhype coming in. I don't want to, like, overhype something and, like, kind of try and make <laughs> it seem super crazy when it's kind of... Uh, we've already seen super crazy games today. Right. Definitely. So I don't want to kind of they do them the shot, injustice though. I mean, by just screaming um, about everything. <laughs> G-Bots would have been yet another tie if they hadn't reverse swept in almost the same exact scenario. I believe they were 1-3 and came back for a 5-3 yeah. win. So That's true. If I did, wasn't it 0-3? I wrote down 0-3. Maybe that wasn't true. I believe, I think they had one, but it could have been zero. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, the G-Bots kind of... But regardless, a pretty heavy sweep. Back and in the as other well, direction. that was that was the first game as well. Everyone right. had kind of hyped up G-Bot saying like, "This is a team that yeah, could right. be a dark horse, could be a massive contender." Went like one three zero three down to Sifu, and then we're just like, "Hang on, guys!" Attackers Absolutely, we're the G-Bots. I mean, so they mixed it up, brought Buck back in, and took out Thermite for Buck. So they have Twitch yeah. and Buck. Wait, and no thermite. No thermite. So I think this is actually the first round all Definitely day. Definitely the first round thermite. all day without thermite. And I feel like if you're 4-1 up, you've already got one of the maps won. I mean, this is the kind of time where you can experiment with this sort of stuff. Right. I don't think... Uh, I think they're going for the gunfights in this one. Yeah. And Buck is not too bad at gunfights. No, absolutely not. I mean, you've got essentially a second primary. Right. That takes zero time to swap between. So why not, you know? But here we go. We're going to go for that James Bond entrance through the barricade <laughs> and charge on in with that. Although arrow... Oh, no, it's 4-4 four, four already? Okay. Here we go. He's going to find an enemy. It just gets denied. So clearly, Frost, the better of the two new operators in that yep. one versus one right there. Yep. Well, you, you take the not-so-great shotgun versus the... Arguably, maybe too great shotgun and uh, yeah. The, I mean, the super 90 there getting its super 90th kill of the day. Yeah. Else, like, 
but here we go. I mean, four versus three, Flamers still with an advantage here on the defensive side. Yeah. They definitely are much better at defending than attack on this map. Four versus two now. And that's going to be Boros as well, getting a Again, second kill. Again, another first. Super 90. Although he's hurt now. Less than third of a half. And it's tough. Well, I don't think he minds, yep. because he's right just got to kill bear with trap. the bear trap. Right in the bear trap. And there's QB as well, finding one for himself. And that's going to oh, turn kill into... cam. There it is. Oh, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Whoops, I slipped. <laughs> Smack. Bumped his head and killed himself. There goes Yoshi and my friend. <laughs> <But> <laughs> that is going to be a second round for that Flamers. I feel like that was kind of maybe... It's a beautiful ragdoll is what that was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Just kind of slipped right onto his butt. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like um, when you step out of the shower. Yeah. There's a puddle on the floor and you're just like... Whoosh. Yeah. Panky and I were definitely mentioning how hilarious it is to see the kill cam when it is a frost trap. And it it just... The, fra uh, the ragdoll effect every time is just funny to me. Yeah. And there was that one as well. Yeah, there was a cartwheel. That was yeah, hilarious. The cartwheel was solid. <laughs> I got a lot of kill cams. Kill cams are just. Uh, I, I don't know if uh, any and of you guys saw during the alpha build, some of the kill cams were just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. You would see like only the feet and the rest of the model. It was yeah. like the feet and the guns, like, the hands sick. attached to the rest of the model, kind of just like going all over the place. I'm surprised Flamers is yet again bringing IQ. I don't. I mean, it hasn't worked for them once. I don't know why they wouldn't try mixing up some of the operators, but they're very persistent with taking the most useless <laughs> ability in the game. <laughs> well, so I mean, yeah, if it, it was is. working for them, I wouldn't knock it, but it's not, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess on the other side of things, you could argue maybe if this is the strategy that they often run, maybe don't try and kind of don't play the operators that you're not used to when it's kind of on the big stage, you know? Right. But again, as you say, it's kind of, if it's not working, maybe something does need to be changed up here. Right. We go Pulse again coming out here for Era. Doc and Rook Smoke has been a staple throughout. Rook and Smoke, definitely two of the, the top dogs in terms of defense. No Frost coming out though, interestingly. Frost has definitely been at least kind of second, third most popular operator for, for, sure. for the day. I think Rook kind of takes the cake. Smoke as well has been just about in every single composition. Yeah. And then of course some attackers, Thatcher and Thermite, no surprise. Yeah, that combo. Finally saw the first round without a Thermite. Very surprised to see Thermite go on that. I think Ash as well has been really up there for attackers, which I wasn't expecting as much. Nice kill there by enemy to open that one up for error. So, Flamers on the attack, one man down, one more. Knife. Actually, the no, they managed to get one there onto enemy. And that was a trade as well. Enemy was the one that got the original kill, so. Right. That's kind of a vengeance, like avenging his brother yeah. with the knife, like dramatic Just get kill. real personal. <laughs> it's like something out of a movie. Here we go. I mean, if you're going to do something out of, a, out of a movie, I feel like the, the Russian cafe is going to be the place to do it. It feels very kind of... I don't know. <laughs> Gonna fight movie-esque. Movie <laughs> I don't know. It's got trains. Yeah. It does have trains. That is very true. There are trains in movies. Ergo, it's a movie film. Movie film. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> you talk for a bit, dude. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. So 4-4. Four, four. 58 <laughs> seconds left is definitely in favor of Defenders yet again, but... Panic. 3 4, two, four Right as I say it. Yeah, there it goes. Is this where Panic steps it, up once is again? Is it in favor of them, though? With Raven, Revan. How do you say it? Revan? Revan, I think, yeah. Here we go. And oh, she's right forward. above L. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know what's kind of going on here. Two of them are kind of just watching <laughs> I thought he forward. downed. Oh, was that no, Doc? No, they both Doc. just ducked behind I think Doc finally just got himself. Did yeah, I think. I'm not sure whether he got himself up or whether he managed Wait, to dodge behind cover. Okay, maybe. Okay. I think it, it was that, that he dodged away, but yeah. there might last man. It's going to be Boros on the scene once more. He finds one for himself. He's in a two versus he one. Just I want to see. Panics, though. I want to see from Boros' point of view right here, or or not, because he's already down. Yeah. And it's going to be undead, making Boros re-dead right there. Final yep. kill of the game, and it is going to be Aero or Era. Sorry, they're not chocolate bars. They are in fact players. And they are going to be able to take that second map in a row. So 2-0, our second 2-0 of the day. Honestly, pretty convincing against the Flamers there. They felt, it looked very comfortable for them. Flamers 
I mean, phenomenal performance on Chalet, but not really able to turn that into anything more. Yep. It's, uh, they had a little bit of a, little bit of a st like stance, you know, a little fighting stance back, like they wanted to do something and couldn't quite yeah. get it all the way through. I mean, I don't know, but it was a hell of a statement to get yep. into the pro league. Like, here we are, we are the Flamers, let's do this, 5-0. But then Definitely. it kind of just, it was like a fantastic takeoff and then suddenly kind of just started engines failing and then just yep. plummeted into the ground. And unfortunately lost three games in a row. We are gonna have Panics, Sean on stage, I believe with Panics. Yeah, yeah. so Panics kind of, MVP of the day so far for me with that one versus four Definitely. clutch. I want to hear from his mouth how he's feeling. Heading in three, one, let's pass it over to Sean on the stage. Thank you so much, guys. I am indeed here on the stage with Panics. Sir, GG, how do you feel? I feel great. Um, the, the game against uh, that Flamers was really fun and good. They played really well. Um, but we're still a bit mad about the lose, uh, the draw uh, on the first, uh, the first game. But overall, it's a pretty good day. Everyone uh, had a draw almost, so uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, I guess we play good, and I hope uh, people can see how we play in LAN and uh, enjoy the game and just feel good about the game, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned it right there. You're here on land, you've, you've got everybody around. It's uh, technically the second day of the Pro League, but we're playing it in one day. You just got a kiss on the side of their head. What, what's, the, what's the feeling like being here, surrounded by the team, for the first time kind of hanging out together in this environment? Um, to be honest, it's like my first PC uh, event. So it, it, it feels great. Uh, it's a bit weird at the first time because um, I don't know, the game feels a bit uh, different and it's hard to get on, on on the first day. But to be honest, it was really great to meet the guys. Uh, it's always a fun and a pleasure to meet uh, for the first time your, your friends and your mates. Uh, but there was also the other teams, like we meet everyone from the friends, uh, from uh, Spanish, everyone is great. Uh, so we're having a good laugh with the, the other team uh, overall and it just feels really good and the show is incredible, so yeah. <laughs> Incroyable. Now, I'll ask you one more question and then I'll let you get back and enjoy with the guys. This is it. You had your first two rounds of the Pro League. You're done for the day. Are you happy with your performance and what will you take away? How will you kind of prepare uh, for the next, uh, next play days? Um, I think we would have been happy if we all uh, won 4-0 the, on the first day, but... Uh, I guess that everyone had uh, some troubles to play on the first day of the Pro League, so we can be happy about that, I guess. Um, we'll try to work out on Chalet. I guess we'll maybe uh, ban it or, <laughs> or we'll maybe work it, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, the, um, that's it. We're going to work a lot with Undead, who is the new players in the lineup since like uh, Friday. So we need to work with him, and then we can only have good hope with the team. And I think that's it. Like, really good, really good uh, day overall for a team who has uh, a new stand-in for our week. Yeah. Well, we absolutely loved having you. Thank you so much for taking the time Thanks. to have a chat. They're going to go off and actually start thinking about what they're going to pick as the bands. I'll let you go away. You can stand here right with me. You don't even have to leave. Panics. What a gentleman, what a nice guy, and of course, has done his job. Two plays here today. We've still got three more to go, but let's break this down, and for that, pass it off to the man over there who always can. Over to you, Panky. Thank you very much again, Sean, another stellar interview. And we have been joined at the desk again now by another very special guest, the team manager for Penta, Felix Valias. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you guys doing? A very new team, very new eSport, and your first event, I Am Katowice, is a big one. How are you guys feeling? Well, I first fell in love with Katowice, like 2013. Yeah. Uh, first at Italy Extreme Masters, one of the first events for me. And it was just huge. The Polish crowds are just amazing. They're fans of every game, they're very supportive, uh, they're in, very nice people, and it's always, I'm always glad to be back. Yep, 100% agree. This is my fourth kind of it's a, I love it here. It's brilliant. Yeah, it is. Let's dive straight into that last game. We just saw two brand new maps, State of the Bet, Consulate, Cafe Dostoevsky, hadn't seen those at all during the Pro League up until now. 
Flamers, unfortunately, couldn't quite bring their performance out from the uh, the previous game. I know you were very upset about yeah. that, Drew. <laughs> do, you, do you think they had any possible reasons for that? Was there, like, did they not favor those maps so well? Were there clear, glaring holes in their gameplay? I don't know. Maybe they got a bit tilted from the really, really good start on Epsilon, and then they just kind of lost it at the end, and maybe they just followed for that kind of tilt. Could be. Possible. There's, uh, there's that's a lot said, of reasons. Like, there was having that, that 5 0 suite is really good for them, and they should mm. always like mm. focus on that one, yeah. go on upwards. Yeah. I don't want to ask you too much about uh, your feelings of that. Of course, you've got to keep things close to your chest, but Consulate to Cafe, do you have a favorite in either of those two, personally, um, if not the team? Probably Consulate. We don't like Cafe that much, uh, but. Well, you need to be good on every map, and this is think, I think this is the reason that uh, the new team, the Flamers, did not yep. that well, because they simply did not have the time to prepare. Um, he was giving an interview, and he, he said, literally two weeks ago, we did not know that we would be here. We're a new team. There are like a lot of maps to play, a lot of spots, a lot of positions to learn. Uh, they will definitely get better. This has been a good start for them. Mm. Yep. Our era is, over, is the overall first seed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they did respectably well against that. They had some close rounds or rounds that could have gone the other way. And yeah, and also don't, th don't think they tilted. They no. basically, they go here, they come here to Katowice and they have like zero expectations. They say we're, we're qualified, we fulfilled a lifelong dream and we will like take every map like it comes. If we lose, we lose. Uh, we are going to stay friends and yeah, you'll just see it goes. It's, it's definitely an amazing start. It's yeah. definitely like 5-0. Yeah, and uh, it's the perfect thing with a, it's a pro league. It's not just a tournament. It's not done, gone now. They've got oh, yeah, yeah, many, yeah. many weeks to improve and train and get better and get them all the way back. So they've definitely got the right mindset about it. I want to talk to you guys about your next game. Penta, you guys are playing up against G-Bots. G-Bots have come out and said they think you are their toughest competition in this tournament. They think you're the guys they're going to be fighting for position with. Do you feel the same the other way or uh, were they a non-factor until you saw them play today? Well, certainly we have a lot of respect for G-Bots. Uh, they're a very great team, very dedicated players, uh, very very individual skilled players. Yeah. Uh, they can take us, we can take them. It's like a matter of mindset. I think the, the skill gap between us is like very small. And yeah, it can go either way. Mm -hmm. So um, again, I, I don't want you to reveal too much here, but I want to get into these deep questions. Um, we speculated about it when we were casting, and I'm not sure these get it too. We saw an IQ pick again. I want to get more and more opinions on this. Why do you think some of these teams are playing IQ, even though her, her gadget is widely regarded as basically useless? Well, I think there is a simple question to that, uh, simple answer to that question. Basically, uh, she's a good all-rounder, she has good weapons, and if you have all the gadgets you need or you feel you need, why not pick a, a, a operator that you feel comfortable with, that has a great weapon, uh, where you can like basically focus on aiming, focus on out-aiming your opponent, uh, yeah, it's like, if it fits into the team, it fits into the team. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. She's like another recruit. So we're going to take one last quick look at the rankings, just as this comes up on the screen. Has there anyone that's played today that's completely caught you by surprise? Or is it Flamers with that first win? Were they, were they the guys no, that they you, like everyone else, expected to be, be down there? Uh, actually, they did not uh, surprise me. They were, no? they were coming into this tournament as not as a dark horse, but as clear underdog. Mm -hmm. uh, but all the other teams did not have information on them. They did not know how they play. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, well, they used it to their advantage, definitely. Yep, so there is our standings as they are right now. Because first game into our play day two on your screen. These are the games we got left. Penta Esports obviously up against G Bots next. Sifu versus Warrior Team France coming up as our penultimate game. And then Epsilon versus TCM to round it out. I don't want to hold us up from those games any longer. We're going to run to another very quick commercial break. We're going to take another switch desk between casters and whatnot. When we come back, we will see Penta Esports. Uh, sorry, Penta Esports versus G Bots. Where it's hard. Intel RealSense is all about changing the way we interact with computers. The way we interact with this game is entirely with our hands. It's a natural way to communicate. We want our computer to be able to sort of understand that movement because it's more human and more natural. Awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to control, I'm surprised. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 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 <laughs> we use this camera to interpret natural forms of human communication like facial expressions. <laughs> Another cool thing we can do with a 3D camera is we can create 3D scans. We'll actually take this and we'll composite it onto a figure. 
I need to see what I look like as a princess.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're joining us live from the Intel Extreme Masters Expo in Katowice, Poland, where we are bringing you none other than the Rainbow Six Pro League. Yes, indeed. It's all going down here. We've seen the teams come out. They've all played through one round and they've all shown that it's a close fought battle. And that means we want to see more. So I hope that you're ready because we still do have three head-to-head -head matches which we're going to bring you today and they promise to be good. Our next one coming up right here is Penta, the German team. We saw them do well in the first off and they're going up against the G-Bots and those guys are from Spain and they also showed before, I believe, and I'm sure the desk will correct me if I'm wrong, but they're actually standing at one point apiece. So much to play for here and much to prove as they want to show to you that they are Rainbow Six Siege Pro League material. They deserve to be here. They've been battling all their way through the EU qualifications to go for to be here and play in the PC part of the of the Pro League. And of course, there's also a PC Pro League which takes place for the US audience or the North America. And there is the same for EU and Europe on the Xbox One. Loads to see if you're a fan of esports. But without further ado, let's look. I can see them talking teams on either side that means they're getting ready which means we can get ready and that means going over to the man the myth the legend over to you panky always the best introductions with sean i couldn't i could never ask for more but again thank you very much sean we are going to dive straight into penta esports versus g bots and we've already heard so much about these teams from almost each other we had felix here from penta last game talking about how they have a lot of respect for g bots how they think it's going to be a big opponent g bots are saying long before the tournament even started i right. think penta is one of their biggest challenges in this tournament with so to see them play each other so early on it's awesome with g bots saying uh g bots being the only 2-0 Team right now and saying well, what they said about the team from day one of from day one of we course. did just see arrow go right. 2 -0. you cast that game you know it's, it's not so long ago. uh yeah okay or was yep. it iq shoes were they a bit <laughs> were they a bit distracted it's been a whole day <laughs> it, we're on day two now <laughs> i'm all out of it but yes uh, right. okay so the first 2 -0 team strong, shall we? right first one of the day and uh for them to regard penta so highly i think it'll be really exciting this will probably be the most exciting game of the day i think but very much so i mean it's been a little while. We will get those rosters up in a moment and uh, go over those and give you a, a brief recap of these players and uh, who's on each team. But I, I'm excited for the maps. We've still seen a couple of, well, we've still got a couple of maps that we haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. Still, I'm beyond amazed we saw Presidential Plane so early on, but we've got Definitely. Yacht still in there. We've got Canal still in there. I'm Herford surprised we haven't seen I'm Canal. surprised we haven't seen. And Herford, Herford Face has been such a, uh, I want to say even map, to be fair. Right. It's, it's very, very uh, easy for both teams to play that. I'm surprised it hasn't slipped through as one of the few. Um, Yacht, not so surprised at. I know a lot of yeah. teams don't like Yacht. It's just a newer map. People aren't ready for it yet. I wouldn't want to play it. Um, Hereford Base shocks me that that hasn't been played, given that, you know, it's, it's another one of those... It's another bandit plant map. It's like a very... I think everybody knows it well. Uh, it's been around since like the. That, ma that may be literally be why it hasn't been played so much because everyone's played it. Everyone knows it. It's yeah. so easy to crack into. It's easy to just ban it away and play one of these other maps that you feel you're better at than everyone else, as opposed to one right. that you know everyone's good at. True. There sure. are, of course, the G Boss. They're going to start off as our blue side this time. Penta going to be our uh, orange team, thanks to our lovely borders have annotated. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a little reddish to me. It does look very red, but yeah. orange is a difficult color to make. It okay? is, yeah. And horrible on camera, to be fair. I've, I've done it. I tried a long time ago. I was like, I could wear an orange shirt. Like, oh, no. I kind of got shut down very Immediately quickly. switched to red. But there is your Penta lineup. I got Ovi, Pengu, Rendier, and Sai. They are feared amongst the Rainbow Six Pro League EU brethren. Not sure that the uh, North American teams have quite the same respect for these guys yet, but I like to think that after after seeing two days worth of play, the North American squads will uh, start quaking in their we'll boots. We'll see. Um, but we'll have to watch. We do have our maps. Do you want to hear them? I Excited? Do. You hyped? Let's hear them. Consulate and Chalet. Consulate and Chalet, okay. So, Consulate, we oh. saw nothing in day one. Now we're seeing it two games in a row. Yeah. And of course, Chalet, we've seen some very explosive games for both sides. Right. So we're uh, ready for Chalet again. Yeah, we're going to look to see how uh, people can go from that. And most point is whether they've learned anything from watching other people play that way. Um, anything you've picked up from watching teams play these games that you uh, previously hadn't spotted from playing yourself? 
Um, a couple new angles I definitely didn't notice before. And uh, interesting, <clears throat> I don't know, just the, the choices teams make for uh, certainly IQ being used a lot more today than I expected, Blitz being used a lot more than I expected, and uh, uh, especially Arrow put Thermite away one of the games. That was surprising. Yeah, and uh, there on your screens is, of course, the G-Boss lineup. Drid, Leon, Choi, who went massive for them in some of their earlier games and really turned around the Oregon map, in fact, they yeah. were playing on that yep. one. Crip and Legno. So all of these guys and all of these names that you really need to look out for. Yep. And if you get them on your team in matchmaking, just, just sit back and smile. <laughs> uh, you're going to have a good game if that happens. So it's a... Uh, I'm just intrigued by that facial expression. I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, that, that threw me <laughs> yeah. off for a second. <laughs> yeah. So I personally, I, I saw that last game. I saw everything from the NSS, but Consular, I still feel like that map, we never really scratched the surface in that last game. Like It feels like, it was like there's lots of different ways to play that map right. that didn't come through. It's a map I was looking forward to seeing that it kind of, it was sort of a one-sided game, and uh, we didn't get to see a lot of the good real strategies that usually come with that map. So it'll be interesting to see it again on... Such a high-stakes game, I think, with Pent and G-Bots. Yeah, well, we're going to dive over to this castle team in just a second, but honestly, I'm going to put you on the spot again. I'm going to give you a prediction. Pent or G-Bots? I'm, I'm going to stick with G-Bots, I think. They pulled off strongest on day one. Pent has been playing well, but I think, uh, think G-Bots is going to take it. All right, G-Bots from... Uh from Derek. We're going to dive straight on over to our casters then. Joe Fenny, True Talent, please take us away with this monster matchup. Monster matchup indeed. Come Here on. we are on our first map already. We're just skipping Castacan. We're <laughs> yeah. getting straight on into the action because the Get players right have there. already started. <laughs> but here we go. Consulate is going to be the map. Looks and like, um, yeah, they're going for uh, the bottom. Usually is a very oh, you the know, bottom. usual I place, thought you yeah. said the bomb then. I was like, well, that, well, that, is, that, that is kind of the point though. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the bottom is the, uh, the correct the, yeah, garage. The garage. As uh, Derek would say, mm. but here we go. So, basement. I mean, I've just cast a game on this one, and it was very much kind of slow paced and very one sided, to be quite honest. Yes. Um, I'm hoping, especially with this matchup, G bots, G bots, G bots versus Pentasports. This should be on paper. Phenomenal game. Where's so that as My mic keeps on going. Uh, I think Bingo. he's underneath this. Either at the bottom of the stairs or... Okay, just peeking down into B-bomb. Just probably going to want to push through Garage as well. There it is. So they'll make a hole there and get another hole looking through uh, into B-bomb. Yeah, so this, again, me and Derek talked so much about this. Once you've blown that Garage open, it mm. just gives you... It gives the defenders so much more to have to worry about. Yep, and, and as and you can see, it. there's only one person there, but it's just a threat. So yep. now people can push behind, they can push to different places, and they need to have someone at least watching that place. Yeah. And that's that's what it's all about. It's not necessarily whether you use that, it's whether it's just forcing your opponent to have to react to that. It's making sure that they it's have the too much to deal with. It's yeah. the threat, yeah, definitely. Looking yeah. for some roam, as it looks like here. Yeah, and let's take a look at the compositions as well. Very standard stuff, like the kind of thing we've been seeing come out yeah. all day here. So Jaeger and Bandit coming out, Pulse, Smoke, and Rook, no Frost on the side of Penta. What, what's going through this guy's head? <laughs> I don't know. I think he's just waiting for Romas, maybe, mm. to try and... Uh, Watching the uh, Spiral Staircase for a while. I mean, one minute 30 left, and we've not seen... Mm. The, no one's even spotted each other. Never mind, got a kill. So there's three so, people at the top. And they've just all been spotted out by their drone, which I think just got away down the stairs as well. So pretty much getting away with that one. I'll take a look at that. I go way, way away from the sites right now. He's waiting for the push to come in so that he can go for that kind of pretty commonly done Jaeger room that we do see fairly often. Uh, let's have a look at There we go. Here we go. The push comes on in. They're finally starting to make some progress here. I have an idea where he is. I think. get him? This is the point listening out, and it's oh, going to be G-Bots trading okay. one for one so far. Crip gets one. Nice. It's going to be Render. Another couple of kills come across, but it's going to be Penta landing the headshots. 3v3, as you seconds. say. And this is kind of where they need to start pushing. 40 seconds. They don't have a whole make long... a little hole. Yeah, exactly. They don't have long to play with here. They've got to start to get this diffuser. Yeah, 30 seconds. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be a rush. Certainly is. Let's see how they go for this What's one. What's happening with the bomb? Don't really want to just be dropping on down. We did see the diffuser was dropped. I think it got picked up again. Not 100% on that one. No, no one's currently Is carrying it. Holes? So, spraying the motor holes. Yeah, just got to try and 
Saw some fire. It's got 15 seconds. They've got to make something. Yeah. They've, got, they've either got to go for the kills or they've got to find that diffuser. Oh, it looks like it's behind the overlay, in fact. It is going to be Crypt trying to get that Ooh. diffuser down. Bad drop. It looks like he is going to be able to get it. I can't quite Three see seconds. from his perspective. No, I don't oh, think he's got time. it in the end, and it is going to be the end oh. of the round. Wow. As Sai, actually, I think that just a... about eliminated them in the last second. That was a there. slow push. There were three of them at the very top looking for a Roma. Like, that was interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what... I, I thought that he was going for the plan there right at the end. Mm. I didn't quite see whether that was the case or not, but Sai with four <laughs> kills that round. Yeah, wow, good job. Right at the end, picked up three, just kind of going, okay, I'm done with this round. I don't care if it's about to time out. I'm going to end it first with yep. one second remaining and just get that triple kill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he didn't need to. Exactly, <laughs> just, yeah. Just do it, why not? So, I mean, you know, it just looks padding, like these padding stats at this point. It looks like top floor, these. Yeah, so I mean, this is what we saw when we when we cast Consular earlier. Yep. We saw top four and uh, the garage kind of. Those were the two that were. This being is one I between. like more than garage. People go. Um, oh no, I think that's uh, secure. Secure, you can go servers as well. Yeah, but no, they're gonna be going for this top floor, and this is as well where the bomb often is when you play the terrorist hunt on this map. Yeah. <laughs> so boarding up the uh, spiral staircase. I like this from the defenders as well, blowing holes in the walls so that you yep, see through. can... It's nice to reinforce part like near the hole, um, because if you stand near that reinforcement, you've got protection, but you've still got that hole you can peek through. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like manipulating the map so that it's on your side here. Montaigne's in play. Interesting. Let's see how this one pans out, because this is something Gbot's talked to us about on the desk. I'm Penta playing it. I'm going to guess that the Montaigne's going to go oh, spiral stair. We have a mute as well. Let's just point that out. Mute is on the scene, so signal jammers have been down. Oh, OK, Missed instead of Bandit. With. They've uh, they've gone for mute instead of Bandit, it looks like. Because yes. you do want Bandit or mute. They're pretty much, they are similar. And as well, no, I mean, we've kind of got the the three core defenders in Smoke, Rook, and Frost. Those are kind of the top three we've seen. Yeah. Then going for Castle and Mute. So a very interesting composition coming out from G-Bots. Let's see how that one's going to pan out for them. I'm interested to see where this Montaigne's going. Yeah, same. It's... You do not want to go through windows with a Montaigne because you have no shield. So if you go through, you could just get shot yeah. easier. Unless you're certain that it's safe and you can get in and get your shield up, then maybe. But like someone else needs to clear that first. Looks you like it might. The Is the shield looking through a window? He's looking for a way in, I think. Ooh, risky. Okay, He's got no space. protection right now. He's actually going to drove He wants to get... If he can get in there, we'll get a... Sh oh, yeah, don't there go in there. <laughs> don't like, bother. Maybe, maybe I won't go in here. Yeah, just that's, leave it. Uh, maybe just not leave it. At least he knows there's a few people in there, at least one. Yeah, and that's that's valuable scouting. But G-Bot's already losing a man there. Bit of intel. So... Defenders a man down, but... Looks like he's going to try and push towards cinema. Oh, there is some going spiral. I honestly thought there was going Montaigne this way. So it looks like Montaigne's going towards cinema. Yeah. I call and, cinema. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm curious to see how the, the kind of flank works out here. Oh, oh, what? What was that? Oh, they came around back. Wow. Uh, looks at yeah. things. In fact, no, they're kind of... No, no, they, they shot That's through. teammate, yeah. But... They don't... Oh, oh. Man, Montana's back on his feet. It was Thatcher that went down in the end, but it is going to be four versus four. One minute left on the clock, so this is where Penta need to start Two to of speed them things up a little bit here. Other guys going Skylight, it looks like. Oh, he's down. Ooh. Yeah, he down. Nice. He was going that Skylight. Was, like, cross I think. as well, that kill coming out from... I think it was Rendia that got that one for himself. And now with the advantage, Penta starts to push on. Look at where Iger is, though, way over to the left. Rendia finds another one for himself. Iger going to look for this roam on around. Rendia does finally go down, so the g bot's going to be very happy about that news. Yep. It's but looking good, but they, they, need, they, they need to get in there. They need to get in there. The time's going down, and now it's 2v2. Oh, they have the advantage. Tag that man, but Rook is going to be able to drop oh, away. There's Iger on the flank. Gets that headshot with the SMG. Nice, this get the, the bomb down. User coming down. And now it's Where's his friend? Where's his teammate? Well, okay, okay. How, can he do this? Can he do this? Let's him. see. He's got to find the headshot on the first yeah. kill. That's so, so cool. He, he is on full health. One of them is hurt, so he will win a trade. He's looking the wrong way. Speak out. He needs to just wait for... Uh, oh, and he gets... Oh! Oh, this can he get him? Oh, my God! Really nice. Great. Really nice. What Good was stuff. that? And I feel like that was kind of... Penta maybe dropping the ball on that one because he sprinted stuff, through there. Yeah. This guy missed his first shot, turned around, pops the guy immediately to his right, yeah, and then the finishes yeah. off the first one. Oh, wow. What? Where were they looking? <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? Oh, I forgot I left that hole there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
And this is Crip as well that we talked to on, on the analyst desk earlier. We were saying like, I mean, we were talking about mentality. You've got to be in that mindset of we are going to win this game. And you can see that shining yep. through as yep. he just storms the base on his own, pops heads and he gets He completely forgot the hole there. They were yeah. looking at the looking at, oh my God. Look at Crip as well. Wow. Six skills for his yeah. team. He is. Good stuff. 1-1. One, one. He's Balls. got his carry pants on today. He has eaten his Weetabix and he is ready to get into this series. G-Bots, let's remember, are the only team with two wins on the board. They're looking to turn that into four if they can, but Penta on a 1-1 one -one scoreline so far. They are definitely not looking to uh, lose any more games at this rate. So that was really close. We'll see whether Penta can uh, kind of put a stop in that because this is, when when you get a, like a clutch win like that, that's where the momentum really yeah. comes in. That's where your team is going to be hyped. You're going to be absolutely pumping with adrenaline. But can they translate that into another round win? This time it's Penta on the defense, and they're going for the same, same place, spot. Yeah. Be interesting to see how uh, G attacks this. G bots. Yeah. The Gs. The Gs. Gangster bots. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to see no mute coming out this time. Pretty standard defense once more. Got a Roman no downstairs. Frost. Can you see the um, one of the Penta players is downstairs roaming? Yeah. Penta really don't seem to be that big of a fan of Frost. Frost is something we've seen a lot, but Penta specifically don't seem to hmm. really fancy it that much. Maybe it's just a personal preference. They'll like That's another a, thing, won't they? Yeah, I mean... Maybe Jaeger. Maybe they go for the Jaeger. Th this seems to be the thing that they swap it for, and, that, and hmm. obviously Bandit and Pulse as well. Pulse... Again, one of these operators that certain teams seem to really favor, but other mm. teams really not If so you've much. got a good pulse, you've got a strong player. Yeah. It's, it's good intel, really good intel. If they're a good pulse and they know where to look, yeah. I, I think it depends on the map as well. Because, like, uh, on, for example, Aeroplane, like, it's also close quarters that pulse is invaluable. But then some of the, some of the bigger maps, it's kind of a little bit harder to use that to full effect. Here we go, two minutes on the clock as we start Looks to like he's looking in. to spray into cinema. Uh, Choi, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's Choi, yeah. Choi? Yeah, there we go. I just wanted to see his kind of view there. Because this is going to be a little firefight here. Yeah, this, this is like... He knows the one thing there. For the head yeah, peak, because... Yeah, yeah. He can wait there a bit. When you go there for his he head peak, it's kind yeah, of like, on. yes, it's hard oh, to hit you, but if they do hit you, there's no way they don't headshot you. There's someone just in there. Crip finds another one for himself, and that is going to mean that the attackers here of G-Bots are going to have the man advantage as Very they nice. push on forwards. One minute 30 to work with here. There's still one in Cinema. They find another one. The spray coming on nice, through, and it stuff. is going to be another headshot Cinema's still there. Cinema's still there. Here we go, then. Crip. Another two kills on the scoreboard for him. He's on eight for himself. And that's wow. going to be Drid from the G-Boss as well. Finding oh, a headshot. Shot, Crip yeah. finally goes down, but it's going to be Drid immediately answering onto Pengu. Nice. And good look stuff, at that. Stuff. Lion finishes off the round, taking out Sai, and the G-Boss seem to have just woken up again. Two rounds on the trot, and they are feeling good. Very, very nice. So now, put yourself in the shoes of Penta for me. It's 2-1. You're a team that's kind of been heralded as one of the favorites. Mm. They're definitely a team that people are looking out for here. What do you do to kind of make sure that your your heads don't kind of droop here? Make sure that you don't see any of that forbidden T I L T. Just keep a positive attitude. Just keep being positive. Keep knowing that you can do it. You just messed up. So what? One round. You got way more rounds to go. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing, isn't it? That, that's just one round, and you've got to take it round by round. You got yeah, to do it one yeah. at a time because Til getting tilted is the worst thing ever. I, I've, yeah. I've done it. Like everyone, has I, I've done it. And when I get tilted, I can't. I can't kill anything. <laughs> I'm so yeah, it's uh, the the you need to be positive definitely, especially in this place. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't want to mess up, do you? No, you <laughs> certainly do not. Let's take a look. Okay, again, castle like coming again, out here. It, um, um, it's uh, garage again, once again. Garage and kitchen. So, castle going to be played by Drid here, and I believe it's Drid and Lion. I don't know whether I'm reading too much into this. You pointed it out on the team sheet, actually sharing yes. the surname, so I think they might be brothers. Yeah, even. yeah. And it looks so, like uh, Cho is the Roma is going to be peeking some windows. So once again, he's up there. I wonder if they're going to try and get him again, because maybe that's what happened last time. If you remember, there were all three of them up there. So I wonder if yeah. um, that's maybe one of the plans. We will see. I like that use of the drone to check for the window cheese as well. They know there's a hole in that window, so check it with the drone first and then put your, 
your neck on the line, as it were. Interesting that the uh, castle that though. Yeah, Why I guess it's explored. maybe just to try and, um, you know, force some resources out of your opponent. True. Yep. Like, that makes sense. It's just going to slow down the pace and make sure that they don't have as much to breach into these bomb sites as I like, they would like. I like how we blew it, wasted the resource, and then went somewhere different. Because, you know, why would they waste a resource somewhere they're not going to go? Distraction. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about these mind games, isn't yeah, it? But yeah. There will definitely be someone looking there at least for, you know, a few seconds from that. Interesting position from Montana there, but we are going to see the scouting coming out from Thatcher. Nice use of the drones, but very, very slow push from Penta. This is kind of... You can tell that here, Penta have kind of said, OK, we lost two rounds on the trot here. Let's kind of just take a deep breath here. Get, get control of ourselves and I take this one slow and methodical here. But I think Penta was quite slow last time um, on on the basement, weren't they? I think. Yeah, actually, I think you're right, because I don't think we even... It kind of became four versus four at 1 minute 30, mm. which we are at 1 minute 30 now, mm, so maybe this is where... They quite slow attacking the garage. All starts to kick off. Iger finds a headshot onto Legno, his name is. Nice little spray. He had the right idea as well, aimed the right way. Troy finds one though, so it's going to be evened out. Four versus four. And here we go, Sledge smashing his way onto the scene and immediately is changes in nice direction. Position. He is indeed. Drid finds one with that. Someone's in kitchen as well. Will he see him? Here he goes. It's going to be Iger. Iger definitely a strong player. I don't know it's if he saw that oh. player and he is going to get some. That is so unfortunate. Lion is going to capitalize more, immediately. Yep. And now there's only two players of. Suddenly, like Penta with five outside. players. Like, like, what the hell? <laughs> there's 40 seconds and they're both outside. Not even a minute ago, they were on five players. Now they're on to two. As you say, both outside. Looking for a way into the garage now. Trying to firm out. Have they got it? Oh, yes, they got it. It's going to be Drid here. They can push. <laughs> They're pushing into a... a oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> Lion is not messing around. He's like, yeah. I don't care if you've got a shield. I know where your eyes are. They've got some real nice spots here. That's a really nice spot. You can look down into the opening. No one even noticed it. He's going to get them watch. You just don't... You, don't, you know who's forget I mean, about that spot. It's like, too good. In that one versus four, how do you even push into that garage? How do you make it in there? That yeah. is a beautiful defense from the g bot. Very nice. And that is the third round in a row. 3-1. 3-1 indeed. g bots. after that first round looking albeit a little bit shaky. Mm -hmm. They've suddenly kind of gone, okay, guys, let's get this together and let's start to very snowball very towards a victory here. 3-1. I mean, a lot of the teams have been saying, G-Bots, these are the guys that we're nervous about. These are the guys that are going to be bringing the big guns. And they're proving it so far with two wins on the board already. Yeah. And they're well on the way to their Doing third. Doing very, very well. So here we go. I mean, I think this is... One thing we haven't really touched on at all today is kind of the opposite side of the whole mentality game. We've, say, we've said about tilt, we've said about when you're losing, like staying on top of your game. Yeah. There's something to be said for when you're winning as well, not getting carried away. Because you, you do see teams get to the four rounds and then suddenly start to throw things away. That's definitely... You can do that, yes. Definitely. It's very easily done and... If you already had the lead, that's just going to completely throw you off your game. Like, unbelievably so. So, right now, what I want to see out of G-Bots is continuous, slow, methodical play. Making sure that they aren't doing anything overconfident, overzealous, or just straight up stupid here. Yeah. Because it's very easy to get carried away and do that kind of thing. Looks like they were reinforcing the kitchen and reinforcing the garage, which is kind of just like an obvious player. Yeah. Nice defense still, though. Here we go. Might have a roam. They've got a roam upstairs again. Oh, wait. No, never mind. So. There is a roamer up there. Yeah, for, yeah. For the defenders, it's... yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. I, I was looking at the wrong guy, though. <laughs> Can't quite see who it was. Is to the very east. Angle, but it looks like. You know, I, I mean, I would ex expect it to be Jaeger. Just like, I'm kind of guessing there because I can't actually I'd see him. Pulse. But could be Pulse. Yeah, that's true. But it looks like. We already have a man down for the G bots. And in What's fact, happening over there? It's going to be Crip, who has been kind of one of the standout players for G bots. So, pretty bad news at the start of the round. Penta going to be very happy with that early pickup. However, obviously, while this is a game of numbers, a single headshot can easily change the direction it's going in. So, they're breaking through. Two of them outside. Looks like one's going to the top of the building. Yeah. Well and truly into the garage now, but do oh, he's going in. Just go Let's see what's uh, happening with him. He's, uh, he's going to do the firefight. Finds it onto Iger. Can, Can they land the nice. shots? 
Don't know if we're going to be able yeah, to. Yeah, we can. yeah, this is it. He's going to go for the repeat onto Iger. Does he does it. They both know they're there. They both know they're there. He wants to look for the wall bang, I think. He's wait, they're both waiting for the peak. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, peak, man. I think this is kind of <laughs> this is very much in favor of Penta. Even if they lose this, they're still even and they're defending. Whereas G bots have a whole lot to he lose in this trade. He knows if, is there. if he loses this trade to Iger, oh, and he does as well. Now they're three versus five. That was a kind of just a risky and honestly ill-advised peak to take because you lose that. He wanted him. Lose. He wanted him. Lions trying to bait him. If you can see, he shot there to make him come. Very smart. Yeah. See if he does a goal for the bait. He really wants... Oh, he is! He's going for it. Slowly, slowly. Sneaking over Brian towards his side. Oh, he's just moved as he came. Couldn't, oh, he can still get him here. Yeah, he could actually get him he's through that He's going to his right. Here we go. Three men still around for the G-Bots. It's going to be an impressive attack if they can take this one, though. It's kind of down to Penta. If they play this correctly, mm. there shouldn't really be a way the G-Bots take it unless you just see one player 40 going seconds, absolutely three off the chain. Five, four, yeah. Oh no, five. Wow. Well, here we go. It's going to be Rendia finding one, but immediately answered, and two kills come across from the G-Bots. That's going to turn it into two Very versus nice. three. Suddenly, this seems manageable, and they're looking for more as well. We're in the eyes of Drid, who is playing that Twitch. Is there. Rendia just oh, around the corner. Oh. He's looking for the peak just away. The very last second. What happens. The call outs have come out. He's, he's got some good ideas. There's so many well. players on so many corners right here for this oh, player. He he's going to oh, turn he around, it. but he, he can't it. land he it. He knew both of them. He knew no. both places. Last player here. He got the plan down. Rendia found Could the headshot. Could this be a 1v3? Could this be a 1v3? He's got the plan question. down. You can do this. He's got to find. Let him oh. He's got to find good positions. Have, have a look the, at the diffuser is already being attacked, view. I think, by Pengu, and it's going to be Ovi going to be able to defend that one. So, I like the team play coming out from Penta there. You just go for the diffuser. You know you have the man, adv 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 man advantage. You yes. know that you can kind of just flood around that and say, "Look, we're going to get this crossfire down." There's imagine, no way he can peek. Us imagine right if now. he had a grenade. Could have been a different story yeah. there. That would have <laughs> been uh, a very different story and. Uh, Maybe could have uh, made something a little bit more ah, explosive. Okay. But they're, the, they're the times you can get clutches, man, when you get that bomb down. Frost coming in here for the G bots. Not a class that. I mean, a class we've been seeing across the course of today. Yep. On this game specifically, though, I think this is the first Frost we're seeing. So. Potentially. Castle as well. And Castle definitely. And another mute. So. Pretty much changing up the defensive strategy in general. And I, I think this is the composition we saw in the first round of this game, potentially. Okay. I can't I, remember. I think that's correct. <laughs> uh, don't quote me on that okay. exactly, but I'm pretty sure this is the same conversation. Looks like the castle in the, the windows round. to the uh, the side of the B-bomb. Yeah, kind of just making it a lot harder yeah. for entry Well, you can well. peek through there or make a hole, leave it. I call it Boogeyman. <laughs> and then you can come back and then just peek every now and again. It causes that threat once again. Uh, when one of them explodes, it's a lot easier to see when there's someone at the window. Yeah. Well, here we go. Action phase begins. And let's see. I want to see more um, use of Twitch drone. I, I don't know whether that's just oh, a matter of us be. kind of not yeah, we're probably catching it or whether yeah, it's yeah. a matter of uh, less of it coming out. But we earlier on in the day, we actually saw a kill coming out from Twitch drone as well. But that, that's going to be the power of Mute mm. right there. Kind of immediately that drone is denied entry. And it's not something we've seen really much of. I mean, I was talking to Derek about this last game, kind of, we haven't seen Mute all day. Now suddenly we see it twice in one game, twice in five rounds. But honestly, I don't think it was that influential. I'm pretty sure G-Bots lost the last round that they used Mute on. So we'll see whether they is going to kind of pay dividends for them I'm just this wondering time. how they're going to attack this and what they're doing. It looks like uh, Pengu is looking in. Where's he looking? I think he's in the It looks like he just drawn into office, yeah, and... and uh, Nitro charge. Drid takes seems to out. know it. Here we go, Frost peeking on out that window. Maybe looking for a cheeky shot with that Super 90. Here we go. As Pentasport's team pushes on forwards. A man down here. Going spiral. But I don't think they're too fussed. As we said before, a single headshot can change all of that. So definitely not going to be deterred just yet. Pushing up. A very a nice slow. Spot. I like this kind of slow calculator play that we're seeing coming out from them. And it is going to pay off as they even up the scoreboard for a piece now as Ovi finds one onto Drid. That was going to be the... Um, that's More your draw, as well. So 
when when your thermite's getting kills, you know you're in good stead because that's usually your player that's very far back in the composition. Mm. That's never going to be your man that's right on the front. So yeah, and you don't want to lose the thermite too early on either. That can no, really wreck your push. Here we go. Can we? Have, there's some kind of thing happening around kitchen. It looks. Well, it's going to be Choi finding one onto Aga. Looking for one. Sai, what's happening with Sai? Ovi. Let's head over to Lion, who's playing that smoke. He's looking for Ovi, but not quite going to be able to find him. Ovi nice. is going to go into that down, but not outright here. And it's going to be the MP5 of Mute Crip playing that one. Going to be able to find that man. And he's just waiting for someone to try and get this. And it's going to yep. be Sai by the looks of things. Looking for a way in, looking to try and find his teammate. Are we going to see the punish coming out Is here? he trying to bait that guy? It looks like... Does yeah, he know he's down? I don't think he wanted to commit to going for that pickup. I think they're just going elsewhere on the map okay. right now. Oh, wow, they've, got, they've only got 15 seconds. Oh, oh they do. He oh, dropped my out. God, we saw one. We saw one. <laughs> Sai. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he that. had 15 seconds, so, but still. <laughs> there's, there's something painful about the fact that I just side Sai, but... Falling off the roof to end the round is never going to be a dignified way to go. Kind of just realizing, oh no, we've got 15 seconds, panic mode engaged, and just yep. jumping off the roof. Like, Whoops. I think he tried to repel and just quite didn't quite get it. Like you do, this you just grip, though. You just slide. 10 kills, double anyone else on his team's kills right there. Only one other player, Sai, in fact, on six. He's the closest, four kills down still. Mm. So Crip really pulling this one out. G-Bots, again, let's remember, that was their fourth round. They are now on match point. They are one round away from heading into their third victory in a row here in the Pro League. Yep. Honestly, the G-Bots are looking relatively undefeatable. Only two rounds over to Penta so far. They're going to be looking to turn that into a third. First time we see Penta run with Frost here on this map, I think. Yeah, very, very strong team. Well, Looks like they were uh, at the top once again. I mean, I was Setting talking. Up. I was talking to uh, one of the Penta players at the airport, and he was saying, "Like G bots are definitely kind of the team that we're looking out for. This is the team oh, okay. that really could, you know, ruin everything for mm. us." And I mean, it's not far from wrong. Yeah, <laughs> at yeah, this the, rate, the his prediction uh, seems correct at the moment. Looking pretty accurate, and I, I think the analyst desk kind of said. That they're starting to lean towards G bots, and I can't, oh, let's see can't say I blame them at this point. But let's Penta, see where they push him. definitely not out of the running just yet. Still 4 2, two round advantage for G bots, but it's definitely not over. Let's remember we've seen reverse sweeps already today. Yep. And in fact, it was G bots that got a reverse sweep earlier. I think they were down yeah. 0 3 against, um, against Chief. Chief. That always throws me off because it's. Oh, Shifu, sorry. Throws okay. me off because it's spelled Gifu, but it's Shifu. But Shifu, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, in fact, G Boss that got a reverse sweep against them. The I believe five, if not four rounds. Looks like he might drop. push him through here, this window. So it's certainly not unbelievable. But even if Penta come back right here, they're going to have to go into overtime. So They're just, just uh, making some dis uh, distractions at the moment. Just smashing a few windows, just causing a bit of chaos. Yeah. At this point, Penta have to win four rounds in a row to win this map. Otherwise, yeah. G-Bots win a single map before Penta I win think a two. big part of it will be how many... Like, if if um, G-Bots take the first kill on Penta, I think that will play a big part on who wins this round because it will be the mind games. It will be like, oh, we are getting really close to losing this. Yeah, they really don't want to have the uh, the first death. Yeah, this so is we the will thing. See. If G bots can find a pick, then they're going to be absolutely laughing. Yeah, I think it'll uh, hurt them mentally. It'll hurt Penta. It's going well. I mean, we'll see whether that's going to come out. No mute coming out from Penta, so that's only something we've really seen from the G bots. He's been doing okay. He didn't, he didn't go in yet. He wants to, but he's, he he can't commit yet. He needs to make sure. He's got a hunch. That's not very nice to talk about people's hunches. <laughs> you can't help that. <laughs> oh, and one, Lion one goes finds down. One. I mean, you talked about there if they we can go. get the pick. Yeah, and they did. So let's see if uh, the prediction is correct. Joy peeking out here. I think he's actually on the same team. I was looking through the eyes of Legno, so yeah. I think he's oh, fairly safe on that one. Oh, and they just took down the guy with the bomb. Iger has been on point uh, where this was game he from? with the headshots. I didn't quite see where that was actually shot from. I can't quite see where Iger is on the map, but I'm going to see Legno now pushing on in. Trying to find let's a see, way yeah, Let's see how this guy pushes. He's in a nice position. This will be interesting. 
This is kind of the, the point in the round where it's like, okay, 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, we have he needs to, to do something. We have to make something happen, but where do? do we go? You don't want to be the ones doing silly things. Oh, and just straight away. Rushes in and gets taken down. Yeah, Sonic finds four. the headshot. There's one in down, but not out as well. He wants the diffuser down. It's going to be the attack. It's just falling apart. I don't think Ooh, this one's going the way of G-Box nope. because there's only Lion up on his feet right now. It's going to make it. things happen. Does find where's one the, for the himself. It's going to turn oh, this one around. The position. diffuser's nowhere near him and he yeah. can't finish them ah. off. That is going to be Iger getting the last kill of the round with that headshot. And that is going to be another round for Penta. So they are one away from pushing this into overtime. And I mean, g -Boss, they've been looking strong, but Penta is certainly giving them a run for their oh, money. Oh, yeah, they That's don't want to sure. lose this. This is by no means a one-sided game. No. Just a single round between these guys. Mm. If he had the bomb or the diffuser, <laughs> yeah. um, he could have potentially clutched that because he wouldn't have had to go into that danger place. So it was a pity of the uh, the bomb drop. Bomb drop is a, uh, like a massive thing. Or diffuser drop. Yeah. It's okay, so garage and kitchen once again. So here we go. Just going to be reinforcing that garage door as per. Yeah, kind garage of, door, kitchen, just usual. We're getting to a point now where going for when you're looking at the defense, it's very, very sort of standard. Um, Castle has been seen a lot more than I think any of us casters were expecting to see him. Yeah. But I can... I am starting to see the benefits of that. It is going to slow down the opponents. It is going to Slows force them out down, some resources. Makes that noise, yeah. Waste resources. So there is a point. Um, is it worth uh, taking away another operator? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of one of those, like, I mean... I mean, you could have Frost there, couldn't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I definitely feel like uh, Frost could be... I mean... Ooh, that. What the yeah. hell? Wait, oh, what, what, that is going to be... Did someone just get peaked? I believe they... Ouch. Yeah, in fact, no, good. they tried to peek and it was Penta that capitalized. Penta on the attack. So, really nice oh, shot coming out yes, there. Nice. I just saw the diffuser. Uh, the I didn't see who took the shot, but very good play to yeah. watch out for those window peeks and be able yep, to take that early kill. Up. And that's kind of the first. This is a nice little peek. Or at least one of the first window peeks we've seen all day, to be honest. That's not a strategy we've seen a lot of. But Waste. good for Penta to, to still be watching out for that regardless. Yeah. Yeah, nice. You can do that. People who do peek, if you are watching for it, you can get them. It's not yeah. like it's this impossible thing, they peek, they're always going to win. Uh, no, I've, I've seen it many times that you can get the peekers. It's all about knowing where to look and hearing it. And you can hear it. Put out those shots. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Big diffuser? So, I mean, G-Bots. I thought you just said they planted the diffuser then. I was no, like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> With like five defenders remaining. That's it's blowing that just in case they have a mute. Uh, or a bandit, etc. Yeah. So we can just, you know, go straight through. Move any gadgets it's whatsoever. Well nice. It's going to be the garage. Running straight away from it. It doesn't mind. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't mind about it. And this is something we've seen just about yeah. every round as well. They blow open the garage door, maybe threat. go for it later, but not something you want to commit to immediately. You never really want to go straight for, okay, we've blown this down, let's go in. But Choi finds one. On to Rendir. This guy's one more for my charge. That's four versus four again now. So these. These picks are like so, so crucial because it's kind of, you just need to play it safe. When you get that advantage early on, you the, just uh, gotta play play corners. Yeah, the Montaigne will get some intel there because he can just go out there, have a little look, go yeah. away. He doesn't have to like engage, he just gets intel. Is there anyone there? Maybe not, okay, come here. And now maybe that's what he said to his teammate. So now his teammate's checking, look. There, there is go. one in there. Well, the orange team have finally found the bomb. And so there we that's go. good news. So he's going to think they knew where it was. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's going to probably <laughs> push with his teammate here. So Ovi finds one. And it's going to be a bots again. Oh, down this a man is going to be a big push. There's not here. that many people in there. They might even be able to get a plan. And but this is the power of Montan, right? You can just push forward so confidently yep. with that shield. Nice. And that's actually going to be Pengu on the Montan. Finding a kill for himself. Yep. Drift. He's baiting them. He's looking baiting to try and <laughs> get these. Iger finds one with the SMG. And Go suddenly... For Go for the plan. Suddenly it's oh. Dread versus the world right now. He's found the first kill of the round for his team. Can he turn this into some This crate? is going to be hard. If the G-Bots win this off his clutch, it's going to just be ridiculous. It'll it's going to be so oh. difficult. No, that is going to be going down. Round 8, going over to Penta, and that is 4-4 on the scoreboard right there. Ooh. And that was... That's a little sledgebang. Yeah, good little headshot as <laughs> yeah. well. Waiting Beautiful. at head height. This is one of the things that really separates players, is like making sure your crosshair is at that head yep. height. You're ready to get the you're headshot. And you're ready to... Instant. Yeah, Instant. exactly. You see exactly. it, bang, you know it's going to hit. No, no messing around on it. And so it's gone to overtime. It certainly has. So, I mean, 
we were thinking that this was going to be one heck of a game and 4-4 four, four on the scoreboard is, is certainly shaping up to be. Yeah. I honestly thought it was looking pretty dicey for Penta. It was 3-0 to G-Boss. Yep. And now Penta have managed to make Was it 3-0 or 3-1? I think they got 3-0 and then they got one. Penta. It was, it was in their favor anyway. Yeah. They, they were one away for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, they were. It's, it's definitely been at least three in a row right now for Penta. Yeah. So they, they've got the hat trick. And now they're looking for more. Bear Trap's going to be coming out from Drid, just making sure that those windows are a lot more difficult to come in through. And this is one of the things as well, when you go with those Bear Traps, it's kind of like, a, if you then defend that room, the person swinging in, well, it's basically like you can't swing into this window because you don't have time to shoot that bear trap while you're swinging in and then swim, swing up and snap to my head yeah. in the time that I just have to shoot you. When like, I, the, the, the way I use it is you just leave it there and if you hear noise, you know someone's pushing there. If you don't hear noise, they might just fall into it. So yeah. it's a nice little place you can just leave, almost just like a trap, you know? <laughs> well, who would have known? Yeah. <laughs> Coincidentally. <laughs> uh, they've got Castle and um, Frost. And we were saying, so this what, what have they dropped for that? This is definitely starting to feel like one of the more slow-paced maps that we've seen out today. Like, we see a lot of last 30-second pushes here on the consulate. Mm. And it's definitely not a map that's easy from the defend from the attacking side. Like, it, it seems very easy to defend both sides simultaneously because it's it, so many walls are destructible. I don't know, I think it's quite even, especially the uh, this bomb here. I think I think because of all the windows, there's so many places you can push from. There's so... Yeah, I think I think it's quite even up, upstairs. Uh, I'd say probably the garage is in defense's, uh, you know, favor. Yeah, play then. Here we go, two minutes on the clock. The drones zooming around. Just immediately get deleted as I say that. Cast a curse <laughs> coming into play. Yep. There we go. Nice corner peeking coming out. This is what you want to do when you're the one peeking. You want to go for that strafe. You want to make sure that you're not like uh, staying out in the open for too long Ooh, at a time. Oh, we've seen someone. He has indeed. Got that intel. Spotted out Frost. Yep. Now he's going to try and demons. find whatever else he can. It's going to be facing the wrong way, but does Down finally two. spot out another player. I believe that was Mew. Does he know so. they're still there? He's probably going to. Ooh, oh, that was risky. Really, like, uh, oh, he's he's waiting for the peak. Is this there? is Frost, oh, I think, with the oh, shotgun, and it is wow. going to be a kill coming out. Really just nice shot, shot come out. And look at this. It's just exploded. Headshot through the wall coming out right there, and suddenly <laughs> Drid is all on his own. He's got that Super wow. Knight to play with, though, and he's got two men to take down. It's going to be him on the defense. Can the diffuser hasn't been planted he has just got yet. Frost shotgun. <laughs> where is the diffuser is nowhere near the attackers right now mm. they've got to make it over here he knows where it is he's actually still this positionally is. at an advantage he gets one shot doesn't quite land it pengu drops down to the nice. floor there we go Ooh. has to reload oh this is close <laughs> this is down to the wire right now if he can find one shot onto pengu he's going to be laughing or takes him oh down my God. gets him finished off and now suddenly it's one versus one twitch versus frost frost down to just seconds. six hp though is that going to be Can enough? That's the question. Oh, he's, he's, not, he's just, he's just going to wait. He's just going to wait. 20 seconds. He, 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 he just has to wait. He just has to wait. Sai has to push into him. Shotgun. And then just pop. Bang. Oh, he's got a drone. He's got intel on him. He he's got, he oh, my oh. God. And he takes it. Worst time to step out Why ever right wait? there. I think he... I think he was under the, the impression that the drone was going to kind of stay around, maybe. God. But very, very nicely done there. And I, I think that's kind of... Such a nice play because you send that drone, you know they hear it, you know that they're going to go for a peek while you're scanning with the drone. Immediately drop that drone and just get your gun He's out. He's going to be kicking Perfect himself. Perfect headshot comes out. He's going to be kicking himself. He really is. He had to come. He, he did 20 seconds on, 15 seconds. He had to He had to make some really bad decision. He could have just waited. Bang. Shotgun, close range. Yeah, absolutely. And really, really well played by Sai there to pick up that one versus one. And that is going to mean that Penta for I think the first time this game are in the lead. Wow. So one round away from taking this map after G-Bots had it in their favor for so long. Penta are looking to flip this one on its head. They've already done most of the work. They just have to finish things off right now. Take a look at this composition they're bringing to the defensive side. No Frost again, but again, Smoke and Rook. We've seen Jaeger and Bandit, and then Pulse as well gonna be there for the scouting, but then over for the attackers. Going to see Sledge, Ash, Thermite, Thatcher, and Twitch. So. Yep.
kind of compositions we've seen quite a few yeah, times. Yeah, I mean, you're always going to see the tried and true, aren't you? I mean, why would you not? I mean, we There's saw that one wild card in the last game. The versus um, Flamers. It was um, it was Aero. Aero. All right. Brought out the book yeah. on one of the games. Swapped Dermite for book, which was baffling to me. Immediately lost the round. So I feel like that was maybe just a, is this going to work kind of thing? Yeah, but and it didn't. Yeah, no, it didn't. Okay. I mean, they still they still managed to take the game. Uh, they were so far ahead at the point. Uh, really maybe trying something much. different. Yeah, exactly. Possibly. Testing stuff out under pressure. Enough about the last game. We're here. 5-4. Yeah. We're nine rounds in already. Yes, the Thermite. You know, it seems to be working every time, time that. Second round of overtime. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be something that the defenders don't really want to contest, especially when it's less EMP grenades and more frag grenades coming yeah. through. You don't want to be too near. No. You don't want to you'll risk get tagged. Just like the robbed. best case scenario, you'll get tagged. Yeah. So. It, it's just not worth it yeah. at that point, I think. And uh, Pretty firing into kitchen, just to check. He knows someone will be there. It's a very common place, going to blow a hole. Yeah, interestingly, the, the attackers side. are the ones blowing this hole because. I mean, this can be a really good spot to defend from because no, you can you kind of see both sides. You want small holes as defense because you're closer to it and you can see more. If it's massive, then you can see them further away when they're close to the wall. Yeah, fair play. Well, we'll see how that's going to pan out for them. <laughs> Nitro charge used to kill a drone. Nice. That feels a little <laughs> bit overkill, not gonna lie, but you know, whatever works, man. I think like, you're a person. <laughs> I think he probably just like did it and then I was like, why did I do yeah. that? Like, that was such a waste. But I mean, I guess you could have denied some info, but. They've definitely got some nice punches, you can see. You, I mean, you blow the hole in the floor as well, so you can use that later, so. He knows it's in there, it's pretty far in the, uh, the wall. He knows it's in there. Oh, this oh, is gonna hurt. Right at the other side of the wall. Is Pop this gonna bang. attack him? Blows it straight up. Didn't Did actually get the him? tag though, no. No. But here he goes looking for the headshot. Waiting for the peak. He knows he's, he's very, very sure. Oh, he's waiting around in this corner. Oh, he's gotta make his way into the kitchen. Actually, it's gonna be a nitro charge find one oh, for Penta. That's anyway. another kill wow. for Penta as well. Trading straight back on two side though, so it's two for one. Guess and in it, fact. Diffuser trying to bait it, trying to bait gets it. Maybe it should go. Oh, oh doesn't maybe land it should have just gone for the plant. I, I, like, that was perfect if he lands the oh, shot. Oh, no, there's only two. It's 2v3. They need this. This is the thing. If you're going to go for the fake diffuse, you've got to be ready for that shot. You've got to get that headshot because otherwise it's kind of like you should have just down. gone for the plant. One yeah. of them's down as well. Yeah, it's going to be Crip that is down. He needs down, to get him. Down, but not out. 1v3. Here we go, Lion charging onto this scene. Is he going to get him? This is the thing. It's so risky got 25 to peak seconds. like this, but he's going to go for it. And I feel like that was a very risky decision, but he it's needed it seriously paid off because now he's got a teammate to work oh. with. 20 seconds left on the clock. Where's the bomb? As oh. I say that, he goes down. That's the second one as Iga oh. finds a double kill to not only end the round, not but take the game for Penta Sports after what I believe was a 3-1 lead, possibly even 4-1 lead. Wow. They turn it into a 6-4 victory. Nice. Yeah. Penta, very, very well done. Honestly, turning it on halfway through that game really stepped up to the plate and turned that into something that. Awesome, awesome play. Honestly, I didn't think was going to happen right there. When we saw G Bots on four rounds, I was sure, I, that, I was was sure that was theirs. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's I mean, crazy. fair play. Penta, fantastic stuff coming out from them to get themselves back into that game and get themselves ahead in this series. So now Penta are tied on wins to g -Bots. They've both got two ah. wins and they both got two, uh, both got one loss. So Sorry. whoever wins this pushes ahead. Exactly. Whoever ah, okay. wins this matchup is going to be ahead in that score. This will be Chalet. Certainly will. Chalet coming out. Chalet, Chalet. Obviously. <laughs> With the, with the four French teams we have here, I feel like we should try and pronounce chalet <laughs> properly as a, as a French word. But That's a T. <laughs> it is a T. You're not wrong. It is a T. But I think Pen Penta is one of our French teams, so let's let's do them justice. And they're going to be up yeah. against the Spanish team of G-Bots. And here we go. I mean, this is kind of one of the things we were talking about on the analyst desk. When we were talking to um, one of the G-Bots players, yep. he was saying that they're kind of a very passionate team. Mm. When you've just lost that game that honestly it felt like should have been your victory, this is where it's going to be down to whether they can pull themselves together and get back on that horse. They'll probably be talking about what went wrong because they were so close to pretty much taking it. So they'll, they'll, they'll be discussing like, why did we lose that? Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, not be too down about it. Just be like, right, we probably went a bit silly. Let's, let's, let's win now. Let's we, we, had, we had that one. Let's, let's get this one. 
Yeah, let's not let's not uh, get carried away with kind of what went wrong and kind Looks of just like move going. on. Start fresh slate for this one. And Looks like they're going kitchen. Head in. Yeah, they're not so going for the uh, basement. And maybe this is down to a matter of kind of we know that the opponent will expect that basement, so let's change it up. Let's change the pace. A lot of experience will be on snowmobile and uh, things wine the basement. Ten seconds yeah. remaining. So here we go. Setting up. Getting Again, the reinforcements. Very standard operators. I feel like we should maybe run through each time just in case there's some new people to the stream or new people in our live audience here yep. at the Intel Extreme Masters 2016 here in Katowice. It's quite Poland. hard to go through it all because there's like so much happening at the start though. Yeah, there is. <laughs> so it's like they're all drawn in. This is uh, the first week of the ESL Rainbow Six Siege and Pro League. Great. And we're on to play day two. Yep. It's been kind of two days of play. Oh, feet maybe on show there. Not sure if you quite spot that out. Tell. It's hard to tell when it's dark Sometimes. and then you're, you can yep. see the silhouette. Obviously, the player can't see the silhouette, so it's kind of... Looks like this is going to be um, a bit of a fight. I think oh, wait, no, teammate. Yeah. teammate yeah, yeah. It's, uh, the so they pushed in quite easy there, then. Because they swap colours every round. <laughs> Sometimes you can get a little bit yep. lost. I know I can actually in-game myself get a little bit lost in terms of uh, which, them drawn in. which team I'm on and which team I'm shooting at. You have to just keep looking up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, right, Every then. single round, <laughs> double check. Yeah. But there have been mistakes where I've uh, <laughs> not necessarily been defending all that well. No deaths yet. They've already pushed in. No conflicts. Yeah, they've kind of got away with it so far. I wonder what um, Penta are doing in defense. Where are Penta? Where are they? Where are they? <laughs> On I don't holiday see them in their chalet currently. But like, I mean, obviously chilling out, maxing, relaxing, okay, so all cool over towards these bomb sites. Okay, they've got no roamers. That's probably why. Wait, have they? One, two, three, four. I don't know where Uber is. No, they're literally just hanging around these sites, so not going for any kind of roam strategy. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I feel why. Like that's why. A, that's like a pretty safe, like solid basis to go There's on. There's no spiring in the works for your first. Like first kind of round in this when you just finally won that first grueling match. You want to go oh, for something safe. Shot. Very, very Tried nice answer in. in that window peak right there. It's going to be two for Penta and only one coming out for the bots. And as I say that, that's a third one for Penta as well. It's going to be going to go for the bomb here. Going on a tear to start this round. Someone needs to pick up that diffuser. Yeah, they absolutely do, but it's only two attackers remaining and they're against four defenders. So certainly... Not going to be an easy feat. Ovi just waiting for Lion to step too far forward, waiting to step out towards that barricade and go for the peak. As well, Hawk into one peach, just get an easy kill. Like, no, going to be going outside through the snow. Still haven't got that diffuser. Where, does, where is that diffuser? Does need to get inside pretty sharpish, because not only has he only got 20 seconds, but it is snowing, so he's going to be getting pretty chilly at this rate. What's Lion looking at? It's going to be like no stepping in, but Ager immediately there with their headshot. And now there's only one attacker remaining. It's going nice. to be Lion. Got it. Does oh. find one, but he's going to get taken down for it. Can't finish off that kill anyway. And it is going to be Penta with a solid defense there coming in. And I think a little bit too slow <laughs> of an attack as well. Invisible man. <laughs> Bless me. Just had to get a sneeze out there. But <laughs> <laughs> so, Penta. I believe 2-0 now in this map. So, Penta doing their very best G-Boss uh, impression. One. Oh, is that one? Yeah, that were our first round. Oh, it was round. just one round. Yeah, it was, it was a slow one. Clearly, uh, clearly not with it today, apparently. But <laughs> We've been on for ages. But <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, this is the sixth game of the day. So, to, or sixth match of the day. We've got, including this one, five maps left. Okay, going for the, uh, the basement this time. Snowmobile and wine cellar. Going to be reinforced in the garage. Oh, so here we go. Frost going to be coming out again, appropriately for the weather. Looks like. And actually, uh, we're going to see Doc as well. We haven't seen Doc in quite a few. Lake North's rounds probably going to chill around there. He's uh, reinforcing it so they can't push through. He could be. And, oh, actually, we see a book. Take a look at the attackers here. Oh, nice. We're going to see Iger going for book. So. Very curious to see how this one pans out. Now, they haven't replaced Thermite this time, so I'm very happy to see that change because that was kind of just ridiculous. So you got your Thermite-Thatcher combo. You still got your Ash and your Twitch to kind of 
Ash to blow open the walls, Twitch to get that scouting, and also to, you know, just for the sake of having the FAMAS. Yeah. But also, you're going to have Book, who... He's going he's gonna to mainly be there to break holes. Uh, it seems that way whenever yeah. I've seen a Book. It's never using the shotgun to actually kill. It's just breaking holes. It's like another sledge. Yeah. But and, I mean, with Ash, Sledge, Thermite, and Book, <laughs> you're going to not be shy of... Uh, Oh, sorry, there is no Breaking slash. In. What am I talking about? It's just Ash, Thermite, and Book. But okay, he's near Wang's now. In. He's going to try and get a bit of intel in here. See oh, who he finds. Someone's trying to shoot it. Don't want him to get that intel. He knows someone's there. And this is like something that you They've see got another in, in, there. in matchmaking, is this conservative drone play. You go. don't want your drone to go down. You need that This, this is where the action's going to be here. Yeah, here action's going to be here. So Thermite going to be going. All right, going to break charge. it. Let's see what's going to happen here. So Wine Cellar wide open. Pengu just it's about. Him. He knows there's at least one there because they shot his drone. He's so he's close to being in spot right now. Pengu waiting for a chance to spot out right here. Like no coming in from the other side as well. Look at this. Penta still with all five men on the board. Nobody finding a kill just yet, but we're so close to the action right now. Back. I feel like he's all nice. about to kick off. You're just so cautious. You don't want to be the first one to go down. You really can't afford to. Look at this Pengu pushing forward. He's looking nice for Lion, and he's going to find the headshot coming on through. That is the power there of Thatcher right there. This LA oh. is just such a powerful weapon. Like no hiding down the second he peeks. He's just so close. Uh, if, he stand, each other. if he stands up, he could be in trouble. Wow. No, moves away. And it's going to be G-Bot's answering. It's going to be Troy. With oh. that Super 90 finding he'll a headshot. Get a nice, he'll get a real nice peek there. Can we go back to that camera? Troy <laughs> again finds a second yeah, one. Legno goes down to Pengu, who gets his second. Iger finds one for himself onto Drid with a headshot. And suddenly Pengu's it's two versus one. three. Kills flying across the scoreboard, left, right, and center. Nice. Look out. That's going to be Penta finding another one. Just so now one Troy left. is going to get the plant down. He's already had two kills this all round, all so now he's going to look for more. Oh, oh nice. He, a frost. he finds got the, the second gone. one as well. Where's the last? Plant there he is, finish. There he is. The plant oh. didn't finish, but he's way at the other side of the room. The Super Knight, he just doesn't have the range. The plant range. went down. No, the plant didn't it go down. Just the... I think he made panicked the... a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's another case of the Frost just pulling out too far. That was good calculated play from the book as well at the end there, kind of just going, okay, I don't need to charge this because I'm against Frost with the Super Knight. I don't want that close range fight. Let's just take this at arm's length, if at all I can, and immediately sees him across the room can easily get that shot, easily wins that firefight. Look at Choi right now. Five kills on the board across these two rounds. And every single other player from G-Bots dropping a big fat donut right now. Mm. So, Penta honestly feeling comfortable. And I've got to be honest, it, in, the, in the eyes of Choi right now, I'd be like, guys, please, can you step up your game because you need We're to keep that team mentality, down. though. Yeah. You need to keep that, that nice bond going. Yeah, I'm sure he's not, like, uh, <laughs> screaming at his teammates. What are you Don't doing? get me what wrong. I mean, this team? <laughs> I mean, maybe in two rounds, if he's on 10 and they're still on zero, maybe that's when the <laughs> <laughs> tensions get high. But here we go. Doc going to come out again here for Penta. So, yeah. The Doc Jaeger. walk combo coming in. Jaeger, as you Got say, Jaeger, pulls yeah. smoke. Jaeger's OK. Like, you, you stop the grenades. It's, uh, it's not a bad class. I think we're seeing kind of... Uh, really good gun. Jaeger has one of the best guns yeah. in uh, defense, I've got to say that. It's actually an assault, not a spec ops. And that's one of the reasons as well why he is such a good roamer. Because you do have that kind of superior firepower, You don't even have to be a roamer, though. That's the thing. Like, it just, it's the gun in general is just yeah. really, really solid. But yeah, he is good at peeking. Very good at peeking. Uh, the windows. You can kind of afford to take those those fire flights. Yep, yeah. because yeah. it's even. Yeah, you're not just gonna kind of. Uh, I try mean, and, a lot of it's just down to headshots yeah, anyway. Yeah, it really but, is. I mean, but you get that little more edge, don't you? Yeah, and at long range as well, you're gonna feel much more comfortable than an assault rifle. Yeah, unless you've got that, the old SMG11 ACOG scope, which just feels dirty sometimes when you shoot it at long range. So it looks like one person is pushing this garage. He's going to probably want a Thermite. There he there is. There he is. Lion arriving on the yep. scene. The Thatchernade already clear in the sight. It looks like there's quite a few in here. This could be a good fight. Let's see what happens here. Oh, going to blow that one wide open, and then they're going to find their way in. The diffuser just dropped it. Um, what's happening with the guy at the, the garage? 
I believe it was Thatcher that has picked up the diffuser over near the garage. I don't think he'll push in I think just it, I think yet. It's, um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's Thatcher. It's uh, Legno with that diffuser. And here we go. In the meantime, they push in up a floor as well, so they're going to go for that flank and yep. kind you of open down it up here and push the uh, the garage at the same time. You've got two uh, firing places. That crossfire yeah. kind of got thing. Got that pincer movement yep. coming on in. Let's see how they push. And look at this again. This is what we saw from Penta earlier. Very much a bunker, not going for any kind of roaming, just hunkering up as a team, getting those crossfires, making sure you've got the angles covered. It worked out for them in the first round of the game. Can it work out again? That's the question here. Oh, a nice shot. Really nice shot. shot. There's one Choi. Ride, one Six minutes. now on the board for Choi. He is straight up saying to his team, get in my backpack, oh. I have got this one. Reloading. Yeah, he's got he's strong well, shoulders. He's, well. he's down, <laughs> nice, got another. I mean, we're on the Five third round three. and he's got seven kills. Five to three. Here we go, his team finally he answering. He just saw the fire, he's gonna, he knows he's there. He yeah, knows Rendia he's there. finds one onto Drid. That's gonna be Rendia with a second one. With a third one, Rendia picks up Very the triple nice. for himself. Beautiful play coming out. Now, that immediately just swaps it all around. It's two versus two once again. Just trying to get rid of that barbed wire yeah. just so we can move forward, but it's going to be Crip Very finding nice. a double to good end stuff. around. While they were just chilling the wire. And the G-Bots, they finally get something on the board. They turn it into two versus one. And again, that's, that's the one where we were calling a deal breaker last time, where it's that 3-0 is a whole lot more daunting than if you can get that 2-1. Suddenly, you're just around down. Suddenly, it's all kind of... You're one round away from even Stevens, and that's definitely not too bad of a place to be. But yeah. if you get in that 3 0 spot, it's like, ah, we have a mountain to climb ahead of us. And Crip really answering in that round, picking up the slack a little bit and getting himself a hat trick. But here we go. Looks like we're going to see another book coming into play, coming in from Iger. Well, and he was the last man standing. Yeah, he did so. actually clutch it, so why not? We'll see whether that's going to pay off for him. Where is this? Ah, yeah, it's kitchen again. Okay. So it just looks like it's going to be kitchen and snowmobile, just all the way through. Yeah. Then I think them two places. These are the exact same compositions we saw last attacking yeah, yeah, yeah. side from Penta. Both well, in it, attack on and all defense. the games on this map, I think it's been this. So people yeah, really don't like the upstairs. Between. Yeah, they really don't like the upstairs. Yeah, I mean, like, compositionally as well, the, the operators, I think they've gone with the same attacking and the same defending for each team consistently here, mm. which is kind of the first time uh, at least first time I've noticed that specifically all day. We have seen some variations generally. Yeah. But um, not seeing that one in this matchup. So here we go. Watch out for the peakers, of course. Safe route, that anywhere. Certainly is, and here we go. They're going to be looking to try and find their way into the chalet. Who wouldn't? Such a beautiful house. <laughs> I'd want to find my way in there too. Go in the master bedroom way. <laughs> It's actually a good place to push the master bedroom. You can't hear them as much if you're not close to that room, so you won't even know they've broken. Yeah, I think that's one thing that's kind of underestimated a lot in this game is carpet. Sound. Like, how big of a deal it can be if you go through a corridor that's got carpet versus if you go on, like, a wooden floor. Or well, like the sound in general as well echoes floor. through the corridors. So yeah. if there's no holes made, you don't hear them as clearly as if there were a hole made there. It's, it's actually quite a nice little element. It certainly is. It does look like there is someone there, though. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to spot that one out with the drone. Crip going to be there. If he just shot, <laughs> if only he knew. Here's Push smoke. towards the bathroom. So, I mean, we've seen Let's see what players do ridiculous things today. Let's see how they push this. Let's see if he knows he's there. Answer. Does get tagged. Can he get in? If these two can get in without getting hurt, this is a nice, nice yeah. start. By oh, the and there tank, he is. The nice. That nice, is finally nice, going to nice. be They did get hurt a tiny bit, but it's worth it. That. Yeah, Cylons the head drop. On two crib. <laughs> Before, yeah, that was the same person who was just making sure. Oh, Iger finds one as well, and suddenly G-Bot's not in a great spot. They down two, three defenders remaining. Mm. And Penta looking well on the way to their third round. If they can just play this safe and methodical. This is where we've seen teams throw away rounds where you've already got the man advantage and then you kind of just start doing silly things. All we need to see from Penta is just safe, standard play that you know is going to work. Watch your corners, watch your teammates back, make sure you go for those trades. If you're two men up, you can afford to lose a player so long as you trade it back for an opponent. Yeah. Looks like this guy's peeking some windows. He does know there's someone in there or feels like he knows someone's in there. Whereabouts? Can I see him? 
Panic, panic shooting a bit. He's yeah. right in the other. Yeah, I know. He's literally just there. Oh, don't think he can quite him. see him in the dark. That's the thing. But mm. Tengu finds one. On to Lion. Oh, Choi, though. Again, another double kill coming in for Choi. With the frost. Choi, oh my goodness, Where gets the Choi? third one. There Choi is, is MVP for this game. Yeah. Even if they lose, like, Choi is now. playing <laughs> out of his mind right now. I'm pretty sure he's already in double digits. We're on fourth round. What That's a hell? fourth kill. He's looking for the single man ace right now. If he can find this last member of Penta Sports, he's going to tie it up. Oh, but his teammate gets it. Dread going to steal away the, uh, the five man. That range, though. <laughs> I mean, Choi, <laughs> just... I don't even have words for that. Ten kills already, four rounds into the game. Doing good work with Frost. Just insane stuff. Like, absolutely insane. Mm. That was crazy. That kill, was he on full health from that distance? I didn't quite see no, didn't. What, what health he was, was on like necessarily. I just saw kind of the whole... It was a headshot, so uh, it kind of just had to have, like, yeah, one yeah, lucky you shell go in yeah, that direction, exactly, I think. Exactly. That's the thing about the shotgun. It can have just one lucky shell, which just... Yeah, I've been shot from well far away and just one hit. Same with the SMGs as well. You yeah. can kind of just like, if you're just trying to get from cover to cover, you just go for a hip fire kind of like uh, Jason Bourne diving through the air spraying kind yeah. of thing as you dive between cover. You can't just get a random lucky headshot from the hip fire. In yeah. fact, we saw that earlier today. We saw a random hip fire shot that just happened to go yeah, straight yeah, to the Yeah, I actually saw that. Well, it was kind of that, but he zoomed in at the he same was, time. He yeah. was about, yeah, he was like sort of zooming in, but it was like the first bullet just went, Straight there. Almost sideways out of the gun. <laughs> like it's it was meant to be. Yeah. Destiny into the <laughs> right there. All right, once again, reinforced bomb B. Five seconds left. And reinforcing the A as well from that side. Kind of just like normal tactics, you'd expect it. Yeah. Here we go. The uh, third attack we're going to see coming out from G-Bots. So far, their defense has been much more successful than their attack, I think. Mm. I think both of their round wins have been on defense. Because, yeah, Penta won the first one and they won the third one, yeah, so... Lion just kind of feeling out. In fact, all round wins have been defense so far. Once again, it looks like it's quite easy to push into uh, from the top. They seem to push into the top quite easy. Yeah, um, and I mean, if you know that the bomb isn't on that floor, it's going to be... Much less defended. Well, it's the uh, Penta who aren't roaming much, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they're changing this one up. Mm. I get, for the first time, actually, Penta That's running with a the real Frost. Nice spot. I love that we spot. haven't seen Penta play Frost so far this map, but it doesn't oh, seem to down. matter because he Good got start. found out. Choi, again, now oh, he's down. on that double one. He's got 11 kills under his belt. And I mean, in the Pro League, no less, this mm. guy is putting up just a ridiculous score. He's doing very, very well. His, I can't. Uh, his I, predictions must be really on form right now. Just, you know, knowing where people are. Psychic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Getting the leg shots yeah, as well. Yeah, look at that. If he had, I won't be surprised if he headshot him. Can't quite find the headshot though, unfortunately. He's going to be able to tag out Ovi ever so slightly, but... He's got, he's got a really, yeah, he's doing well. Plenty of HP still on Ovi though, so it's not the be all and end all in terms of that fight, but four yeah. defenders remaining. Certainly an advantage in favor of the G-Bot. Scary pushing here. Still There's so many different angles. A minute and 20 seconds remaining on the clock as well. So Can they we see have that time to play with. Can we go down there? And Choi is the guy with the bomb. He seems to be just about invincible. So, or I say the bomb, the diffuser, sorry. Yeah. He is just about invincible, it feels like. So <laughs> it's in safe hands for now. Yeah, we're getting a push here. This is a really risky place. There's so many like angles you can get shot from. He's going oh, for it anyway. Up. And he finds he the firefight. In. How did he win that nice. one? He's hurt. And in He's the really meantime, hurt. Lion finds one. Obi His and teammate Pengu on. answer. His teammate's pushing as well, like to the left. But the thing He's is coming. Oh, oh yeah. nice play by yeah. Ovi. Gets the shotgun onto Troy, and that is going to shut down this push. So two versus two now. And Penta finally back into this kind of position where they have somewhat of an Just advantage. Goes for the run. Look at this. Oh, look. Runs right in there. Did not expect it. Did not expect it. They trade nice. one for one. Oh. Each player in, down, but not out. Ovi is going to be dropped here. Actually, he's going to finish no, the shot. It'll just be saying, no, don't come to me. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. It's going to be <laughs> There one. we go. <laughs> who, who can get the peak here? Pengu. They know. Biding they know. his time. They know where they 15 are. 15 seconds. Where's the diffuser? He doesn't have I it have right no now. He's got to go for the peak, <laughs> oh, and it's no. going to be Pengu who takes it. Beautiful shot with the MP5. Very nice. Wins out the round.
And that, I mean, that round was about as yep. close as you can humanly get. That was down to the wire. Pengu was less than half HP as well. So it was... Once again, if only that they had the Diffuser. Yeah. He didn't have to make that panic play. He could have baited him, possibly. And Pengu there, he knew the situation. Cool as a cucumber. Ice running through that man's veins. Just <laughs> plays it slow and steady and takes it. Just look at this. 12 kills for Choi. I realize I sound like a broken record, but he is just... <laughs> destroying here. He's doing well, definitely. Yeah. He's, uh, he needs to see the rest of the g -Boss step up. Because, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to call these guys out, but... <laughs> but I will. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, we saw one fantastic round from Crip where he got a hat trick, but then we haven't seen a single kill out of him for the other four rounds, you know? Like, Troy is just stealing the stage, stealing the limelight, but I'm he pretty needs sure some kind of backing singers right now. <laughs> Okay, once again, reinforcing the places you would expect. Reinforcing the uh, the wall into A, reinforcing the garage into B. Probably going to reinforce the uh, the little room there. To go. Unless they already have? Oh, are they leaving that? Five seconds left. Oh. Two, three is the score here. Penta, one away from match point right now. It looks like Again, going with the book. They, they seem to love this book strategy. Oh, that worked weird. Uh, that didn't actually tag. No, I didn't. No, it looked like a shot. Him. That was a bit weird. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there, but there we go. They get away with it. Got... So. Uh, no, no, it's defense. I'm going to say, have they already got in? So he's actually waiting in a garage. Interesting. Well, can we? Uh, I want to see some in? more aggressive defense right here from from the G bots. Because can we? Can we see what's happening? We've seen there super we passive defense coming out, but we haven't seen much kind of going and taking the fights when when you're even on numbers. It's yeah. not something we've seen on this map at all. Do you think that's just down to the map? Do you think that's down to these teams specifically? Uh, there's so many variables to it. They, they've they've seen this guy in here though. They know there is uh, one person here, so he's he's probably going to take this. I would say. He's got the idea, he's there, and he didn't Ooh. take it. Doesn't land the headshot. <laughs> I feel like maybe oh, that was the situation where the shotgun could have come into play. Use that skeleton key to try and he really get the shotgun. He really, the was it the rook, that? Because if it was, he's yeah, really was lucky rook. to be it alive. Was. Yeah, he landed like four <laughs> shots, but again, none of them were headshots. So I'm it's kind of like... That's what it's about. All about getting... getting uh, exactly. Head. One of them was like shoulder as well. It was so close, but so far. So close, and yet no cigar mm. for him. And that is going to be now five versus four G bots with the man advantage. Here we go. Ooh, hey, he's risky peek coming out there, there? Troy. There's three of them around there. Two of them are kind of peeking him. One looks like they've got a shotgun. You need to watch out with that. Is that the frost? No, it's smoke. Well, I mean, frost does have a shotgun as well. I can assure you that Troy is running that super nice. Yeah. Very confident in that fact. Crip uh, with Orv, a very. Orv is going to be in a firefight soon if we can move to him. Actually, if Crip can get the kill onto Ovi, that's go. going to be phenomenal. Nice. He was already good, good. down to 10 HP, so yeah, he's going to yeah, go yeah. down. Yeah, could you imagine if he got him? I know, yeah, that would have been... Uh, and the just leave it, it down just as well. Him. Just leave him. Oh, and he's coming down. Oh, I thought he was coming Yeah, I thought they were coming down that corridor as well. I thought that was going to be a crazy spray. But actually, take yeah, a look at Ovi down to about 1 mm. HP if you look at his health bar. So not a bad effort there. When you're Crip. on that low health, it's worth just spraying. Seriously, like just spraying to random walls every now and again. Yeah. Because you're going to die actually, at the same time. One strategy I have seen is if you've got a teammate down that low, you know you're in a safe area, shoot them in the foot, Can we pick see them back there? up again. You get them back to 50 HP. Orv is in uh, kind of like a strong position there. There we go. He will definitely see someone soon. Uh, and if he doesn't, he'll be able to get a plan. Well, he don't have the bomb, does he? Well, Where's the diffuser? That's going to be Troy going down. The star oh, does, player yeah, right there for G-Bot. So this could be bad news. 10 seconds on the Come clock. On. They've got to make something happen. Yes. Oh, beautiful headshot from Ovi. Just get that plan Can he get the plan? That's the question. Get that he gets down. another one down. <laughs> and he's going for the plan. Go. Three seconds on the clock. There I don't go. think he's quick enough, though. Time. No, he's no, planning, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so yeah, it pauses. Yeah, yeah. The plan is going to go nice. down. Nice. Good and stuff, now, man. Good stuff. It is no health, that guy. It is all on the hands of Dread right now. Two versus one. He's playing Doc, so he's got that armor. He can go for these Come traits, up. and he finds a headshot. Now it's one versus one. Just chill out. Just chill yeah. out. Right now. Not you, the him. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'll, I'll try and keep my cool a bit. Here we go. Rendia has been on it with oh, these five he's fights. Oh, looking the right players. He's got to get, he's just got to get shot. Goes for the fake. Oh, oh, very nice. Very nice. He didn't that quite know what corner to be. He didn't know where Rendia was. So. so many places. 
Well, there Switch, we go. Rendish. And Waits for the sun. Very nice. Yep. Beautiful. Clean kill. He knows exactly where the bomb is, so there's kind of nowhere else that he could be. What I would love to see is kind of you go for that. You go for the fake and then immediately duck behind cover. Don't go for the peek at all. Wait for them to peek. Then you get kind of peekers advantage almost, yep. I suppose, and see if they go for the re-peek and then maybe you can take that fight. It's, I mean, again, if you don't know where they are, it's such a hard one to call how you play that scenario because it's like, maybe it's you just look to the wrong corner, maybe all you look through the wrong door. It, it, that's, that's what we were saying, like, it's all just about uh, predicting where they are and sometimes you're just making these predictions out of nowhere as if you're psychic all of a sudden and sometimes you're not. And that's I mean, the nature of the beast, isn't it? Sometimes you'll pull it off and sometimes, as you say, it's just not quite going to work out. But here we go, Penta again. In this spawn, this seems to be their, their number one that they like to go for here. Yeah. But Penta, let's just bring attention to the fact that Penta are not only one round away from taking this game, yes. but they are one this round away round. from taking this series 2-0 against G the G-Boss. Now, G-Boss, the only team to have a 2-0 so far this tournament. Yep. And Penta are looking to do the same to them. Very interesting. Bad news for G-Bots, honestly. They'll be going down to that 2-2, which is kind of a, you know, middle of the scoreboard score, and they were looking to be one of our top dogs. So. They were at the top at one yeah, point. They, yes. Well, they absolutely were. And Shows how fast it can change. It really does. And uh, these, these first, like, two, three weeks are so crucial in terms of kind of, uh, you know, overall standings, because you, you never, ever want to be playing catch-up. If you can get three nice wins to start your pro league off, you're going to be absolutely loving life and penta if they can take this one they're going to be three one overall so that is a, a very respectable score and as well they've taken out the only 2-0 team so they are guaranteed to be tied for the first at this point so long as they take this round but looks at once again pushed in quite easy from the top that's the thing always it's working so long as I, I i don't know if it's worth allowing them to get in that quick I suppose when they had a Roma last time, he actually went against them, though. They killed him, so... Yeah. Didn't really work out. Yeah, so I suppose... Yeah, swapped trying. away. Immediately swapped away from Frost again. They were like, okay, don't like it. No, nope, yep. not doing it. Which is fair play. Yeah. I mean, their defenses have been strong, let's be honest. They've they've won a good two or three rounds. Looks like pause is in play, ah, so... Okay. I did see the sound yeah. thing, but I weren't sure if they were fixing that. Right, so it is going to be two four. I don't know whether... Um, Obviously, we don't actually quite have a pause in client just yet. Yeah. I believe that's something that's kind of on the horizon. Depending on how much time right this takes, this could be a matter of just like swapping over and restarting the round, yeah. going from 2-4. Right on the brink, though. 2-4. They could know, take it, I know. and then you get a sound issue. Beautiful. It's kind of the <laughs> worst possible time. Maybe this will give them time to collect themselves. It could yeah. actually be a, uh, an advantage. For the G-Boss, for sure. Yes. They, yes. Right now. They could be like, right, we need to get this. What we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. Focus on that. Don't focus on that. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly... Um, and I mean, as well, Penta, they've got to be in a great position right now. Could, I mean, like, in terms of their morale, because, I mean, when, when I talked to them, they were saying, G-Bots, they're the guys that we're kind of worried about. These yep. are the opponents that we're not sure about. Mm. You've already taken one map off them after a shaky start, and now you're looking one round away from your second victory so in a row close. versus them. And as well, in the group stage of seven weeks, this is the only time they have to face G-Bots. So if you can take those two wins early on in the season, you never have to worry about G-Bots again. And if you're confident against every other opponent, Penta could look honestly... If they're as confident, if they're as strong as they are confident, yeah. then they could look towards like maybe not even losing any other maps throughout the Pro League, depending knows, obviously on the other teams, how they be, progress and things. It would definitely be a good start. We can't, we can't disagree with that. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get nice too start. carried away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> end yeah, of game day two. You could be completely right. You could be completely right. Never lose. But, but uh, we know for a fact it would be a really good start. Taking a 2 nil over these. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I'm so happy with the, the standing so far because, mm. I mean... We've seen how close this Pro League is going to be. This is no longer a matter of, like, I've cast other Pro Leagues in the past, and it's been very much, and just general leagues, it's been very much kind of, a lot of the time you see, these are your top four, these are your top two. You already know before the season's even begun yep. who's going to take these wins. But for the first two play days, to have so many 1-1 scorelines and to have, like, 
your top team having already lost a map. It's just mm. gonna make the it's rest of the season mixed up, so it? exciting yeah, yeah, because you, you just don't, don't you just don't know exactly. You don't know who's gonna be able to take these ones, and the predictions can be kind of left and right. We've seen some correct predictions. We've seen some less correct predictions. Yeah. But I mean, as well, we've seen some really crazy things come out today. I mean, we've seen clutches, we've seen 1v3s, 1v4s. I mean, we already talked like to death about Panic's 1v4 earlier on. I think it was actually in the first game of the day I as well. I think it was, yeah. It was very nice. Like, what a way to start the day, yeah. first of all. Yeah. But we've also seen the 5-0 coming out from Flamers mm. and then immediately kind of drop their next three games. It's very interesting, though. It was... I mean, I they think did. possibly they were underestimated. Like the teams were like, "Oh, and I, we don't know these. We can kind of relax, maybe try a new strategy." Yeah. And then before they know it, five zero. We heard in their interview as well that Chalet was a map that they have practiced easily the most on. Yeah. So, and as well, Flamers, while a lot of people seem to consider them the underdogs, they seem to consider themselves the underdogs. So yeah. I'm very happy that they were able to pull that out of the bag and get themselves onto the map kind of thing. They seem very, like, very modest, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And seemed very happy with that 1-1 that one, one tie. At the end of the series in that interview, they seemed very, very kind of overjoyous at the at the tie that they had. But looks like we are going to be heading... There we go. ...back into the map. It is going to be Chalet. The score is 4-2 in favor of Epsilon. As you can see, I don't know why I said Epsilon, because <laughs> yeah, Epsilon aren't even playing right now. I'm talking about Penta Sports. <laughs> it's because we talk about Flamers, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but here we go. So, Penta Sports on that defending side. It is 4-2, as you can see, All on right. the overlay. Because we had to have that round restart, we kind of just restart the game, but keep the scoreline yeah. as it was. The compositions are locked into how they were before the restart, though. So, we're going to be seeing the same stuff out of these two teams here. Yep. I wonder if they're just going to allow them to push through the top again. They probably will. Last time they had the Roma, as I said, it, they did die. They didn't do anything for them, so... They're probably just going to go, yeah, just go through the top again. We'll just chill down here. See what happens. Absolutely. Well, Penta going to hunker up again with the, as you say, no Roma. Have they been Five leaving, men together. Have they been leaving that wall? Oh, never mind. He's reinforcing it. No, I'm yeah, going to say, have they been leaving a bit of a wall? I just noticed <laughs> that as well. But here we go. G-Bot's on the attack. Let's see if they can turn this closer to a tie or whether it is going to be a fi uh, yeah, 5 yeah 5-2 sorry in favor of penta and a 2-0 in this series there's only one way to find out as we head let's into see this if that round. little break did do something for g bots it that could be like be a fanatic pause so they kind of can uh, do pull something. Things together yeah, yeah. yeah when you when you have that little break because you're in it but anyway let's see so there is a roma yeah there is a roma this never worked out for them let's see if it does this time well, here we go. It looks like it is so It far. was Iga last time oh, no, as well. Iga was the Roma last time they had one. On the frost, though, and it didn't really work off Oh! It. He just took one. That was a good flank, but okay, it one, didn't one. work out. Spun around, one, turned one's it around. Not bad. And he took half his health. It's worth it. Yeah, Troy answers. They slowed it down. Unfortunately, we've lost track of how crazy Troy is on the scoreboard right now. I think it was on, like, 13 before we got the restart. Might have been 12, something, yeah, something around there, at least. And that's going to be another one for him. Here we go, 4-4. Four, four. Typically, you tend to say that if like you're tied on... Three of them are in the wine. Just three of them there, all corners. Yeah. Sees him, oh, gets nice him. Oh, nice That's shot. one. There's two more. That's going to be Crip finding one for himself. So Sai goes down. And Sai has been a, a crucial player as well for Penta. We've seen Sai really step up for his team. Here we go. Is he going to... Oh, start to push on in. <laughs> Can we go back to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> The drones scouting out, trying to find their opponents. Mm -hmm. Trying to find what's going down. Well, Rendia to, finds uh, that drone. Crypt. There we go. Ash blowing his way into the room. And that is going to mean Pengu has to change positions here because he's no longer safe. Just dodging bullets as he <laughs> dives across the Matrix. room right there. Neil does not want to be caught out. Okay, Lions here now. Three versus four. And this is where it's going to kick off. Less yeah, than a exactly, minute left exactly. now. And they're starting to push on into the white this cellar. Is the nice, nice grenade. No Jaeger, is that going to get him? Pengu doesn't really have anywhere to run. Nope. The grenade doesn't quite finish him anyway. Where is it? But he's, he's down, though. Down, but not out. I think he saw the leg there, but doesn't quite want to commit to that one. This is very chaotic in here. We don't know where the fire's uh, yeah. where the four shot's from. 2 though, so still a massive advantage here for the G-Bots. Nice shot there by Rendia to turn it into a two versus three. 
And this could easily be flipped on his oh. head. Lion gets a headshot and gets I just one. revived. Dog if manages does to this, pick himself up. If he does this, that'd be gold like. Yeah, if he turns <laughs> it around now. He's all on his can own though. Him, he's looking him? for the headshot. Oh my God. Finds oh. one. Oh. If he, he was one that, headshot away. One headshot away from taking that, that round because there was two down but not out. And then you would have been saying like, yeah, it probably is good using the medic because he actually did revive himself and then clutched a 3v yeah. one. Yeah. But it didn't but, happen. But it nearly did. <laughs> well, that was honestly all or nothing right there for the mm. G-Bots and they are going to pull ahead in the end. So mm. well, I say pull ahead, they are still around down, but yeah, at yeah, least yeah. they're not out of the game so, just yet. So the break, it might have done something. Maybe it has. Seriously, I've heard of it. I've heard of just having that kind of like that little break. Yeah. Collect yourself. Absolutely. And I mean, in other esports, you do see kind of a tactical pause as an option. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't actually true, see actually. who it was. Yeah. I didn't see who it was that paused the game. I'm not sure who, which team it was that uh, initiated that. Well, it that, don't really so. matter. It's still the same. Yeah, you, I mean, you still get the same whether whether or not it was kind of a whether they wanted to go from more of a tactical pause. I don't really know. But anyway, Penta. This is still, they're still on match point right this If they win this round, they still do win the map and win the series 2-0. G-Bots though, they can win this one as well if they can keep that momentum swinging in off. their favor. They're going to push it to overtime. And make it all that much harder for Penta. And I mean, this is kind of the exact same situation we saw in the first game between these guys, except complete role reversal. We saw G-Bots get to that four round, but they're not quite able to finish it all off. And now it's Penta with the four rounds and it's G-Bots coming back from a 4-2 deficit. Now they're looking to try and turn this into overtime. Gonna get a bit of intel, just push through. Try not to lose the drone. Oh, I think it hears someone. Yeah, he saw he a lion was. there. I think he's going to try for a wall box. bang. He is trying for a wall bang. That is such a slow firing weapon. Mm. On book. Mm. It's using the uh, the second weapon instead of the first one. The first one is like a massive recoil. Yeah. Uh, this one has a lot of damage. It's kind of it. All, it's definitely best used to kind of like try and one tap. Almost a similar style to Glaz to oh, some okay. extent. Interesting. Just a bit weaker. Yeah, obviously yeah. not quite as strong as Glaz, but you. You can, with the A-cut scope, you can use can that same kind of... He can of see him! Oh, gets... Cheeky. <laughs> I don't know if he actually got the tank there. It doesn't it? look like he got any damage down in the end. Oh, okay. Oh. But again, Penta, five men still up. Two men have already gone down. And crucially... How have they gone down? It's Crip and Choi that have gone down, who have been kind of the two players that have really been in the game here for G-Bots. So now it's kind of a matter of, can these other three players step up to the plate? Can they kind of do their team proud and do Spain proud as well? As they're up against this French team. A1GA is uh, looking into the kitchen. He's probably going to see someone. He's looking towards where they are. It is a nice position, though. Yeah, I don't think they're actually it's not really in the kitchen. Position. I think they're on the floor above, so. Oh. Not actually Wait, but the bombs just... in the kitchen? Yeah. I'm... No, it looks, it looks like they're uh, they're at the other bomb site, I think. B. I don't know. Oh, I think they were like on the stairs. That's why it looked like they were the floor <laughs> above, maybe. Well, actually, one of them going to basement as well. So just trying to find ways to get these picks. And this is go. one of the things is, from the side of G-Bots. They've got to try and find a pick. They've got to try and find a way to kind of even up the score line here. Oh, it's going to be so over. So A1 is definitely in a nice position there. He will see people panic running. He will possibly be able to get D. Yeah. So, I get on the scene. Pengu here, playing the Thatcher. Has that L8, which is just such such a reliable rifle. It's quite a few champions have that. Oh, she's pushing. Operators, sorry. What's going to happen back there? Gets one shotgun, headshot down. And now it's five versus two. And in fact, Penta, they're two kills away from taking the final round they need. Nice. Pengu finds another one. And in fact, it's going to be the medic and down to his feet. It's going to be Sai finishing it off. And it's going to be Penta taking this game Good five for two. Phenomenal play from Penta Sports. Fantastic games. 2 0 victory against the G Box, who were. A 2-0 victory two, themselves two well, yeah. early on to, in yeah. the day. So Penta now with 3-1 on the bracket. And it's going to be G-Bots moving down to the middle of the scoreboard on 2-4-2. Two, two. So very, very nice.
Good, respectful players, though. Everyone going for the handshakes. The GG's coming on out. Yep. And it's, it's good, it's good to see the sportsmanship coming yeah. out. Because, I mean, you obviously see it on the, the massive esports where... Um, I mean, you, you see it on the big esports where it's kind of forced. But it's good to see that coming out naturally as well. But yeah, I, yeah, I've yeah, just yeah. been told by production the G-Bots are still currently third. But oh. we do still have two matchups to go. So we'll see. Where they where they lie in terms of the standings, but they are going to be kind of like tied with a bunch of people in the middle well, of the scoreboard. So I would well expect at the start. So even yeah. if they've done bad there, I mean they're two two. It'll, it'll, yeah. So anyone exactly. else that goes like one 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 one, yeah. they're going to be tied with them yeah. as well. But it looks like Sean is ready on stage with one of Penta's players. I believe it's the same player as earlier. So let's head over to Sean and have our interview with Penta, who have taken their first two zero victory of the Pro League. Thank you very much, guys. I am joined by Ovi from Penta. Commanding victory there. And the first of the Rainbow Six Siege Pro League. How are you feeling now, late on in the day here, in front of this audience, having done it? Yeah, I'm, I'm really tired. The whole team was, uh, we had to wait a few hours, and everyone was really, really tired, but we just drank some, uh, some Red Bull and we're fine. But um, yeah, I think we're now even more more tired after this match. It was really, really tough. Now, they, they didn't make it easy for you. The scoreline looks like it was a commanding win, and obviously I'm taking nothing away from you and the team. But talk me through uh, your opponent. Um, I think, personally, like G-Bot is one of the better teams in the, in the, in the Pro League, uh, certainly top three. Um, yeah, after we played uh, uh, Gosca Libes this afternoon, we kind of struggled on playing. We lost the map and it kind of hit a bump in our confidence. Um, uh, yeah, and now against e we said we're, we're going to play our own game. We're going to do, do the tactics. We know we're good on Chalet. We won Consulate. We didn't really expect to win it on, on Consulate against G-Bot, but on overtime we did. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it. Yeah. Well, now you've, you've had your two for today, so technically you're two days in. What are you going to do from here on out? What are you and the team going to do to prepare for the next uh, play day in the Pro League and also just for the, for the rest of your time here at the Intel Extreme Masters? Uh, I think now we're really going to uh, change a few tactics, change the meta, because we noticed when uh, watching the, watching the, meta from the uh, matches from the other teams, uh, we noticed they stepped up our, uh, their game. And I think we need to step up our game even more, because like I said, we lost a map against Gottfried Libes. We didn't expect it to happen. It's not going to happen again, I hope. But we really, really need to change a few uh, things in our, uh, our tactics. But in the end, yeah, today we played, I think, overall well. Yeah, good. You did play well indeed, sir. Stepping up the game, we love to hear it. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. OV there, definitely a man who's on a mission. Done it well, but already looking at what can be learned, what can he take forward, which can mean only one thing. There's lots to break down over on the analysis desk. To you, Panky. Thank you very much once again, Sean, and congratulations, Penta, for a 2-0 victory over teams that we expected or predicted themselves to be biggest rivals. We have been joined at the desk now by Torok from Dat Flamers, who have arguably had an explosive start to this tournament that no one expected. So, you on Cloud9 right now, you feeling really good? I'm feeling really well, thank you guys, and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. We're gonna glad to have you here. We got lots to talk about, loads of different topics. So let's dive straight into Penta versus G Boss. Two O Penta. Did you expect that? Did you see that coming, or did you think it'd be closer? Well, I couldn't expect uh, much out of it. Uh, all I know was the, the you know the results from the go four. I was like, oh god, Penta is the best there is out there uh, on par with the Yira and the other teams. Uh, I didn't know much about G Bot because I'm not that much into. Let's look at that team. Let's look at what the tactics are like. And then, uh, but I think something has been proven out uh, of today matches, and uh, is that. The uh, what really matters is how good are you at your map? How good can you show the, everyone um, how much you prepare for it? And uh, how big is the map pool you can play? Uh, because uh, the, peak, the, the map veto uh, at the, the beginning is crucial. Uh, we all recognize that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I think uh, the better team today are those that uh, came with a big uh, map pool from which they could uh, choose and uh, try not to get um, outplayed on, on that. Because also, it's crucial to know, even if it's the first season, there are still some info out there yeah. on uh, which maps uh, are they confident, uh, uh, what are their trump cards, uh, or uh, which one do we know the, the least on that. So, the more you add, the better. So, I mean, I, wanna, <coughs> I don't want to call you out on this, but you guys had that perfect game on Chalet, 5-0. Mm -hmm. and zero. Um, Not so wonderful on the other maps. You mentioned in the break how you, you were very... Not very unprepared, but you weren't as prepared as perhaps you'd have liked to be for this. Is that exactly what you're talking about there? You just 
Yeah, yeah, on I could reply what I just said, uh, what I said earlier, and yeah. that's it. Um, uh, we we played a lot of Chalet because we have seen uh, and uh, in Versus in ESL. Uh, that's the, the, those are the most played games uh, maps, and uh, for the others uh, you have to. Uh, find your own strategy. Um, you have to learn for yourself. You need to practice them a lot. Uh, the time was very little between uh, the Go4, um, the, e the Italy ESL tournament, and Katowice, so uh, there was little time to, to prepare. And also, uh, we didn't really have the willpower, maybe because we were the underdog. We still are. Uh, so we weren't confident, but now we are motivated to... I was say, so you weren't confident coming into this issue, the underdogs coming from Italy went so short, but now you're feeling much better about it. Oh, we're feeling much better, and uh, we're definitely going to try out uh, most of the maps. Yeah, nice. map confidence, that's all you need. So, Derek, take me. 6-4, 5-3, very, very close either way, overtime, of course, in that first map. Chalet, were there any clear differences you see the Flamers did pull off that you didn't see happen in this game that you think should be easy adaptations for these teams coming <laughs> All I know is... I was a Penta fan at the beginning, changed my vote to G-Bots with their performance today, and they made me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, uh, <laughs> we got to argue, like, the best teams may not always have the winning results, may not always course, have the best teams, but the difference is they're consistent. Penta there shows they can be consistent, and it's come through and pulled out wins for them. Definitely. I want to take a quick step over and look at the next game that's coming up. Sifu versus Warrior Team France. Do you know much about either of these teams? Uh, well, we did maybe have a Sifu, a Clan War, a Scream against the uh, Gifu once, and uh, that was before we even possibly tried uh, to go competitive. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't went end badly. Uh, so we, t we think highly of them. Uh, instead of about the TCM, uh, uh, I really like them. The, their guys are great. I got to, to know them uh, personally, and uh, I'm rooting for them. I said that uh, even uh, before we even started, or, or the very first match today, uh, which was against Aira. Um, so I wouldn't know. There is my personal opinion. Okay. I am rooting for the TCM. All right, that's fine. Um, I want to talk a little bit about operators and uh, your role within your squad. We saw Buck in that last game there on Chalet actually running the marksman rifle, the first time we've seen yeah. him running that in this game. Um, is there anything you personally know about Buck and the marksman rifle? Or uh, if you don't know anything, what, what we've what's seen your role about Buck game? today, I believe, is that he's um, his speed in uh, taking down. Um, and making huge holes from which you can pick. Uh, I've seen that um, in Clubhouse today, I believe maybe yep. it was the first match from TCM, and their back uh, shot a big hole in the window outside, uh, which was the little watchtower. Uh, as soon as he made the ball, he, he had a clear vision of what was inside, so he, there was very little time uh, for the enemy to react if he was there. And at the same time, uh, when you're running, um, We've seen that the, the breach in charge uh, isn't really the meta at the moment. Yeah. Everyone runs grenades and the likes. And so you, sometimes uh, you're used to defenders blowing the tra trap holes around so they can uh, quick level, ch quick, quickly change the level and uh, move around as, better as a roamer. But if the trap hole is still, uh, is still there, uh, no one like Buck can take them down. Because what are the, uh, what, what are the attackers that go with the shotgun? Yeah. Maybe some sledges that have the Mac, the Mac 10, Mac 11 as a secondary, but otherwise uh, you don't really have a mean to take down trap uh, trap down without tra breach trap holes. Yeah, trap holes. Right. Right. Yeah, so we've seen him in Oregon. They just uh, he just goes there, wham, one hit, and uh, the trap is down, and he, he can rush it. Yeah, it's so point. Buck is great. We've seen you with some pretty beasty MP5 plays so far on, in your game. <coughs> what is your role within your team? How is that defined? Well, it's not what my role is, but it's um, how do you get into competitive? Okay. Uh, I believe it has to do with uh, um, practice, a lot of practice, and of course you you don't have the the time at the beginning to play multiple roles, uh, or if you do, it means you're already really confident and uh, you've got skill to mm -hmm. change the Switch playstyle roles, yeah. because the playstyle is different, especially if you move from a, a player or a operator with a high uh, speed or a high armor. And so yeah, uh, we stuck re with Ruka because uh, the armor is essential. At the same time, I'm not that confident in my roaming skills because uh, while I think I have a good map awareness, I wouldn't know about um, um, countering uh, an, an enemy. I, I think there are great roamers in the tournament. They're like, hey, uh, your whole team is gonna get stuck with me until you kill me. And often, uh, hey, if you don't, you've been saying it yourself yeah. in the cast. If you don't kill the, the roamer, down. you're gonna uh, get, get left behind on time, especially. Yeah. So I'm leaving that role to someone else, but it doesn't mean that I, will t I wouldn't take it at some point. Yeah. But you need, uh, you need experience, so it's essential that at the, uh, the very beginning people uh, stick to one role so they can play it. Uh, it, it, it so goes that uh, it's Rook uh, on defense and it's touch on attack. I do believe that uh, it's much harder to learn how to attack. 
-hmm. Definitely. Because on defense, uh, you can learn from the others. Um, you can see where they do the holes, what do they do to reinforce, how do they stick uh, so that they, they force the attackers to get on their line of sight and to pick. Um, well, in attackers, uh, I think it, it really shines how good a team is because uh, they made that tactic theirs. They show how much, even if defenders, especially, uh, apart from the roamers, the other guys are don't really move much during, during the match, or at least we do, because we're not that confident. Mm -hmm. While the attackers do have to take all of them up into account from the very start. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, if you really want to measure for now, uh, team strength is by how they attack. And I was uh, impressed by how, um, uh, what it was, it? what, what, uh, what, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah. World Team France uh, yep. showed how good, how great they are at attacking the cabin in, uh, in the airplane, which is uh, known to be. Yeah, it's a very, very tough place. Because it's a tight that place, uh, and uh, yeah, Glads can uh, somehow disrupt from the windows, but when you get uh, that down, uh, you don't really move into his line of sight anymore. And they show great gameplay, especially from Hush coming down from the manhole, trap hole, and uh, then rushing in uh, quickly. So, yeah, it shows how great they are. Perfect. Thank you very much. There's a whole world of information. We're going to take a little bit of time to digest it, let it settle in. We're going to run to a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to have Sifu versus Warrior Team France as our penultimate game for the day. Peggy 18. Yesterday, this was a symbol of true power. But today, it means nothing but destruction. and all those who used to protect us. have now been overwhelmed. But that, that was yesterday. Before we decided that our playgrounds now become our battlefields. And this city, where yesterday we were just happy to live, has now become the place where we choose to survive. Because yesterday, we were ordinary citizens. Today, we are the, the division. Intel RealSense is all about changing the way we interact with computers. The way we interact with this game is entirely with our hands. It's a natural way to communicate. We want our computer to be able to sort of understand that movement because it's more human and more natural. Awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to control, I'm surprised. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 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 <laughs> we use this camera to interpret natural forms of human communication like facial expressions. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Another cool thing we can do with a 3D camera is we can create 3D scans. We'll actually take this and we'll composite it onto a figure. <laughs> I need to see what I look like as a princess. really did a good job,
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are joining us live here, and we are bringing to you none other than Rainbow Six Siege. This is the Pro League. It is the EU teams squaring off in the PC discipline. We are here at the Intel Extreme Masters Expo in glorious Katowice, Poland. The people have been fantastic. The crowd has been great. The energy is high, but I'll tell you honestly, at 10 p.m., it's turning on to a long day, and we've seen some absolute belters of games so far. We've seen all eight teams in our EU division face off right here on this stage, go toe to toe, and they've kept it oh so close throughout the whole thing. There couldn't be any more excitement in the air. And right now it's not even going to change. We've got the Finnish team. They're going against the Warriors of France and that uh, the WTF Warriors Team France. I'm wondering WTF, Warrior Team France, I like where they're at. I like where their heads are. Anyway, they know what they need to prove. We've seen Penta take the first 2-0 of the entire Pro League. Everything is on the line, and of course, it will not end. There's also a Pro League for the North American region on PC, and of course, for the Xbox One for EU and North America. So whatever your fancy is, you can get your eSports fill right here with the Pro League, because Rainbow Six is coming in strong. The next matchup will be just that, strong, powerful, and a lot to play for. So, without further ado, I can check out on either side. The teams look ready, which means it's time for me to pass over to the boys over there on the analyst desk, and they are led by a man. It's my pleasure to introduce him each time. Over to you, Panky. I think he's finally running low. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sean. It's been a very long day. Joined here again once my, my Panji stick, my famed and esteemed colleague. You uh, you still going strong? I am still going strong. I'm still going strong! <laughs> 10 hours. This is a lot of broadcast. Yeah. You've got two huge games still left to go. We already have the maps in for Seafood versus Warrior Team France, and we're going to dive straight into those two. Oregon, and I'm so excited about this one. Hereford base. Yeah, we it's about got time. Map. I, I was kind of worried we weren't going to see it for some reason. I was too. I was like, all right. I mean, we mentioned um, Flamers there said they like Chalet because everyone plays Chalet. It's really big on matchmaking all that kind of stuff. Everyone yeah. knows it. Hereford base is another one that's really big on matchmaking. Right. So I was kind of hoping we see some people do that for familiarity. Yeah, Now definitely. I'm getting it. You have uh, a particular couple of things you like about this map. Though. I think that out of all the maps, it is the peak map. It is the map that defenders can jump from one floor to another within the two seconds and make massive plays. And I think we'll definitely see people peeking out, getting kind of uh, edgy with yeah. their moves. And, and defenders, I think, can get a lot more aggressive on that map than most of them. Yeah, and so. uh, like House, you mentioned, people jumping in our windows. Yes, and out. We've come but I think even better floors. on Hereford. Yes, exactly, even better yeah. on Hereford. Like when you're, it's one of these maps too where starting bombsite almost everyone takes basement. Second bombsite is the top floor. So right. we literally go from opposite ends of the map from exactly. defense to defense. Meanwhile, you guys got second floor, first floor all running around, jumping yep. in and out. Lots of room, little holes to hide in, lots yeah. of little routes for people to be round out. And as uh, again, Flame has mentioned, Big maps, finding rumors is a big pain in the ass for yeah. uh, attacking sides. And Hereford, while it feels small in a nice space, there's a lot of place to a search. A lot so of places. I think we're going to be down to some very clutch, tight moments here. We will, of course, there you go on your screens, run through the rosters again. Jifu, Wilkie, Junas, Protax, Easy Loss, and Sheffy. We've seen him once, we're going to see him again. And they are one of the favorites for this entire Pro League. Wilkie, no stranger to these kind of stage two. An ex Water Tanks Pro player who is a big following there. So. Uh, yeah. This, uh, this kind of stage setting is, is not new to him. See. And uh, of course, Warrior Team France, their opponents, another team which caused a few upsets in the Go 4. They uh, were a bit of a dark horse for a little while, but uh, yeah. had some surprising results in there that uh, have obviously earned them a spot here. So I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all it's all. I've been America filled in, you know. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad for you being stuck over in North America, man. I mean, you, you don't have the best of history with shooters, and I know this is a new game, but I mean... I don't know. I've been watching Twitch chat today, and they're saying a lot about Lit, so we'll see how Lit does. <laughs> we'll see the Lit America. fans are going out strong. Here is Warrior Team front of the screen. Hawk, Vico, Zangdar, K6, and Sizzlak. These names are going to ring, like, true in two, three weeks' time with, yeah. like, sheer quality and high play. And I, I know 
unfortunately there's a small problem with people who keep dodging one out in Rainbow Six. There are right. gonna be they're gonna be feared. You're gonna come as a oh, matchmaker. Like, oh, it's oh, gonna no. be they're gonna play a lot of like five v one games because people <laughs> drop out. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, we've been told this is all soon to be fixed. So I we say this with a grain of salt. We love uh, it. Oh yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> right now, you know the forty still there. Uh, obviously, Oregon <laughs> is our other map. We've seen it a couple of times earlier on. It's another one that's really, really big. Takes a lot of time to search, and where yeah. Romans are particularly strong. I think it's going to be two heavy defense maps. Very difficult for the attackers. So yeah. Um, anything you think teams should have learned from earlier on, or, uh, or from the earlier Oregon games, or do you think playing it exactly like they did, but with a bit better execution, is fine? Aside, uh, just better execution. I think getting somehow finding a way to clear faster, get get rid of the roamers faster. Pin, whether it's with drones and a follow up, or just find them and get them rid of them faster, so they can get to the actual objective Perfect. and not run out of time. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so, without further ado, let's dive on over to the wonderful duo of True Talent and Munchables to get us into this next huge matchup. Sifu versus Warrior Team France. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, guys. We are here on the caster desk, and we're ready to get into our seventh game of the day, third game of our second play day. Yep. You are correct in saying my name is Im is Munchables. We're <laughs> nowhere near the middle of the screen. In fact, at this point, we're kind of sliding nice. along across the course of the stream. But, I mean... It's been said by Sean, it's been said by Vanky, it is a long day so far. We're 10 hours in, 10 hours of broadcasting, and we still have two been a good one, though. insane been a good one. games coming up. It has been amazing so far. But let's take a look at this matchup we've got coming up now. Sifu versus WTF. Now, Sifu, unfortunately, earlier today had to go against the G-Bots, so lost 2-0, and G-Bots looked phenomenally strong. However, it was not just stomps. Sifu did take rounds off them, and they didn't just allow it to kind of... They didn't just roll over and, and show their belly. And we've seen how strong the G-Bots are. Exactly. So, yeah. And then, after that, we saw WTF up against Penta. Mm. Now, a strong team. Sizlak is my player to watch here for WTF, because okay. he was the guy playing glass on plane. He was the guy kind of looking for those different angles, looking to try and take an advantage early on in the round. But here we go. Sifu up against Warrior Team France. We'll see if Sizlak is going to be a star player or whether it's going to be other players stepping up to the plinth. We will see. We certainly will. And the first map is, of course, Oregon, as the analysts mentioned beforehand. Yep. So we'll see. I mean, this is a very open map in terms of attacking. When you're trying to get over to that building, there's a whole lot of ground you've got to cover before you're actually uh, kind of in safe range there. Looks like they're going for the, uh, the bottom once again. Getting all the reinforcements up. Yeah, so, I mean, talk me through this defense, because it's, it's been a little well, you while just since we've seen sure, Oregon. Yeah, well, you just want to make sure that they can't just get through real easily. So you just want to reinforce all the uh, the breaches. This is the uh, the first floor, uh, and you want to reinforce a few of the walls as well, so they can't just break through the walls and just get in really, really quickly. You want to make sure you're, like, funneling them, basically, as yeah. much as possible. And if you're not funneling them, uh, they're trying to break through a defense, you're delaying them, and, you know, you can push through, you can roam, you can you know, get them from a different angle that way. Yeah, I think that one of the, that, when you mentioned funneling them, that's one of the absolute key things. If you can oh, force them through a choke point, yeah, yeah. it's so easy to just set up a cross by, you know you're always going to win it's that It's all about trade. getting the advantage, yeah. really, into it. Absolutely isn't. Here we go. No early kind of cheesy kills coming out just yet. That is something that we no saw earlier on on Oregon. I think we saw one cheese kill come out all pro league so far. Well, so far, can I... Just getting some intel? be pretty standard stuff and as well on Oregon we saw some uh, cheeky little camera takes like straight from spawn mm. knowing knowing those spots and this is kind of the, the like, difference between the pro he, league and, guy? I don't think he did oh, that he might think could this is, be, uh, yeah that could he be might just, really he might detrimental just get shot by this guy compositions again just about the same as what we've been seeing here just trying to get as much intel as possible I mean, he's a good drone run. <laughs> he's not been spotted out just yet. He's not really spotted any enemies, so though. There we go. Finally, yeah, finally finds one for himself. Going to jump onto the bed, but Give will get taken help. out in the end. But they have wasted a full minute now, and it's going to be Zangdar to find the first kill of this game onto Wilkie. So WTF take a slight advantage here from the attacking position. But can they translate that into anything else? They've already got Jew down as well. But whether or not they can finish him off. He's down but not out. His teammates aren't all that close to him, so... They're doing all right. They've got one down. Five uh, five four. Yeah, five so there three. we go. <laughs> Hawk finally nice. finishes him off there. So that's going to be him kind of dealt with. And now it's going to be WTF definitely in the driver's seat for this yeah, first Yeah, they've round. got complete control of this area. 
let's see what happens here. They know that they're going to peek here. Yeah. So, so always have to be careful. So this is kind of one of those decisions where it's like... They can push down the stairs and peek at the same time. You've got two kind of angles there. Yeah. And it's like, do you go through that trapdoor? Because it is so risky. You'd want to so, peek so it. Risky. You'd want to peek it. You can just peek towards the corridor. Well, here we go. It's going to be Protax going down. Vic picks one up for himself as... Chiefy trying to just dive off to the side, make sure he doesn't go down. He's playing that Frost with the Super 90, but he's already down to barely any HP. And in fact, I think he went into that down, but not out just man. there. So we've got just one player remaining. It is Doc, so he might be able to pick up his teammate, but I'm not convinced because he's in this room. He's in the middle of everything and mm. easy loss. Last man remaining. He's going to be this trying to do nice. what he can. Finds one with the MP5. He's going to be looking him. for more as well. Hawk watching over from the sidelines here. If he finally gets up, and that's the power of Doc right there. He's going to be able to get a long-range Austin pistol coming yeah. out, and there it is. Even nice, if he did get nice. his teammate back up, easily capitalized by WTF, and they just finished the round off. They're quite a quick round coming out, considering our last game was quite a long one, mm. quite a drawn-out match. That that round was so much more quick. We're all to do with the plan. Just get the plan down. Yeah, They have to push you. Absolutely. Yeah. Very nice. Here we go. So swapping sides. Do you reckon we're going to see the same kind of defensive strike come out here from the side of WTF? Uh, possibly. Possibly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough then. Well, Blitz going to be locked in here as well. So we've seen a little bit of Blix. Blix? Blitz? Across the day. I can't get my words out anymore. I'm barely forming the words in my mouth. Never mind getting them out of this stage. But Blitz going to be coming out here. Now we have seen a little bit of it across the day. Nothing. It's not been one of our staple operators, but we have seen it on and off. So we'll see whether that's going to pay off for Sifu here. In case you haven't been watching earlier on, by the way, Sifu, uh, Gifu, like Gifu is Swedish or Finnish, sorry. So um, it is pronounced, pronounced Sifu. Yeah, Sifu. But we'll see if the Finnish team can finish first in this one. Getting all the reinforcements. Preparation phase. <laughs> Absolutely are. And here we go. The action phase begins. Yeah, yeah. Three minutes on the clock. And let's see what Sifu have got up their sleeves for this one. Let's see. Looks like possibly uh, Pulse is going to roll. Yeah. I mean, Pulse definitely one of those uh, operators that is very, very good for Very, rolling. very good yeah. at roaming. Obviously, you have that cardiac scanner, which you can just check where people are. Ooh, good very early aggression coming out here. It's not often we see kind of a firefight this early on in the round, but it's good neither, neither player going to be able to quite land the shots there. So it's not pushing in. There we go. And that's the power of a shield right there. You can push so aggressively yeah. with that. You, it's not as much fear. Yeah. Really, really good for intel as well. You don't need to do the damage. It's getting the intel. Yeah. And as well, you can always back away with that shield. You can always just sort of... And it's got a flash. Turtle walk backwards. Here we go. I like so this. how the Roam is upstairs. I like this push that's coming out here. Very slow, very methodical. I would like to have the Blitz in front of the Thatcher, to be honest. He's got a shield. Why not hide behind him, you know? Mm, but yeah. Doesn't look like uh, Junus is even that worried. He's just charging on forwards. So very confident play coming out from these guys. Not a single kill coming down just yet, but it looks like the firefight might here be about to begin. They're going to try and get rid of the Roma. Yeah, into the master bedroom. Nobody going to be finding here. Oh. Looks like we are going to be restarting this one. Um, not sure 100% what uh, what went on there, but obviously it's all for a good reason. We'll try and yeah, find yeah, out from, from production what the reason is for the restart. Mm. But we're just going to be starting again from 1-0. So obviously we we'll want this to be a, a level playing field. We don't want any uh, any advantages outside of the players playing better. You know, that, yeah. that's the only advantage we want to be seeing in this matchup. And, I mean, so far from what we've seen, it feels like a fairly close matchup between these guys. I mean, yeah, they were we doing have, the right push there. We have only seen like one and a half rounds. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of hard to call it. To, uh, yeah, <laughs> go by. But it did seem it seemed like an alright push that. Yeah, they were closing in on the Roma, just about to get him. So and actually, they did well. get him, didn't they? <laughs> we saw um, that that first aggressive round uh, was so much quicker than the second round. Mm. We like you clearly have like one team that wants to play that. 
Very think, slow, very kind of check every corner, very thorough play well, style. Well, if you notice at the very start, they droned and they got a good idea if there were any yeah. roamers around there. They noticed they weren't and they cleared anyone around there and then they got that whole position and then they just pushed together. That's probably why it was that fast. I think that's the thing as well is the ability to get that done so quickly and turn that into the plant, turn that into getting that diffuser down and being able to essentially become the defenders because... It's all about control. You I, get the control, you yeah. get the, uh, the safety, you can start pushing further and further in. And let's remember as well that we did have um, one of the... Or oh, one or two, in fact, of the players just got picked off very early. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, five yeah. versus three is going to make that a whole lot easier. But here we go. We're going to be heading back onto the map once more. Okay. And it is, Technical again, issues. WTF taking that first round. And now we're going to see Sifu looking to answer for that one as the round has been restarted. But we're here for round two. As you can see on the overlay, we do have one extra point in the hands of... French team. Yeah. That plus one. So once again, just uh, prepping. So France versus Finland here. Mm. Let's see who's going to be able to take this one. I mean, who knows? Ten seconds remaining. Who? <laughs> Indeed. Well, I mean, like, let's take a look at the Five compositions. Let's go. get some conversation on the go here because we've got. No Ash coming out from the attackers, which is something we're seeing. Ash has been a very, very common pickup for yeah. these guys. I mean, you've got your Thatcher, you've got your Twitch, you've got your um, Thermite and Sledge, and then going for Blitz. So what do you reckon to the running Blitz instead of running Ash? Um, you, as, you, as we were saying about you know the shield, you get the safe pushes. So you don't get the breach in as fast, but you get the safe pushes. Uh, so you get a safe push with uh, the ability to flash people. So it's a bit of a different um, thing you get, Yeah. but it, you know, it, it, it works, doesn't it? They it's both work in different ways. Yeah, this that's is the game. There's so many different ways of playing it. It's an entirely different play style, but it's got the it is there. an entirely different map as well. So. There we go, that's going to be Junus picking up is the first really kill. Is he really going to go for it? Uh, is it going to be shield versus thing? Yeah, he's he's should be calling right it. They should be pushing him. I think he's maybe guy. just waiting there for a teammate to come, and there yeah, it beautiful, is. Beautiful. Very nicely called by yourself there. Oh, does oh, manage to block him. a shotgun shot. Can he take get the him, kill here? No, he oh can't. Oh, that was a team kill. Oh, wow. disaster. Wow. Wilkie takes out his shield nerves. with a headshot. That was... Uh, All he had to do with melee him. Uh, that was... Uh, a pity. It was a pity. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's uh, <laughs> all okay, I'm going to say about that one, but Wilkie... Kind of a... Uh, four versus two. Makes up for his previous mistake there. Picks up a kill for himself. And as you say, four versus two, two of them here. in the basement here. So once again, they've got this position. Very Massive advantage, checking. Aggressive uh, push coming out here from Sifu. And I, I feel like that's very appropriate with yeah. the advantage. We're going to see have. the same thing now where they push down the stairs. They, they look through the hall, uh, probably get a plant in, make them people have to push them. Uh, yeah. Once the plan's down. Well, I mean, Hawk and Sizzlack have both been really good players. Uh, we've seen Hawk get a lot of really kind of long-range, nice shots coming across. And we've seen Sizzlack, obviously, I mentioned already when he was playing on that glass. So we'll see what these two. I mean, we have a smoke, let's remember. We've seen crazy things from smoke already today. Yeah. And it, would, it would not let's be uh, beyond imagination once to see the, the same down. once again. Ooh. Nice shot from Sizzlack there. Get that plan down, guys. going to take out easy loss. Can they turn this into more, though? Can they? If they can turn this into a 2v2, they're going to be in a fantastic position. However, mm. Sizzlack took a lot of damage in that engage. Where is teammates coming from behind, possibly? Oh, there we go. Sizzlack down, but not out. It's going to be Junus finishing him off. Nice. And in fact, Junus okay. goes straight for the double kill. Like gets the headshot. Behind. Yeah, he did get yeah, the flank. Yeah, yeah. I think he dropped down through the trap door. Yeah, he, he did, did yes, indeed. The uh, meeting room one. There you go. Finishes off that last man. So nice, nice. headshot nice. comes out from him. And that is going to be... 1-1. One, one. One, one indeed. So here we go. I'm curious to see how do ETF react to this, whether they just go for the exact same strategy we saw in the first round out of them, whether they change up their attacking strategy. Hmm. And also from the defensive side, like whether, well, whether they'll they have changes. to change, won't they? They'll have to change because they beat that place, right? Oh, yeah, that's very true, actually. So it's going to be a different play. Wait, no, actually, both attacking teams won. Did they? Yeah, both teams have won on oh, the attack, okay, okay. so actually nobody needs to So no one's defended. Defense. Oh, yeah, yeah, no one's... Okay. 
Yeah, sort of in the same place. Well. See whether they're going to be able to defend this one. Just going to be setting up those standard defenses, making yeah, sure they're protecting those the trapdoors, you know. Yeah. We're starting to get to a point now where we can see on every map nice where the, see, the typical uh, stuff the drones. is. See where they're going. Right, we'll see if we can get into the eyes of any drones only. Seven seconds on seconds this phase go. remaining, but obviously we see a whole other drone play coming in across the course of the full game as well. Action phase begins. And look at this, only three members down there for Sifu. It's definitely an important part of the uh, game drone play. Definitely. Yeah. Shot. Massive, massive intel from it. And I think... The hell? Uh, well, <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what that was. I think that might have been uh, At least wrong. it's got a nice drone. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, you asked for the drone play. There you go. There's there your two go. seconds of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> now the push begins. and. As I said, two roamers coming out from Sifu here, so a little bit of an unorthodox strategy. Mm -hmm. We'll see if that's going to pay off for them, and whether the drones are going to be able to spot that out as we head into this third round. They've been taking out the roamers quite easily. That's maybe why they've doubled up. Yeah. And, uh, well, you say they've doubled up. They are kind of spread out. Mm. They're not together necessarily. Yeah, just... yeah. You don't want to be exactly in the same place. No. Just like doubling up as in, like, you know, you're both roaming sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, let's see, because this is definitely a map that you can go for a lot of flanks on. So, I mean, all maps on this game are, are fantastic for flanking, and that's one of the beautiful things about it is you've got you got to know the maps. You've got to know the corners to look for, and you've got definitely. to know where you're going to get flanked from. Definitely. There's so many openings. So many. Well, speaking of an opening, Judas and finds one in the lineup of WTF C4. as he takes out Sizzlack with that Nitro Charge. That's going to be another one going down. In fact, it's Wilkie finds that one with the SMG-11. Headshot on 2-6. That's Junus again with another kill. So Junus, nice two for the round, doing a phenomenal job. Jeffy tunes in with one of his own. I'm not sure if that's Jeffy or Sheffy or Chiefy or who knows at this stage. Slowly pushing. Over my years of being a commentator, I have pronounced many players' names wrong. Yeah. And that won't stop anytime soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Until the player comes up to me and kind of says, no, it's like this. This is it, I'm, yeah. I'm lost. But Wait, is this the 1v5? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, like, I was I was going to try and hype it, but it's going to be a tall order. Let's just word it like that. He finds one for himself, so good start to this one. And he's in a nice position. Finds here. a nice oh. murder hole, but immediately spotted out. He was out. in a nice position. They, they allowed him to just walk down there. Yeah, I don't know why he got down those stairs for free there, mm. with five defending players remaining, but mm. never mind. It doesn't yeah. really matter. I, I, this is the thing, like, Singular kills in this game don't matter unless they cause something else within the round. Like, yeah. towards the end of a round like that, if you've got five players, it doesn't matter if it goes to a 1v1 and you still win. Mm. Like, other than, like, how that affects your mentality and your momentum, other than that, it honestly does not matter. And take well, it's one headshot. This. It's one headshot. Exactly. One kill on the board right now for WTF. Obviously, they did win a round, Defending and then we got a reset, yeah. so that's not accurate, but... It does say kind of how strong these two rounds have been from Sifu. Yes, yes. I mean, Come two, strong after two rounds won in a row without dropping a, with only dropping one single kill is. Now they've had to change the uh, the bomb site, so it'll be interesting to see how they attack this. They have indeed. So reinforcing the uh, corridor. You can push that way from the tower, so it is nice to reinforce yep. it just in case. So one thing we saw last time is where you see Six and Vic just pushing through there. Previously, we've seen that just barricaded up. Yeah, reinforced. they've left that open so they can look into the uh, meeting room. Yeah. Mm. So they've barricaded the uh, the tower, but they can look into the meeting room from this little kind of like hole. It's a, it's a nice little uh, strategy. You can also see people through the window uh, who are running on the roofs. Yeah. So I like this kind of, you see different teams playing this differently, like yeah, different yeah. teams like to go for different styles of defense. Well, that, that's the thing about the game. You can do loads of different styles. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's just yeah. the tip of the iceberg. And that's it? that's not even coming into specific team strategies. That's just with the operators. Mm. Like there's so many different styles you can play. Yeah. Oh. Pushing in with push uh, Blitz through. once again. As you said, like, you know, you can push in slow, uh, quite fast with can't you? Yeah. Got a sledge and a blitz, this will be a fast push. Yeah, well, indeed. And in fact, they've got reinforcement as well from Twitch there. So they're going to be storming the gates right now <laughs> as they charge on through the building. And in fact, we're going to see Wilkie. He does have the diffuse kit. So 
does not want to be caught with his pants down. Mm. Speaking of, Sheffy's in the bathroom. <laughs> but uh, let's see how they continue. I mean, they've been clearing rooms incredibly quickly so far, but no, they haven't actually bumped into anyone just yet. I think they're kind of onto the, the fact that it's upstairs. It's a pulse. They saw him. Don't do that. You lost that last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, Hey, I, oh, actually, I think his teammate helped him. No, yeah, it was, he kind of just baited it until someone yeah, came yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, against a shield, it's such a risky fight to take because if they just get that lucky pistol headshot, then you're really dead. Really risky spot this, but you get some really nice uh, angles. Well, it's less risky if you've got a shield because your legs aren't on show when you're right next to a window. Yeah, yeah, true. So you can kind of so it's just kind of wait there, get some intel, maybe see some people push in from the yeah. other side. To some extent, okay. it kind of removes the risk of being in that spot. Got the uh, the diffuser with him as well. Certainly, as will keep going to be grenade, arriving on that yeah, roof. Grenade in just to see if he can clear it. Looks like there's two people in that room. Um, Sizz is in a really oh. kind of common spot. I always look there. That the, the uh, left hand side got him down. Oh, some grenades smoke in. grenades coming through, they but here we go. Down, the push go is on. Nice. They go for Sizzlack. He's getting smoked. Here we go. It's going to be Zandar oh, trying going. to do he's what he melee. can, but here we go. He just gets melee. it behind <laughs> him, but he's going to get taken down in the end. Hawk gets the headshot with the SMG, and it's three versus three now. They're pushing on into the site, though. It's not going to be stopping any time soon. Very nice. In fact, the diffuser got is it down. down. It's ticking away, but I don't on know if left. they're going to be able to get this one. Junus is on the outside, just Ooh, trying to... This is yeah, whatever he oh. can, he's just going to be looking one after this diffuser. He is on his own, Very as you nice. say. One headshot oh. comes out, but it's not enough. And wow. it is Hawk, the last wow. man remaining. He gets the final headshot, and he will get this diffuser as well. So, or the diffuse oh. on the diffuser. I don't, I don't even know what you call that one, but that <laughs> yeah. is going to make it 2 2. He could have just relaxed out there. You don't need to peek the diffuser, it's down. Just listen for them to hit it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he did manage to get one headshot. I think maybe yeah. you've got to think of it in terms of like. If you're the defender in that scenario, watching the thing, you, there is still, like, the peaker's advantage is still going to be at the forefront of each of these players' minds. Mm -hmm. Even though they're playing on LAN and that isn't as big of a factor, it's still going to be Junus kind of... with an eight and one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Junus. I mean, Junus in that round alone got, I think, three kills. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't um, counting exactly, but he was doing some work and he definitely got a hat-trick earlier on. So, Junus is a, a standout player so far. Okay, so they've, um, is it Simplis? Junus yeah, bedrooms again. Pulse okay. as well. We saw Junus on Frost earlier, and now he's going for Pulse. So I like that they're swapping around who plays what. It's not a matter of uh, each individual player only plays whatever operator. It's kind of, yeah. they can mix this up and each go for different things. Pulse is a very nice Roma. It, it, yeah. is, it is a nice Roma. Once again, just the prepping phase. See if they do anything different. Where is that? Barricading. My name oh, is Junus. <laughs> Adam Roman on a pulse. Uh, this is the point that the casting has got to at this stage. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just wondering why he um, just but, reinforced that place so random. That's just going into meeting room, I think. Well, I guess that on to some extent, like maybe reinforce a random wall and could kind of throw off the attackers, maybe kind of. Oh, okay. The mind games yeah, coming look, into look, play. That one there, look, you see, he's just reinforced. Hey, man. There yeah. must be a reason to it. Maybe he just, uh, he likes that wall, you know, doesn't want it going down. You're not destroying it. It's close to his heart. <laughs> yeah. His, uh, his mother built that wall with her own two hands, so. You don't want to, uh, don't want to be messing with that one. But here we go, the attack coming out from WTF, the Warrior Team France, up against the Finnish players from Sifu. And it is two apiece here. As we start to see the attack begin, Wallbangs coming out from Vic, looking to try and get onto Protax. Just causing a bit of chaos. Shoot through walls. You don't need to kill anyone, just, just shoot through them. Force shoot through to the, change uh, positions through as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you've got holes through the windows, it just scares you. Again, that threat. Yeah. Oops! <laughs> Did you see Paul? Yeah, that's going to be six <laughs> going down. Someone else is going to pick him oh, up. So they're not going to lose the man, but that's half of his HP. So mm, it's not good. It, it's definitely not good. It's uh, a little bit of a bad situation for WTF. Can't say that I'd be all that stoked if I saw my teammate jump out of the window and die. <laughs> but, you know, right, sometimes things up. don't pan out quite how you plan. So it'll be interesting. It's going into the uh, Lions Den, so to speak. 
Interesting. Oh, and he gets oh. trapped before he gets there. <laughs> That's unfortunate as well because he just used um, the Ash Grenade Launcher to try and clear the barbed wire. So that was so close to clearing that as well. But it is two for They're one so far. Traps. Yeah, Sifu now with a four versus three advantage, and it's time for them to push. Yeah. Oh, actually, one no, they're minute. on the defense there. I can't have it to just hold it's the on right now. Oh, gets annihilated. And the Diffuser is dropped again. in a horrible position. He could just camp on that. Let's see if he does. He oh, has. there's oh, Junus. Oh, him. what a shot out nice. of Vic. Just is gets him while in? he's climbing on up. Nice wall a beautiful bang. headshot. Yeah. And he did a nice wall bang. It's looking unlucky that he didn't kill him. So we can get the Diffuser looking. That's nice. Yeah, that was... Uh, 2v3. Definitely pop. Ooh. <laughs> Here we go. There is a Frost on the other side. He will so he wants to be careful how how he takes this fight, because that's not a fight he's going to win at point blank range. Oh, nice. Like it. He's going for the range. Yes, back away. Good decision there yep. from him. 2v3. Slow. And it looks like they've they got are. the diffuser. Yeah, they go and decide to go for a different route, which I like Again, here. Cause that threat. They know but there's a hole there. They oh only my God, have 10 seconds. seconds to do it. And this is something like, this keeps taking us they're by surprise. So it's got to yeah. be the same yeah. for the teams, but they've got yeah. to get this diffuser down right this it's second. But there's Four seconds, wire. three seconds. There's they have to start planting it. If they can Where deny the plan, plan, then they're in with a win on this one. Oh. Sifu, that is, but they're moving on in. It's two versus one, uh, three versus one, sorry, as Twitch is the last man remaining. The spray oh. from the pistol isn't going to find the head, and that is going to be easy lose, taking the easy win up against Warrior Team France. Gets the diffuse. Good attempt. And that good is going to be 3 2. It was a good say, attempt. Say they had 10 seconds. That was yeah, good considering attempt. it was like a last second. Oh crap, we need to get the bomb down. And <laughs> not only that, they had to go through loads of barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually got the bomb down, so unlucky. Yeah, they did. They, uh, they gave themselves an actual chance from something which looked like it was. You could you couldn't do it. It was a good effort. I think the, the real props there need to go over to um, Sifu in terms of like. Obviously, all of the breaches and things went on towards one site, and then they swapped to the other side of the map. That was read perfectly by Sifu. Mm. They immediately, after that th uh, thermite charge went off, they immediately rotated to the other side of the map. They were ready. Well, they kept it both. They didn't commit to either, which is, yeah, very smart. And that meant that they were able to take that round. Yep. So, 3-2 in favor of Sifu. Okay, back down to the basement. One away from match point as well, so... Um, WTF, they've got their work cut out here. I think I think it's five. Hmm? Yeah, one away from match point. As in one away from one away. Oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> one away from one away, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, here we go. Right. So, five seconds left on this prep phase, and then we're going to see how... See if you go about this attack. So far, see if you have actually been doing very well on the attacking phase. I feel that's a lot down to this blitz. It's been doing absolute wonders for It is allowing them to push faster. And the faster you push, the more time you have. It's a great distraction as well. Yeah, like, yeah, that's true. But look, he's out, they feel really confident when they push with it. And yeah, I think that's do. really important. I think rightly so as well. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, that's what shields do. They, uh, they allow you to do that, but you don't have as good a weapon, so it's that kind of compromise. But if you can land that headshot... Yeah, exactly. Matter. Yeah. Well, here we go, let's see. We haven't really seen... Sheffy himself land many kills this game. He's just kind of been a big distraction for his team. Looks like... Um... Oh, no, never mind. It's... That is Sifu. <laughs> I'm going to say Roma. We get a very slow start actually from Sifu here. We've kind of seen the I mean the last time we were attacking we saw them just blitz through about twenty rooms in about twenty seconds, mm. but this time going for it a little bit more cautiously. And I think that'll be due to spawns as well, because this is a different spawn to what we saw last time. He's running into a nice gets get him with a headshot. Really easy quick. loss. Just well aware of the situation, finds so a nice easy pick. Uh, the back now for himself. So they've got that push. Yeah, and taking out the CCTV as well. Absolutely yeah. crucial. Something yeah, yeah. that I feel isn't given enough um, notice in so these they've games. They've got is... both uh, sides now because yeah. of that, that, uh, that kill. So this really is where the pin kill. comes into yeah, play. Yeah, exactly. Well. It's a really important kill. Well, just one kill can be that important. Wilkie finds a second one as well, so that's going to be nice. doubly important as three defenders remain now and the grenades are going to rain on in. Yeah. There is a Jaeger, but I don't know where... His, uh, oh, Sizzlak like actually Ooh, very close him? to that grenade. It tagged him to half. Nice. Isn't quite going to find Looking the kill. Really good. But 
I mean, typically, unless it's fully cooked, you're not going to find many grenades that get kills because it's... in the plant down. Obviously, you do get the notification, but as you say, plant does cook yeah. down. Calls that to push the air. There we go. Look now at, this, it's, now it's look at the them. distraction from Blitz. So many players shooting at him, but he's just stood there with I the shield like that. I think he would have wanted planted it just by himself. It looks like yeah. it. Strolls on in, gets the plant down, gets back up with his now shield. Now they have to make a commitment to pushing out this. into the open now. Junus finds a headshot, his legs down as well. That's another for Junus, and now it's just Hawk remaining. Um, can he does find one. On to easy loss. See if Hawk can take this. He's in a one versus very, five. Very he's found the first <laughs> one, but he's got barely any HP to work with. And looks like, oh, he Ooh, finds a second the one as well. Peeking up through the trap Time's door. Time's ticking. They can just chill. Yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah. They, they can so, chill. I mean, Good sense. once again, it was going to be near impossible for Hawk there. With yeah. the diffuser already Pre down in a one versus five. Pretty much they would need to just all rush him <laughs> for yep. the most part. And he just gets kind of the multi-spray, yeah. Not only that, they had a, a vantage point on the bomb too. So from the very top, they can just look down on it. So yeah, it would have been really, really hard. Yeah, it would have. Yeah. But here we go. So <laughs> Junus basically saying, uh, I'm, uh, I'm upset this. at how much you were praising Choi in the last game for his ridiculous <laughs> score. So I'm going to match it then and maybe even do better. Sifu now. On match point, if they can take this round, they are going to take this first game, and we're going to moving. We're going to be moving onto our second map, which is Hereford Base, which I'm very excited about because mm. I have cast I cast EGX yeah. before this game came out, when uh, when the beta was released, and I did four eight-hour days of casting just Hereford Base. Wow. Okay. So, so I know that map pretty well. <laughs> I've seen a lot of games on that map. It is an interesting map, Her uh, Hereford. I think it's um, a map that a lot of teams know very well as well. It's kind of like we were talking about House earlier, being one of the sort of almost default maps, even though all but Yacht pretty much mm. are default It was, it was on the beta a lot. Yeah. It was on uh, a lot. It's one of these ones that most teams will know. So. It's quite a, a hectic map as well, especially at the top, dummy. Like for yeah. all the windows, you can get people on um, buildings as well, shooting through. Yeah. It is a very, very kind of intense map. Yeah, so many walls and so many yeah. ceilings and things you can. It'd be interesting to see if they actually do go to the top when, uh, you know, because they will go to the bottom, first, yeah. I'm guessing. It'd be interesting to go to the top of the tribe, one of the middles. Yeah, this is the thing. Like, obviously, the basement is a huge, huge popular spot, but yeah, we'll see where the second one on is going to be. I mean, we'll talk about this more when we actually get onto the yeah. map. Let's stay in this game for now. It is Sifu versus WTF. 4 2 is the score, and Sifu 1 away from taking this first game in the series. Good scouting with the drones. Just He's actually just going to follow this player. And he calls it out nice. to Zangar. That nice. was beautiful. Good wall bang. Good wall bang. Good uh, comms. Yeah, absolutely. And Junus answers, though. So traded one for one. This is quite a fast push. Yeah, it is. And this is the kind of push that I like to see this fast, aggressive play. Pulse is down, though. So Junus, while he did get that one kill, not feeling all too healthy. Maybe needs to head over to the GP after this game Ooh, and get a prescription. But it's going to be easy tower. loss. Picking up a headshot with that MP5. And that means that the defenders are now with a one man advantage. Tied in quite hard though, so it wasn't a whole loss. No. But it's going to be down to whether they can finish off these tagged players, because even if you've got 10 HP, your bullet is still going to be able to get those headshots. Yep. Still going to be win, able to win those firefights if you've got the quick enough reactions. Here we go, the push Pushing coming in, on yeah. out from the attackers on WTF. Grenading on down, and there's the thermite charge onto this trap door. It would so. be nice if they could get someone going tower um, to push that like they usually have been. See, this is the thing, though. When you're already down to three people, it's it like harder. you don't have Took much of an option. Yeah, Junus is he down, but not out. In. Should be able to finish this one off pretty comfortably. Where the hell did he shoot him? In fact, not even going to try and finish him off there. It's just, uh, just um, he's playing the objective. Right, he right. knows that there's no one really going to be going up to it's save the Roma. That guy. Just throw some bombs down. Grenade not actually going to tag anyone there, but I mean, it's it's one of those where you just kind of roll in the dice, you know. You, you're not going to be able to use that grenade in an intense firefight anyway. But here we go, they're pushing on into basement now. This is where the fight is really going to kick off. 40 seconds remaining, and there we go. Protex finds a headshot for himself. The MP5 laser cannon coming on out. And here we go, pushes on in. We're in the eyes of Hawk, who has been on point with one his headshots to his right. so far. Will he know? Yeah, it's gonna He's be just shitty. waiting there with a shotgun. On that Don't want to get too close. Don't want to get too close. Oh, he's going to peek. 
Is that? No, it's just. Yeah, he's he's biding his time it. playing this one super safe. Sis like jumps on into the room. Oh, wow. There's the Frost bear trap there. coming into go. play. Yeah. And that is going to be Sheffy defending that single handedly. Gets one with a shotgun, one with a bear trap. Very and that nice. is going to be, Very nice. I believe, that first game. Yep. So, really Very strong well performance by Sifu. And I mean, I mean. Ball fast we, pushers. They yeah. push quite fast. Um, I, and then slowed down sometimes near the end. I Even prefer that, that the, uh, fast, aggressive play style. That's, that's what I love to But watch. it was interesting, like, it was usually a fast push into the building, but sometimes it'd, like, slow down even that they had that position. They just, yeah. like, slow down and were like, wait, let's wait quite a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. It is nice to push for tower, take tower, and then you can focus on that place where they were going. Yeah. Because then you get the pincer, as yeah. we saw. It, and that's the thing. If, if you're on the attacking side and you can get in on multiple positions, that's when you really start to not just um, start to take the advantage, but also kind of take the positional advantage, which can be so crucial in the further firefights. Like if, you, if you're the ones attacking and you're getting the crossfires, the defenders are in such a bad spot. But yeah, here we go. We're heading on to the second map. So it is Sifu. Hereford base. 1-0 in this series. And let's see how Hereford base is going to treat these guys. Now this is a map see that is- See uh, if WTF can come back. Yeah, very, CQB intensive map here. Mm. Like, yes, yes. Occasionally, occasionally we'll see a glass like hiding on the roof of the warehouse, Sometimes. but not, not all too common, to be honest. It's hard to really get any shots through the window. Once they know you've got a glass, it's kind of just stay away from the windows and you're pretty Gucci. Could be a lot of uh, abseiling as well, up and down. Yeah. Looking through the windows uh, and possibly. Oh, we got a fuse. Is this the first time we, we see a fuse? I've got a. I think there was one when it was. Uh, the other guy's casting? Yeah, okay. But I can't confirm that one 100%. <laughs> First time I'm casting Attackers. Yeah, same here. And same it makes part. sense. Um, as, as we said, there's loads of windows. Um, from the and no hostages. <laughs> is this the bottom? Pro tip, lads. Never pick fuse while you're yeah. against hostage. Yeah, this, this is, is the, this bottom. Is the bottom. So you got See, the I'm A not using this, this first now, person thing. Yeah. From what I've seen of Hereford Base, the A site is so much more popular than the B site when you're looking to try and get your plant. You can plant it. If you see, at the bottom left of your screen, just below the A site on that bottom floor, you can plant that in the doorway. It's so easy to defend the diffuser from outside of the building. You don't even have to be in that cramped little room. Yeah. So if you can find your way in, if you can uh, deny the crossfires, you can find yourself in a fantastic position. Yeah, I was just kind of like trying to understand the map from this kind of like looking view. Yeah, so yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah where where the barbed wire yeah, yeah, yeah. there was down at the side. I'll, I'll try and point out when we head on. No, I know exactly what you map. mean now. Yeah. It's just the uh, bird's eye view thing. Yeah, it's kind of um, when it's the first time you see the map yeah. from the bird's eye view, <laughs> it's like, a little there, bit there disconcerting because yeah. you're like, I, I, just, I see what it is. You've got to get your bell bearings. Bell call there. But no one's there just causing that threat once again. Yeah, forcing them to answer to that, forcing them to keep on checking it in as you, well. You, yeah, you could literally just make a hole in a, a window um, and just leave it there. And then it's just going to slow that push just a tiny bit, but you're not there and you just cause that bit of, you know, you slow down. This is a nice little place. Yeah, that's a good fuse. That goes straight into lockers. No one's there though, it looks like. And the Jaeger got a few of them as well. It's still nice. And it's, it's over the reinforced wall as well, which yes, is crucial. Yes, yes. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you can fuse it too, and you can look right in. Yeah, and this is the thing, because you can't... Um, obviously, you can't put a fuse charge on a reinforced wall. Yep, so the no, fact no. that you can get over those reinforcements is absolutely crucial. Mm, it's interesting. It's interesting that they left it, because maybe it was like they weren't, it weren't supposed to do that, and they've just left it, possibly. Well, I think the, the reinforcement is like a standard size, isn't it? So mm. it's not necessarily something that could... Wait, so the only map has it, I think? Uh, possibly. I, I couldn't... I can neither confirm nor deny yeah, that, to be quite is, honest. I think it is. Um, it's the only one I know of, at least, but... So once again, pushing in with the uh, blitz. This is risky. Because if they put a hole there... It changes mind. <laughs> pushing in, yeah, pushing into here would make it unsafe from that side. Well, the thing is... If you look at it from the perspective of the after plant, if they do go for that plant that I was talking about, like right at the doorway, that just gives you another angle to watch the That's fuse from afterwards. But as you say, it's risky when you initially push in. So let me trust him. Here we go. There's very, very often this murder scary. holes in that wall. That it's, wall. I, I like, I like how they're using the uh, the shield. They are using him a lot just to get in there to get a bit of an idea of what's going on safely and not losing anyone for it. Yeah, look at this wall of smoke they're using as well to just mm. take control of the A site. There's like 
no reinforcements essentially for Hawk if they push in now. But by the looks of things, Hawk doesn't need reinforcements because he gets a double for himself. Zangar finds a headshot with his ump as well. Three kills immediately over to WTF. Junus trying to answer for this one. He's been a standout player here for Sifu in the, nice in the past. Too. Well, they've suddenly found him. Oh, oh, takes it. Nice. Full bang headshot. Yeah. That's going to be Wilkie answering as well. And suddenly it's looking a little oh, bit more even. Two for three. Come on. Here we go. Junus so, so oh, low. But nice. Wilkie finds another one for himself. And suddenly two versus two. This is swings and roundabouts right now coming out from these two teams. Junus going to be looking to plant this seconds. diffuser. And Wilkie going to hide behind that desk. Way. That desk that is such a great camp spot to hide out in when he you go for the defend, A side. He needs to plan. Get that plan down. You got it. Good. Oh, nice. beautiful headshot onto Sizz oh, like there. What, what happened? Grenade, I think, came down onto Wilkie oh, there. Okay. This is this is intense right now. They know exactly where he is. He's been tagged down to half just a second ago. And this they is pick. Tense. Can they pick? Don't can they pick no, up his teammate? Leave him. It's gonna keep, Junus it's gonna is on so little HP. Wow. I don't know. Did he go down as well there? Um, I can't quite see through the wall. Oh, they're, they're both, both down, down, but not out. It's taken oh, away. Oh my god! I don't <laughs> think Zangdar knows this one. He needs to just go and get the defuse. Oh, they can't do anything no. about it. In fact, he's going to pick up the kills. He might run out of time for the defuse, though. <laughs> no, I think he's no, got this one. Got he's it, got, got this it. one. He's uh, didn't panic for too long. And Zangdar, in a moment of, I think that was kind of, did I get him? I'm not well, sure if he's I, down I, or not. I, I thought he would get him up. It's just taking ages. Yeah, so did I. It was kind of hard to see through the wall with the yeah, silhouettes kind of meshing together. You but don't see the downs, like. Cause exactly, because it's because it's one on top of the other. Yeah, but whew, what a close round there. Mm. Really nicely played by Zangdar. In the end, does manage to clutch that one. So first round of the map going over to I th WTF there. I, I think uh, him trying to pick the other person up were a bad idea. That's how he got down. It was so risky, but at it's the same it. time, it's kind of like if you just go for the peak or whatever, he's still on so little You've HP. You've got more pressure if it's 1v1, need to but um, trying to pick him attackers. up, lost it. Yeah. So maybe just go with that pressure. I mean, just I think for it. he got a couple of tags onto Zangdar while he was running around, getting a different angle. So maybe he thought Zangdar was kind of pinned for a second. Maybe he thought he could just kind of get the cheeky. Yeah, yeah that's what he would have won. And, and again, it, it does uh, get rid of the pressure. Like, yeah. it, it would. Like, oh, I've got two now. Now we're definitely going to do it. Not, oh, it's all relying on me. My heart's beating out of my chest. Then, yeah. <laughs> well, here we go. We're going to see another basement spawn here, this time from Sifu on the defense. So let's take a look at the compositions that we've got coming out because not really touched on that just yet this game. Pretty standard stuff. Jaeger yeah, yeah. and Blitz and Pulse coming out here. Smoke and, of course, Rook got a for the defenders. Yeah, nothing too special, really. Not seeing the no frost ash. though. No, I'm, oh, no, I'm kind of surprised to see no frost on the defense here because it is a very, very close quarters map. Mm. I mean, aside from when you see kind of, I'm pointing at the screen. I realize viewers can't actually see that. <laughs> but when you see like across that long corridor, yeah. when someone's in, um, I think it's called locker room, and someone's pushing in from the way you know the thermite wall that you um, from the outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know what the, the call out is for that wall, but the, it's where, where most just teams used. will. Will Thermite. Yeah, 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 we're refused. So, like, that kind of crossfire is very long range. But other than that, you're going to have a lot of kills that are very, very doable with a Super Knight. Here. Interesting. Did, um, who was it? Did, uh, Sifu... This wall here, this is what I'm on. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, did Sifu, um, go from the first floor at all in that last round? Really big fucking hole coming mm. right up. I don't were they all just think so. so. No, I don't think they... No, no one went from the stairs or anything, so... Don't know. But here we go. It's going to be Sifu on the defense, as we said before. And WTF starting to breach their way on into the side. But Six is not having any of it. Immediately picks up a headshot. And it's going to be Junus that goes down. Now, Junus has been a crucial player for this team. Like, so, so He's important. doing very, very well. Here we go. Immediately, the Thatcher Thermite combo comes on into play and they blow they a hole a in the that wall. Doing the bit and then looking through uh, the other players for some intel. The old Quite bait smart. and switch. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Nice drone coming out there. That's going to let him know that this area is fairly clear. Ooh, ooh, they're going to be... Risker, he's in. I think ooh, they're shooting ooh, in through so the roof. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but oh, here we go. Oh, this is Risker. This is really Risker. Going through the wire. Oh, there's two of them in there. It's still four versus oh, five right now, but that's going to be one here. going down. If he can oh, finish he it, no. Them. Look at Gonna trade one for one, but actually Wilkie way. chimes in for, with a headshot on two six as well. So now it's three versus three again. But Wilkie incredibly low on HP right now. Has to be incredibly careful on this one. So they're looking towards the A site by the looks of things. Wilkie. 
Three on it's three. on the floor but above, so we'll see whether he can find a way He's to just get a flank down. But yeah, they need yeah, to make something happen. happen soon, and they are doing um, so with the headshots coming on through. Suddenly, Wilkie, the last man remaining. Okay. He, he finds it? one for himself, though. Two versus one now, and he's looking oh. for the clutch. Does get the down state, but him. does yeah. get the kill. Tank, okay. but no frag, and that is going to be another round going over to WTF there. So I think that's 2-0 now for WTF. Our French team coming on in. The Finnish team, they won the first map. Can they turn this into a second win or is it gonna be our 19th 1-1 one, one of the day? I've lost count at this Good stage. Day, yeah. <laughs> but, and even the 2-2, two, two, like it uh, went 2-2 two, two the other way, so now it's 1-1 one, one again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Got a glass. So I'm guessing that they're thinking they're gonna go high and they're gonna use the, you know, higher buildings to look through from far with the glass. That's my guess. Yeah, I mean, they won on the defense, didn't they? So now they have to change. And, and is it dummy? It is going to be dummy. It is dummy. They go, I'm, I'm pretty sure they predicted that. They went for yeah. glass. They're going to go for the buildings, look through the windows. That's That, that was my prediction. Let's take a look. No castle coming out, so not going to try and deny the, uh, the kind of window barricade. Well, a glass can shoot through them. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I was like, not really. I was like 50% on that one. So yeah, it just can. Kind of... So if you put the castle up, the glass can just randomly shoot. You won't be able to do anything about it, but they might actually hit you. Yeah, it's like <laughs> so one it of those. Actually give it they're not going to be able to see through, but they maybe get the shot. Yeah, you know? and even if they shoot, like they're not even, you know, endangering themselves. Glass isn't a uh, an operator that I've really got much experience of playing myself. I don't so play glass. I just know like some things about. Yeah, it. I don't. I don't really know the intricacies of that glass specifically because it's one that you see a lot less frequently as well. It's yeah. not. It's not a, a flash. The flash is going to where I thought the glass were going to go. It's interesting. Yeah, I wonder if they'll maybe leave this open for him later on. But we could see glass going to the other side of the map. Obviously, there is that kind of shooting range that you can stand on top of as well. Mm. Wall banging a bit just to make sure he saw the hole. So it looks like they got a roamer at the bottom. Interesting. He's thinking he's the first floor because he saw the hole, but really he's gone to the uh, the bottom. I've got to say, when you're in this top-down view and you can see Easy Loss over there, it's mm. such a bizarre view of yeah. the repeller because he's kind of just hanging it off nothing, walking through the air. Kind of thing. <laughs> uh, push him with the blue. Push him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nearly got a team kill. But, oh, very the nice. wall bag very, out very of nice. Judas. Yeah, that yeah, was, was like on him. Beautiful. And like a little bit of luck comes into play in that scenario. So Obviously, you've got the call out from Chief, who you're kind of guessing at where in the corridor he is, but mm. very, very nice shot. That was a threat as well. They got rid of the Roma. Yeah. Absolutely massive for them. He's still thinking there's someone down there. And now it kind of slows. He doesn't have the to. Pace there's no one down there. He's just paranoid that there's someone down there. They're kind of. Um, I feel like it, it's good when you've got this man advantage, you want to take this slow. You don't want to kind of just push the issue too much and end up just losing out a silly firefight, but okay. you don't want to spend too much time in the Third basement. Through. This, obviously is obviously this is a uh, it's a good push here. It's a nice place to firm at that. There's only like Looks two fine. attackers up on this top, but yeah. that is going to be a kill coming through for... Doing a, a little bait. Nice little oh, headshot. He comes out. What was that wow, firefight? Misses left, right, and wow, center. Yeah. Sizzlak does get the headshot in the end. But it was... Yeah, you guys actually take a look at that. Sizzlak got down to about 2 HP himself, so it was by no means uh, an easy fight for either of them. Interesting that the glass isn't going too far away. He's actually pushing quite close. Yeah, and this is what we saw as well on uh, Aeroplane. A very, yeah, yeah, very close yeah. quarters glass coming out and just trying to get those tight angles, trying to. I mean. Like, from far away, you are kind of just hoping someone peeks, and at this level, maybe they won't. Oh, wow, Wilkie. Well, he gets the... him. Just walks in. <laughs> Playing oh. glass as if he's got a shotgun right there. Yeah, yeah. Just strolls on in and... Oops. Power Frost. Yeah. There nice. we go. And well, there it is. Wow. Okay. That's how you finish a round right there from uh, Sifu. Just waltz on in right at the end and just take the final couple of kills. Wall like they're a lot stronger at the top. And there we go. And, I mean, Sifu were one of the teams that were kind of coming in and people were saying, yes, this is one of our favorites to come through. And we didn't really see that in the first match. However, they were against the G-Bots, which is another one of our, you know, big heavy hitters, one of our big favorites yeah, for it. Yeah, it seems so that way. It, it felt kind of like a unfortunate a first opponent. And as well, each well, game was 5-3, so it was very, very close between Yeah, and it, it's a good warm-up as well. And you don't really want to think of it as, like, unfortunate. You just want to... You, you want to verse the best. Yeah. Because to be the best, and that's, you're that's, the best. That's that game out of the way for the Pro League as well. 
At no point do they have to go against G-Bots again until mm -hmm. playoffs. So, but again, you should want to verse the best. I feel. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, there's like there's like two schools of thought on it, isn't there? Because obviously, you want to go against the best baby teams, slow, but baby step it. Mm. at the same time, you you want to get points on the board. You want to go to playoffs. Yeah, so, yeah. if yeah, you can if you can get that game out of the way and then not have to deal with having to go against the, one of the best teams Five until playoffs remain. again. And you can watch them play throughout the whole season. So you've got like plenty of information scouting them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that uh, viewpoint. So, I mean, we'll see how that pans out as we head further on into the season. Let's stick where we are for now though, because we are still in our very first week of the Pro League. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> game day two, which is in game day one. Yeah. Because <laughs> we've had, we, in case you guys missed it earlier on, we have squeezed two game days into today. One, yeah. It's been kind of hardcore. It has been on a kind of hardcore. We're coming up to, uh, I believe, 11 hours of broadcasting fairly soon. I don't really know what the time is at this stage, but... Been good games, though. It yeah. has been. There's there been go. some incredible games. It, I, I think our first series was still my favorite of the yeah. day. Yeah, it was It was amazing. It was just uh, absolutely ridiculous. And All right, pushing through. Probably causing a distraction once again. Again, that threat. You know, you don't need to push there. Just open that up. Yep. Cause that fear. Well, looks like four of them are down and this, this time. This is the two Thermite spots that we've seen every round right now. Yeah. You go for that one over towards the top right of Locker, and then you go for the one down in that middle wall as well. And that just kind of opens Locker up so it's not this tight and closed space anymore. There's lots of crossfires you can go for. Being a lot slower. They're just like outside. Where are they looking? Is the, uh, the middle hall? I kind of uh, yeah, like they this, have. though, because, okay, I mean, we've seen very aggressive pushes yeah. out of WTF, but we haven't seen so much of this slow methodical play. But when you're one round up, this is kind of how you want to play. You don't want to get the thing too is, cocky about it. You're hoping someone peaks. Like, you're hoping someone peaks. Yeah, I mean, you are kind of looking for the advantage. They still do have a minute 20 to play. Oh. <laughs> then that is going to be a nice shot. Uh, the Sheffy right as there, Zangdar. I don't think he quite saw Sheffy. Obviously, we could see the silhouette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, he doesn't have that same luxury. Vic's got the idea where he is. Yeah, it wasn't, he wasn't it. even easily lost. They got the kill, though. Sheffy over towards the B site, but... He knows he's there, but... This, there's a this massive is, hole here as this well. This is so hard for them to push into. Yeah, that's what I was saying about... Oh. Junus again is trying he to push kill. Jumps on. Oh, oh, good effort, mate. Well. Good effort. But Easy Lost does manage to get the headshot in the end. Nice. He's going to get directed by six, who looks for one. Oh. Onto Junus. Can't quite get the headshot, though. That would have been huge if he managed nice, to get yeah. that one. Four versus two. He knows two. where he is, though. They need to try and so equalize many holes, here. So many places to get shot from. Wow. That was, there it is. That was quick. That was over from towards the B site as well, I believe. Takes him down. Out there. Junus does drop. But it is one versus four. <laughs> it's it's a lot I mean, Hawk is definitely a player that nice... is capable of this. Look Ooh, for the murder, murder holes. Lines. They're the murder lines. Quite so you don't know well, exactly yeah. where they are, yeah. 15 seconds to go. Oof. Oh, well. When you hear that 15 yeah. second timer, you're like, okay, panic mode, let's try and do something. But Sheffy is just going to be waiting okay. around that corner. And look at that. Just watching. He can protect both B site and A site from here. Mm. Gets the nice easy spray. And that is going to be another round going over to Sifu. So 2-2 two, two on the board. Ahead. Even Stevens yep. here. The scores on the doors, but here we go. Wilkie really stepping up this game. Six kills under his belt. Sheffy as well. Not going for the shield as much. As I say, that immediately locks in Blitz just to prove me wrong, but <laughs> he's got five kills for himself as well. So we're starting to see it's not just kind of Junus taking this team and <laughs> walking them towards a victory. It's yeah. This time, the rest of the team really getting on that scoreboard as well. But. Let's not get carried away because it is 2 2, completely even match here between these Could guys. Go anywhere. The first game was fairly close as well between these guys, too. So, see if we were able to take that first map in the end. Let's see. We are going to see Wilkie as well going for that fuse once more. So, the cluster charges going to come into play and we'll see whether we see any kills come out with that because I don't think we've I seen think, a single cluster kill I all day. I think the fuse will be better from the top. You can, there's way more windows you can fire them through. Um, in this place, yeah, you can put it towards the lockers, but who's going to really be standing near the lockers? Yeah. Not that many. Um, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, you can obviously uh, fire the fuse from the top floor as well, the first floor. Well, only one way to find out is the action fuse. phase begins. The mip rowled. Take a look at this. Some drone parkour getting them right up on top of the shelves. 
The disgusting looking ACOG site there. I really hate that scope. What do we have? I, I just think it's. Uh, I don't know. I just don't like it. <laughs> I know it's like based on real life, so it's not something that's like down to Ubisoft or anything. It's just like the way that gun actually looks. So maybe I should just never become a Russian soldier. Who knows? I don't. I never hey, really intend to. Anyway. Where he is. Just need to. Just need to. It's so it's so much easier when you can actually see where they are. You see, like yeah. they know where they are, like but we can see through the walls. So it just shows you how close they were. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. The hollow sight coming out on the L8. Looks like they got a a pulse roamer once again. Definitely very popular. Yeah. Pulse roamers. I mean, rightly so as well. The cardiac yeah. sensor just so good for that roaming. But there is good roamers. It's uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it was pulse. I'm surprised that. Um, how much pulse we've seen comparatively mm. to Jaeger. Because mm. I could see the benefit of just keep sticking your pulse near your sight and using that to look up through the ceiling and things and sending yeah. Jaeger to wherever you find the people. Mm. That could definitely be something. But we are going to see Sheffy opening this one up with Very a headshot nice. onto Hawk. And you know you're doing it pretty well when your shield guy is picking up the first kill of the round. You know you're in pretty safe hands. They've opened up A as well, so they've caused that big fear. Yeah, here we go. Smoke grenades. And this is nice. I, I like this. Going this, for the yeah, wall of wrong, smoke yeah. across. And this is going to open up Push A site and kind of stop the reinforcements coming on through. Here we go. So Cargo's on plan? into the room. He's going to find six. Oh, I can't oh, find running. the shots, though. Nice kill coming out from six in the end. Does get Firm taken ass. down. So Wilkie trades this one. Vic going to be peeking on here. Needs to be very careful. And looks like oh, finds one. Finishes off six. They do. I think this is actually our second plant of the game as well, so can they defend this one now? That's going to be the question. It's three versus three. three. three put the plants down, so that does change it. And suddenly it's Warrior Team France that are on the attacking side. They've got to go for this retake right now. Vic nice, trying to find nice it, does get taken down. So Wilkie again with second time, second kill of the round. It's his like Drop to the floor. So it's only the pulse remaining, only the Roma left, but he's what roaming too late and he's running there out of time is. as well he's only got a quarter, quarter left on oh, the clock pushes what? on it finds the what? headshot what on earth just happened he's no idea. it's zangar on the scene he's looking for more but wow. interest uh, he must have just looked away as he turned he must have he i think he needed to just go further into that room i don't think he should have gone back out into the corridor with how little time he had left mm. it was like just go for it too little too late yeah but i don't know good effort by zangar it was a good I think headshot he roamed a bit too long yeah i think wilkie kind of not really sure what happened to let him get through the door there, but you know, it probably was looking it just like turned just as it came through. Yeah. It must have been something like that. Blink, it so blinked odd. and he missed it because <laughs> yeah. it was it was over in a, a second. So over in a flash, mm. especially when Blitz is on the scene. <laughs> Here we go. That is going to be Fantastic. three two in favour of Sifu. Here we go again. Very similar compositions. We are going to see the glass coming out. Wait, where's this? From Sizzlack. Is this um, this the is first floor? The, I think this one's called Dining Room. This is the first floor, isn't it? Maybe. I think this is Dining Room, yeah. Huh. Interesting. So, so this they, seen this they one. literally can go through the uh, the B windows and plan. Like, they can just come from that shooting range, I believe. Yeah. Wow, okay. This will be interesting. So, I mean, talk to me about this floor. How would you go about defending this one? Um, well, I've never really played it. I usually play on the second floor. Um, probably what they're doing is how to defend it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> reinforce the garage, uh, reinforce all the weak points. I think they've reinforced the very east side as well. Just get rid of... Oh, no, they haven't. Have they? No, that's the making thing. Yeah, they will have reinforced the, uh, the very east side, um, I'm guessing. Uh, so, you know, people can't push in that easy. But as I said, I, ne I literally never <laughs> go for these bombs. This is, is going to be interesting. They can just go through this window or plant, and then they've got the bomb down. And then they're done. They, days. What you could do is you could break some holes through the walls. Yeah. So you could look in there from maybe garage. That could be, uh, you know, on the fly just thinking that, that could possibly work. And it looks like they might have. I can see a lot of holes there. Yeah, well, it's only Zangar in or around that B site. No defenders actually that B, as far as I can tell. Wilkie on the floor above. It is a very unusual. Junus over at the A. Just go in. Zangar's. Scouted it he with could his drone. Just go in. I want to see him just go for this. Get the diffuser and just, you know, go go all in on it. But I think I think it's kind of one of those where you're like, why is there no defenders? Wait, I'm they not. They might uh, have lots of kill holes though, or murder holes. They could. Yeah. 
Like in well, we saw some murder lines being punched I did out there. I didn't quite I see where they were. Yeah, I didn't. Nice. So here we go. Nice bit on the A site here. Looking to try and make sure that they have some crossfires to defend the diffuser when they do decide to put that down. You can down. tell it's not as familiar. Like, yeah. they pre fire in completely wrong places now. Whenever they've pre fired it's always been, like, correct. Now they're pre firing and there's no one there. It's, it's, it's not a place that people call this. And, I mean, this is kind of one of those things where you can really kind of hoodwink your opponent if you go for a God. really strange site that no one's really used strange. to attacking. And the positions are in there. All the corners of the map. <laughs> yeah. If you can practice this, though, if you can get kind of the upper hand purely... Jordan is in a nice position. If you I mean, it's like when we saw a plane earlier. WTF managed to take that advantage because they had that experience. Zangdar finds the first kill on two Junis here. So WTF. The, they're, on the, they're at the bomb. With a good start. They're at the bomb. Yeah. I think they're just oh, very, I like very it. nervous yeah, about planting right now. Look at that. Oh, very nice beautiful shot. Beautiful headshot from Zangdar. Second one get the off down. the round for himself. There's no Pika. He's looking for another one, and he's going to be able to very, get him down. Nice. Zangdar yeah, with the hat trick, stuff, and there stuff. comes Hawk really and nice. Six to finish off the round. Frag grenade to take the last kill. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you attack the first floor. That is mm. how you walk on into the site and just take those I, headshots. I thought all of a sudden, like, they were just going to win because they were shooting from the top. But, yeah, just peeked at the wrong yeah, time. Yeah, I, I honestly got that strategy thought, and I thought that trapdoor was going to be I thought it was going to be a uh, smart uh, decision, that. Yeah. But it ended up wrecking them. <laughs> did indeed. Well, 3-3 three, three is the score. So unless we see one team taking the next two rounds consecutively, we are going to be moving on into overtime. Mm. We've had some pretty long games coming out towards yep. the end of today. Yep. This, this, this Game day two has been much closer matchups, much like longer games than what we saw in game day one. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. Do you think that's down to just the okay. the different matchups, the different Maybe maps we're seeing, or do you here? think it's yeah, kind of a matter of we've already played one game of pro league, now we're kind of adapting our strategy. Well, also nerves. Maybe the nerves have got a bit better as well. So the, yeah, they were all and and not doing anything they might have been as even risky. Watching as well, they could have been watching each other's teams. If you do that, you get intel on that team instantly. Yeah, uh, how they play. What I would they hope they've been watching. Mm. So it could have been a mixture of things. Five seconds left before insertion. Well, as you heard from the announcer there, it is five seconds until insertion and the action phase begins. Inserting now. So we are going to see a Capcan come out here. Capcan the Trap Man. We'll see. Wait, is Capcan? Yeah, Sizlak going to wow, be bringing that one in. I think that's the first one we've seen of the Pro League. If someone falls for this, it'd be awesome. Yeah, this is going to be kind of a... There it is. <laughs> this so is going to be the test, really. Like, are you going to get just free kills from Cap County? And the thing is, the traps do get shields because you don't see your feet. Mm. Uh, and they get me when I sledge because I sledge and then run. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And as well, this is the thing. Like, I can't remember who I was talking to. I think it was it was either you or Derek I was talking to yeah. earlier about Cap County. And it was kind of like a while the traps are fairly obvious in general. If you get into that situation where it's like, oh, 20 seconds left, we've got to make something happen, you're not going to be checking every corner for Capcan traps. You're not going to be looking at the floor. You're going to That's be pushing when and charging can't on get it. hit by them. Exactly. Yeah. But they do get shields. They honestly do. You, you can fall for that because you can't see feet. And this is, this is kind of proof of these teams adapting as well. We're seeing these blitz come into just about every round now. Mm. Capcan immediately comes in to mm. try and counter right. that play. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, oh, let's see. I think, were they trying this to isn't Cap Candy. Okay. It's three doors into the corridor. Okay. Um, so the two doors into corridor boom, from boom. B and yeah, then yeah, the one yeah. from A. Yeah. Um, it can slow you down, though. It can slow you down. So that's one thing. E even if you don't uh, trip over it, it, it will slow the, the team down. So that's something nice. I like that little spray. Oh, nice. Hawk is going to go yeah. down. Wilkie finds that one, and it's going to be Junus like finding a headshot push, onto Zandar as well. So two men already is he down. Going, is he getting down? Sifu, uh, Sifu, sorry. Looking for this round at this rate. They're going to find another kill there. Making a convincing effort for it. We're into the eyes of Wilkie, who has taken two or three kills already this round. Doing some absolute work on this fuse mm. with the ACOG sight on his AK-12. AK-12. Very powerful gun. Whole lot of damage behind the, that uh, one. And nice. that's going to be his third, if not fourth try, kill. They're going to try and get the defuse down, I think. Yep. Sizzlack, last man here. It's 
going to try oh, to do what he can, to. but I, he's got his work cut out right now. One versus five, <laughs> tries to get his pistol out. He's running outside. He runs outside of the building, but I mean, what do you do oh, here? It's just yeah, panic. There's so many players everywhere. Can't <laughs> land his shots and we'll just go down. So that is going to be WTF, I believe. Mm. Oh, no, sorry. Sifu. What am yeah, I talking about? Sifu taking that one and pushing their way forward. 4-3 now. If Sifu can take this round, two they zero. have taken a 2-0 victory mm. against WTF. But WTF, they can still push this into overtime if they can take this round. So take a look at that. See what happens. The double one coming out from Wilkie there. He's uh, definitely on board for this one. He's wanting to push this towards a victory. <laughs> well, all right, where, where are the uh, starting? Okay, it's, yeah, it's the best one again. All right. So, 30 seconds left <laughs> of... I'm just being abused by production at this yeah, stage. Yeah, <laughs> that was, that was a bit confusing. <laughs> all right, here we go. The prep stage beginning, very standard defense coming out. We're not really seeing any crazy operators. I mean, we saw the cap can, but no blitz in this one and no cap can either can come out. I, th I feel like the cap can was kind of a, maybe just you know, a one trick it. pony. Oh, not one trick pony, but like a one time trick. Just wing it, just, just see if it works. Yeah, it's it like, maybe this pans out nicely for us. Maybe been, it kind of just. I think it would have been better if they planted somewhere else. Like they planted both doors really close to each other. Why would they even go for them doors kind of thing? Yeah. Maybe if they planted it on a window or somewhere I, maybe on the first floor, it could have caught someone out possibly. I think it was just a matter of like, we'll put this here and then if we do see the super slow push, the like last 30 second rush kind of thing, then that is going to make a difference from stairs. It could like, have been trying a, to get onto the It could have been to slow them as well. Yeah. It could have possibly been that. But hey, I mean, not every strategy works out in the end. Good to try them though. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. And it's much more entertaining for us to get to see different, <laughs> different diverse strategies, strategies yeah, yeah. coming well, it's on it's interesting, now. yeah. Okay, it looks like he's uh, thatched in, so we confirm that through. There we go. Probably going to do a distraction thing like he usually does. Yeah, and yet he does. And, and he's going to get this and exact same wall. But Chef here is waiting on the other side here. Mm. If they had a fuse, it could possibly... I want to see Sheffy out. just charge around through that thermite hole that's just happened. Drawn in, in. Shot the drone. Knows where he is. Is he shooting through? I think there's a... Oh, oh. wow. Good near. Don't know where that was from. Whoa, okay. He made a hole in the top. Nice. Through the nade through. Very nice. Yes, yeah, so that like way Vicar with the drone gets the information and punishes for a really nice play. Is it going to get the kill? That's going to be the question, isn't it? Oh, someone else did. Yeah. Well, I mean, he'll still he still gets the assist. He's going to be. I, I think at this point they're not too fussed about their personal numbers. They're fussed about yeah. taking this round because they are one away from dropping out of this though, series. Got a nice push. Been quite fast. <gasps> oh, just saw him. Chifu, so oh, close. so close to getting oh, spotted out. Oh, his so head close. was on show for a split second there. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't All back through. Very nice. Yeah, so you, that start. was just the smoke there. I thought there was a solid surface, but... One minute left. Able to get that shot through. It's completely gone. Five versus three as well. WTF looking strong in this round. Looking Spread like through. they might just be able through. to just push this. Two overtime. Looking for Junis. Trying to get the shots through the wall, but can't quite find his targets. Wilkie managing to get down one of these attackers. You see him? Oh, nice. he finds him. He's doing nice. really well. He's got over there. He's got over there. Vic is MVP for this round yeah, at least really right now. Well. He is, is doing is, has such he got five work. Well, he's I got. Guess the, two. I think he's got three. No, Zangdar actually got two of them okay. as well. So it's two-two now between him and Zangdar. But <laughs> now we're down to Junus. Junus has been a standout player for this is interesting. Side. Running actually down goes here, outside, but, guard, uh, but unlucky. doesn't land his shotgun shot. So unfortunate. Is going to go over to overtime. So mm. four apiece right good now. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's really nice. Really, really nice eighth round from. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth was that? <laughs> WTF. Yeah. So really nice round from them. Mm. Very, very strong performance from both Zangdar and Vic, especially. Vic yep. was just that single play where he put a hole in the top of the wall, scouted it out with a drone through the front grenade through. Really, really nice. Stuff. Opened it up, pushed yep. through, got someone in the other room. Yep, really nice. Here we go. So, overtime. Who do you think is going to take it? <sighs> it? I think, honestly, from what I've seen of these two teams, Sifu seem more consistent, mm. but 
Warrior Team Friends definitely seem like a clutch kind of team. This is the kind of team that can really pull out all the stops at the last second. Mm. And I mean, if you're looking for a team that can pull out stops at the last second, this is that last second to pull out the stops. We're moving into overtime. And we'll see if Sifu, or Sifu, sorry, can be this dominant team that we've heard so much about, whether they can push to a 2-0 victory or whether it's going to be WTF pushing for their second 1-1 of the day. They we'll already tied now. against Penta. They're looking to tie against Sifu. Honestly, WTF have been looking incredibly strong today, taking on some of the top teams and going even with them. Mm. Very, very good. Attackers recovered the diffuser. Attackers are moving. Well, Swapping mags. We'll see if the Warriors come out to play mm. for this one. It's all up yeah. to this. It is all up to this. You're absolutely right. You've you got to get kind of <laughs> two two rounds in a row here for the overtime. That's going to be how this one pans out. Looks like they're not going for the fuse anymore. Yeah, I mean, it didn't really no. get much. It Actually, a dock top. coming out. We haven't seen that just yet. Breaking the hole that they usually do. So you've got that. They're probably going to thermite the other place. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see. It's going to be Vic on the Thermite once again. That's who we saw the last time. Mm. And it looks like he's gone for that yep. first Thermite yep. hole. And it looks like so, he's probably going to go for the second. Yeah, so far they've got loads of holes uh, looking through. Very scary. Yeah. It doesn't like Sifu do keep in, though. You know, they keep in uh, on position. They don't get too scared by it. Yeah. So moving we've got one Roma here. Will he take him? He does need to. Shotgun's oh, there, but it's oh, not in enough. Mm. When I saw that shotgun, I was like, mm. Yeah, I was like, this <laughs> is a this is like a risky engagement. But actually, yeah. that's Junus as well. Junus has been one of these really, really... Uh, um, clutch. Yeah, clutch is the perfect word for it. He has been absolutely clutch for his team. And with him down... He's getting some intel on the stairs. Checking if there's a Roma. Doing that as well. We've got a bit of time. Don't spend too long there. <laughs> Yeah, 130 left, so I mean they've got a little bit of time, but they don't want to be getting greedy with it. They do need to get over down towards that base. He's probably gonna throw a grenade, very nice. That might get him. See. Oh, it looks like it almost in the uh Sizzlag finds one onto Wilkie, so that is gonna be just three defenders left over yeah, in that B site. Nice. Once again, this is what we saw last round. They all are B. Exactly the same situation, but Sheffy this time gonna trade it on back. They might be able to get a fast A. Can they see into A? I can't tell if uh, how many holes there is. Ooh, I think I think Sheffy can see straight into A through those murder holes. Ah, I can. Well, he's kind of pinned down himself. He's going to be playing that dock, though, so... Wow, Vic actually did take someone there. Okay, Rook and Dock. The, uh... Kind of... One of those defender combos that we see coming out. Mm. It looks like they might even be trying to plant. They're just trying to kill them. Okay, so they know exactly where they are. They know yeah. who the last two are. Vic finds another headshot oh, wait, himself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can push onto this last guy, or they can just push for the uh, for the plant right now. You'd probably They're just even one gonna plant get there. and then maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, pushing is risky. Oh, because they can come no. back if you push. You need to plant. Oh my, oh God, my are you goodness! Pro you talking? Talking? What is this? Yeah. Just two headshots straight away. But he just got, that's the crazy. diffuser hasn't been planted yet. They're about to if go he, for that. Him, finally, oh, he's gonna let him though. He's gonna let the guy. Oh, and this guy's downed. Let him do it. The plant. I didn't think he, he got the plant it. for a split second there. I thought that was just he timed out. But he Protax, he already had two beautiful headshots. If he could turn this into more, well, he's got a. Does he know this, this guy's behind? He's got to he push out it? aggressively. And oh. yeah, it's like what corner do you peek there? You don't know where he is. Yeah. You kind of just got to roll the dice. He if he'd that. been up the top of the ladder, maybe he could have won that fight. But if he was shooting just a bit more at the bomb side, the guy couldn't have. Uh, Put the, the diffuser yeah, down. maybe suppressive fire. Maybe I don't, I don't know. It was it was a tough one to call, but fair play to him. Got a couple of kills. Really nice headshots as well coming mm. through from him. But that is going to be five four in wow. favour of WTF. Now they can do it. Can they hold this defence? That's going to be the question. Because Got a fuse coming out for Sifu. We have like our, our solid squad of Smoke, Rook, and Frost coming out. Mm. We've got a Jaeger and a Pulse, the two kind of typical roamers. So. Very, very solid line of defense coming out from Warrior Team Frank. Honestly, this is kind of, in my opinion, probably the strongest setup on this map because Pulse is such close quarters that you can see so many people with yeah. Pulse. Obviously, Pulse is kind of one of those where 
can go either way. Very interesting point of use uh, for down here because it hasn't done anything for them at all. So it's it's interesting why they just keep going for it. Maybe, Maybe today's the day. Stubborn. Maybe today is the day. Could be just be, being stubborn with it. Yeah, I mean. This is the, the strategy that they entered the map with, though. So maybe this is kind of a, okay, we're starting to run out of plans here. We need to just get this round on the board. Let's go back to our default. Let's go back to what we know, what we've done so many times in matchmaking and in the ESR ladder. Yeah. And has won us rounds in the past. Like, obviously, it's been successful for them in the past, or they wouldn't be running it in Pro League. Like, there's no way that this is the first time they're trying it, you know? So they know how to do this, but... Is it going to pay off? Because like you said, it hasn't paid off so far in the Pro League. Mm. And the games that they've played against other teams, sorry, but it's not the same caliber as the Pro League. Yeah, that's very true. Picking a few little uh, walls there just to see if anyone's there. Never know, can get that lucky headshot. It's one down. Nice. <laughs> so Thatcher just going to clear both Thermite sites and then fully expect Ooh. Protax to... Shot right at him. Yeah, that was... A little bit unlucky, I think. Mm. I think he was maybe behind the that next flight of stairs, though. Wow. Yeah, he's guessing the stairs are there. Good, good. Uh, knock the thing there. is, he was shooting towards the left side of the stairs, so Zangdar would have been underneath. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Good knowledge. The row behind. Good knowledge. So, was actually it looked a lot closer than it actually was. I think he would have been hidden and protected by the uh, the stairs. Yeah. So once again, same strategy. It looks like both of them are doing the same strategy, pretty much. Yeah, I, well, I think those are kind of your your two spots that you have to get open yeah. thermite on this map. That's kind of your... Um, do Sifu uh, create the holes at the top of this place, though? I know that they fused it, but did they create the holes? I think they have. Not sure. Well, Junus created a hole in Zangdar's head right there. <laughs> Playing, doing his best Robin Hood, but instead of knocking the apple off his head, just puts one straight between the eyes. That is bad news for WTF, because they are one man down. They are one round away from taking this game, but maybe so could be pushed to second. Oh, but it doesn't. Four versus four now. So WTF, six, taking that kill yeah. for himself. Smoke, spotted one, uh, I think it's Blitz. Yeah. Look how unsure of this push they are now. They are like really, really well, yeah, it's taking this one slowly, and rightly so. Fuses not used any fuses, I don't think. Not not that I've seen. Here we go, Protax. He's got a diffuse kit. Ooh. Here we go. Just getting six. Just out. waiting for them it's to not push. Probably not going to fire at him. Is he oh, going to be able to find okay. shot? Interesting. Blitz can't quite get it though. Smoke out. Draws a smoke. Nice. This is nice. that disorientation. This is really nice. So now they can yeah, make their I way can. in, and no one from this A site can kind of get that suppressive fire down. Mm. They're not actually using it to get into locker room, though. I'm kind of surprised by that. Wow, nice. Charges in, gets wow. the flash, gets onto six. That's one for himself. Really, really Looking nice. for more oh my as, God, well. If he gets him as well. Is down in the He's corner. Gonna, just He's not him. found it just yet, but he has found it now. That's going to wow. be another one for Chiefy. That was big. That was huge. That was big. Two versus two, Ten though. Seconds. The rest of his team kind of went down Ten there. So. Seconds. Here we go. Blitz is down, but not out. And it's going to be Blitz easy loss. Out. It's all on his shoulders, wow. and it's and not going to be enough. WTF. Good managed stuff. to take that game and turn it into a one for one series mm. overall. Final score of 6 4. Absolutely insanely close between those two teams. Honestly, that last round really could have gone either way. It was down to the wire. Yep. Like, I, good stuff. Just really good. I don't even know what else to say. But I, didn't, I, I didn't realize the time again. Like, 10 seconds. What the way has the time gone? I know, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's again, like, when we mentioned Camp Can earlier, that's where it's like, oh my God, that's, that's where the mistakes could, yeah, come yeah, out. That's, that's, that's where it all kind of comes down. Especially for throwing food. smokes. And yeah. then you wouldn't even see the traps. That was so. really nice as well. The smoke play coming out. I think that's. I honestly thought that was going to make it. I want to see that from other teams now. Mm. Getting those smoke walls down that so that you really can take well. control of a different area. He but walked into a place with two people. Yeah, he certainly did. Well, I believe uh, Sean is getting ready on stage. He's going to be right. grabbing one of our winning players to have a little chat on stage. Yeah, And I mean, I mean, we've seen a lot of ties today. So I say winning players, but kind of both teams technically won. So it's kind of uh, which team is the winning player going to be from? Who knows? It's just to win a lot of solid play. Yeah. That's basically it. If, if you're both winning, you're both doing something right. Yeah. And that is going to be um, it's going to be good news for Sifu. At least they can get one 
one round on the board for themselves. Mm. They're now one and three, because obviously they got two owed by the G-Bots earlier. WTF, They've got they're one, now one, two one, and one. two. So they, WTF have now tied the G-Bots, who were one of our huge favorites coming into yeah, the entire yeah. tournament. So WTF, kind of a team that I at least personally had pinned to maybe be a bit of an underdog, yeah. have really shown that they can match up to the big dogs, throw the same punches and send some of these teams reeling. Yeah, definitely. Done very, very well. Like what I'm seeing. Okay, so Sean is ready on stage. We're just going to pass it straight on over. Have a chin round with one of the players. Thank you so much. I am here, standing here with a clearly dejected and not very happy Wilkie, but I had promised that we would speak for a second, and I did want to get your opinion. I know it's tough to talk, so thank you first off for taking the time. Talk us through that. Well, you, you could see his joke in the second map, but the first one was pretty solid, so... I thought we got it in the second one as well, but, well, things happen. Now, across the day, Everything has been pretty level pegged. We've seen a lot. You guys seem to do well first. We seem to get the, the, your legs back on you in that first one, but they just wouldn't go quietly. They came back in. W what does that tell you when you look at the, the state of the union in this Rainbow Six Siege Pro League? Mm, I, I didn't get the question, sorry. What do you think of the state of play now? We've seen the eight teams. They've come together. What can you deduce from, from, from today? Well, we have seen so many draws that... Uh, it's 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 really hard at the moment. Each team is sort of so close to each other, and the Mila game is so so new that it feels like it's it's cross paper scissors at the moment. That some teams tactics work against some teams, and some against that others it doesn't. So it's it it's weird at the moment because I, we told that there were clear best three teams at the moment, but. It's not the case at the moment. It definitely doesn't look like that. Now, obviously, you're not happy. I could see you at your, at your computer there. You, 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 you was tough to pull you away. And, and, and thank you again for, for taking the time to do that. But what do you do now? What, what do you say to the guys? You come here, you've come, played in this LAN environment. You've played in front of a crowd. You, you've, you've felt it. What's next for you guys? Well, next is to get back to the drawing board and practice hard and try to get better for the next game. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk. Again, I appreciate it. Go off, join the team. Guys, understandably not completely happy, but takes nothing away from the opponent who did a fantastic job. Lots of you guys to break down over on the desk. Thank you to you. Thanks again, Sean. It's nice to see some players getting so into what is effectively just week two of this play game. They have nothing to be ashamed of, though. Seafood 5 won in the first round. But we're going to dive straight into analysis, and we've been joined by Panics here from Era Esports. Thank you very much for joining us. You've had some phenomenal games yourself earlier on today. From the outside perspective, do you think Sifu could be happy with that performance? Yes, they lost that second map, but there was a lot of things they could have learned from it. Uh, to be honest, like uh, I think Sifu was like seed three, and they shouldn't lose to maybe uh, WTF uh, because this, it is going to be hard to go up in the rankings. Um, but it was a bit weird because uh, Jifu picked uh, Airford. Airford base, yes, they did. And um, WTF, uh, took WTF uh, Oregon picked map. Yeah. Oregon. But uh, Jifu beat. <laughs> well, yeah, Jifu won just, the Oregon yeah, map despite being yeah, WTF's and pick, and uh, Hereford base they lost despite being their own pick. Yeah, uh, it just nothing can happen. Like uh, everything can happen today. It's your first big event. We had yourself uh, been beaten by uh, TSM on Chalet, and uh, you, you can't say by advance online. Yeah, we have to win this. You just gotta win everything and. Rock your way out. Take care, guys. Let's uh, let's talk Hereford base because that's the first time we've seen it so far today. Uh, that basement bomb site, I don't think, surprised anyone. Everyone's getting in there. But as we saw, a lot of the attacking teams were still succeeding with that because it's it's so common and it's uh, so well practiced for everyone. I want to talk a little bit about the top floor bomb site, which we saw a couple of times, and Glass was incredibly powerful there. I know a lot of people consider this map to be very small and kind of anti Glass in his sniper. Punji, why do you think uh, Glads is so strong? Because he's got a couple of sniper spots, but there's only a few windows. Given the, uh, for the top bomb sites, I mean, all of the interior walls you can shoot through, every single one pretty much. I think there's maybe one little spot you can be in where you can't, but otherwise they can all be shot through, especially by Glaz. And when you have the, uh, what is it, that house, and yep. then the shooting yard little, I don't know, catwalk thing, those are two great spots where Glaz is a little exposed, not so much on that house, but on the shooting catwalk, definitely. 
Buddy can get some really good picks into those windows, and all it takes is him to sit there for a minute or two and have the defending team kind of forget he's hanging out still. And, you know, one shot there at below 50 health, so... Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of little overwatch puts, a lot of little there. Is there right. any uh, more niche mini things for Glass we missed there, or is it simply well, that uh, range is there? It's mainly this, but it's the moment where we see that it's Jifu who picks effort because no one wants to go on top. Uh, and it's weird that Jifu picked Glass because if you play against uh, a lot of teams who have worked effort, uh, you know that it won't be helpful because you won't go on top. It's so easy. It's the well, well this clubhouse too, but. It's the map you don't want to take the top uh, floor because you're stuck. Uh, you can't go anywhere with the rumors, mm -hmm. and the glass can do really good damage. That's why I was a bit surprised to see glass and to see this floor taken. We had one other first to come out on that map, our first cap can. We had a couple of theories as to why Punji stick our last few in a second, but ultimately he didn't end up being very successful. So on top of why you think he was picked, why did you think he not succeed? <laughs> That's a good one. I honestly couldn't really tell. I mean, it's it's a wild card with Capcan. He really is situational at this point. The lasers are very easy to see. The little bolt is very easy to see. I think he's a strong. He's strong in the same way that uh, Doc is, in the sense that he's got high armor and a great weapon. But as far as his ability goes, unless they get that time-sensitive press on, where they just have to walk into his traps, then they're pretty much useless at this. Especially in a, a pro-level play, people are going to see it. You know, you're not going to slip anybody up with it, so. Agree, disagree, panic, see something there? Yeah, I agree. The, the thing is, like, it's really rare to see a cap can, so it can be a thing to take it sometimes and maybe surprise someone. Plus, Jifu is playing with uh, the Blitz, yeah. and when you go around in the in the map, sometimes you don't see uh, where, where you walk. So when you go through a door, where it is, uh, you don't know if there is a cap, cap can, uh, you can surely go in and uh, get killed. Yeah, killed. so it helps slow those shields down because they can't necessarily no. see the doors quite so well. Let's have a quick look at our final matchup then. Epsilon Gaming versus TCM. TCM obviously opened the day against you. Yep. They've had all day now to prep. How do you think they're going to fare up against Epsilon? Um, <laughs> to be honest, like Epsilon um, had their first game against uh, I can't remember, Dead Flamers, uh, yeah. and they should have won 2-0, but that's like us. We should have won 2-0. Uh, I think that maybe they could go as we did uh, on the second uh, game. They could go 2-0 against uh, TCM. Are, TCM is a really good team, but I just mean Epsilon is uh, our French friends, uh, of course, but they are also really strong. And um, I think there's like four teams that can really go maybe in the high rankings and there are uh, people who work hard and have uh, really good skills. So I think it's going to be 2-0 for Epsilon, yeah. All right, we'll look for that then. We're going to run to another very quick commercial break, where when we come back, we're going to have our final game of today's Rainbow Six Pro League, Epsilon Gaming versus TCM Gaming.
Intel RealSense is all about changing the way we interact with computers. The way we interact with this game is entirely with our hands. It's a natural way to communicate. We want our computer to be able to sort of understand that movement because it's more human and more natural. Awesome. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to control, I'm surprised. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 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 <laughs> we use this camera to interpret natural forms of human communication like facial expressions. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Another cool thing we can do with a 3D camera is we can create 3D scans. We'll actually take this and we'll composite it onto a figure. I need to see what I look like as a princess.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are joining us once again here live from the Intel Extreme Masters Expo in Katowice, Poland, and we have been bringing you some glorious Rainbow Six Siege Pro League action. Yes, the EU teams, all later, them have duked it out today on PC, and they have been putting on a phenomenal show. Close, I hear you say. It's been nothing but close across the board. But like all great things, this too must come to an end. But it's not the end of the Pro League. Of course, there's lots more action. So of course, stay tuned. You'll be able to see everything going down as the days tick on in what promises to be an absolute battle of wits. And that's not all. There's the US Pro League on PC and of course the EU and North American Xbox One leagues as well. All going on, lots. The teams here are getting ready. I can see on this side the good people from Epic Epsilon, they are ready to duke it out one last time here. And standing in their way are TCM. They had the name change, but right now nothing's ready to change. The boys are getting ready, getting set up, which can mean only one thing. It is time for the last time for me to hand over to the people that throughout the day have known everything and have taken you into these matches. So for one last time, I say, Panky, take it away. Thank you very much again, Sean. Knowing everything's a bit of a stretch. I know I'm like I'm diamond rank, Most but there's things, a lot yeah. I can learn from these guys. Oh, diamond, whole... no, plat three. Plat three diamonds the same thing these days. <laughs> same thing, <laughs> unless you cheat, in which case you're miles up there in the diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically there, but this, these guys are still a whole nother level, and uh, that's true. that. But I want to touch on, as uh, Sean mentioned, TCM Gaming quick rebrand after qualifying. Epsilon actually did it too. Both of these teams were picked up by organizations after they're qualifying for the Go for Rainbow Six Pro League. So it's nice to see. Got to feel guys. pretty awesome. Yeah, it's got to feel great for them. Nice, confident boost. And not only is, yes, we just qualified for Poland. We're going to go and play in the, the Pro League. Yeah. These guys now think we were, we're worthy. We're going to pay them. We're going to support. We're going to get sponsors. Like, it's a nice big legitimizing factor. And I know personally, I was never a player, but like my parents were one of these groups that would always like, play too many video games, play too many video games. It's never going to get you in. Never going to get you in. <laughs> then I was like, yeah, so I'm going to go to uh, Germany. I'm going to go attend yeah. this event. I'm going to get paid to do this. I'm going to go watch people play video games. Like, huh. Maybe this is a legitimate <laughs> career now. Which I, I want to go to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So I know it's, uh, it yeah. helps with a lot of these guys. The in that helps them and helps other people in their life realize that it's a more serious thing and they can take it for, for sure. steadily and it's not just playing video games in the basement. So uh, yeah. it's, it's nice to see these uh, these smaller orgs helping and supporting these, these new leagues grow like that. Definitely. So we're still, of course, just waiting for the, the maps to come through. We can see the admins flitting back and forth between the teams as they're banning and choosing these maps on out. But so far today, we mentioned TCM opened up the day against Ara Black. They had a very strong showing against them, going one for one. We do have them as Hereford Base and House. So two of there our smallest That's maps good. that you've mentioned. Yep. love seeing teams and defenders my favorite maps, in and out. So we'll have to watch those. With, with that strategy in mind, with the jumping out of windows, going through the outside routes in a very short time, do you have that favorite Roma on this map? Is there or, or either of them for that matter? A favorite Roma? Yeah, favorite Roma to, to do that. Hands down. As Universally. Well. Always. Can't, can't. You can open the drop downs. The shotgun's basically expendable, remodeling ammo. You know, you have the, the best sidearm in the game that's arguably a great primary. It's, uh, it's fantastic for all of it. And let's run through these rosters again for you. Epsilon, Legends, Hanson, Ares, RCK, and Jack. They're on your screens once more time. We did see quite a big showing from Hanson on a couple of occasions using that bandit, which we could get again now in house using that potential uh, battery trick on these garage doors if there's mm -hmm. down there. One thing that I know a lot of people have noted is that how few players are actually trying that bandage. You're trying to deny these thermite charges to. Yeah, it today. seems to relatively be failed today, as far as uh, successfully stopping thermite. Seems to get them open every time. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm interested to see why exactly. These two teams, or all these teams are kind of ignoring that trick, whether it's just straight up they watch a few people fail and don't feel confident, or if they feel that they're respecting all of their opponents enough that they don't want to risk losing that player right. over just having to try this, to uh, save this a door. reach charge there. Right. So maybe we can dig into it a little bit more with some of these players afterwards and uh, figure out what it is there. Or as we mentioned, it's the Pro League. They're going to be playing a lot more game. Maybe they get exactly. more confident and try it again later. Two more months. Two more months. It's a lot of games. And there is TCM. El Tunisia, Nox, Panari, Storm, Lowblade, and Acid Rain, who I'd like to remind people has a his name backwards on yeah. the matchmaking ladders on Uplay. Which we definitely caught the very first time exactly. we read it and definitely didn't keep trying to pronounce it for the first two days. Our our sheets for the 
like last two days of prep have been Niar backwards Niardica or whatever it is, and then we switched to going live, and suddenly it's now Acid Rain. This makes it so all much makes more sense. sense. <laughs> this, is, this is this is lovely. We uh, just will jump over to Castle in a second, but we will go with a quick rundown. Hereford base was picked by Epsilon, okay. and TCM have picked House. All right. So that's uh, obviously the maps I knew, but it's interesting to take note of and see who prefers which of these two maps. Right, because we have had a few teams win on the, the map they didn't pick and exactly. lose on the one they did. What so. we just saw is if you were going 5-1 on the map they didn't pick, but then right. losing overtime on the map they did pick. So we'll see whether it's the same thing here if it's the other way around. But one final time for this evening, Joe Fenny and Joe. Aaron Ellis are going to take us through this final match. Thank you very much, guys. Our phenomenal analysts who've been plugging it away all day along with us. And we are here Plug ready it. to get into our final match. It is going to be Epsilon up against TCM Gaming in the first map. As they mentioned, it's going to be Hereford Base up. And that's Epsilon's pick, I believe. It is, yes. So, yes. I mean, we just did Hereford Base. We just saw that. I'm interested now to see whether we kind of have any diversity in the strategies because we It'll saw... It'll be interesting seeing what they do, yeah. Yeah, Thermite, like about. literally those same two walls every single round for, yep. for overtime as well. We saw 10 rounds of that exact same strategy. Do you think we're going to see something a little bit different coming out? Yeah, we could see uh, different bomb spots or anything, couldn't we? There's a, and, and the fuse, maybe it'll be used differently. Maybe we will see some fuse kills. <laughs> Never yeah. know. I hope so. I hope we start to see a little bit of strategic diversity coming on through here. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the House players. as well. Yeah, we do have House following. So kind of, these are the two maps that we dubbed as almost like the default maps. Mm, the the yeah. maps that I'm everyone seems to, to know. I am, I am looking the, forward to. The last to. Um, map of the day. Yeah, I'm looking forward to both of these as it is our last match of the day. Now we're going to be heading on into the action. So, Epsilon's pick first of Hereford be glass. base. And it looks like Going to be straight on into the action. It's going to be TCM on that defending side, and it's going to be Epsilon on that attacking side. Looks like they've gone for basement. We've gone for Glaz. So first round Glaz coming out. Interesting to see that one, especially considering basement is well open for your opponent. Glaz could possibly look in uh, through lockers if you make that hole, but you are once again kind of uh, hoping that the peak. Yeah, you're kind of hoping for that. I'm not sure if I just missed it, but there's no reinforcement on these Thermite walls that we've been seeing every single round that Thermite's been going for. There's a reinforcement on that first one, but that main oh, like, yeah. sort Why of uh, plasterboard that? wall is completely blank. So That is interesting. Thermite I mean, not even going to be needed. Maybe yeah. they know they're just going to break through, so yeah. just leave it and maybe reinforce somewhere else. That's yeah. probably what they're going for. Yeah, for sure. So like, what's leave, going to do? Leave those reinforcements, use them elsewhere, as you say. Here we go. Interesting. A lot of people make that hole. <laughs> like, exactly there. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an easy corner, too. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Got a little uh, Roma. I'm intrigued to see whether... It actually looks like Jaeger's the Roma. It's the first time I've seen that. Yeah, so Jaeger. I mean, Jaeger is a, a class that is very good at that roaming strategy. Because of the gun, yeah. I feel like Frost on this map is a fantastic roamer as well. But then I, think, I guess you do have long corridors. If you're going for the roam, you're going to have to fight people at fairly long range as well. So maybe the shotgun not best suited on this one. Yeah, yeah. It is looking like uh, Frost is becoming um, a roamer, like a, a known roamer. Yeah. Uh, as, as well as Pulse, as we've seen. And uh, as Punji said, Smoke, but that's like the classic yeah. starting roamer. Well, Storm is going to be able to find one for himself with that SMG-11. Gets the headshot onto one of those Epsilon players. Now, the attackers with just four players remaining. Not a fantastic start for Epsilon. That's going to be fantastic, though. For TCM, drones going to be coming on in. We get some nice intel off that, hopefully. We've got two people down there. One run, which says. Indeed, and that's going to be Storm in a position that we've seen many times. A lot of teams are going in the same kind. Oh, is it actually put up a reinforceable though this time? Panari did go down there as well. Panari has been one of these standout players for TCM, so... See what low bait can do here. Finds Rick, or Rock, or Rack, or however <laughs> I meant to say that. There's no vowels, so... Hansen is going to be able to answer those, so Storm goes down as well. This is just even trades back wow, and forth. Nice. That's another one though. It's for he and all of a sudden 3v2. Yeah, 3v2 indeed. And can they turn this into anything? Can they push on this advantage? He knows that there's I a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there was like a guy over to the left. He's actually taken down. So 
Might be able to get the diffuser what down. What's the bomb guy doing? Oh, come, someone's coming downstairs. Yeah, low bay. You need to watch out. There it is. That's the rain and a low bay answer immediately. It. What were you doing? Perfect positioning coming out of there. Now Why suddenly, did that happen? suddenly Hansen, the world on his shoulders. Mm. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> That is just like a kick in the teeth right there. Yeah. Gonna throw out that smoke grenade. 2v1 possible. Just to get to that diffuser, that's gonna be the key thing here. Mm. He should not have dropped that diffuser there. He he really uh, overextended yeah, it. Well, I, I'm not sure he wanted to drop it there. No, no, he died. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Just, just, just can he get this down? You need to go for the plant. They'll hear it. They haven't got time the to mess about. 13 Ooh, seconds. It. It's gonna look very nice. This is gonna get oh. on glass, but... Good attempt, good attempt. Yeah. Good first round. I, the thing is, he peeked over to the right and then looked away again. I don't think he quite noticed the fire, but then the MP5 yeah. coming into play. Splatters his brains all the way across that wall behind him. And that is going to be the first round going over to our defenders. Yep. I feel that the attackers could have had that one. I really do. The uh, the guy with the diffuser, he were overextended for no reason. He could have been in an air bomb and got that plant. There were yeah. no one looking in A-bomb. There were one person on stairs, he's not looking in A-bomb. And there were one person at B, and there were no... Did you see any murder holes? I don't think I saw any murder holes. Uh, I didn't necessarily see any. I don't know, maybe we just missed that, though. It, I mean, in all of the action and things, it can be... I'm pretty sure they could have gone A. Sort of I'm really sure of it. I think he just wanted to kill I, I do think A was... I think... Maybe earlier on in the round, if they'd used those smokes to wall off, like we saw in our last match, A definitely could have been... Had, Fairly easy objective to push in onto, but maybe they'll take advantage of that next time. Maybe they will. We'll have to wait and see as so the preparation it looks phase. Like, oh, is this? No, it isn't. <laughs> it's down, it's down in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, we are going to go back into the basement once more. Twitch coming out here. I haven't seen that much Twitch on this map. It's not no, been no, one of the, the main operators that we've been seeing here As on I Hereford said, there's base. so many different operators. You, you, like you just saw so many to choose from. Wow, the early oh, kill actually coming out here from Epsilon. Really nice shot from Rick. And that's the second time we've seen that, a fast kill from the windows. Yeah. If you think they'd be... Uh, the second time we've seen it in Pro League, but first time we've seen it on this map. Mm, mm. And that's something that these players have Got to nice be opening. aware of, have to be ready yeah, for. Yeah, you would have thought that. This is, uh, can he not see that guy? Is he just behind the lockers? He was just, just behind cover, I think. I'm just can't quite spot him out there. It's a nice spot back then if you can't see him. As long as they don't fuse and they can't fuse anyway, they don't have one. I think he's behind. He's behind locker, I think. Yeah, those lockers in the middle of the room. Mm. Yeah. I think I've been there a few times. Well, it's nice-ish, but it's really, really intense when they start pushing. Yeah, like it is. Because uh, the thing is, they come from all directions. Mm. That's the big problem you start to get, but... There we go. The See breach is coming is on two out. Two minutes, not doing bad. The defenders with a significant advantage here as well. It's five versus four, so that early kill really paid off. But as I you say that, four before. Caster's Curse comes in. Storm yep. finds one onto Jack. Storm represented the UK for us. Go on, yeah, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> the <Go> on. only guy. Don't we Just in garage. I'll never do a Welsh accent on stream again. I apologise. I only said two words, but I take them both back. <laughs> I don't think anyone even noticed. Maybe it was just me. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> Low bait finds a headshot onto Ooh, okay. Legends, and this is going to be as well him going down. So nearly get the trade. Hansen. This is going. Oh, That's another oh, one. Three oh, but he wanted the kill. Three. And because he wanted the kill, he's got the pickup. And now two versus wow. two. This is just trading back and forth, yeah, over but... and over again. But now Jaeger and Smoke versus Thatcher and Thermite. It would have been 1v3. But he, 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 he wanted the kill. Yeah. The hell? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, <laughs> there, there goes that drone, but that is going to be a kill. That for a while. Well, Low bait. I mean, there's so many out. things to like the maps and things like that. It's, it's hard to get rid of every bug, I think. Yeah. I mean, bugs I mean, happen they in, in every game. Yeah, Even do. games with, like billion dollar budgets you know yeah, you yeah, still yeah. get bugs coming out so it's not it, i don't think Ooh, oh really. pushed to his right unlucky man yeah that is gonna be i mean he was in a 2v1 it was, it was gonna be tough unless he managed to catch someone off guard there he but, was just running yeah just looking for a kill right there mm. and he's gonna be able to find it so as we move into our third round here tcm obviously managing to take the first one, but it is going to be equalised then. It's looking like uh, it's working for them at the uh, the basement. 
Yeah, well, like a strong defensive player. I mean, it, it is the winner. It you say that, fun. but now they've both wanted a defense on the basement. So whether he's working or not, they've got to move on out of there. Attackers That's very true. We'll and see. they go for the dummy. Interesting. Have they gone the... Uh, no, they haven't. Okay. Did they, oh, no, they have. They've gone for the glass. All right. This this is what I was picturing, because on this, with the glass, shoot for the windows, scare them. Um, it, it just it slows the movement, and when you start pushing from a different place, they could just go past that window bank, you know? Uh, especially, I don't exactly know exactly where the window is in this one. It's near... Mm, okay, it's, it's kind of in the middle of the... You see, like there, at the middle. You can look all the way down to A from it, and you can yeah, go to a building. That, yeah, so wall. people are going to like walk past there a bit because you, you have to go to that doorway. Well, the alarm descriptions. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Look at this. The middle. El Tunisimo or Tunisiano or... Mm. Here we go. This is what I was picturing. And look, he's looking through the... the uh, well, he's... He, he look for a different way. That's the one. That's the window I'm on about. Yep, straight through the middle. Break that open. Line of sight. That's exactly what I said. Yep, so blows a clip into those... Now we can chill. ...barricades. And as you say, just going to be able to hang out on yep. here. He's got both bombs. Just chill there. And now they can push. And if someone, uh, you know, moves past one of the windows... Yeah. Pop. Easy pickups, but also, also, if they get a bomb plant, that's very hard underneath to defuse. that window, exactly. Very yeah. hard to defuse. You're not wrong on that one, my friend, but two minutes. Fuse improve. And Classic players to fuse through that. Uh, not fuse, sorry, uh, fair mate. Yeah. Here we go. I'm, I'm interested to see. We didn't really see this kind of siege coming out on this top floor last game. Mm. Pretty much all in basements. So. It was, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious to see how they go about tackling this one because mm. it's not something we've really seen. I mean, it's something I've seen about four days worth of because, uh, well, it was Ooh, community this days. Could be a last good time. grenade. Yeah, very nice grenade. Don't get him. Mm. Did it down him? Uh, it downed him. No, yeah, it did get him down. That's so. going to kill. Uh, oh, what? Wow, that guy's lucky. What? <laughs> and someone like, just went into... Oh, oh no. Oh, what he needed to be watching. Is what, get what is going on? He needs to go to the window and peek that one, I think. This a Here we go. He's got a teammate over towards that other side. And here we go. Epsilon starting to he really take like these headshots out. Starting to so find their targets. Yeah. He that was silly does. pushing towards him, I think. Getting a drone to get a bit more intel. Acid rain. There he is. Another one. Down but not out. But... That's the power of Doc anyway. right there. That's the power of Doc. Picks going himself going back him, on, going to get him. on Very nice, got him. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Another couple of kills. And another round over to Epsilon. Good so, job, Epsilon. Epsilon. 2-1 mm. on the scoreboard. TCM. Very strong. Yeah. TCM going to be looking to try and this time be winning from that attacking wonder, side. So I wonder if Epsilon are going to be in the same position. Yeah. The dummy. We've seen so far... One attack and one defending win come out from Epsilon, defending the basement and then attacking mm. Dummy. And we've seen TCM defend that basement. Can TCM now defend Dummy if they do opt to go for that spawn? We'll have to see. Mm, it would take in a while to pick that uh, operator then. Yeah, they maybe debate in class possible potential options. Let's see but where they go. They are going Dummy? Yeah, it looks like yeah. Dummy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. again, same strategy coming out from their opponents. So, no glass this time. Mm. So you won't got that threat anymore. Although glass wasn't, I don't think. I mean, it's obviously the threat is there, but scared of that window. Kill wise, can... it wasn't a big. Yeah, yeah, it, it's all about the kills. I don't think. Um, and if they did get the plan down, you've got that one, you know, option where now you've got glass watching. It's pretty much GG. Yeah. Here we go. The setup phase is ticking on away, and epsilon setting up a veritable fortress here on the top floor of the Hereford base here in the United Kingdom. As I hear, I'm actually currently in Poland, so yeah, I tell a lie, but Storm is going to feel right. Looks like they're pushing for the uh, the same roof, as you can see. Yeah. And I uh, uh, Glasgow. They, they still can spray through, they still can cause that kind of fear, but it's just not as precise, you know. They still can do it with these guns, it's just, as you can see, it's not as... Yeah. Mags. You're not going to have that same accuracy as if you no, use a exactly. sniper with and, the and the damage and the damage. The yeah. damage is really high. The Going straight. Oh no. Okay. Being careful. Interesting. Is anyone even in the? 
I've noticed, like, on the last one, I don't think anyone were in B, and it looks like no one's in B again. So technically, could they just go straight to B? On I both mean, ones. maybe. The thing is, though, you don't really want to just go straight for the plant no, while everyone's still up. That's the big issue. But Storm finds the first headshot of the round. Very nice. Anson going to be going down from the side of Epsilon. So TCM find themselves an advantage as they push in towards this base. Oh, and Storm down. finds a second one for where himself as well. Where is he? I'd like to see where he is. Yeah, I'd quite like to see from Storm's point of view, but definitely. Oof. Right, in a bit of trouble there. Off there. Nice grenade goes out, and that wow, is going to drop him just... down. There's another one from Panari, and this is how you he storm the base right now. TCM really just pushing on through. I'd love to see from for his point of view for this last kill. Obviously, he's going to be the last man up on the side of Epsilon. Here go. Oh! Say, oh the bed <laughs> <laughs> onto Fenari. Not the end just of the world, them. but you so know. So you can't just go through there. <laughs> no, you can't. Indeed, that is going to be the trap. Rick finally going down. Storm looking for another kill. He's got a hat trick for himself. Can he find a fourth one this round? It's going to be for he. Can he? Yeah. Uh, Last man standing. Get every now. Storm okay. gets the fourth very, one for very, very nice, Storm. Wins four round. Wins round four with, with four, four kills. kills. So Hurry. fantastic <laughs> stuff from Storm. Really, really strong player and proving that they're in that round. Good stuff. So it looks like they're having uh, difficulty with the dummy. Yeah, I mean, two apiece, so... Mm. Yeah, the basement, obviously, it, cl yep. clearly, evidently, easier to defend yep. here. More practice, probably, as well. Yeah. It is the one you always go for, and uh, before, you didn't have to change, so they will win basement, 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 basement you know. Interesting that they are going to put Hansen on that glass, Defenders even though they know, together. they almost certainly know that it's going to be a basement again. We didn't really see Glass being used to great effect while it was basement in the past, so... Maybe they thought that it was going to be dummy again? Lapse of judgment? I mean, it could have been maybe like a preemptive for mind games or something like that, but I mean... No, like they might have just had a lapse of judgment thinking, oh, it, 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 they have to go back there. I mean, who knows? Maybe, I mean, it has been a long day for these guys. It yeah, has I been a very long day, that, so, so... That's why I'm saying it. <laughs> definitely, uh... Could be a bit of fatigue coming into play. It's You're not really long there. It has. <laughs> two right. days, two days in one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally. So, uh, I, I don't even know what time it is, but I think we're uh, we're pushing on. We're we're close to a, a literally a full At least half day of really casting. So. They, they have been really good games. Yeah, we have had some absolute corkers coming out, and I mean this one is not. Uh, being a disappointment either. Again, that little uh, panic call. <laughs> so many times. That same spot every single time. It's hilarious, it's just always there. Oh, did he see? Is there actually someone in there now? Low bait Is that there? Jaeger? I'm sure he just saw low bait there, but obviously didn't quite spot him out. Maybe it was through another wall and it just looked like it from the silhouette. Could have been, could have been. Could have been downstairs. Here we go. Again, so I'm I through, same gonna place. See Jack. So Actually, we're going to see the same strategy we saw yep. earlier on tonight mm. coming through. And we here. got Storm in back in the same place, the exact same place in that corner. And Storm with some phenomenal stuff in the last round. We'll see whether he's going to be able to kind of repeat that performance here. Interesting, he's gone to the same place though. Look at this. Maybe it just uh, gives him a good advantage there, possibly. Interesting position from Glass as well, just looking to try and... See, so this is what I thought, if, if uh, they were going to use Glass here, if they would do it from that kind of like, point of view. I want to see him poking through that hole where where Forhee is looking. Mm. Here, this is what I'm talking about, because you can see all the way down this corridor. Yeah. It's like such, such... But you can't see the, uh, the right-hand side where the other bomb is, and that's where the people are going to be. Yeah. But, but I mean, you can, if you can then take control of A, you can deny them entry across that corridor. We've got the class. Jaeger coming down. He was roaming. He's come back into position. The thing is, so. if they can get like a wall of smokes, like deny this corridor here and put one in the doorway to A, mm. and they can push in and take out Storm, there's not really any way that TCM can safely push They'd into that smoke. They'd have to run through some smoke, yep. They've got a minute. They're going to have to do something. Don't want to leave it to the last minute. They've got, um, they've got an OK defensive position right now. You need to break through that. Well, Storm has been spotted. Lobade finds one on two Jack. They, know Storm, they probably know Storm's over there last time. Yeah. There's gonna, they're gonna just peek, peek, peek. Go so so I it. mean, that's one of the spots that we've seen someone yep. almost every round, but that's almost the double. Frost just about gets away with this it. Tunisiano does really have shot. that shotgun, though, so I don't know if this is a fight he really three. wants to take. Gets him into. Oh, oh, TCM oh, still two men. Fun. The bear trap comes into play, wow. though. 
And one of the players still playing that glass. Oh, oh he very drops nice. him down immediately. Hansen on the glass on with one. that sniper. And now. Where's that medic? There he is. But look at what can he do? HP. Mm. If Doc can find this I mean, is pretty he's much got a one on one. A single stray bullet Don't will take out Hansen. Don't let him plant. As soon as they plant. Let's play this so, so carefully. He's kind of giving away his position, though, right there. Okay. And it is good. Very oh, nice shot. Nice headshot. And this guy's planted. He knows it. One versus one. Here we go. MP5 oh my God. going on to oh Epsilon, no. but he can't find the target. Such and that, that is going to be the headshot coming out. Epsilon take another round for themselves. So, 3 2 now. Epsilon with the advantage. Mm, such a pair. And this is a this is such a close game between is, these yeah, two teams. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is one of, I, honestly, I think in terms of like each round going pretty much to the last player each and every time, except for maybe the attacking rounds on dummy. Also, that was the first time uh, that defense has been broken, I believe, from the basement. Was that the attack? Defenders oh yeah, the attacker team won, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. They, so they, actually, you're they right. defender defended, attacked, attacked, and then boom. But that the, does uh, mean the attack on, on the bottom. The TCM, if they win this attacking win. round, they can go back to the basement again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And they can afford, uh, like, even if they lose this round, they can still go for that basement once. So more. basically, um, Epsilon, they kind of uh, adapted to the push. Yeah, and they good. understood Storm were there because he was in the same place. He needs to move from there. I, I'd say he needs to move from there because they were always going to always be there. And I, I mean, I, I criticised the fact that they brought a glass when they were going against the basement, but I mean, did they, well. they straight did up well. proved me wrong yep. in that round. It was very, very effective, I mean, and we saw him take down a couple of players single-handedly. Glass is a fantastic operator. It's just that he can be even better than Fantastic on yeah. different maps and different situations. So even when he's just being an operator, not on his, you know, optimal place, he's still a really, really good operator. He does massive damage. He certainly does well. to Garage here. Twitch, unfortunately. We saw... Can do that? Judiciano. Wait, has he, can he make a hole there? Wow, oh, I wow, did not know that. Gap. That is interesting. And I don't think he knew that, and he's out well, there. Yeah. <laughs> So I do not like this one bit. Now, does he know that he's scared him enough to make him actually drop? Because if he does, he can get in quick. Watch out for the trap if there is one. I'm not no, sure he would have heard it, though, because there was a lot of um, spraying going on, a lot of explosions and things yeah. elsewhere on the map. So in those kind of situations, be, uh, it's much harder to hear those footsteps. It's not really the, the hearing. It's kind of just the um, the, the, the guess. Yeah. Like, you're like, you've shot him a lot. And has he panicked or has he stood his ground? Wait to find out. Well, it's already in, so there we go. There we go. Going to be looking around, trying to find those defenders. He's going to spot a couple over at B, but he's going to get taken out. I don't know if he saw the second one. We he saw the two threat, at B. obviously. Oh, yeah, that's true. He, know, he knows definitely saw one for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think he did see the second one. I'm not 100% though. It is still 5v5 with one minute further. Hmm. Well, a lot, a lot of kind of like feeling, <laughs> but uh, no real, this like, is, no real push. This is one of the slowest rounds we've seen coming out. Not a single kill. I think kill they know that they want it. Like they, they, they yeah. know that they need this one. Oh, you're gonna be able to take that one. On to Storm. And Storm has been one of the big players here for TCM, so that's kind of a big one deal down for them. TCM. His Sledge as well, who's going to be pretty crucial, but Very nice. really nice shot comes out from Tuniciano. It did get hurt. That aggressive push. He knew that. They'd retreat oh, yes. away from this point. Close to 50 seconds now. Here we go. As you say, 50 seconds on the clock. They're starting to run out of time to play with here. TCM on the attack, but they have the man advantage, yeah, and they're going to find Very another nice. advantage for themselves. Just Bandit and Doc remaining. Hands near uh, Hanson. Yeah, he's just going to have side of that too. wall, but I think that's it's kind of important. He's got the, bot, uh, the diffuser. Oh, bit of a. I don't know. I, I I don't really agree with that run out. Pan and Hansen are still there. really close to each other. What is what was Pan going to do? Jack's been spotted. He's on about Very one nice. HP. Does go down. Is he, dog. Yeah, he's able to pick himself up. Him, and he gets out of it. But his teammate dropped in that time. Hansen is off the map. He knows he's there as well. One. And it's 14 seconds. Well, you say that. But he's got it. The diffuser <laughs> has gone down. So now. Very nice. It's the story of the retake. One versus three. Jack. They know where he is already because he already went down once. Is he going to be able to take this, though? Charges on in, and actually, there's no one else in the room. Suddenly, yeah, he's in the diffuser room, 
but they can hear it. It's it. right next door wall that can be blown apart right now. And yeah, I mean that it would have been hard. He had to do that. He did have to do that. Yeah, and again, it's one of those we've said it time and time again. You charge out in that situation. Which corner do you look at first? You just Very don't fast. know where the player is going to be playing yeah. from. And <laughs> right in front of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. But it, yeah, it would have been really hard. Hiding Very in plain play. sight right there. But it Thor. is going to be. Jack, unfortunately, losing out of that round, and it three, is going to be 3-3. Three, three. One both defences, one both attacks. And then one nice. both attacks again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe both defences again. <laughs> Young dummy. Oh, to see. I'll... Very interesting. Very close. Mm. Very strong teams. I, yeah. I knew and these two would be strong. Very, very close match teams, I think. Mm. That's the key thing here, easy. is that this is... I think honestly, we'll see good things from these two teams. I just have, I have a feeling for some reason. Like, at this point in the game, having watched six rounds so far, I can't actually say who's going to take this, because I just don't know. It is... Well, it's 3-3. It's free free. <laughs> every single round, it seems to go down to the very last man as well. Yep, and every single time, when one wins the attack, the other does. When one wins the defense, the other does. So it's, it's completely like... We could, we could be looking into uh, multiple overtimes at this rate, to be honest. <laughs> but we'll see if one of the teams can. So fall. where are they? They are... OK, they're going to go basement again, aren't they? Yeah. And I mean, why not? I would expect both teams to go basement here, because yeah, I mean, the they lost the defenses, so yeah. you can just go back to that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good place. And they lost the uh, the dummy one, and they've actually won uh, one on the basement. So it is the, the one they have actually won one defense yeah. in, so... Let's see what goes on. Let's see if they defend it this time and see if the others can. It's almost like they're having to follow each other, doing the exact same things. Yeah. Well, they're one round each Pulse. away from overtime, in which case they'll be swapping around. So instead of it being kind of uh, TCM following Epsilon on the defense. Is Storm in the same place? He is in the same place again. <laughs> and I mean, but you've got to have someone in that room. So yeah, why, why not have it as the same player? He's going to know the spots. He's going to know when they're going to push in. So, But you know there's going to be someone there. That's the all. Well, he's changed it. his position. Look at this. Kind of, right yeah. up next to the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he might be able to see them uh, when, they, when they come closer. Let's see if this works out for him. Oh. Jack is going to spot him out with a drone. So <laughs> I don't think it is going to work out for him. <laughs> and he might just go back to the corner now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think they do have the advantage in that corner. Yeah, I mean, it is a good corner. You can set up one of those shields, oh, but actually, out. nice play from Storm. Very nice. Gets him is down. Is that Lovren finishing him? Oh, Again. you should, though. Down. Is he going to pick his moment? Out. Might be picking his moment. It, the thing is, he's now pinned by glass. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, that oh, well, was... Half health, it's okay. That was risky. Uh, you say half health, he's down to blinking red because... Hansen, with a nice shot on glass, did manage to tag him, I think, ah. in the shoulder there, so... Oops. It's going to be bad news for Storm. Oh, no, I meant the one who were downed half health. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, so we actually did that much damage to him. I didn't realise. So Storm now. So that's a bad trade. Yeah, not feeling all too great off the back of that one. Got one roamer upstairs. Oh, look at this. So, so slow and calculated from TCM. They do not want to do anything crazy. And Epsilon on the attack here. God, it's so even. It's fa oh, there we go. With the first kill. Okay. Jack oh, opens God. it up. He's looking for more as well. He's trying to find extra players. It's Legends here playing from that Thermite spot on the sledge. As she goes in through the normal corridors. They've got a lot open here. They know that they're down here. Murder hole to his right. Maybe can find a spot to look on through. He knows that Acid Rain's in there. He knows Stop someone's it. in there at least, but he can't quite find the shot. But look at this Epsilon starting to sweep up. Two members remaining. Rook goes down. And now it's only Doc. He's going to try. He's even going to get the bomb down yeah. as insult to injury. Uh, that is going to be Epsilon. As well. Yeah, I mean. Two knives. <laughs> <laughs> that right there was kind of, OK, time to go for this push. We know where Fine. they are. We, okay. We've got their number. Let's just walk on through and get these headshots, get the knives, and get the round for ourselves. So Another four, win on three, attack. two, Epsilon now. Once again, they have to shadow. They have if, to get that attack. If Epsilon can defend this basement, I'm assuming they're going to go basement. Yeah. They walk away with our first map here. Which is a big one. It certainly is, and they're going to be moving on to house with the advantage. Now, let's, let's remember see. that in the Attack overall the standings, both of these teams are 1-1. One, one. So this is absolutely crucial that they at least take one win each in terms of their, their yeah, kind yeah, of standings, because yeah. you don't want to be down at the bottom of the scoreboard with that 1-3 scoreboard, Definitely not. along with the Attack Flamers. Like, that is literally the last place you want to be going to. So 
and we will see. That's one of the things as well, because it's so, so close. It feels like it should end 1-1 one, one between these guys, but when it's this close, it easily can go 2-0 just because of the nature of a coin flip game like this. Well, yeah, it could just be one team yeah, happens to edge it on those last two rounds and... Can they can they win the attack? You know? Can they, can they keep mooring? Because it's literally, it's like almost like catch-up. It's like, they win one, you need to win that. They defend one, you need to defend it's that. Like it's like sudden death. Like, From this point on, in fact, it is sudden death. It's like it, yeah. <laughs> it's been like that nearly all the way through. It's yeah. going to be complete mirror. Complete mirror. Okay, it is looking like it's the basement once again, as predicted. Oh, do they know it is? Yeah. I guess it's just We've seen very little long. roaming, actually, from the defensive sides when it comes to the basement. We've kind of sometimes seen one player one leaving. One person usually uh, on the last one, the uh, the Jaeger, but they usually all pushing back after they've run for a bit. One thing we haven't seen it. basically any of, we've seen it like once, maybe twice in the Pro League, is peep defenders going outside the building, mm. like going for those aggressive lines, which I'm quite surprised well, at how little of that we've seen. Yeah, but. Once you're out for about two seconds or something, now you get spotted. You get spotted. Really yeah, you do. Now, so. But I mean, in in spots like this, for example, you know there's going to be people here. If you come out one of those top windows and just quickly poke out, maybe find yourself a headshot but and then jump back noticed, in. There is usually people around where yeah. they would come out. They usually clear a bit of the first uh, and then push back. So that's probably why. Well, speaking of clearing, Al Tunisiano going to find the first kill. Oh, he so. Bad news for Epsilon if they're looking to end this game soon because uh, mm. once again yeah. the mirror is happening. <laughs> it certainly is, and they find themselves an advantage, but they are still attacking, so they have to go into all the traps that drops down. Epsilon have set for them. Storm going for it, push him. What's going to happen with Storm? There we go. He's going to be looking oh, for the kills, and he is going to go hit. down. It's going to be Rick finds a headshot with Even that SMG. Four, four. There you go. So, as you say, 4-4 four, four on the board, but El Tunisiano finds nice. another one. And he's looking to turn this to a TCM victory a nice if position. he can. This is a nice position. Work with the famous Panari as well, and now suddenly there's just two defenders left. Jack wow. is going to get found out, and it's a hat trick coming through for Tunisiano. Really three headshots and, and three kills. Panari again. gets his second one. There attack, we go. Attack, defense, Overtime defense, it is. Attack, attack, def no, and yeah, attack, attack. Wow. Yeah. So crazy. Just keeps going. Trading rounds and trading rounds, and here we go. Overtime. <laughs> this time swapping over. So <laughs> we're gonna see. I don't. I don't know if it's like both are like. No, I think it's, they did win it's defense, Epsilon defending again here, isn't it? No, uh, I'm wrong entirely. It's Epsilon yeah, yeah, attacking they're again. Sorry. So we'll see whether they can. Because uh, yeah, it was the defenders that won. That's that's why I'm getting yeah. confused here. Doc coming out, Frost. We haven't seen a whole lot of Frost. So let's see if TCM can get the first one this time. So Epsilon have to fall. Let's we'll see if that happens. So it's going to be basement again, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to mix it up and go for basement. <laughs> yeah. Never seen this close. Yeah, we know. Preparation phase. Just going to be setting up the bunk. It is important. It is definitely important, but it's usually the same kind of thing. So once you've said it once, it's like, can't really say it again, can you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, oh, especially when you see Baseman every single round for <laughs> not just this match, but also the match before as well. Yeah. Kind of running out of uh, things to mention in terms of pointing up the barricades in Baseman, because it's kind of the same. It usually is. Yeah, they put up the... Uh, Run on down. Storm going to go back into that little corner that we've seen him. Actually, take a look at that. Seen a little bit of a stack over towards the A side. Hmm. Which we didn't see. Oh, yeah, nice Maybe spreading out though. Yeah, that's one of the drone spots that's quite hard to get to. But if you can get up you there, get some nice intel. It's essentially like having a move in CCTV. Mm, very it's nice. Fantastic. Yeah. I wonder if they've made that little hole thing again. Well, yep. <laughs> yeah, there they, have, they have gone for that. <laughs> and they're going to be spreading out a little bit. So we're not going to see that A stack that we maybe suspected. <laughs> that, that hole. Would have been nice to see a little bit of a. Variation, but so Storm's still back in that one uh, room. Kind of premature smoke there. Attackers have dropped yeah. the bomb diffuser. The smoke gonna throw out that snot cloud. Mm. We'll slow them down a tiny bit. Get ready. See, Storm's back in there. They know it because he's always there. Or do they? That's pretty scary. Oh. Yeah, they know it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're aware. They might again the same uh, kind of standard. Look at that fuse. We've not really seen Fuse um, ever since. We saw it a couple of times on the first. Wait, I don't think we saw one kill with Fuse. 
No. He will. Nope, nope, nope. It Low bait finds a headshot though. TCM find themselves on the board. Oh, and this no. is from the defensive side. Mm. We've pretty much seen the attackers ahead when we've go been going for the basement here. For the Vovo start. Yeah, exactly. So fingers crossed we see a little bit of change down. of pace here. Storm does go down, but has a teammate nearby. He's gonna get him. So should be Tunisiano heading over there to pick up his teammate and does do so. So TCM still with uh, a good amount of people. And it was Just Tunis the one looking uh, down the peak hole. In fact, well, created. I think it might have been Acid Rain ran across and got the, the Stim Pistol pick up because he looks like he's on 75 instead of uh, 50 HP. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. So they have broke through. They know he's there. <laughs> yeah. But can they do anything about it? Uh, was that a team tag right there? Sure. I They've think... got some really good ideas where they are. Oh, oh, low right oh, oh nice shot comes out. Tunisiano immediately answers though. Mm. One for one once more. And that is only going to go the way of TCM there, now. Four versus oh, two. Can... Storm goes down and Epsilon immediately answer. Two versus two, two now. Versus two. Rook Dot versus Sledge. And Thermite. He's going to probably go for the Diffuser. They immediately back away again. But they, they have the plant. A side locked down, if, surely here. Can, can he plant it here safely? Acid Rain watching across. But he's getting Very a spot nice. out. Oh, can he plant hello. the final bullet? He does do so. And Good there stuff. we go. Epsilon. Stuff. That looked like it was surely a TCM round, but Once Epsilon again. really pulling it out of the Once bag. Again. Is there going to be a <laughs> Are they going well, to do attack again? It's, it's like ever since they um, they did good defense, it's like they know how to attack now. Both yeah. of them. <laughs> it's like, you know, can't defend I, it anymore. This I, is the thing. Like, if you know how to defend this super well, you know exactly what is going to be in the way of you getting that defense as well. So you you automatically know how to go for that attack. I wonder if... Uh, who would it be defending? It's Epsilon. I wonder if um, they go for the second floor or the third floor just to mix it up because every yeah. time they've gone the bottom, they've lost it now. And the same for uh, TCM? Nope. So, am no, I... the, no is the no, answer. No, still the basement. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, 10th <laughs> round here. Here is the preparation. <laughs> Epsilon, if they can <laughs> defend this, they take the first map. But it'll be interesting because um, so far, if the rest of the game is anything to go on, then TCM win this round. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll have to see. Yeah. Still just in that preparation phase. So fingers crossed. Gonna, I mean, at this nice point... Nice little uh, trap near that window, if you saw that, with Frost. At this point, I'm starting to not really mind who takes it. I kind of just want to start to see House now. I want to start <laughs> to see who's moving on to this next map, because this is, so, this is clearly, like, at this point, in my head, this is just pure even between these two it teams really on is, this map. Yeah. And I want to see whether that's just a matter of Hereford base or whether that's a matter of mechanical skill between these players mm. and mechanical or just like team coordination, like whether we see on another map. Because obviously this is Epsilon's pick. Mm. So Epsilon, they're going to be wanting to win this one. Yeah, definitely. TCM picked House. So yeah. House then is going to be... Technically, it should be stronger for them, yeah. Yeah. But again, it's been so, so even for Epsilon's pick. Is that going to be the same for TCM's pick? Or is it suddenly just going to be swinging and TCM managed to take a big advantage? Well, It'd be interesting if the next map someone just takes it 5-0. <laughs> It'd be like, oh, OK. Yeah, well, <laughs> came out of And there we have it. <laughs> but that's so once it. again, slow, 5-5. Yeah. Five, five. Definitely, uh, definitely careful. Yeah, so one... they, they need to win this attack, don't they? One minute of the round has passed. Nothing's Typically, really we don't see too much in the first minute anyway. All depends. Yeah. But depends yeah. on the map. On, on this map, uh, with these two teams uh, on the basement, yeah, definitely. It'll be once we start getting one past that 130 here. point, that's where you really start Let's to go see for a bit of a guess. Off. Good cook. Oh, Jaeger gets it. That would probably have been a kill. Shows you how important Jaeger is. He has got That would have been a kill. Possibly. Unfortunately, if they thermite there, you get a nice look. Oh, Storm gets taken out by a nitro cell wow. from Rick, and that is going to blow this defense open. And actually, all the attacks, in fact, yep. immediately traded back by Lobade, though. There's about a million grenades thrown on in Lots by of Did any of them get in? He's going in, oh, but he's, he's not behind it. Epsilon <laughs> managed to. Oh, Rick, sorry. Finds his second kill of the round as well. Four versus three. Actually, the Epsilon the defense, attacks. yeah, looking pretty he knows strong. There. Legends and he waiting, and he does get popped. But he did get flashed just as that happened. Is he safe? 
And there we go. Lobe traded straight back across. And look oh, at this. It's looking good for Epsilon. Two versus two. one now. But he immediately gets, one gets it down. There's one coming. Can he turn this into one v one. an extra Is overtime? He's looking for the headshot. Panari, we've seen oh, a few crazy things, but Bordy oh is going to get it. TCM, <laughs> even the scoreboard. 5-5. Five, five. And wow. uh, what a matchup between these two teams. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Round three go, of go overtime here. On defense. It might work. Yeah. What have you got to lose? We've got to change up the strategy, maybe. <laughs> oh, I mean, the thing is as well, if you change up the strategy and it falls through and then they don't, you just shot yourself in the foot. So it's but kind of, can you've you always be the been team winning. You've always been in winning first. attack, though, haven't you? So are you losing anything, really? Well, that's going to be the question. We're going to start to see some players getting into okay. the double figures. I don't really want to wow. shout it out as much as I have in the past because... Double we're figures? In, yeah, we're into uh, second overtime here. So, well, it's not second overtime, but, you know, yeah. kind of... Essentially, second sudden death, I suppose. Bomb um, located by so once again, basement, because that's worked out so well. <laughs> Round eleven here, and same setup. If I'm <laughs> not mistaken, it's the longest game of the pro league. Really? In terms of rounds, we might have had one other game that Ten went rounds. five five. <laughs> But I'm pretty God. sure a single overtime has That's resolved each and every game. If both attacks were again, <laughs> they both pick basement again. We're going to be here in like two hours time. 26-26. <laughs> wow. All right. I guess they're just really confident in basement. Yeah. Just wait until we get house, mate. Just wait until. I want to see some of the, um, you know that on house, when you get to kid's bedroom, you throw that early grenade in. You can so often get kills with that grenade. I want to see whether we see that over in kids' bedroom. It'd be interesting what we see just on the uh, house in general. I, I mean, I can kind of picture what they're going to do on garage, but when it goes higher up, what bomb are they going to pick? Are they going to pick uh, kids and yeah. master? Are they going to pick, uh, I think it's kids and uh, construction. I think there's them two, but you can pick from. I think. Yeah, it's like, how do you choose to play that one out? Oh, and he came out. Storm. Last time. Yeah, he it's did this before. It paid off last time. This it's time, to not so much. I, I, I feel it that place. Like, I'm even expecting it. I know I can see through walls and things, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Tuniziano going to step into the A room. So, Storm being replaced immediately. Once but... again, attack is winning. Yeah. Well, we'll see if they can keep that up. It has typically been Epsilon that even from the back foot have, win, have won these attacking rounds. That seems to be really their forte. Tag does come out onto Tunisiano there on the frost with the grenade, but can't actually get him into that it. down state. Oh, Gets nice down. shots onto Acid Rain. That is going to be important huge, kill that. but Acid Rain did get handsome as well. It's going to be three oh, versus three here. He just came out as well and didn't protect him. Tunisiano finishing is he going to go for it? He's in a nice position here. He doesn't need to... Might be able to push a different way. <laughs> Sees the body and immediately the reactions you see yep. coming out there. He looks right at his head. Yeah, but the... Uh, it's through the reinforced wall, yeah. so... He knows he's there. Is he a shotgun? Is Definitely just got heard. Definitely just got heard. This so. is risky. This is a frost, isn't it? It is frost, so. Oh, this is not... Good. Unless he just, like, snaps Hello. to the head. Wow, oh, he, he was looking the wrong way. <sighs> he was looking the wrong way. I think he was looking at, uh, at the other door. And you can see, look, a player on the stairs, that's why he was looking the wrong way. He knew that there was this another been threat been coming out. That could Low have been, been it. That is so unlucky. Going to be kind of a crucial play here for plant. TCM. They can just plant. Where so is Rook at this point? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, see he's near the ladder. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's yeah, in, yeah, okay, yeah. he's in the ladder room. Huh. So he's going to have that good shot across. This one at stairs will even oh, more that. Oh, bait comes on in and Very turns nice. it to a two versus oh two. My finds God. a second one for himself. One left. He's looking to clutch this one himself. He oh, finds the last man it. and Lobade oh, gets the triple. Lobade pushes TCM onto that sixth round win. Very, very nice. And on the defence, we finally see a basement victory. <laughs> Can Epsilon answer? Oh That's God. the question. Please. <laughs> 
Well, at least we've seen some variation in terms of results here, because we've seen a lot of attacking wins in a row right there. Now we've seen a defensive win. Lobade making that happen almost single-handedly there with the triple kill at the end. And we're going to see Epsilon talking strategy here. Mm. Or maybe talking headsets, not 100% sure. I don't even know. Or is it a new game? Is that how it works? I've never gone to this all the time. This I've, far. Got, I've got to say, <laughs> I haven't been this far into over time. So maybe that was... Was that TCM taking the whole map? It in might fact? have been. I think it might I have mean, been. I mean, it was a... Yes! Aha! Yeah, so TCM, ah. we've had it confirmed. TCM yes, did take the map, yes. so it was three rounds of overtime. Wow, okay. So we don't have... Uh, we don't get to see the Crazy million round overtimes <laughs> or anything, so... Yeah. Okay. Good okay, stuff. So wow. Brand new map. We're moving on to house. So TCM now. 2-1 in our bracket, taking the game against Epsilon, and yep. what a game it was. And Ridiculous it was. It just, just going. Yeah. Go and go let's go bear in mind, go yeah, go. that was Epsilon's map pick, mm. and TCM took that in the end. Now, TCM moving into their own map pick on house. Mm. Let's see. In theory, should have the advantage, but... Yep. Again, this is one of the maps that we expect most of the teams to have strategies I down I think for. this was in the beta as well, House. Maybe yeah, it was, alpha. yeah. Yeah. Uh, the maps in the beta and alpha, I feel, probably will have the most experience. Yeah. So it's a lot of people will be used to all them, like, you know, uh, Her Hereford, House, um, uh, Consulate. Yeah. Yep. Well, they're going to be heading onto the server in just a second. And I mean... If I were these guys, I would not be rushing into anything right now because last game of the night, last map of the night. Yep. And I mean, these guys, I'm pretty exhausted. These guys must be <laughs> beyond exhausted at this stage. We're going to be loading into the map. We're going to be getting into operator select. You can see on your screens there, picking up spawns, picking up the operators. We're going to be heading into the last match of the night. It is Epsilon Esports Here we go. against TCM Gaming. TCM 1-0 in this series, 2-1 in the bracket. Epsilon now 1-2. They're looking for this tiebreaker. They're looking to match this up at 2-2. They do TCM not want to be down in those bottom rankings tied with that. Flavors. Let's see if TCM can follow that win, though. Must have been a good feeling that after yeah. them that many rounds. And this, if TCM can win this, they're tied first place. I did think TCM had potential, so yeah. we will see. I, but I do think Epsilon do too. So I think we're seeing two really good matches here. Uh, two really good uh, teams. Sorry. And if TCM win as well, we're gonna have that UK player up in that top spot. So yeah, yeah. One, one uh, UK player. representing <laughs> UK esports, our only <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> Six player. Yeah. Hype. Oh wait, is this, um, they're not upstairs, are they? Oh, they are. I think they're okay, in the bedroom so and... Uh, I've just, I've oh, just okay. had confirmation from production. If TCM can win this 5-0, they're ahead in round difference as well. So they are straight oh, up wow. number one in the league. 5-0 five five zero zero is a tall high, order. Yeah. It's uh, definitely yeah, not going to be something got easy. Got already looking up. Oh, yeah, it's their map pick though. Yeah. Nearly got that yeah, shot yeah. there. So, so Look at that, immediately sprints away, like, do not want to be here. This did he, did is not a spot. He didn't tag him. He didn't tag him, no, but clearly saw the nice bullets flying though. on through. That's a quarter of his ammo as well. He just sprayed through that shot, through that window. Just hoping Scary. for wall bangs. Hoping yeah. for wall bangs right there. But, I mean, let's talk about this map, because we haven't seen House for a little while now yeah. today. It's, it's interesting that they've uh, gone upstairs. I would have thought they would have gone to the bottom, like most maps. Yeah, it I mean, like the more, the, you know, the more defensive, uh, easy to defend kind of place. Master bedroom is uh, relatively good for defending. In I think kids' bedroom. Oh, in is fact, really we're not bad. even. No, no, it's, it's kids and uh, control. Yeah, it's not even in master I think bedroom. Kids I'm is thinking quite a bad one to defend. They will have made some murder holes uh, from the uh, closet of master bedroom, uh, looking in possibly. But uh, still, I don't think it's that. Nice. I think one thing as well you got to bear in mind is if it's easy, if it's hard to defend, it's hard to keep that diffuser down as well so it's kind of it does go well, both ways well you can go on the uh, uh zipline things the, the grapple things so once you're planted you can go outside yeah. and you can watch it that way so i think it is actually easy to defend as the attacker but uh we'll see we'll yeah, see I we'll mean, see how this yeah. goes 
An aspect I didn't really One think about there. Panari finds the first kill of the entire game. That is going to Once again, one minute, only one down. Yeah, well, Hansen immediately taking a second one just to prove you wrong right there. Yeah. That's Glass coming into play from that crow's nest. Look at that, or oh, treehouse, I think it's called, in fact, not crow's nest, but <laughs> depends who you ask, to be fair, with call outs. Like. Crow's nest is like a parrot thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, it kind of <laughs> look, looks like a crow's nest, I guess. It doesn't look like a treehouse. That's very true. So, <laughs> I don't think it looks like you can't that. pull that one out on me. Oh, beautiful little leg shot coming out from Hansen there. Does finish did off that player. No, I thought he just got that wall yeah, back as well for yeah. a second there, but. It's looking really strong go. for Epsilon right now. He certainly has three versus two, but Hansen what goes down. There? Nice oh, shot coming out from yeah. Tunisiano. That's a double kill for him. And all of a sudden, 2v2. Yeah. And I mean, 25 seconds. This is honestly absolutely neck and neck between these two teams. Look at this. Thatcher now has to go out to try this. and get that diffuser. He's, he's got some intel saying that someone shot him from there. So Storm he's finds out. one. He's the last man he's remaining. Got, oh my, he's got 10 seconds and he's got the diffuser. Oh, he's got to go in. He, he's got to go for yeah, something yeah, right now. Yeah. I think he's out of time. Five Four, uh, three. He has to plant the second he's in the window. Zero uh, seconds and he doesn't oh, have time. Oh, oh, oh. That is... That is heartbreaking. Yeah. Not a great way to lose a round. To be honest... To be, even if, if he got the plan, it, it wasn't going to get it, was it? They probably like, would have shot him. You saw Tunisiano charge you around the corner with a shotgun blaring. You shouldn't be uh, holding yourself that like you spent a bit too long there, I think. Yeah, I think... Well, I, I think, I think the, um, a big thing there was the fact that we saw Glasgow go down. Hansen was a key member there. He was holding the bomb. And then the bomb got put in just the most awkward position outside of the base. They had to run so far around just to get that. Yeah. And then, when they were getting that, suddenly became the last man standing Attack as well on top I th of I it think, all. I think uh, when the diffuser does drop, it really does hurt the team. Like, wherever it drops, even if it's in, in the worst place, it still hurts the team because you have to go back to that place. But you don't want to stop the push where you are. Because if you stop that push where you are, you lose all that progress to go back. And then again, you're scared pushing there again. Well, okay, so this is where I would have thought uh, they're going for, of course, yeah, the bottom. The garage. I, I just say like basement or bottom because then you can just say bottom of every map <laughs> instead of saying like, exactly what it is. But Most it, of them it are is basements. garage and gym. Yeah, it is garage and, uh, garage and gym. This I believe. Well, so I wonder if they're going to do the. Um, what have they got? They have Five got, seconds left. Yeah, wait. Yeah, they've got bandit. I wonder if they're going to do the bandit trick where you put the uh, the bandit down when you believe they're going to fermite, uh, but you only put it yeah. down when you when you think they're fermiting so they can't throw a factor and stop it. So I wonder if they're going to do that. I, I do so. see that a lot on this. Because this is an interaction we've seen a teensy bit of, but nothing too crazy, really. We've not seen masters of it, and typically the Thermite seems to win out that trade. Oh, wow. It's wow. Crazy. wow. That wall coming on. Where was that coming from, though? There's no one there. I think that was his teammate shooting behind him. Ah. <laughs> I thought it was bullets coming away as well, but yeah, I think it was Twitch in the end. Here we go, pushing oh, on that in. That was a quick kill. <laughs> Immediately just denied entry right there. Headshot. It's going to be Jack saying, no way, no sorry, doing his best Gandalf impression, saying, you shall not pass. And suddenly TCM down to just two members. They got that first round, but immediately Epsilon is are like, happening again? <laughs> we, is, ain't is letting you, again? we ain't letting you get any kind of lead right here. <laughs> but TCM definitely could go for something crazy here. I got. Thatcher and Sledge. Let's see what they can do. And Storm's I mean, pushing him. let's be fair. This is the last game that we're going to see played yep. at IEM. It is. And what a series to what be our final. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This has been a, probably the perfect game. For it to finish. Perfect matchup, for sure. Yeah. And, let's, and uh, if this one goes the distance as well, if we see a final of 6-5 for both of these teams, a total of 22 rounds. Okay, Storm's pushing in. Very nice. Tags him. Norse is there. Whoa, he's peeking. Oh, he would have had him if he just waited a bit longer. Well, to be fair to him, you don't know, expect that that re peek in that situation. That was very brave. It was really. There were no point. I wonder if he does it again. Let's see if he does it again. And that's one of the things as well. LAN versus online. Because wow. online, you can kind of go for that risky re peek. But oh. online. Oh, he doesn't spot him. in. Oh my goodness, Storm got a free kill right there. That should not have happened, I don't up. think. Attackers I think they already did, yeah. They did, they just picked the other guy up. It was Hansen that ran across oh, and got him, and wow. Hansen immediately answers. Hansen, with honestly, 
balls of steel in that round. Goes for a crazy repeat, just straight away runs to pick up his teammate and then sprays on back through the wall. But not afraid to go for anything He crazy. was the one who attacked as well. Yeah, exactly. He yeah. was down to like 10 HP that whole time. Very nice. That could have been something magical. Hansen on this map seems very much in his comfort zone. I mean, what's his score? He's only on three kills, but he was playing the Glass before, so we saw some nice, nice shots coming out from him. Yeah. And that one, it wasn't necessarily about how many kills he got, but the fact that he picked up his teammate and the fact that he just did it so it was confidently. A nice play. It was a nice play. Yeah. He had the intel as well. He knew, he knew uh, where he Jackson were. So that, that is a nice thing too. Like you can get told where they are, but knowing where they are is a bit different, I feel. One of the things I love about Siege as well is it is this, it's not just about who the heavy hitters are. It's not just about who your top fraggers are. Mm. It's about the strategy from your team and these players that they may not get every single kill, but they get those crucial kills. Yeah. Those kills that are going to turn the round. The kills that matter. Exactly. Like the, uh, the, the, the kills that are very smart. If you're the one nice. that kills that, that bomb carrier or the defuser right. carrier, and yep. it's like 30 seconds from the end of the round, that is going to win you the round. Yep. Yeah. If you can get them in a bad spot. The really important kills. So they've decided to go... Uh, oh, well, they have to, don't they? Because they actually won the fence at the top. Mm -hmm. So these have gone to the bottom as well, the garage and the gym. Yeah, so how they defend this. Both defenders winning out so far here. Yeah. we both attacks now. Yeah, let's see. We'll see. Don't really know which order wow, they go on. Did they, this not, um, did they not reinforce? I'm not sure. It looks like it, it looks almost like they're part of the garage there. So maybe they're like, we're not letting you create the holes. We're creating the holes. Yeah. Not having it. Mm. Well, I don't know. Interesting strategies coming out. Acid Rain finds the first headshot on to Hansen. Now, Hansen... That's a little peek there. I mean, I was just talking about how Hansen was an absolutely pivotal player for Epsilon in that <laughs> last one. And that's Glass taken out as well. Oh, oh my! Was that one bullet? Oh, yeah. I think Acid Rain just person. got a single bullet double kill right there. <laughs> what on earth did we just witness? That was nice. I wish we had replays coming through here because that was just... That was sick. But... Takes him down, though. Acid Rain finds a hat trick for himself as well, and in fact pushes out oh. a little oh, bit aggressively. Oh, up and killed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one's on dark. Nearly got away with that, but do not slip off. It's going to be Rick, Rock, Rack, Wreck, whatever his name is. Rick. Rick. Coming in. One versus four. Can you do it? He's still got a minute and 30 on the clock. We have seen one versus fours earlier today. Attack it was from the side of TCM, though. This Panics. Actually, that's hard. one thing we haven't talked about. Panix hasn't really been the big player coming out here. Mm. But Panix he, did some really good stuff, didn't he? Panix was our our highlight 1v4. Yeah, right? yeah, I thought so. And we've not really seen it. I mean, maybe it's maybe, kind of just maybe he's right place, right time, time, you know. Maybe he's waiting for his time. You can't have a clutch every single game. Yeah. So. Lobade just barred in his time here. I want to see a crash peek from Lobade. Oh. Does go for it, doesn't quite uh, on the shot. Finally gets that headshot onto. That would have been really hard. Epsilon player. If it was in a different place, possibly, but yeah, it was outside the garage. Yeah. I mean, it was never going to be easy, one versus four. It's going to be so, so hard to actually find your way in, because yeah. no matter where you go, you're going to make noise getting into the building, unless you're in an open door, in which case they're already watching you. Yep. So but, once again. There we go. Advantage to TCM. Winning on the defense this time, so I think it's been defense every time. I think. Oh yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah. yeah no. Well, let's see if TCM can shake up that trend and turn this into a three for one, or whether it's going to be Epsilon again mirroring here. <laughs> Going for kids' bedroom though. It looks like it's actually uh, TCM getting the first win now, and then Epsilon following. Yeah. Attackers have located Well. New map, new mirror. Yep. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kids, bedroom, and construction. Yep. Once again. Interesting. I don't. I honestly don't like uh, the kids' bedroom bomb. I, I think it's really, really it's, vulnerable. I think it's like how small the room is. It's mm. so easy to just blow that room apart with grenades. With And as well, Glass can as quite can easily see, spot down and just deny any entry. They are making a lot of holes, so they make sure that they can see in that room. It looks like they've... Uh, well, it looks like they've made I can't tell from this kind of angle, but I've seen like... Uh, yeah, I think, I think that room next door was... Uh, the wall was blown in a bit from Master Bedroom, so... 
Yeah, from Master Bedroom, definitely, but they can do it from uh, Construction too. Yeah, shoot all the way through that hallway. I used to do that. Then, then you got the question of, do you want to give your attackers a way into both sites straight away? Mm. Like, vision straight onto the other side? That's the question. Oh. Oops. Hello. Rip. Are you pushing through the uh, bathroom? Well, having a look through the bathroom. Bathroom does lead to the master bedroom, which would eventually lead to the uh, kids' bedroom. Yep. Oh, you could just take it out onto oh, the main track gets him and he takes him out. That's why I really like Frost. Oh, one for one. Not a direct trade, but Wait. two kills, one yeah, piece. That's yeah, that's why I like Frost. It's, it is actually like a hunter. <laughs> Bang. Yeah, Frost yeah. is terrifying, honestly, especially in those close quarters fights. It's just... Really nice operator. I mean, we saw that one. I can't quite remember which player it was in the end, but it was one of the G-Bots and over on, um, I think it was Oregon, the map was. Mm. Which you saw that one versus three on Frost where he waited at the bottom of the stairs and then jumped up, but Storm finds a headshot in this map. Where is the... Legends goes down. Have they put it, I think they just dropped it, haven't they? So they've got one minute 40 and the, uh, the fuser is dropped. Acid Rain Two turns it into... Power. A two versus four, one versus four, and actually we could see and TCM G actually G starting to break the trend here. Mm. Three one now. TCM. Wow. They're pushing for this Probably one. Off. Yeah. And it was TCM that took our first map as well. Yeah. So could TCM actually. I'm gonna write that down so I can't forget it later. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm flagging at this point. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm ready for bed. But yeah. <laughs> my memory is, my memory is awful at the best of times. So this is why I always keep my notebook with me, and the worst of times, as Matt rightly says in my ears. But here we go, three-one for TCM, and Epsilon now have their work cut out. They can no longer just kind of try and match the scoreline now. I like they the, uh, the really frost place with that trap. Do you see it near the, uh, the bathroom? Yeah. It's all three windows. Yeah, it is. And as well, one thing as well for you guys at home when you're playing frost, make sure you leave a little bit of gap between the window and your frost trap because if you put it right touching the wall, you can swing in over the trap and actually not get caught up by it. So, can you? Yeah, so you got to make sure it's not actually touching the wall. you got to give it like maybe a foot of space between. I've never jumped and... over one. I always just get hit by them. Yeah, well, most <laughs> people don't put it like right yeah, yeah, on the yeah. wall anyway, but. Oh, this is a dodgy spawn. You can get peeked here. This is really risky. I hate this spawn. It makes me feel so vulnerable. Yeah, well. They got through it. It's fine. It's paid off for him in the end. Good. Glass again coming out for Hanson. Definitely a, a, an operator who's very comfortable on. Oh, that was so close to a wallbang headshot he is right there. always very close there. He obviously knows where the operators are often going to stand. This is something he's played a whole lot. But they also know where he's going and this to be is, as well. So this is shooting straight on into bathroom as yeah. well. But they'll also know where he's going to be, so it's kind of like that. Yeah. You know, he knows, but they know kind of thing. But the thing is, he only has that little window to look into. They've got to check that entire roof. So he's always in that one peak, he's going to have the advantage. I'd I feel. love to see a fast B just to see, because I can't. I mean, I can see like they've broken a hole from construction, but can they really see like right at B if they plant it Ooh. in the corner? Well, yep, Slump finds Storm early on in this round, so it's going to be a nice little advantage for them as they push on this attack down the side. There is one the question person. is, can they like turn that into oh, oh, a defender it coming out? It's going to be dark as well, but that's that going to be a waste. nice little knife. Feeling himself a bit too much there, I think. Oh, that was uh, a little bit of BM coming out. <laughs> yeah. Boy, he's shooting the body. angry at the... And you can tell, like, that just proves that Epsilon are really kind of at the end of the tether right now. It was cheeky. It was. But uh, it nearly paid off as well. That's the scary part. I wonder if... Oh, don't do it again. I think that was kind of a matter of how oh. dare you disrespect me kind of thing. Don't you, don't oh you come outside. God, We're going to see a defender going out again. again. Wow. The knife didn't actually finish Getting in the end. a bit too uh, crazy yeah. there, I think. So Epsilon, <laughs> find another round for himself. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, wreck. Mm. Literally getting wrecked. Um, so I think they're drawing again now, right? Not quite. It's 2-3. Oh. TCM still with a lead. But Epsilon looking to push this one to overtime again. Although, 2-3, they can still go to 5-3 at this rate. If Epsilon can win the next three rounds on the trot, they can still just win this one without overtime. They can, they can. TCM, 
see what happens. They just have to get two yeah, more I think rounds they went a bit for crazy on that one. I, don't th I think TCM lost yeah. two people for no reason. They had the tag on that person. There was no reason for him to go out of the window. And then the other person went out of the window. I think this is the thing as well. When you're this far into not only the day, but into kind of... Uh, the midnight. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you're going to start to feel tired, you're going to go for maybe impatient plays, maybe starting to get impatient with teammates. And I mean, we already saw getting impatient with the opponents right there when he did go out onto that outside window yeah. still. Yeah. Immediately, he's kind of like, whoa, don't, let's, let's not be silly now. Mm. <laughs> I'm not Lost having any of this. Of Lost two of them. Yeah. Maybe they just had that feeling, you know, sometimes you do. More than a feeling. <laughs> It wasn't more than a feeling. Mm. It was actually a feeling, but it paid off. So I guess it was more than a feeling in the end. There you go. Potentially, yeah. That was a tiny little story for, from me there. <laughs> the story of that one feeling that wasn't a feeling, and then it was. It was more than a feeling. You said. The yeah. brave little toaster that could. <laughs> Here we go. All right, send it in <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm saying that the players are at the end of the tether. Here I am. I'm running out of words. I'm running out of thoughts at this point. I'm... Dear me. All right. Here we go. So it's looking like it is the bottom once again. You're not wrong. You are not wrong, my friend. Storm's pushed in from the top. Oh, there is a Roma. So it's a good idea. Is he gonna find this the is Roma? very aggressive. Well, it's good Storm. to try and get rid of the Roma. But he has like, a feeling. He has a really good... He's going to get it. Very, very nice. Good uh, nice, nice, good nice, hunch, nice. good hunch. But that was kind of a... Right, middle of balcony. That's pretty risky to be from the attacking side. Like, he's got, I think he's gone through uh, bathroom. I do that sometimes. Yeah, but uh, I mean, like, kid's bedroom could have been where the Roma was. It could have been master bedroom. Very, very... Uh, it usually is construction for some reason. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, kid's bedroom, maybe. Kid's bedroom's scary to uh, just stay in, I think, because it's just such a closed off... I'm just, a, like... Balcony in itself is so open, it seems like a very, very risky spot at all times in my, or like when I'm playing at least. You mean through uh, bathroom? Uh, I mean like on top of the, the balcony, at the top of the stairs, it's so open. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose. I don't know, I don't think it's too bad. Maybe I'm just a pansy. <laughs> well, Jack finds one. They've got a nice push here, you know. Yeah. This, this, this is looking... You well, say that. You well, say yeah, that. I just There's that. only oh, two oh, of them oh, left, oh, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not convinced. Yeah. But I'll have to see. I think they just lost two, as I said that. <laughs> yeah, we've seen crazier things happen, and actually Jack is going to be going nice, down, and down, they immediately down turn it around. Two. Just like that. See what so I mean? you're right, How the push. <laughs> you're absolutely on point with that one. Well, they have got a good position. It's just that two of the people just died, like, instantly. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, well. Return the favor, Murid once again. Yeah, I mean, Spanner in the Works seems to have been the theme oh, for the day. Oh, this is going to be a nice nade. That is a very nice nade. It's going to roll across over oh, to them. Oh, it bounced back. Yeah, I think it hit a bit of rubble or something. And that's one of the things about this game as well, is you can't always guarantee the same kind of grenades and things. If there's a bit of wood from a barricade or whatever, that is going to stop that rolling. So it looks like they were... Uh, Grouping together, pushing to gym together. Rightly so as well. Oh, but they've got a, a, a murder hall. Yeah, well, he gets one of them. It's one one. This is quite big. If they go. get ten this, seconds, it's four, two. ten seconds, one versus one. This is all this or is four, nothing two. right now. Low bait up go. against Hansen. He's oh my God! Is plan. he looking? Is he coming? Hansen can't get in oh, quite he, quick he, enough. Oh, the plant's going to go down again. They're going to. Oh, 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 Hansen on the scene. Oh. And that is going to turn it into three versus three once again. And Epsilon tying it all up. I felt that one. I felt that one. <laughs> and Hansen actually nearly went down there. He took a few bullets to the chest. Oh, that, that really could have gone either way. If a stray bullet had knocked him between the eyes, that easily could have been that was a nice read. round. That was a nice read. He was like, yeah, the time's over. He has to be planting. And he just went yeah. through if he got I think that he maybe down, even could have gone more aggressive. If he got, yeah, well, yeah, straight but, up charged. Yeah, if he if he got that plan down, I think TCM would have took that. Yeah, and as well because it was like literally the end of the countdown. It was like if you cancel the plan, like yeah, literally the round just ends. Yeah, so. yeah. It was it was perfect. Wow, that could have been uh, what is it four or two? It could have been. Could have been. Oh, could have, would have, but wasn't. In TCM's eyes, shoulda. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we go. I mean, this is still 
If either, like, this is either team's game right now because two rounds on a trot right now is going to take you the map. So this is really where it turns into... One, once you get to 3-3, to three, three, that's where it turns into some death. Because if you lose two rounds, you're out. You're gone. So... So what happens? Have they, again on glass. have they defend? Yeah, they have defended. Have they? Have they ever won the uh, the kids' bedroom and construction? I can't remember if they actually won attack. Yeah, the defense has won it every time. Like. Yeah, that's what I thought. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. I think okay. defense has won every spot every time. I don't think we've seen an attacking win. Oh no, we did. TCM yeah, yeah, did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. While we're talking now. Well. There we go. Someone's that's how, that's how you blow the round wide open, throw in that grenade, low bait goes down. And Epsilon. On the back foot to start this one off on the attacking side. Never really a spot you want to be in, but again, traded across. So four versus four now. Mm. I didn't even see that second kill come through. Really once again. No. I don't know whether the grenade maybe was the I second no kill and I just missed the first one. Got I from. Gonna draw on into construction, have a little look. Getting a bit of intel. Did he jump that into the window? I'm impressed if he did. I'm not sure. Um, the drone? Yeah, I didn't quite see. Oh. But... If he didn't, you can jump in anyway. So. Yeah, but it would have been, you know, the mad trick shot. Bit you more know. stylish. I'm gonna. Uh, there we go. Oh, I thought we were gonna throw one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna start making uh, the drone parkour place. drone montages. Do it. Upload it to my YouTube. Do it. That's how I'm gonna It'll get famous. Massive. It'll be massive. Yeah. I don't see any way that it's not, you know. Yeah. Won't be boring. Oh, nice little pick by yeah. Rek. Picks up Storm. Storm really seems to be one of these players where it's kind of all or nothing. Like, gets picked off at the start of the round or just goes ham and gets four kills, you know. <laughs> he does like to be in the uh, the front. Yeah. It does, it does, yeah. But he doesn't push too far, but he's always going to be in that room where you are going to try and push through. It's kind of one of those... At least one person. If you're in that position, you're going to be in that first firefight, whether you win it or lose it. So. so if you're on form that day and you're just like doing amazing, you'll do so well yeah. for your team. It can make you look really bad as well, though. Mm. If, if you, not bad as in like bad skill as in bad. Oh, picks him. That nice. scenario, just the jumped shotgun. Out. Just jumped out. That's the power that of Reeves. Frost right there. The power of map knowledge as well. He jumped yeah. outside. Oh, well. he got the diffuser down. It did nice. indeed, over at the A site. So interesting. Now it's going to be TCM free, scrambling. The diffuser is down. Oh, they're, gonna they're obviously going to think someone's outside. To be fair, if they pick this guy, not from actually outside. that strong of a defense coming now out. They and actually, probably acid just rain finds him. This. Jack pushing on through oh. does find acid rain. He's going, he's going That's going to be called out now. Is it going for the defuse? I think he might be. You know. Oh, oh nice spray comes out wow. for red double headshot while in the Did air. I want to see this kill cam if we can. I yeah, don't know quick. if we're going to be able to. Yeah, nice. here we go. Look at this. In the air gets the second <laughs> kill. Double headshot. Wow. Beautiful. I mean, wreck by name, wow. wreck by nature right there. Nice. I mean, that, that's how you take a round. I don't yeah. even have anything else to say. That was nice. That was nice. And there you go. Nine kills on the board as I well. I actually thought they were going to uh, defuse that. But they knew. They knew. The, they the already situation or the bomb? That's the question. <laughs> Well, they're certainly not defusing the situation between these two teams just yet because we still have another round to go. Let's see if TCM can mirror once again. This is going to be the question, isn't it? Can TCM push this to overtime or are we going to see for the, I think, I'm trying to count now, for the sixth time today, this will be 1-1, one, one, I think. Really? We've seen two We'll see it. Will it short the end? All the scores. No, we haven't. We've seen... Will it short the end all the scores? Yeah, we'll be able to bring up. I, I believe the analysts will be talking us through the bracket we'll at the end see it of the day, so we will. So we'll see be able to count the ones, recap the and ones. work out yeah. what's going on. But I'm pretty sure both these teams will be quite high up there. Like I've, we've been casting the games, and we're kind of losing track at this point. So I'm sure some yeah. of you guys at home and in our audience are going to be losing track as well. So we'll we will have a quick recap. Team. If you follow one team, you'll remember that. Yeah, obviously. But here we go. Attack phase begins. TCM. Let's see what they can do. Uh, the ones that is a oh. fast push. <laughs> Wasn't worth it though. No, it didn't land the headshot. That's, that's someone the thing, might though. actually down uh, the medic just so he can revive himself for uh, 75 health because it's so soon. Yeah. It's it's definitely doing. It's definitely doable. Something we've Let's see if they not do seen in the pro league, but it is something you see fairly common if I'd it's, say it's early worth in the it right round. Now. I'd say it's worth it. Now. Even if you're not the medic, 
like, and you're you're knocked down to like 10 HP early in the there. round. Shoot yourself in the foot, someone else picks you up, or someone else shoots you in the yeah, foot, or whatever, you know. But they pick you up to they 50 HP. I mean, as well, you know that they're about to attack, so maybe it's kind of, yeah, it, it is a risky early. strategy. It was very, very early, but it's down to whether he has a teammate nearby that isn't watching a spot, isn't watching. Who just went down there? It was, it was Pinari, who has been one of these. He's had a few plays where he's really gone just completely ham. It was a nice idea. Uh, it's just like, uh, this is the thing, like, had that paid off, that would have been, we'd have been singing have been his praises really right nice. now. If yeah, he just yeah. landed that first headshot. He would have gone straight into garage, uh, into gym. Yeah. And that is like, immediately Epsilon have to be scrambling on the defense. Yeah, it would have been, yeah, it would have been really nice. He's got a good idea. He knows he's there. He definitely knows he's there, shot back. Yeah, low bait, evens this it? one up. Oh. Legend, oh, he's gonna pre -fire, pre -fire, that pre -fire. wall. Here we go. Sprays on through the wall. Can't Down quite finish him off. No, he Here comes the grenade, grenade though. Oh, oh he doesn't. Did he get out? He missed the doorway. I think he might have gone. Oh, low bait's gone something. down actually. Three versus three now. Legends finishes that one off. I think he maybe I think went. He had a hole. Well, the grenade maybe blew one of the holes or something along those lines. I didn't quite see, but oh, Ooh, nice little nice shot, shot through the murder hole. Acid rain finding another, but immediately traded. Tunisiano oh, goes down. Here we go, Storm takes one, TCM with the advantage. We could be looking at another overtime, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, unless we see Legends live up Can to his name here. It? Can he be a legend? That is going to be the question. Will he be the legend of their team? He's got the, he's got his MP5 in his hands, and he's got 2v1 on his hands. Is he going to be able to land his shots? He though? has got He just two needs two what? bullets, oh, two headshots. Oh, 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 oh my God. I Storm him. saw him right there. Oh. Finds one. One versus one now. He can still do this. Why Best to reload. Plan? Just plant Storm. Storm as well. Come on, you gay lad. This is it, like... It's Storm. He's going to be able to plant. Once he gets the plant, what's he going to do with it? Storm's looking for the overtime. Legends right now. We've Just got plant. to see. He's planting now. Ten seconds to go. Attackers and he gets it down, okay. Oh, this is one. This is... Hey, like, oh, Here we go. Oh my god. It's TCM. It's going to be a tie. Wow. 4 4 again. Wow. Whew. So Storm what this is showing me, up to the plate. What this is showing me is both teams can do the clutches. Yeah. Which is really important at high level play. And as well, Storm gets it. So UK hype. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. There we go. There we go. I think these close teams up are on, his, very well. on his like beautiful throughout. face. <laughs> you can see how serious how this is. is right now as well. It's kind of like... <laughs> another overtime coming in. <laughs> Three rounds left at maximum. Can't believe it. They were so close. I know. Oh, my God. I was sure as well when Epsilon took that early advantage in that round. I was like, oh, no, this could be lights for TCM. But I didn't manage to pull it back. The reason he won was the end of the uh, diffuser. If that diffuser were not in that room, that would have been GG. And that's what I mean by just keep hold that diffuser. Yeah, I know. Like, had someone else died with the diffuser early on in that round, that would have been Epsilon's round, for sure. Yeah. It's so, so crucial that you keep a track of where that diffuser is, what you're doing with it, because you cannot afford to get caught out with your pants down in the wrong spot. Drop that diffuser, and you're just going to basically screw up the entire round for your team. Here we go. Dodgy spawn again coming out for Jack, but... He's all right. He's going to play that one out. I think Thermite as well is one of those classes that you're pretty happy against the window peaks. You're always going to have that ACOG. Yeah. And you've got a very accurate weapon. I do not like that spawn. I, I, I no, I don't. Hate it. But it's it's kind of one of those, like... You can spawn anywhere. anywhere. In, in terms of window peaking, yeah, it's not great. But in terms of getting to the garage quick... Fast. Very it, fast. It is yeah. the spawn to go it for. It is the fastest, I believe. So here we go. Just feeling him out once again. Interesting positioning from Hansen here on the glass. We've not really seen him go oh, up close to first not here. Not going there. for the, not going for the um... That's interesting. Very risky going past there. Oh, he's going to break two holes. That's scary. Here we go. Okay. If he gets both of them holes, that is scary. Look at this. They're going to get a lot of... Uh, glass has so much that is room such a good to just look in. Yeah. yeah. This this is looking good. They, I'd say they're definitely at advantage right now, but Inari. anything can happen. Could be in trouble. I can't tell if he's through that wall or if he's in the garage right there, but... Hansen. 
He's been fantastic in terms of landing those shots on Glass so far. He's overextending a bit too much, I feel. Yeah, it, I mean, this is it. Like, Storm peaks there. That's the better Storm's one to get the kill. He's so... He's pushing so aggressively low, but this he finds a kill here. Hanari is through that wall. If he tries to go for the wall, I might find Just, it. But I can't tell where he is. 4 versus 5 TCM with the advantage. Now we see them pour, pushing in for he pushes. Whoa, he hell can't hell find his target. On. Does wow. finally get it. Lobade goes down, but actually it's traded. Storm just killed Lobade oh, while he sprays no. on down. Oh, yeah. And that is, is ACOG at close range. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in a nutshell. But TCM, four versus two right now. They have a significant advantage. Advantage? Advantage. <laughs> I'm making it words at this point. Hansen just walks in and executes to Deciardo. <laughs> And jump straight back down to the bottom floor again. He's like, well, my work's done on the top floor. Pick up that diffuser. That's the Roma dealt with. But here we go. Oh, looking for the kill. Wow, it just gets one. Gets it. Gets the wall bang as well to finish him off. And that turns it into a two versus two. Hansen has been really a standout player for me in terms yeah. of just the pressure. He's doing well with map. Glass. Definitely doing well with Glass. And it's one of the operators that I think has a, a more difficult play style to adapt seconds. to. 25 seconds. Yeah, this is a good point, something. actually. They're starting to run out of time now. They can no longer just pick off from, from this end. They need to do something. Where's the diffuser? It's in the hands of Jack. 15 seconds. You don't want to wait too long. It gotta go. Way, way They've got to go. They've got to go right now. Oh, Storm see. finds the headshot. Hansen. Last man Even remaining. Even if he this guy, it's over. It's over. He can't do it. He can't do it. Three There's seconds. He's got, he's got a punt. He he's got a punt right now. He can't. There we go. TCM, that, that headshot onto Storm won the round right there. Yep. Uh, no, headshot from Storm, in, in fact, um, onto the Jack. When he came in with the diffuser, that single headshot won the round right at the end there oh, in by the, the last uh, 10 seconds. Yeah, by, by the, uh, the diffuser dropping. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And this is what we were talking about before, but now, TCM. They won the first game in this series. We're into overtime again. Are we going to go to 5-5? Are we going to go the full 22 rounds in this game? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? They are very even. I think it's so hard to call. But we well, have seen... We were so close to Epsilon taking it. This one, this uh, map. We've seen, the thing is, we've seen a lot more success on defense mm. than we have on attack. So I do want to say Epsilon... For this round specifically, I have a slight edge. But from oh, from what we've seen in previous rounds on house. Mm. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's the, uh, as you said, it's, it's too hard to call. And then, it, I, I mean, Epsilon, if they win this one, I think, I, I think they get another defense round. Or in fact, it might. No, okay. actually, no, it's just at the start of overtime, no, it's swapped. So in fact, it's going to be TC on yeah, defense yeah. after this one. So yeah, yeah, I'll just keep going. Let's see. Let's see if they, uh, they just change it around because Epsilon were going to win and now TCM could. <laughs> so yeah. it's literally just flipped. <laughs> well, nice drone. Yeah, it's a nice drone. It's going to get some nice intel there. So they know master bedroom's clear, bathroom's clear. Yep. Checking out all these little rooms and hidey holes. They pretty much cleared the full top floor wow. at this point with he can one just go single in. drone. He can just go in. There's no one there. There's no threat. That is pretty much best case scenario from yep. a drone right Roll there. Others. You know that that entire floor is clear now, and you can stroll on through, but... I don't know where all of the rest of the players are, because that's kind of so one disadvantage. If you see that that whole floor is clear... Oh, nice little shot out of... I thought that was the, I did the guy we were watching for a second there. I was like, what on earth? But Rek finds another one for himself. That's going to be Storm, Storm answering immediately. Panar is just looking into lounge, but I think it's clear. I think this is clear. I think the uh, the top and the first floor is quite clear. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're all down at the bottom. Wait, is there someone at the top? Here we go then. Yeah, there is actually someone at the top. It looks like maybe construction. Lobe going straight for the front door right there. Don't know whether he'll commit to going through there. It's often kind of risky to go through the front door. Although it's not really that heavily defended a lot of the time. It's just kind of, I don't know. It always feels like going through the front door is kind of just asking for trouble. And there we go, Hansen finds one onto Lobade. Headshot coming through there? and ha Hansen actually finds a second one with that SMG. Jack gets taken oh, down, but he's playing one. Doc. The, uh, killing one the, the Yoshi themed <laughs> pistol comes on out. Looking for the shots, but finish him off. Storm gets a grenade out and that's going to be two versus three now, TCM. 
on the disadvantage. This could be Epsilon evening it up free. again. Yeah. But DCM. Oh, they're gonna be able to find a way to get this diffuser down. They've got 45 seconds on the clock, which is honestly, if you ask any TCM player right now, it's not enough time. I will see. Yeah, we will see. Pushing they're on not in a the bad basement. position. They can get to get, uh, to Jim. They Wait, just need to the, find the one. bomb guys at. Uh... Oh, that's a bad. Why did they split up? That's. That's a, well, that's a bad Storm, draw. he's, he's clutched before. Up. Can he go for this? One this versus is, two right now. Like he's looking for legends and he oh finds him. God. One versus one. He needs Storm to get there. on the scene. If he there. gets this oh kill, God, he, he gets the game. They get the 2 0 if he can Where just land it? a single he's headshot. Oh, oh my God. he gets it. He does it. Storm with his wow. second clutch in the last three wow. rounds is going to take it. And TCM. Good stuff to After 21 rounds, managed to take the game against. Epsilon and wow. oh my god, what a series, like easily the closest series we've seen in Pro League, Yep, going one round away from as far as you could possibly go. Mm. Fantastic, fantastic game. Absolutely insane. And so I mean, close, it could have gone anywhere. I mean at one point, Epsilon almost had it. What a way to end it, Storm getting a one versus three to finish the whole thing out. And it was I mean, off a bad bomb drop as well. Yeah, as well, yeah. It was like the diffuser was in a terrible spot. It was like, right. You have to do If this. I don't get these three kills, we don't win this game. Yeah, exactly. You have to do, you have to go at them because yeah. you cannot plan them. <laughs> and that pushes TCM up. It could have got hit by a frost. I, I think they're now anything. in second place. We'll double check on the bracket yeah, yeah, in a we'll second with the analysts. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. fantastic, fantastic yeah. stuff from them. That's we are just going to get... Looks like maybe a couple of players coming up onto stage for our final interview of the day. It is going to be Sean standing by as ever, ready for our final interview, and we'll round out the night. We'll talk. To, we'll pass it over to Sean. Okay. What on earth did we just witness, boys? I'm, I, you gentlemen have done the Pro League on its day one, day two combo. Absolutely proud. Where most people would have been tired and said, you know what? I bow out, I go, neither one would give up. That was crazy. Um, start me off, Lobain. What's your feeling? Incredible, that's all I can say. Uh, my teammates just uh, stepped it up and uh, we performed. It was very, very close. And, uh, closer than I would expect, actually. Closer than you would expect? I mean, obviously, commiserations. The last one didn't go exactly the way the first one did. Talk us through it. Uh, can you repeat? <laughs> commiserations, obviously, in the end, the second one wasn't uh, perfect, but how was the experience for you? Ah, uh, for the experience, um, it was close. And it was a nice match to end the Pro League. So we are, of course, a bit sad because we lose and you win, but you was better. And uh, we try to do better the next time. We keep focus. And uh, I think we need to, to work harder. Well, indeed, you absolutely did what you did. So thank you so much. I know that the guys will have loads to break down at the desk. I know that you guys are absolutely knackered. So please go back to your teams. Enjoy. Thank you so much. And for the last time, from these two absolute gladiators that really duked it out, it was exactly what we promised it would be. Fantastic from beginning to end. Over to you for the last time, Panky. Thank you very much for the th oh, the final. I was going to third. It's like eighth time. <laughs> Thank you very much for the final <laughs> time, Sean. Once more, we are joined at the desk by two of our incredible pro players here from the week. We've got Wilkie here from Sifu and Sizlek here from uh, Warriors Team France. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Thank and you. thank you very much for sticking it out and being here right the way through to the end. Now, we're broken 13 hours yeah. that we've been live right now. It's a, it's a trek. But uh, you guys are still having fun enjoying your first uh, LAN event here for Rainbow Six? Yeah, so that was definitely crazy. Uh, I think we all have a great experience and we really, we, I mean, it was just crazy cool. Having a great time. Yeah. Did you enjoy yourself too, Wilkie? Yeah, of course. Uh, past times I've been in the analyst desk and this time I'm I'm playing, so of course I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Having great fun. I'm going to dive straight into it because we got two different maps again. Obviously, it's very, very late. Uh, Wilkie, can you talk us through some Hereford base a little bit? We saw a super close game, ran every single possible round it over time, six to five, but the key thing, Everyone was winning on attack. Yeah, it was the same as in our game that yeah. teams won the attacks and lost the defense. Uh, it's, it's weird because usually the defending is so much easier, but in, in here, here before, the attacking the downstairs that all teams are picking all the time, it, mm -hmm. it feels it's so super easy to plan to the A because there is 
only a couple of corners you need to watch when you enter the room. If you have flashbangs or smokes, you get the plant down pretty easily. So it's hard to defend that. Of course, you could pick something else, but those upstairs locations are kind of bad, and I don't think teams feel so comfortable to pick those. That was my next question. Do you think those locations are just bad, or do you think it's that everyone's still learning, getting together as a team and trying to figure out the maps as a whole, that they haven't figured out how to make those other bomb sites work yet? Do you think with time and practice they may open up? Uh, I think as a defender's perspective, perspective in the in the downstairs you have less locations you need to focus on, so that's why you want to play the downstairs. If you go upstairs or in the middle floors, you have tons of windows, tons of doors, and stairs to watch out. So you need to focus so many locations that it it feels easier to play the downstairs when it necessarily isn't that. So All right, anything to add about that for us? Is like no. Uh, Personally, personally, that uh, that that's not a map I really like, and our team doesn't feel really comfortable on other defenses uh, than basement. So maybe there is something to do. I don't know. We didn't practice that much this map, so that's we'll see in the that's next. That's the uh, beauty of a pro league. Of course, yeah. we've got many, many weeks of play. Maybe things will discover. Things will uh, learn over time. We're going to take a quick look at the standings and how that has laid out and ended the week. Now that we've had two full play days worth of games and there is our opening three teams at the top of the table with three points three of the teams that are i don't think surprised too many people ara penta they were two of the top seeds out of the go for qualifiers they were the teams everyone expected to see right up there tcm then rounding it off there is our final team with three points gbots or a team france yourself there lining up on two and sifu flamers and epson there at the bottom of the table with one which it sounds a little bit deflating saying they're at the bottom of the team after week one but with literally one point differentiating you guys in the top five it's like still can go either way it can't be too disheartening for you guys yeah luckily for us it's it's close for everyone so we can still climb up yeah still lots of way to go with we'll dive quickly over to a quick touch on house i'd like to see your input on that is like how do you guys feel that map goes i know punji's very much a fan of it because how small it is and how mobile you can be um do you guys have any special thoughts or uh, preferences towards or against house uh House, I, I mean, I don't know. It's not a map I, I, we play, actually. So It's another one you don't yeah. play. That's fair enough. I want to, because we haven't seen it all day, we haven't touched on it. We did have a couple of guests talk about it off camera, but do either of you have, particularly you guys on uh, WTF, feelings towards and about Yacht? Is it a particularly bad map, or is it just that people don't know how to play it yet? But actually, we thought it could be funny to play it. But why, uh, why funny? funny? But because nobody, I think nobody knows how to play it, and nobody really Crack on it yet? So um, yeah, on it would be a very minutes, pop uh, star uh, game, right? Yeah, yeah. and it's well, <laughs> hey, we we did play planes. That was yeah, that's quite certainly cool, something we didn't expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, no, I think Yoto it can be very funny because in three minutes it's very hard to do something uh, as an attacker like strong. I think because it's so big and Romer can be everywhere, especially with uh, Frost and his the super uh, crazy shotgun. So it's you know I I think it can be uh, funny to watch actually in the game. It yeah. will be close, I think. So I certainly look forward to the first time we see Yacht being pulled out yeah. anywhere so far. Punji Stick, thank you so much for joining me here on the desk all day. Have you got any final thoughts towards that last game or the, the league as a whole in the last two, two play days? No, there's not many thoughts at all going through my brain anymore. I mean, first time ever casting, and it's a 13-hour day, so I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, I think it's done uh, pretty damn well. <laughs> Trial by fire, if I've ever seen one before. So I want to give a big thank you to, of course, to Intel, who without them, we would not be here in Cadivis. This Absolutely. Intel Extreme Masters event, they have done great things for us. Don't forget to check out all the other Rainbow Six Siege Pro League action coming up your way. Monday, we've got the Xbox One tournament, starting with EU, followed on shortly afterwards with the North American tournament. And then very early on Friday, Friday morning for us European viewers, Thursday evening for the North Americans, we have the opening PC tournament for the North American teams. In a couple of weeks' time, our EU players are back to continue theirs once everything's synced up again, and we have so many more weeks of tournaments to go. Once more, thank you to Ubisoft for putting on what is a great tournament by banking a great game. Thank you to ESL for putting on the production, and thank you guys for sticking it out for such a long broadcast and a great show, and we'll see you next time.